$331 billion for imports in February, $326 billion expected on the uh, imports data. Initial jobless claims, 221 versus 214. Uh, 1.79 million versus 1.82 um, expected, therefore, continuing claims. Uh, again, coming up later this morning, uh, we'll get a long, long line of uh, Fed speakers to come, the big one tomorrow. Non-farm payrolls for February, always exciting. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I think it'll be really exciting, especially with six Fed speakers on watch to see what the market does today. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, coming off a, a nice day yesterday for tech, as I was mentioning specifically, uh, a few more positive headlines this morning in that world. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we have also, we have the meta price target increase from Jefferies. Really nice looks and positive analyst notes there with regards to ad revenue. We also had Apple later in the afternoon yesterday with that potential robot home robotic project as reported by Bloomberg. So, <laughs> yeah, tech is very much on watch heading into Thursday's session, that's for sure. Yeah, that was kind of out of nowhere. Um, Apple Roomba coming to a store near you, possibly. Um, Apologies, guys, for uh, if anyone missed the uh, opening there. We'll uh, recap real quick. We got some uh, import-export data. Initial jobless claims comes through to the upside this morning. Continuing claims downside so far. That's about it as far as economic data today. But remember, Fed speak to look out for later in the day tomorrow or th this afternoon, guys. Yeah, the lineup of Fed speakers continues in the in the afternoon. But you know what? Like uh, the action wasn't even. We were all, we were all talking about like ah, Fed this, Fed that. Jerome was at twelve ten yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But then really, what was the action? Um, you had the move in Boeing because of their they had their production numbers were down, so it was news in the middle of the day. No one was looking at Boeing until the afternoon hit. You had, uh, I mean, Paramount had some news as well if you're interested in that. And then the Apple Roomba news. I don't like. Why does it? I, that seems a bit. Uh, why does an Apple robot have to have anything to do with the Roomba? Like it's a, we're talking about a robot that's gonna do every. I'm assuming gonna do everything for you, right? Like, I would imagine, it's like you just you're gonna have something that like I know Brennan said in the podcast, fold your laundry and whatnot. Right. It's right. just you know it's a little it's like an everything. Bots, I suppose, for the house. I don't think we know anything about everything. it yet. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm presuming. Like, yeah. I mean, but if I'm going to presume what Apple's going to do, I'm going to think it's more than a vacuum. Oh, yeah. It's going it to do a lot of things. Roomba. It'll be able to do uh, walk your dog and, uh, you know, teach your yeah, kids those types sports of things. and do all the things that the absent, absentee parents can't do, of course, and solve the whole world with robots. And buy some um, Palantir print this morning. Or apparently. going up. Yeah, well, Pal I mean, look, Palantir is what it is. We just tweeted that out as well. I mean, uh, this name continues to go higher here with a partnership with Oracle. So this actually didn't make our watch list because it's relatively new news. Uh, they're coming out about 8 o'clock. And we use the Benzinga Pro platform here uh, to look it up. And I found out here. Let me just search it. It's down there because there's been more stories since we've come through. So we search up Palantir here. And then we get here. And it says Oracle and Palantir join forces to deliver mission-critical AI solutions to governments and businesses. So here it is right here. It's a nice little deal with Palantir and Oracle. So there you go. I mean, another big, huge monster tech name partnering up with old little itty-bitty Palantir, uh, which we've only been talking about now for probably about three years. So there goes Palantir straight up to the upside. Um, and yeah, it's on the sticky note. It's uh, it, like I said, it just missed our watch list, but that's the story right there. So up four and a half percent. I still think it goes higher, but hey, the market loves that number. You oh, know yeah. that release there on the jobless claims because again, bad news seems to be uh, more leaning towards a rate cut. It is. Uh, just seeing Coinbase moving around here as well, back to the upside. I mean, as you said, uh, guys, the market is as well. Uh, securing a restricted dealer license in Canada, uh, pushing expansion abroad amid SEC crackdown. So uh, get ready for Coinbase Canada uh, coming soon to a crypto, I don't know, account near you if you want. You can have Coinbase accounts now in Canada, but obviously some sort of, uh, I, I think, look, the closer you get to regulation, I mean, yeah. the better, right? So more licenses, better for Coinbase. That makes sense. Get the government behind you. Sure. Get everything official. Coinbase back up to 260. I mean, this, this name probably doesn't stop, honestly. It's another higher low on the day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Probably doesn't stop. Probably goes back to 290, honestly. I don't know. I, like, at this point, too, like, you got to figure, you're getting a really decent consolidation in Bitcoin, like every time it drops, like drop hold 60, drop hold 65, 
you know, that kind of a thing. So you're getting uh, Bitcoin stabilizing itself, and this, is, this would be day two. Ugh, is it punching through 260? I don't, I mean, I didn't sit down thinking Coinbase was going to be, like, a, one of those punching stocks. Like, I really thought, like, the trade would have been off, like, a 250 level today. So you're going to watch some crypto, but I feel as if, like, the litany of things that have direct catalysts that we normally trade like we're talking palantir i mean apple boeing are both going to be in play for me intel continuation from yesterday you start to then you have a triple top at 905 on nvidia that's going to be in play you have meta breaking out as well there is a lot to look at for a day where the only earnings was levi's and I mean, blackberry did absolutely nothing you know, there is a lot of individual names to, to come through and sort of sift through uh, today. So I probably won't trade Coinbase, but yeah, it does look like a pretty good trend is starting back into that 290, as Sean said. I just don't know it's, if, if it'll make the list for me today. All right. Uh, as you guys mentioned, uh, one main earnings name today, here it is, uh, 21, uh, just getting taken out once again for uh, Levi Strauss. Um, nice forecast. Uh, I mean, earnings topped expectations across the board uh, for Levi's. A number of positive analyst moves here to uh, start the day as well. So uh, another one to the upside so far. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice look here for Levi's. Uh, we did have this increase in guidance being kind of the main thing here that I'm seeing causing this positive reaction. We had an increase from one, uh, a range of 115 to 125 per share um, up to 117 to 127 earnings per share for the year 2024. So nice look there. They also did beat pretty nicely here on EPS and on sales for the quarter. Decrease of inventories by 14% on a dollar basis. So yeah, ni nice look across the board here for, for LEV high adding into the session. Uh, market continuing to uh, move to the upside here. Um, if you missed it, the actual weekly number on the initial jobless claims to the upside, continuing claims, actually downside. So a bit of a contrast there, but um, the uh, overall market not seeming to care at this point. Pretty positive now. Russian to 18.5 on the NASDAQ. Like that's been... It's like the first little bitty wall at 18.5, and then you get to like 18.62, and that's probably a little bit bigger. So it looks like we could challenge that today. You had an update yesterday that pulled back late, and it was a pretty decent pullback. I don't want to say hefty because it didn't go red, but it was a decent pullback after an update, and you're getting a little continuation. So bad news equals good. So the, the issue with Levi's, 12% short, short float, that's good, up 12%. You know, it's you gotta you gotta worry about like it's more about like they, the the Ford numbers were actually in the in the positive end of the range. I think that's what you gotta lean into. I mean, ultimately, if you actually were to look at like the quarter and read more into it, like it was a gap loss, so the adjusted earnings was was up and and a beat there, but it was actually a gap loss um, and and worse than the year previous year. It was the same thing with revenue. That said. It's that forward look that's fantastic, and the momentum is what it is for the retail names. Retail names that have popped in this earnings season have been not the best bets to go short. So I, when something's breaking out like this, and if you look at it on the daily chart, it was already just in a nice slow turn, but you zoom it out, and this looks to me like you, you essentially have reversed a trend, probably around that 17, 18 is... Like that last break like was right in here. You'd already maybe reverse the trend at 16. And suddenly you're getting into these levels from 2022 where you just like, like step by step. So break this, head here, hopefully hold that $20 level. And then maybe you can see you know, next up like 20, 21 and a half uh, on the daily. I'm looking for a stink bid situation at the open on Levi's. Like, it has to be perfect here. It's so light volume that you just want to let this one settle down. I said but didn't do this on the Spotify upgrade yesterday, and that ended up being a mistake. Like, should have just thrown a stink bid in there because it, it actually ended up tagging that 280 level at the open. And I, I looked back, and I was like, oh, you could have just put a bid in there, and the 280 ended up hitting for you. So I feel the same way about uh, Levi's. Or Levi. 
Yeah, we've been talking about Levi for a minute there on the, um, we talked about it a little bit on the podcast there. We talked about it uh, throughout the last couple of weeks because it was really just the biggest name to come for earnings. And we had that last night and we were talking about it. And the funny thing about it was we tried to look at PVH and say, hey, you know what? Like I tried to channel check it, it backfired if you remember uh, when we did that. All like, because I was like, no one's wearing Hill figure. Then I found out that I was wearing it and Ramin, we were all wearing it that day. Um, and then it went down here all the way in. So they failed. And that gave Levi uh, shareholders potentially a pause for concern. But, you know, not everything is equal. So yesterday, Levi, and even during the middle of the show, I remember asking Adara, and she put it in the chat, we told you, and it was on sympathy with PVH. So Levi was down 7 or 8% and then battled that back, and then now today, you're getting a huge move higher there. So, I mean, just play the winner, still breaking out, and the problem with this stock, it's not a problem, but you still have a lot higher to go for Levi. So if you actually, let me just call this up on another platform here, because it'll load the week a little bit faster for us. Um, if you look at a weekly chart, it's kind of just breaking out now. So this looks kind of, you know, we had Kunal on, and we talked about the IWM, and we talked about Wayfair and things like that. This name is something that looks pretty similar to all of those, where you do have a much higher high here. And if you like the name, you like apparel, I mean, boom, this, this could really, really get going. And if I thought it was about a 12% short float, give me one second. 1226. Uh, is that, oh, you already got it? Yeah, so did you already mention it? Yeah, there it is, yeah, 1226, a good one right there. So it's there the, it is. The best number there is. 1226, what is it? Oh, I started watching, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what that, oh, no? oh I know what it is, yeah, 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 Boxing Day. Right? Boxing Day, um, yeah, that's all. Oh, I watched, so I did watch Three Body Count, uh, the first episode. Yeah. Pop Problem. So, or uh, no. They're uh, probably worth, they're, this is, they, like, they do drop a few bodies in the first. No, 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 what is, what's the, what's it's the Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem, that's what it is. They should have called it Three Body Count. How many people die in the first episode? Oh, oh, man, I'm that thinking, might, I'm thinking that like. That I, might work. I've got, I've got this market on the floor here, but it's not. I actually think it was, it was pretty good. But the thing is, I can't watch it. I stayed awake for the whole thing, but there's a lot involved with it. Oh, so I, oh you, yeah. Like, you have to be, like, boomed into it. So I'm excited for it. The yeah. first episode was pretty good there as, as the numbers begin to count down. The, but that should be, first of all, three-body count just sounds like a really good 80s action flick it's gonna that, be I, that I want to watch. That's, that's all I know. It's going to be once I release my book. That might be the title. Three-body count. Yeah. Well, who are the bodies? Who, you're going to see the bodies very soon, pretty soon, maybe today. Looks like Google's getting bodied here, so we're going to find... Oh, no, I actually no, just, no. We, I, I know we have that on talk, topic, but like, I was just noticing the market's going up right now. That's not good. And I'm about to release a sticky note that has Google for some longs. But Google did not react nicely. It's down now another little piece here. And we had this on the show as well. Brendan messaged to me because right away at 4 o'clock, we had that release of new AI sort of strategy plan there. And we'll get into that in a couple minutes. But I just wanted to say that right now, you're getting a little bit of a body count here on Google because it's down on the mat right here, but not for very long, I have a feeling. So let's wait to see what happens with Google AI coming to a Pixel phone near you. And potentially um, robots across the board, it sounds like. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, for both Apple and, and potentially Google here as well. Yeah, market at highs right now and taking out the highs on uh, decent volume. So um, we'll keep an eye on some of these tech names uh, for sure. I uh, wanted to mention uh, Wayfair real quick. There was This is actually Dollarama trades here in Toronto. So they came out with um, an annual sales forecast that was much higher than expected. So um, Wayfair catching a bit of a bid off of that. There's also a positive note this morning on Wayfair from uh, Evercore. They raised their price target to 80 from 65, so 15 bucks north of where we are today. I mean, the story with Wayfair, as it always is, the uh, short side of things. Yeah, that's certainly something to keep in mind here. But pretty positive analyst note, though, for sure. They do say, uh, the Evercore ISI says that as they're expecting this for home furnishing market to recover cyclically, they expect Wayfair to especially benefit from that with regards to revenue acceleration and growth. So nice look here. They also had a price target increase from Loop Capital on Tuesday. Yeah, I've, um, I've always said I've had great experiences with Wayfair, it's specifically going into you know, warmer weather in spring and summer. I think a lot of people order patio furniture from Wayfair. I that mean, makes sense. Yeah. Or like stuff for the porch, like outside. Yeah. Super simple. Um, I still see about 18% on the short side for Wayfair, guys. It's still decent. And you know what? Like it's got a, I kept saying I would change my 
200 period moving average back to purple. I, I notice that it's still red. And like, I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. Um, but it's been holding the 200 period moving average. So you have higher lows into now a hold of the 200 and a potential, there you go, uh, double top break through $70. So yeah, it's a, it looks pretty interesting, but more interesting if it breaks 70. Oh, I see. Sean and I were just talking about Wafer. Uh, the, yeah, there's this wick up to 71. Looks like at the open, it did like a dipsy do. But uh, so yeah, 70. I, have, I mean, 70 looks like the big break. But the last time it broke it, as you can see, it was a heck of a reversal. I'd be more excited. That's the kind of level that you throw an order or you throw an alert for. Hey, if Wayfair gets to 69 bucks, uh, alert me. And if the 70 break happens, then you're, you're kind of ready for when the stock breaks out. And there was a question when I said something about a stink bid on Levi's. So it's, just, it's a term that we use. And actually, I don't even remember when we started using it. It's fairly recent. It was in the last few years because I didn't say that five, ten years ago. Uh, essentially, just imagine, and I, because I have Wayfair up, let's imagine I think that this high, previous high on Wayfair is like a fantastic area to buy the stock at 64. It's sitting at 65 and doing nothing. A stink would bid would be just like, I'm going to bid 64.10 at the open. And if there's some kind of seller that just comes in and it goes dip and rip, something resolving, resembling this yesterday, then you're just sort of sitting there and you don't miss the wick down. Like you're standing in front of a level. And you, you've probably seen us do that before. Like, I don't know, like, like if Tesla was at like a 150 or something, or 155, like you might just already have a bid sitting there ready to go at 150 and change because if it gets down there, you don't want to miss the trade. So stink bid just means a bid far away from the current bid ask that I want to get filled. I don't want to miss the trade when it's down there, but the likelihood of it getting there that day or in, in, in any kind of a reasonable uh, time frame is low. That's all. Like a- acting as if like this market is like gonna slow down. Like n- you're you're gonna be up a percent here. It was doing nothing, and then eight thirty, and boom! Like just jobless claims, a little lower than expected, goes just rocketing up. I mean, I have IWM here. I was just more looking at the Nasdaq. IWM also starting to go, and this is just one of those other names. We mentioned having Kunal on talking about Wayfair, so there's some more news on that name, and then IWM having a problem breaking through some of these highs. I feel like th- there's been a lot of talk about the Russell 2000 and that needs to play catch up, but does it really? I mean, it doesn't have the big boys in it and you can see what's happening today with the NASDAQ again. The resilience is here in these names and such as you know names like Apple and we saw Meta basically going nuts again right now. I, I'm gonna have written down on here 170.50 uh, for Apple, but it's kind of breaking it right now. To the long side, I really like that one. Or dip buys into 169, 169.50. That's up another little bit here as well. And then we're going to get to all these, but just to show you how strong these names are right now. Meta, just again, 516, like hello, hello tops again. You know, so like, I don't know. I just feel like any bad news here. So I really want to look at who's been down. Yeah, I was, I was, I was kind of like segueing into that. I was going to say, so I'm really interested to see who's on the downgrade list today because any downgrades, I feel like, are going to be temporary, especially if they're in the tech sector. So hopefully I'm not disappointed and there's at least one tech name on your there right is. side there, Dara. A lot of tech here, but quite a few apps and online-related names for sure on this list. We've had lots of interesting analyst moves today, including this uh, upgrade here from Wolf Research for Paramount. Paramount actually still trading to the downside today amidst overall market questions regarding its potential mergers, but Paramount getting an upgrade here from Wolf Research. Grindr getting upgraded here by Raymond James. DoorDash getting an upgrade in a nice $165 price target here from Benchmark. And we did discuss earlier that Wayfair upgrade here from Evercore ISI. Downgrades, we have look at this pretty big tech name here, Block getting downgraded by Morgan Stanley. SQ down about 3.5% on this. Bumble getting downgraded by Raymond James. So looks like the same path here with Grindr and Bumble related endless moves from Raymond James. Post earnings downgrade here for Dave and Busters from Piper Sandler, and last but not least, Hertz getting a downgrade here from Goldman Sachs, guys. Yeah, that hurts a little bit. Ah. It, that yeah, that that's that that's could be a painful one there. Uh, well, I mean, Square with blocks a tech name. Yeah, so. you don't want to get blocked out of that one either. But there you go. I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, the Raptors didn't block anything last night. Perfect. Which. We got 85 points in today's NBA. What is that, a half? Well, so the good thing, the good thing about it is, I said this to Sean when I sat down, 
The Raptors did not lose by 50. They only lost by 48. Uh, the Blue Jays got one hit this time instead of no hits. So that's absolutely that very, fantastic. Very, very good for the Blue And the Buffalo Bills traded their top wide receiver yesterday. So for sports, it was a whole, looking absolutely in, horrible uh, in, day. In this world here. But Block, so if Block was at the 50-period moving average, I might be saying, hey, with this market move, let's look for a buy down here at 74. Because on the downgrade, it's exactly the type of level, chart chart, if we can... Like if, you get 74 here, you already had support there. You're breaking down, so it feels like you're breaking down under support. Should be looking for a short into 74. And with the market going up, I'd probably be saying, hey, let's stink bid it. Well, I guess I could just stink bid at 74 in front of it in case we got there. But my plan on block before that number came out was flat bottom break at 78. Just look for a short back into the last two days support levels, support turning into resistance. So I don't know that I want to get away from that. However, the change I will make is to just not be sitting there on the offer at 9.30 when the market is this strong. So you can, like there's ways to adjust your plan. You could say, okay, I'm not going to make that short because the market turned. You could say I'm going to short a different level. Maybe I'm going to wait for an 80 or something like that. Or I can just adjust to, okay, well, when it gets to 78, let me assess it at that point and decide whether I want to trade it. Uh, instead of just sitting out there on the offer. Um, we talked about that square play there, but you know what's, what's a name that's sort of been going? I was just looking at Meta here. I was debating adding that, but it's just, it's so, so high up uh, Meta right now. C could be a fade. I just, this market is, wow. I mean, this is a one minute chart still going. PayPal's been really, really nice, honestly, off some of those bottoms. I mean, we did talk about some of these levels down here. Um, and yeah, you know, I don't know if we're going to get back into here. That's not a great move down three and a bit for Square. Obviously not affecting PayPal. So I still think that you're above the $62 mark if you ever get a chance to do that. I mean, there's been a lot of back... You, you can zoom back out. This stock has a long runway if it wants to get going back up to the upside. And it's just a matter of potentially waiting for their next earnings report. Because if you take out the 68 level, then you have a lot of support down here. And we, we, you know, we could then revisit some of this next level. So their, their earnings report, I feel like it's a little early because we start next week with all the banks. Um, April 30th, okay, so perfect, so this month. So the end of the month, you're gonna have a PayPal report come through, and if, if, if you continue with this trajectory, and again, shrugging off, we'll, we'll see if we can get back up to the upside here. Really nice month here from 58 up to 68 for PayPal, just trying to find a base. So I kinda like this name down here, 64, 62 bucks for PYPL if you're uh, dollar cost averaging long from like $300 or something, which I probably am. I, I definitely own this name, I don't. Not up at 300, but somewhere, somewhere in the middle, probably. <laughs> of the I two, have, I, I own. No, I have no idea. I, I own, own both block. of them. I own Block. Yeah, I own them all. I barely. I, I sold like 90 percent of it a while. I don't remember. I actually think I probably still have some shares left in it. Uh, you know what's? I was gonna say this. Like we basically just chewed through. Like we're chewing through support or resistance here. Support uh, that resistance level. So. Like everything you talk about, like sometimes you have to make the adjustment when you have those numbers. So suddenly like you're 100 points away from that next level resistance. I mean, Nvidia is about to break 905, and I'm just there's no chance I want to take a breakout at 855 on that stock. So there's some things that I put on the list, like that block, make the adjustment. I'm not taking a breakout trade at, at before nine o'clock on a setup. I was kind of thinking that like 905 would be an opening range trade on Nvidia and suddenly the market's adjusted so you've got to be able to adjust with it. Also going to be interesting, I'm going to watch some Dollarama today because... Yeah, Brendan uh, dropped that news. I want to look at Disney as well, just a few different names. Yeah, Dollarama's in Toronto. Do not have uh, Raheem, do we today? No, okay. okay. Oh yeah, well, uh, Dollarama's in Toronto but um, yeah, some good numbers from them and retail yeah. Have been, I was gonna I was gonna mention solid. because Raheem's mentioned some of the dollar stores before, yeah. um, and then store like Aritzia oh. and things like that. So yeah, the Canadian market uh, still blasting away. Canadian Tire, uh, various things like that. CTC, let me see, CTC.A, isn't it? Yeah, there it is, right here. Uh, One thirty-five. Let me just check this chart out here because uh, this was another name that that Raheem brought to our attention in and around. Those Christmas years. Oh man, that's Pat. I thought that was Randy there for a second. Oh damn. Um, yeah. So here we go. Yeah, look at Canadian Tire. Um, you know, huge move down in. Now trying to find a base down here at 136. I want to, 
You know what? I'm going to talk to Raheem about some of these, this retail space here in Canada because that's getting you know, pretty beat up to the downside here uh, as well. So yeah, Canadian Tyro. I thought it was doing better. Well, that's that. why I was looking at Do Dollarama is bouncing off $100 right now. It gets a pullback off the 100 level. So they d I mean some decent numbers, and it, was a, it broke out from 100 semi-recently. Now you got this like double bottom. So I have like eyeballs on this. And again, it trades in Toronto. I mean, depending on whether you have access to trade in that market. Here at Real Trading, we literally trade pretty much any equity market that does volume, right? So Toronto, it's seamless for us. It's basically the same thing. The only downside to, to the Toronto market, there's essentially, you can trade in the pre-market, but really nothing happens in the pre-market. So you never really get a sense until the open of what a stock is going to do. So you, know, you gotta wait till 9.30 to see how these things are gonna open up. I'm gonna. Buy, I have to buy this stock. Like, my. Um, I think my daughter. I don't know how much is it for a pair of socks. Like, I, I, she. She got these shorts that are like. Depends on the these thought. Aritzia ones. I know, but yeah. there's something, and they had the bubble jacket as well that was super hot. And apparently, she went into the change rooms there, and it was like, whoa. Oh. I, <laughs> you know what I mean, Ramin? Yeah, Ramin's laughing like. My wife's like, you should have seen Gia in these change rooms. She's like, oh my God. I'm like, God damn. And then she showed me the shorts and they're like, these, they're, it feels like they're literally Walmart shorts, but they're for some reason like $35 or something like that or more. Way more. Way $35 more than that. doesn't sound that bad. Really? Did you, I, have you seen what these shorts are? Third, yeah, but they're like little jogging. They're not even, they're I, like. I'm just saying. She's like, I want to wear shorts. And I was like, it's five degrees outside. Like, I, 35 doesn't sound that bad to me. Really? Okay. It really oh, 35 does. was for the socks. My bad. Oh, dude, like, yeah. Trust, that Thanks doesn't mean. That really ain't that bad. Okay, share size up. It's just uh, real. Right now. 30. Inflation's no, I mean, no joke. And no, it depends where you shop. I mean, you're paying ridiculous prices for things. But anyways, okay. Um, all right, anyways, let's, uh, we need Disney to go back to the upside. So let's see if that can happen. I like 118. Yeah, no red candles yet um, for the market. 5,300 just gets taken out on the um, S&P. Couple things uh, that really aren't benefiting from this yesterday. If you remember, Ulta Beauty fell off a cliff uh, yesterday after slashing their full year sales guidance. So ULTA not really doing a heck of a lot so far this morning. Uh, there was that note on Ford, a couple of people, that's the daily chart there, pretty ugly for ULTA, Ford as well. Uh, you'll mention briefly back to uh, 1390 here, a couple of people still mentioning this. Um, delaying some EV uh, build out, EV production build out for Ford and it's up. I mean, the market just hasn't stopped here yet. Yeah, it's interesting, too. The way Ford's putting it is they're retiming the release of these three EVs uh, to 2027. They've also, a couple other notes here from Ford, they're saying that there's some positive um, exp expansion progress at the Ohio Assembly plant going to be getting in the mid-decade. So it looks like it's a lot of more delays or retiming of things than actually some, some positive catalysts here. But they did announce some positive sales yesterday morning, so it could be continued move from that. Um, I was very, uh, very upset to uh, walk in this morning and not see Randy at his desk, but um, Randy, a big fan of Ford. Um, you were mentioning as well that um, the Oakville plant is going to get a makeover and, and made into more EV friendly as well. So uh, shout out to uh, Oakville, Ontario. Uh, both guys, um, Raheem and Michael Noss, tomorrow morning. That was the, you get like a routine going and... What day is it? We, today it's, today's is. Thursday. And the, we have a routine. Like, it's, Michael Noss is on Fridays, and you know, if, if Jeff Mendel comes on, he comes on Tuesday mornings, and Raheem or Luis is on Thursday. So we were going back and forth like, okay, we're just kind of, by, Raheem's going to come in. We're talking about Toronto stocks because that's what Raheem does. But um, look, Ford here, and we've been noting this for a couple of days now, like, it's just been pretty, like, it just keeps going higher. Now, I've said I want to sell the stock if it gets to 15, but... We haven't been trading it, and I feel like yesterday was probably the bigger missed opportunity. You can't really wind the clock because you look at that consolidation breakout, and, and that would have been the trade. That said, it's the kind of stock that does take the steps to the upside. Like, it'll go up and break, and there's your higher low, and the next day it holds a higher low. That's kind of nasty at the open, but for the most part, it ends up holding this, like, 13, 15 area, and then it does a similar thing here. So I don't wonder, yeah, the double top yesterday at about 1370. If there's a dip, that's the kind of trade you would look for on Ford, where it dips into 
say 70, you get like 71, 70s, you can maybe give it to the 60s, like risk like 10 cents on Ford, and then see if it can't go to 14. So that kind of a stair-step pattern tends to be a better way to play Ford. Because I probably, the thing about Ford is, unless it's a clean break level, just sort of buying tops and looking for it to trend when most of the time it's just going to move 25 cents is kind of pointless. But it's a great looking move for Ford, and it probably has a shot at that 15 soon, where I'll be a seller. Yeah, huge move up. Uh, also, GM really working out uh, from 40 bucks all the way to 46. I mean, what a what a month this has had. This has had uh, what a month. What a couple two weeks. Um, up 20 percent, um, 15 percent in two weeks uh, here for GM. Like this stock's not supposed to move like this, is it? Like that's a nice bottom there, like 27, 28 bucks. You sort of get that garbage out of here, but you couldn't have really been too confident in this name until at least you broke here 31, 32. And then it's been off to the races. I actually go the other way on this. I'm not going to get out. I, I own GM as well, but some of these have been like legacy plays. So I have to double check to see if they're even in or out of the money. I know Ford is, because we've been talking about buying Ford at six, at 11 and stuff like that. But for, for GM, I almost want to play it until it kind of comes back into here and maybe breaks back below 40 again. Let your winners ride. I really like GM, and I think you could do the same thing for Ford. I mean, you, you're, not, you're not in it just to get out of it, right? But again, it, it's scary because we've seen sort of these names kind of evaporate some of these losses. So I, again, I wonder about the position sizing. Time to double check it. Wouldn't blame anybody for lightening something up if you did get up here into $15 or $16. But let your winners go, man. I mean, it's the same kind of a move. Justin, basically in one week, you're up now almost, now nah, you're up 10% in one week. $12.50, right? Add, uh, sorry, add, you're adding only a buck to that. A buck 30 to $12.50. So you're getting close, man. 7, 8% in a week. I mean, I like Ford here and it's going higher. Don't sell your winners. All right, let's get into everything else we need to know here, heading towards the open on a Thursday morning if you haven't done so. Absolutely free resource for you. Uh, Watchlist.tradertv.live uh, will get you there. You just enter your email address, and then that shows up. We should update that graphic now that we have updated the, I just thought of that, uh, the layout of the um, watch list. How's everyone like that? Uh, new look. Same content, new look. Um, let's go. Uh, Google, top of the list this morning. This came out after the close yesterday. Financial Times with this report suggesting uh, Google may start, quote unquote, charging for AI search. If you scroll down on this note, however, uh, it says right here, uh, the um, people, quote unquote, familiar with the uh, story uh, noted that executives have not made a final decision on this hence the fade of the initial pop to the upside after the close yesterday. Yeah, there, this is a really interesting note as well. Google has also commented apparently to Reuters saying that they are not going to be getting rid of ads on their searches, but they didn't really address the core of the report, basically uh, saying that if, if this actually is true, if this is what Google is working on, this would be the first time that Google is actually charged for part of its core search feature. So, so pretty big news there. Also, the report suggests that there could be some bundling with some of Google's other paid premium services, so with AI assistance for Gmail or, or Google Docs. Uh, 175 billion in search, specifically search-related revenue in 2023, was more than 50% of uh, Google's revenue last year. Well, I mean, I think that's the problem when we talk about what this move means is that it's a, it's a change in what their business model currently is. And I just feel like that is going to obviously net net affect where their ratings come from, where people value their business. And now if you alter some of the search and it's 50% of your business, then yeah, you know, you're going to have to go through some of these lumps. And yesterday when we heard that, headline, it was kind of like, okay, that's great. Cause I'm like, okay, now they have an AI plan. And this is kind of what I wrote down here on the sticky note. And that was today and it's just out right now. And I put some charts in, go find this too. I, I made a little change today. I put some charts in the sticky note. Um, but anyways, I just said patience on this one. Cause I feel like 152 is a level that will hold. I like the fact that they have a plan now for the AI rollout. Um, so I, I kind of like that. We also tweeted out this morning, again, from our, from our watch list here, advanced AI search features, Gemini, uh, Gemini assistance for Gmail and Docs, paywall, you know, trying to battle with the competition. And then there's something about a crypto story with them as well today. But I, you know, 
I think that they can hold this 152. So that's what I'm gonna wait for, try to be patient. It was sort of this gapped up level right there. So let's just see, I, I think it's a good story. And actually, I wouldn't be surprised, and I also wrote down that in that event where Google just takes off off the open, which, I mean, hello, it has some catch up to do, I think there's a world where we break 155, and that was yesterday's close. So if we can break that, then I'm going hella long in and around that 155 area, but I would much, much prefer dip buys. So I don't have any bids out yet on anything, but I am very, very biased to the long side today. I don't have any short ideas on there. Uh, we flipped over our NVIDIA to a long. We'll talk about that when it comes through next. But I'm a buyer of Google, and I'm a buyer hopefully down into 152, 152, 50. So those are the levels I wrote down for a dip buy, but I am getting ready to get locked and loaded to smash that 155 long. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't really have much to add because like the first tweet I put out this morning was literally the same thing. It was a chart and Google and the news and 152 for a dip buy. It's just weird to me that it's this week into a strong market. I'm, I'm a little surprised by that. So you gotta play it by ear. I think if the market even semi-reverses, you're probably gonna get that fill. I'm not on the bid right now. And by the way, let's just, the only thing about, so Palantir is not on our, our list because of when this happened, but it just cracked 24. And it, this, when Palantir does this, there's usually a profit-taking moment at the open when it makes this kind of a pre-market move. And you've got to be a little bit just kind of ready for it because sometimes it gets, I don't know if there's one recently that I can point to, but either way, I just feel as if, it's starting to get too far to chase. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to be worried about 23.20 anymore. I can start to look at maybe 23.50s and 40s if it does make a pullback. But I'm going to be patient with this. I don't want to chase these tops uh, on Palantir. Clearly, crazy run ago. Three and a half million volume of five and a half percent now with that Oracle partnership. Uh, I was just noting the, um, I mean, the market doesn't care about this, but there was a note from Wells Fargo, uh, basically reads, U.S. inflation slowdown expected to be, quote unquote, more of a grind. Uh, March U.S. CPI data is likely to indicate that underlying progress remains uh, stubbornly slow. As that came out, market took out the highs, so uh, market doesn't care. But uh, let's talk about NVIDIA here. Uh, speaking of highs, back to it. 1.6% right now, nice bounce off uh, that 900 or trying to hold. Uh, back above 900 after dipping below it over the past uh, couple of days here. Um, yeah, new um, research, uh, R&D essentially, center going into uh, Indonesia, big spend for them. Yeah, and this has actually been confirmed by Indonesia's communications minister. So hearing from the source themselves, NVIDIA and one of the bigger telecommunications companies Story companies in the country working together to build this $200 million AI and data center in Indonesia in 2024. So pretty, pretty imminent story here coming again from the communications minister of the country. A uh, few days, 900 has really been the pivot if you zoom out on a uh, higher time frame. So we're trying to, as I mentioned, trying to hold uh, back above 900 once again for NVIDIA. Yeah, and I kind of alluded to this by saying I canceled. Well, not really canceled because I was, I actually didn't even have it in yet, but I was not going to take the 905 break at 8.55 in the morning with 35 minutes to the open and now 20 minutes to the open. Just not a trade that usually I would do. So here's your triple. It's not a traditional triple top, but you'll see what I'm getting at here. Uh, 905, 905, 900 has been a good level as well. I, the one trade I had in NVIDIA was a 900 short yesterday to 895. And so 905 looks like a decent breakout setup. You have higher lows going into it. Notwithstanding the drop that it had in the afternoon, you've been stair-stepping up. If it does fail nine, a 905 break, let's say right at the open you wick 905 and it comes back in, then that's, it, that's the kind of thing when NVIDIA fails a breakout, and this is a semi-fail break when it was 915, you would have won on that trade. But this is what I'm getting at. If it doesn't hold above that level during the opening hour, then it can pull back 20, $20 $25, no problem. So I think that's one thing you got to be aware of. If it breaks 905, never gets past a 10 or 15, and then at 10 o'clock or at like 10, 15, this stock is, is underneath 900, you could be looking at a day where it's at 880. But I am looking for the long through. It'll probably more along the lines of look for a long setup either at the 05 at open or a consolidation breakout trade at even dollar levels. 
the 900 dip is going to be in play, obviously, at least for the next like 15, 20 minutes or so at the open, if this is the range that we're going to hold. And one thing in the chips that is not going to change too much for me is only look short Intel uh, yesterday after their foundry disappointment, let's just call it that. I'm sure that's uh, reasonable. They're up today and bouncing off of almost the $40 level, but I'm just looking for a short back into previous support. So you had some support down here in front of the 41 level, 4080 into 41. The 4140 short is what we were in pretty much all day. We were short from the beginning of the day to the end of the day uh, in this one. And, and it's just been, it's been nasty, but it's been consistently weaker than the other chips. And that was certainly true yesterday when every other chip name was in the green, I believe, uh, with the exception of Intel. So if it gets back to where we're shorting it, and yesterday, then you know, I'll look to short again on Intel. But you know, that's more to do with Intel specifically, not the chip sector itself. Look, yesterday, man, props it up. We, we, we put some numbers on the board uh, here yesterday. Um, and this was because of NVIDIA. You know, Neil just talked about potentially a $25 move. I mean, we, th this yesterday, top to bottom, we had that top. And we're not shorting that top today. We're going to flip it over, but... You know, these are the kind of potentials that we talked about there. Thank you, Af African Crypto. Very nice. Uh, but nice move to the downside right there off these shorts. So, like I said, man, we're here to play this game again today. You got to go back to the well. If you're, if you're feeling some names, uh, right? Oh, this was last night, some chicken, and I carved it up. Got some nice fresh bread there. Um, and then uh, today, we flipped it completely on its head. We've talked about it right here. It's going to be NVIDIA, and it's going to be a long so any dip buys into 890-ish level there for NVIDIA, go over, find out why on my at Trader TV Live Twitter account. It's also on Instagram. But I, I just, you know, yesterday we were nailing this level over and over and over and over again um, as, if, as if, you know, we knew what we were doing. But today, let's see. I mean, we have these moves there yesterday. Every single time you stopped in and around this 890, you battled below there early. We came back in. We dip bought into that level and then took off and really just supported it all day. That requires a move down. So we'll, we'll trade it if that happens. I don't really want to trade it up here to the long side. I feel like it needs to break through a couple levels before I really, really get interested in this. Potentially a 9.10 there break before we start to look at it. This high right there is 9.12, 9.13. Remember when we were shorting against 9.15? So I like it. I like the story. I don't think the story is that huge about Indonesia, but you know, it's, it's more just if the market wants to buy NVIDIA, then there's no stopping it. We've got run over by AMD before, we've got run over by NVIDIA, but this name has been really a top name for me over the last couple of weeks. And I think we'll just continue to do what our gut tells us to do, and today it's a long. So I'm just going to try to play dip buys, and for right now, because it's safe and because we've started to write this before the market took off, and we were at 898. I thought we could at that point have dropped down into 890 pretty easily. I still think we can, but it's going to take the market to sell off pretty good. And I'm not sure we do that because if you're looking at a 30 minute chart here, I know it's 915, we're going to get on in time here. But that 18.6 is what needs to break, in my opinion, before we really, really get revved up. So that's only 50 handles away. So we could get a bounce up into this level, and then we can really start to see what that action is up top. So that's what I'm waiting for, or dip buys into 18,450, and that's 100 the other way. So we're closer to breakout longs than we are to dip buy longs right now. So let's wait to see what happens, but NVIDIA, I definitely love that trade, especially if we can get something in and around that 890. We had that uh, India story on uh, Tesla the other day, uh, just reading a note here saying the company has started producing right-hand drive cars at its plant in Germany for export to India later in the year. Um, again, they're two billion going into uh, India plant. We talked about the other day, but uh, Tesla up here nicely as well. One point one six, just tagged one seventy and a half. Um, not really doing much on that note, but um, interesting for uh, Tesla. Meta, on the other hand, one two three, 
days in a row here to the upside, uh, basically back to highs. There's a couple of analysts with uh, positive things to say today. Yeah, there's a staggeringly positive note here from Jeffries, increasing the price target from 550 to 585, which implies about a 15% upside from Meta's closing price yesterday, saying that they see Meta capturing 50% of incremental industry ad dollars in 2024. So it's pretty significant. It would also be an increase from the 33% that Meta captured in 2023. Uh, they all, a lot of just basically positive notes with regards to ad revenue and some reels related upside as well. So nice look here from Jefferies for META. A uh, bit of a pullback right now on the market after uh, straight March higher since that uh, jobless claims data at 8.30. Again, if you missed it, not really significant kind of uh, offset itself. I mean, import export data as well to the upside for the most part. Um, but the market just shrugging that off. Continuing, guys. Yeah, it's not. It's uh, maybe like a slowdown. Like the market's slowing down up top here, I, I think oh, is the way well to down maybe down call it. Level. But Meta, Meta's been, it's like this consolidation higher thing happening here where it's not really on the daily chart going parabolic, but like it'll have this like $30, $40 range, and then it'll sort of glide a little bit higher and then sort of do the same thing again, then 480 is the top, and so 40 is the bottom, and then 520 top. So you got this triple top coming in today, and you're already busting through it. Like when I sat down this morning, you, know, you were gapped up, and you know, Meta looked like a top break, and then all of a sudden, like a bunch of other things, like Palantir came into play, and you know, Nvidia already got to 905, and pull up a chart of like Micron and some of the other chip names, and it's insane. But Meta's starting to, this has pulled back $1.30 while the market's still at the highs. So I don't wonder if you're going to get some kind of an opportunity at a dip buy in Meta. And I had, I mean, I had 510 written down. Well, I mean, I had, I still have 510 written down. But this was, that was before the jobs numbers came out. And when the jobs numbers come out, like sometimes you have ideas for levels because it could go either way. Instead, we went up and that doesn't seem as likely. So I'm going to play it a little bit by ear because I don't necessarily want to be punching tops here when it's already made this move into the high. Like it almost, like up here, the breakout's almost like it's above 520. I'd love to be getting the dip back into this level at 510. So I'm going to stick to that plan on Meta and try, instead of trying to chase these highs. All right. Um, yeah, I was, I was not even... And I could talk about another name, but I, I don't really have Meta on my radar today. It, it's just, it's such a great stock. It's, it's taking out these highs. I just, I don't really want to buy stocks on upgrades or downgrades, really. Like, I know that's, like, the reason why I'm looking at Google is because there's, like, a change, a, sort of a catalyst into that name. And obviously, an upgrade and downgrade is a good catalyst. And this is starting to go. When they give reasons like ad spend change and percent, you know, growing to 50%, like from 30 to like there's there's big reasons here to buy meta and i really really like it it's just let's let's not buy it up here up one and a half almost two percent so i was going to say like one and a half times the market here almost double the market i i i'd rather wait for a pullback in meta but would definitely not surprise me if we march right into this 520 and then the high is what 523 or something let me see what it is uh exactly wow okay that was kind of a shot in the dark, but it's right there, 523.57, made right back here on the 7th or 8th of March. So yeah, taking out that today is definitely in question, I think. So if this market goes, Meta easily, like, boom. We're already up 3 or $4 just right now. So I would say a March into like 520 is, is possible right off the open. And we probably don't break that 524 or anything like that, but it seems like it's, it's trying to get back up there. So, yeah, Met, Met, Met is a long until we get into those low 520s, and then you can play off that 524 short. So I would say leave this one alone. If it really goes, then I, I'll, I'll short it into that 52-week high of 524. Uh, we got this uh, robot story on Apple late in the day yesterday. If you missed it, um, apparently engineers are looking at the idea, anyways, of a mobile, quote-unquote, mobile robot that can, quote-unquote, follow users around their homes. This is actually IRBT, and I bring that up just because it moved on this. Um, maybe on the, the possibility of Apple being interested in uh, iRobot, which is uh, Roomba's parent, but hey, we're right back to... 
Uh, basically where this thing has been trading over the past week or so, but huge move on uh, IRBT yesterday. Uh, that's a zoomed in version of that move. Again, really nothing happening here today. Um, but yeah, get ready for your uh, iRobot. Yeah, it's, it's certainly an interesting story. Apparently, the other robot Apple's working on, according to Bloomberg, is a tabletop device that has a robotic arm you can use to reposition a display. So a lot of really interesting potentials for these robots. We're talking about this off camera, about how these could really be used in a lot of different ways in the home space. And this is um, the end result of, it sounds like anyways, this is the end result of them scrapping their car program. So a lot of those people have been reassigned uh, apparently to the uh, now iRobot attempt, guys. It, it just makes sense to me. I mean, Apple, Apple makes fantastic devices. You know, in the, in the type of device, it's like the thing that you have around you that you need all the time, that is user friendly, makes a heck of a lot more sense for them to be doing this than a car. So I, I'll read it as good news, but it's really just up because, like right now, it's up because the market's up. It's up 0.6 into 0.9, and really the action when that news came out was, it was received negatively, fine. Uh, some of that might have had to do with the implication that people thought they might be buying iRobot, so that's why it was going down. But suddenly you just have a double bottom on Apple and really on the daily chart Apple has come right back into the monster support that it had in October lows and it is bouncing off it once again I know it's still downward trending but when you make lower highs you actually make lower highs right so at some point I gotta think there's going to be a day where you want to be long. I wish I could tell you it was yesterday. I was not. The 170 level when I sat down made a lot of logical sense. Like I look back at all the levels I wrote down and on Apple I wrote down 170, which I think seems pretty obvious why that would be a support level. If there is a monster move to the upside, yeah, if Apple goes too far, I'm fading it because you saw that. It's like Tesla. You saw that trend on the daily chart. It's down. So if you get past 172 and you're into this 73 area, that's, that's just a, that's a little bit too far for me, and I'd be looking for the short. But I think the 170 level, if we're going to be calm about things at the open, uh, that's where you want to look. But it's not even at the top of my list. I feel like Intel, NVIDIA, Palantir, uh, Boeing, I actually still think Boeing is a short back into 187 where it fell. Uh, those are going to be in play for me, maybe more so than Apple. And Apple is the kind of stock that it'll usually give you levels in the middle of the day. You don't have to rush into it uh, as well. Oh, I even forgot about that Boeing trade yesterday. Yeah, we took 350 on that Boeing. I'm not, I mean, my app will go, go to Trader TV Live, uh, find it. The watch list is there, all the news there. Neil just went over the levels. I'm already bidding 170 on the sticky note. You can go find out all the information there. I'm not going to waste more time, but 169, give me as many shares as possible uh, there at 169. Um, all right, so we had this whole short. Literally the whole short. We were, we were short when we were wrong. We were short, we were short, we were short, we were short, we were short. And then, yes, we were short. And we wound up covering down here the last piece of it into 184 and change. And we did pretty good because the different uh, tranches that we got out there um, were all the way here. We got some out there once we broke the bottom. Then we held for 185. Remember, we couldn't believe how low this name was going. And then we're like, oh my God, what's going to happen here into the close? Um, and then we wound up getting some out right at the close in, in and around that 185 again. I, I'm going to say it was somewhere right before this last little bump up before 350, but either way, 184, 185, giving us that $3 move. I like it. I'm actually, I didn't look at it. I'm surprised it's up today. So that's probably a really good look uh, there as well. So yeah, I mean, we'll wait for these imbalances to pop out right now um, and see if they, they move anything. But yeah, I, I'm agreeing with all that. Apple was short yesterday um, for me early and we lost. Remember, it got going there. Um, and then we took the L on that. It was the only losing stock we had yesterday. We talked about that. But then all of a sudden, it really got going. There's a sell imbalance on Apple. Okay, so we didn't get long down there yet. And um, I'm guessing that, let's just call it up so you guys can all see this live. Nicola with a big sell imbalance. Oh, yeah. Tilray with a buy imbalance. Palantir is probably... All right, well, it was breaking 24. It did break 24. Look at this pulling back. There are all Bs here today, but there's Apple with a slight little sell sending this name, Apple crumbling to the downside, 170.50, but give me some of that. Oh, um, McDonald's is doing a Apple Pie McFlurry. 
So mm. shout out to that. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that I, since Thanksgiving or something. But yeah, no. there it comes in. Nice move for Apple down into 170. Get, get me that long, baby. Yeah, I'm a, that, that's a pass for me. Not the, no, 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 not the, not the trade. I mean, if we, uh, dip by Apple, the stock makes some sense. But like Apple Pie McFlurry, I, I don't get that. But I, I did miss a trade this morning. Um, you well, thought apple pie and ice cream? What do you mean? It's like it's like pretty much an obvious combo. No, I'm not. But yeah, yeah. No, it's. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I like apple pie a la mode, but uh, as a McFlurry, I don't know if that would be my jam. Like to me, I like don't know either. to me, it's like a homemade apple pie that you know, I, that's more my thing, not the box one that they have there. But Nicola, you saw that imbalance. I completely forgot to pay for shorts and play the one dollar level this morning on Nicola. Nicola. Had him look at Nicholas when it goes 90, fails a dollar to a buck two, and already back down. Remember the last time it was here? There was up into the dollar level, and there was your fail. It just did exactly the same thing. So you want to, if you were paying attention to this stock, that just essentially gifted you uh, already like a 5% move. We only had to risk a couple of cents there. So you're going to have this one on the radar. I'll pay for locates and off chance that there's a secondary play here on uh, Nicola, but that's why you look at the imbalance locator, because it can give you some hints on things moving. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ramin's very excited about uh, the apple pie McFlurry uh, coming to McDonald's. Uh, it's not all positive today. Here's Square real quick. Uh, Morgan Stanley downgrading, uh, or block I should say, uh, to underweight going to 60 bucks here on block. So big gap down here for SQ today. Yeah. Yeah, two main cruxes to this downgrade. One of them has to do with basically perceived lack of growth or lack of potential growth in Cash App. The other aspect is Morgan Stanley saying that Gen Z's spending potential has pretty much been maxed out by competitors. So really interesting note here with this downgrade. Yeah, I didn't really look at it. I, I, I'm looking for longs today, but uh, Apple is coming in. So we, we'll look at that square in a minute. But Apple just touched down here. I'm, I'm at 170.10. Didn't fail, but I think you'll like it. Feel like it's going to, as some of these names are coming back in. Palantir pulled back up, but Apple with that sell imbalance is finding a low there, and then Google right here at 155 could come into play, maybe before 153. But yeah, that name pulled back. Palantir pulled back up uh, right now, so it did dip into that. I'm I'm waiting at 2350 as we discussed, but uh, for right now, Palantir trying to hold upside. The problem with a name like Palantir is, is that. They always make these moves in the pre-market and then they get faded out all the time because people don't believe in it and they get the 5% and they bank it. And so I could see some banking of Palantir happening today. So if this does dip down, let's be, try to be patient with it. I could see myself losing a decent amount here because I do want to be long into 23. I'm starting it at 23.50. So I didn't really look at Square. So um, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I, I, I said I'm... I like short back into previous support because one of my favorite setups is support turning into resistance and when the market came up on the number that I wouldn't sit on the offer. Like I'd still, I'd still look for the opportunity but not just stand in front of it when the number came, numbers move the market the other way. So you're already seeing it break higher, which is fine. I can now look at maybe the $80 level. I just want to play a resistance level for fade. It could end up being 79, could be 80, but I'm going to play it by ear. And you have to be able to do that, especially when there's numbers at 8.30, because when you sit down and you're making your plan, whether it's overnight or in the morning, something happens in the market and you go from a flat market to an up market of 1%, and if you still have the exact same plan with regards to shorts in that market, then you can run yourself into some trouble, at least with the execution part. You can still like the idea. You just might have to trade it at a different price level, which is what I'll do with Square. It is Thursday. Adara is on the bell. We're going to get this party started. We got some Fed speakers. We got Palantir running. Uh, NVIDIA is close to that 905 still. Could be that breakout trade. As we get to it in 5, 4, 3, 2, you know what to do. You know what to do. I like that one. Three, two, you know what to do. Um, all right, U.S. markets are now open. So let's find out what's going on right now. We're going to watch out for Palantir. We do have that dip by opportunity looking for that. Um, Google's starting to dance around a little bit. Apple, of course, says, yeah, thank you, Sean. But you're not getting long because you are not. Never. You are five cents too, too off on that. Uh, but here we go. This could, could come back in. A nice little move up to 170.80. Um, we'll see if it can take down that 171. But for right now, Apple's bouncing around a little bit. And then the name that I feel like we might 
might be able to get into is Google, but that's opened pretty flat again here. So, so far, kind of a nothing burger off the open. Some nice moves up. Now we're starting to come back in a little bit here. Oh. So this is when we could start to get some Google fills or oh. one of those. So I, I totally forgot about Dollarama. Opening print on Dollarama was a $1.50 winner if you took it, like instantly. Um, Toronto stocks don't trade in the pre-market, so sometimes if you like something too long and you're willing to take the opening print, like the reaction is just it's going to do what it wanted to do in the pre-market. Uh, so Nvidia is pulling right back into this 900 level. Apple's not at 700, uh, but Boeing just tagged in here. So the first thing will be Boeing tagging up to that 187 level. So remember, this thing got up to 188.25 and then did a dipsy do back down into 150. Sorry, 185. So if it can do that same move, that's what I will look for today. It's one of the few things I like short because it was really, really weak yesterday. Uh, the other one was Intel, and Intel, was the market pops, is still going down anyways. Like in a strong market, you can't even short the pops in this thing. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, all right, so we, we did have Google there. We're trying to get a little bit more. We're just flat on all these trades. We're long Google, we're long Apple, and we're not super patient right now. But we're just in basic positions, starter positions. Um, so we have Google right here. We wanted this down to 152. It was 70, it did go 60 cents in the money um, as we get it at 76. So we'll have to watch out for that. It ripped all the way up here to 27s or 30s about. So we, we stored, you know, stared that in the face and just kind of you know, laughed at it. So let's see if Google can get a little bit higher. That's what we're looking for for Google. Um, and then here's Apple. We just get that filled on there at 11s, but we did start it at 20s. So now we have an average price of 13. And let's see if that one wants to get back up to the upside. And then we have another position as well for all of you. Um, and uh, it's Palantir. We said that we could get a dip buy opportunity for this name. Um, and we did get that opportunity. So we did buy it. Um, so that's what we're doing, man. We got three longs, but the market is trying to figure itself out. Yeah. But Google's trying to go to the downside right now. So there's a couple Couple fills. It's still real super early, man. Um, but the market is trying to hold up. But some of these tech names definitely trying to drop back in. Palantir looks like a good one. There's a nice little take uh, up at 63. Let's see if we get going on PLTR, Google, and Apple all longs. Yeah, Google hit that 52. It's a, trying to get to 52 half right now. I'm going to take some at 52 a half because I want more at the even dollar level. I stepped up a little bit too far. Apple's working uh, as well. Oh, but shit. Uh, got a, this next pop to the upside, I'm going to oh, try man, and get dude. the Intel short because that's the only chance to be able to grab it. Apple's up at like 30s, so I'll take a first out in front of 50s on Apple. But I still want a few things short. Uh, it's going to be like Intel, like I said. If the market goes up, I want to be able to grab that. NVIDIA is still tracking toward that top break. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my stop order ready to go. I'm taking this top break. The order's going in for NVIDIA. Let's go to Adara. Nice look earlier here for this uh, TCBP announcing that they are having this uh, non-binding letter intending to acquire NK te platform technologies. They do have a float of about 3 million shares, guys. So much, man. This has been a money-making opportunity. Um, we are already half of what we were yesterday. Um, Apple already going to the upside. We are long at 170, uh, 10 right now. So we're taking some profits there. We are now 40 cents in the money on. I mean, Palantir. Come on, big patty ice. I hope you're on this one, baby. Uh, that was a nice dip by opportunity right into the levels that it was written on the sticky note there at 23.50. That's where we are long. And then, by the way, the one that's really singing for us, it's Google, baby. Uh, a nice little downside dip buys right into again those levels that we talked about. We're long at 152.50. It says 152.50 on here. So we're following our plan of action and doing exactly what we've done from day one. Uh, buy names that we like with Catalyst, give you guys reasons why we're doing it. Um, and then that's a three for three day to start with Apple trying to get going there. We're out of half of our Apple already. Um, we, you know, like I said, it's been obviously a monster day so far and it's only nine. 934. So patience does pay sometimes, but sometimes you want to get in there uh, if, if levels fill, right? And that's something that we've talked about over and over again. So let's just start to empty out the clip here a little bit as it's another banger day here to start, but let's not jinx this. Maybe we can hold on now. Maybe this party is just getting started. NASDAQ up 1%. Palantir trying to go, Apple, Google right now. There's the dollar club off of the sticky note. So make sure you go find that out um, immediately at Trader TV, Sean, at uh, Neil has uh, the morning note, and we also have the watch list out as well. So all of them absolutely banging. There it is, man. We're half of yesterday. It's 9.35. NVIDIA's through that 9.05, by the way. It got early broke. Uh, I did get that quick in and out sometimes. 
Throw that stop order in there, and if you oh. keystroke it, it goes out. But I'm just going to get right back into it, that 905. We got quarters on the way through. This is the kind of move. If it doesn't hold sixes, sevens, and make a move into 10, then it's technically a bit of a failed break on NVIDIA. Wow. So be careful for that one. Google's almost a buck in the money, but like to me, NVIDIA should be going a dollar easy. Boeing is working for the short side of the trade, so that one's still staying in the pocket. Uh, we totally forgot about Tesla... Um, is that's absolutely tanking, not tanking, uh, going in the other direction. 167 was like triple bottom support on Tesla. If there is a long, I would think it's got uh, to be there. So NVIDIA is the only new position for me. I didn't pick up uh, any pounds here. I had it a little bit closer to the even dollar level. And Intel still no fills. That stock, I'm on the offer, and it won't even get to the 70s. I'm going to move up, move down, sorry, just a little bit and try and get something in front of the 70 level and just give it to 75. So I'm just going to move the target uh, a little bit on Intel. It's one of the few names. This and Boeing are the names that I want short. All right, yeah. Um, hmm. All right, guys, I mean, Palantir, we, we just got some money here, 24 bucks. Like I said, Apple's really the... Apple, well, you know what, net, net. We'll talk about the nets of all of these, but Apple the, is going to be the number one uh, for me here today as it just continues to go higher and higher and higher. Um, wow, what a, what, what a day again. Uh, thank you, Adam. Thank you, everybody. What's up, Adara? Another positive note here on Apple actually coming from UBS saying that their analysis of Apple's App Store shows about 12% year-over-year increase in revenue for March. So another nice note here for AAPL as we try to take out the high of day here, guys. Which one? On Intel? Oh, NVIDIA. No, no, I'm not even in Intel. No, we're just oh. sort of talking about it. Like, so NVIDIA does not hold a 905. You would have had a profit take at 906 for some, but I didn't get it as I got out of that first trade in and out flat. I had to pay spread, so I'm out of NVIDIA. If it does not hold 905, remember what I said. NVIDIA failing a break, and you could have a huge down move, so it has to work right away. Google's up at the 10 oh. 154. So when you get up to here, this is a resistance level. It pulls back. I'm trailing uh, on this name at this price. So it can, on early morning moves, I'm always trailing it when it gets to that resistance and looking for the next trade. Just to check back in on Boeing, like it popped into the 87. It's holding up. It's up 1%, but it's starting to work back into the downside. So that's the only thing outside of Intel that I want to the south side here uh, is going to be Boeing. But I just got trailed on Google. I'll take the buck 25 on the early trade and then look for the dip buy uh, on Alphabet down here. So I want that 152. If we pull back in, I'll respect it. If we get a higher low at, say, like a 53 or 52 half, I'll respect that as well. Oh, guys. Um... It's just exactly what we talked about, man. Neil talks about this all the time. It's, you know, when you're right, you want to let them run. When you're wrong, you want to get the hell out. So we've, we just got, for some reason, just like what Neil mentioned there, we got a 153.70. Like, Google came right up into its pre-market highs. I mean, pre-market highs. It was higher. But, you know, in the last hour or so. So there's a nice move to the upside. We just cashed a little bit out on that one. And we're starting to, we're starting to feel it pretty, mu pretty much, man. We are getting out of our Palantir. That hit up there. We cashed out of that one. Like, this is like no stress uh, trading at all uh, right now, man. I mean, this is just, honestly, it's come in, do the work, and be confident. I mean, we have three names on here. Google Long, check, $1.30 in the money. Apple Long, check, 85 cents in the money. Palantir Long, check, 50 cents. Like, we're three for three, all on the ideas that we wanted to take. So, I mean, this is, this is, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put up numbers, you know, when this happens. So we're putting up numbers, and um, I hope you guys are just uh, enjoying the ride because it's been a fun one over these last couple of days. Um, I'm going to get another piece out on Apple, Apple all the way to 171. Uh, we could take another piece out right there. We just stopped around a little bit. The market is coming in a little bit here. Uh, let's, let me just punch out a little bit more of Apple there. We'll take a 79, um, and then if these, if these names want to fade out now, fine. We have, just to let you know, because then I'll pass it back over, we have about... 15% of Google, about 10% of Apple, and we still have about 25% of Palantir. So that's that, and uh, maybe we'll just get out of Palantir, not have to worry about it. Uh, but here it comes. This is fading back out a little bit, PLTR on this move down. Let's, take a, let's just take a piece out at 58 if we can. Uh, looks like this is going to be the loser here, Palantir. So just Maybe. So for the strategy that I like to always deploy, like 170, I'm just going to show you guys Apple, 170, into resistance, out, 
in the next resistance. It tried to break it out. It wicked it to 171. I trail out of the stock. And it's the same trade as Alphabet, uh, where you get the move, it goes into the resistance level, and then take it out. The only thing I'm... What's interesting is the market's pulling back, by the way, is Boeing just tagged back up to the 187. I want 185s, and that's probably being a little bit greedy. So I'm going to look for a play, another wick up into 187 half, and then back down to try to take a bit of a short trade. And I stepped my offer down on Intel and still haven't been picked up here. So I, I, I have yet to get into this stock to the south side. I'm going to try and get, like I said, I want a bit of a taste of this in front of the 75 level. So shorting it in the 60s isn't unreasonable. Uh, I'm going to start into it there. Just want to be very, very patient. I know I said I would stink bid Levi, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that because Levi is at $22. So Booyah. bidding 20s is probably not going to fill this open. Like. Let's go back to Adara at the desk. I like. Another news story here with regards to mega cap tech, this time Alphabet, G-O-O-G-L here on watch after Reuters reported that Alphabet is in talks with some of its advisors over a potential offer for HubSpot. So H-U-B-S up also here about 6% on pretty weak volume to keep an eye on H-U-B-S and Google heading into the rest of the day here, guys. And um, we'll tweet this all out afterwards, but I mean, Google, we just got another piece out right there. Yeah, there it is. Uh, there is the sticky note. And today, man, I was just talking about what was on here. We even put charts on here today as well for all of this, man. There's the Google long. There's the Apple long. There's the Palantir long. There's the NVIDIA long. There's the Disney long. So we're only in three of these. And it's three for three right now on those ideas. Uh, and yeah, we're pretty much at the highs of all of these plays. I mean, Apple, like I said, this is one of the ones that we have the least amount of shares in because we just got out Google at the high of the day for $1.40 off of the exact posted level there. Um, and you're going to break through 154 and see you later, alligator, on that one. We did get that 58 print there. We're getting lighter and lighter on Palantir. Um, and Apple might be the one that's the problem, but we're going to hold on to that so it does play some catch up. Let's go have a look at our other position that we also own. We own pretty much all the stocks, it seems like these days. Uh, Oracle, not moving too much. I wanted to check the heat on this one to see if there's anything going on with that Palantir deal, uh, partnership for the cloud and for AI use um, and exploration, I guess, in the, into the Oracle platforms. But we'll have to wait to see here what happens with that one. Still a nice move today, up just a little bit. The name that we never forget about, but that does... Meta is starting to go again. Meta is starting to go down now? or no, up, 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 up. Yeah, we love Meta. Uh, I want to look at this in the... Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know. I was sort of saying, like, that high is in jeopardy. And there's the short that we talked about at 523. Uh, you could have got 2 or $3. But again, standing in front of this does seem a little risky when we're hella long and cashing in. So we'll, we'll wait. But Meta is a decent, decent short up there, I think, actually. Yeah, I've, I'm looking at that one, and it's like, I do I want to be, like, of all the names, I want to be short meta. I'm going, like I said, the only things I wanted short at the open were going to be Intel and we're going to be BA. Oh, I should let you guys, Endeavor is, uh, it's a buyout. Endeavor is being bought. That was news yesterday. So I'm going to be in and out of that stock. You'll probably see it from time to time just flash in and out. I'm favoring longs in front of 26. But if you don't have direct market access, it's not necessarily the sexiest trade for most people. But you are going to see it there. So I don't want to completely ignore it. It shouldn't follow what the market does. Uh, so back over to Alphabet. So we jammed out of it on this little bit of a pullback, but I still want to respect the chance to get some higher lows in here. Whether you can get 52s, I'm not sure, but maybe the 153 on a little bit of a dip. If it can hold that higher low, I like it. If it can break out this flat top at 154, I think I'm going to take that too, crossing up to 20s if it does. Uh, Boeing is starting to work its way back into the downside. This time, I'll take some halfway at 186 and a half, see if we can't now press down into the 185 level. So it was a big flush yesterday, but let's respect the fact that Boeing's up to 1%. I didn't take profit off to the first fill, but I'm going to the second time. Just lay of the land, 85, this is like 87, and then where the news came out was at 88. So those are your key price levels on Boeing. Dell's parabolic again. Oh, wow, Dell. Dell is like... Yeah, Dell's on one. Uh, something new might be happening because that's a... I know the market's up, but wow, Dell. Okay. Okay, Dell. Dell is, uh, Dell is a big... It did this yesterday, but th not this fast. Yeah, yeah. Dell's, Dell's a big AI name. So, yeah, um, yeah let's, let's see how far that can go through. Um, again, you know, you know what's being hit down here, which I think would be a good opportunity to get long if you're not long Salesforce already, is Salesforce. 
Uh, if Google's going to step in and look at HubSpot, which is a direct competitor um, to CRM, very, very similar, um, that's getting hit down. So watch out for this. A little bit of a buy opportunity right there for HubSpot and CRM. So that's why that's fading down. Just a little bit. Bob Iger's talking right now, and we already, we already had that story, but here comes the move down for Disney back into 118 and change. I'm still watching everything. We did get out of some Palantir there again at 50. We now hold that 10% of Palantir. We, never, we don't want to, you know what? Forget it. It's fading out. We'll just get out. We got out there at 40. Palantir, a very, very positive stock for us today. We will ring that register on PLTR. Spin this one for you because the kind of day, like I mentioned, we're having uh, is a decent one right now. And I hope that you guys uh, have taken some of these trades or at least having some good ideas of your own. And let me know if there is anything you guys want to look at uh, there in the chat. Alibaba was a dip buy at 72 bucks. We talked about that the last couple days. And man, it, it hit yesterday, but that was the only day. And now we're up, up and away here on this name. So we'll have to watch out for uh, some movement on Alibaba Holy again. Tesla. But SoFi was yesterday. Uh, I'm just trying to figure like some second day plays here that potentially we don't want to ignore. But oh, I'm back in Apple. I guess that's VWAP. Yeah, yeah Apple. Uh, Apple. Just a Dip quick up. update yeah. here. Apple after the 70, it's now holding the higher low. This is kind of what I thought we would get in um, Google as well, but not really seeing that come in. So higher low there in Apple off the 170 and a half. Going to look for a play right back into the highs and then hold through a breakout. A little different here. This time we'll hold through a breakout. Just going to check back in on Alphabet. Yeah, so Alphabet no dip into 153 to be able to pick that up. But the market's starting to turn. I only have two names that I like short. I just, uh, I'm probably like you. Meta's at that 523, but yeah, you're in that position sometimes. You talk yourself out of a resistance level. Like it's one thing to short Intel and Boeing. It's another thing to want to short uh, Meta into a strong market. Uh, Dell. Like I said, a bit of a power move. Not the only thing that had a power move yesterday. The weed names were very much in play. I know we ignored them today. It looked like they were breaking down. Look at the reversal. CGC broke underneath $10 and is now trying to break back out. If it does this liquidity grab and holds a breakout of $10.70, I'd watch for the weed names as a bit of a secondary play. Uh, but the reload was only just on Apple. That's the only new position for me. As, like I said, Endeavor, I'll be in and out of that all day. All right, uh, I know you were just talking about Meta. I did, uh, I did take the short there. We'll put print 50 cents. So there it is right there. We'll put a 50 cent trade on the board and hold it. So we're short Meta right now at 52, 52, 522 fifties. Um, so that's 45. So we just took some out there. We took a third out only. Let's wait to see if it does want to come back in here. We talked about shorting this, so we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Good trade, 50 cents. I mean, a pullback into view up is 520 flat. I mean, yeah, if that happens, but we're gonna wait out. Okay, here we go. I mean, maybe we get that, right? 520, let's just put a bid down there and see if we can get it. Here we go. There it is, man, there we go. We talked about that. This is from my guy on the floor, man. Fortune favors the bold, and there it is right there. So nice little trade for us on Meta. Uh, let's just get out, there it is. Look, Pat. Hey man, there's a dollar fifty right there on Meta off. Yes, sir, a dollar fifty. Let's put this on the board for Unos Dos dollars right now on the board. Dollar in the money long Google. Two dollars and fifty cents on just a brand new trade for Meta, but it's not even that brand new. We talked about this in the pre-market when Meta was on the board. I said if this can come up into the mid five twenties, and I remember we even pulled this down. Look, I still have it up actually. So we've talked about this this five twenty three and change. So we talked about that as being the high and that we wanted to fade off that. So we'll take that, man. Now we are out of, well, we still have one piece of metal left, but good trade down to the downside. We'll get to Neil, but for right now, let's go over to Adara. Some of these Bitcoin miners on watch this morning, I just have Mara up here as an example, up about 3.5%. A lot of these miners today uh, releasing their Bitcoin-related holdings numbers, production numbers, and total cash holdings. So keep an eye on any of these miners today, guys. And we didn't even get to Bitcoin, which was breaking 67 uh, when we looked at the open. I don't know where it is right now. We're sitting in two shorts. Obviously, when the market pulls back, they're going to work. Uh, so we got that 70 wow. fill on Intel eventually right back into the 50 range. So we get half a point move on Intel, and the stock was down 7% yesterday. If the, if the market pulls back, this should go red. So want to make sure we're hanging on to a piece of it down into the 40-30 area. Boeing, about 70 cents in the money on Boeing on the short trade. I still think it's got some room to run the 185 level. Uh, Apple, as I said, was... It's, a, it's not a reload, it's a new position in Apple for me. Uh, buying the higher low. 
and working into the high of the day. If it breaks 171, I'm going to hold through 171. Alphabet is now starting a dip, but guess what didn't happen at VWAP? Apple bounced off of the level, off of support, giving you an entry point. Uh, Google has not done so, so it's actually screaming right back into the lows. If that happens, then we wait for 152. So we took the long, got out of it, we'll wait patiently for the reload opportunity. It's not looking nearly as strong uh, as it did a second ago. AMD, 180 already. Uh, good look. 179 I have for support on advanced micro devices. But uh, I'm going to put that one on the back burner. I like the two shorts that I'm in. Those are the ones I wanted to grab. So we'll hang on to those. Look for a couple of new ones in there, especially if we're going to get some, like if Dell continues to be, oh, never mind. I was about to say if Dell continues to press higher, uh, Dell's right back where it started. That was fast. All right, yeah, we got in and out of Google there because we are um, already, even though it's only 9.50, we are sort of in capital preservation mode right now. Um, so there it is. We did take another long there at VWAP, but once that broke, man, we got out at 153. So we'll take the out there. The last, I mean, it's, it's not a fail. We're, we're, we're up. We're up on a lot of names right now. Um, and it's funny because my number two name in the whole thing is Meta. And we were just talking about that name uh, up there, and we took it. We actually, it's too bad that we didn't take a little bit more, but still, man, good trade there. And if it falls back in, good, good for that. We also took out another piece on Apple there. I'm just in the middle of putting out the sticky note and just talking about some of those early plays that we had uh, all over here and just trying to show that if you do stick to you know, what you believe in, and then um, as we always say, as long as your biggest loser does not outnumber uh, P&L wise, which has been my problem for a minute, your biggest winners. Um, that's why we got out of that Google because I've so many times like bought these dips, bought these dips because we like the long, we like the long, we like the long. But once levels break, man, sometimes it's best just to get out, regroup and think of like what the next moment is, right? And that's why when I was like, okay, I'm really short, I'm really long everywhere. Let's see if we can find a trade here for Meta. Um, and we knew that it was at 11. I got to credit Neil because he was like, oh my God, Meta's up there. And I was like, what? Uh, all the way to the upside there for Meta. So that's another one. So it's, you know, Baba's what's going higher. Baba? Yeah, well, that's no surprise there. Well, I, Yellen's visiting. A shout out to Oleg in the chat. Yeah, Chinese man. ADRs are going Yellen visiting uh, China. Although it's pulling back right now. I was just had my eyeballs on that one. But uh, what was I going to say? It wasn't, it was Dell. Like that move in Dell. I'm going to get to the wheat stocks in a quick little second there. We're going to go to Adara as well. Um, I like CGC. It's holding that breakout consolidation. If Dell can hold on to like the 130 level on the way back, it's probably worth a speculative buy. But I like the weed names a bit better. Uh, let's go to Adara. Nice move. I prefer mass uh, with massive volume for Nikola. Uh, 40 million shares traded on this one so far today. Announced that they uh, did produce 43 hydrogen fuel cell electric trucks, and they wholesaled 40 of those in the first quarter. So market reacting positively to this news, guys. Um, hmm. I'm looking for some more opportunities here. I mean, Palantir is getting near that $23 mark that we did talk about liking for a minute. Um, it's just the market. It's actually the market's fine. It's kind of bouncing off view up there. This could be a good little pull here for Palantir down at these levels. Let's try to buy some 21s. We'll just punch in a little bit there. Um, and then we'll see about buying some sort of 23 and changes here. If we break below 23, I mean, do we really want to use that 23.80 as the stopping spot? I don't know. So we'll buy some 21s. We'll just scalp out a little piece there at 25, so why not? So we'll take a piece out there as we blast through 25, put some more on the board here. Um, but if it goes back to the upside, it's going to be a problem because here comes Meta. We want to get more short on Meta, but it's going to break this. This is why we talked about you know, getting in, getting out, and trying to do a little bit of a dance with this name. Oh, I thought it was at 523. Okay. Oh, it canceled when I got out. All right, so I just put another offer right here at 523 uh, for this bump up. We should have just had that short, actually, uh, but missed it. I thought we had the offer. So here it comes. Let's see where we get better. I'm at, okay, there we go. We got it. Um, against 524, man, if this market ra rallies, if... I mean, it is rallying right now, uh, Meta. So watch out for this. You guys know where the stop is, man. 50 cents away from here. Two, 523.50, we're out of Meta, guys. So watch out here. If it pulls back, great. But this name, as, as we've mentioned a couple times here today, very, very strong. So watch out for Meta, trying to do some dances down here in around five. There it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take it again. Uh, there it is. Some more plays down. We just get some out at 523 there for 30 cents. Um, and that's it. So now we'll just let this ride. I was a little nervous there. 
thinking that we could break 524. I still do think we do. But let's just get some out there for 25 cents. Like, honestly, I know that doesn't seem like that much, but hopefully we can pull back down. But it looks like here it goes. It's going to take that 524. Watch out. Speaking of that, just ask uh, what, I'm, what I'm risking to on that uh, CGC, and I'll get to why I'm trading CGC over ACB. Um, taking the 60s, like that dip in the consolidation into the support level. Generally 15 to 25 cents based on where the levels are. So if this is a level at 40, then I want to make sure I'm not paying more than 60s for an entry point, if that makes sense to everybody. And then why CGC over ACB? Because I went. this was a problem for me yesterday, uh, picking the wrong one. Because ACB today is weaker than CGC. So CGC is breaking and holding above the top, whereas ACB is not. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to take a shot at the long when these were pulling back in, I'll do it in the one that looks a little bit stronger at the moment. So that's the reasoning. I know yesterday it was the exact opposite and I didn't listen to that. This time I'm gonna try to do so. Oh, is it already just came out? So, uh, I have a bid now at Intel at previous close. That's at 10, that's at 40.35. But CGC, as you saw ACB pull back. What are you Why did I get triggered out of that? That didn't break 40s. <sighs> and sometimes it happens. I'll, I'll end up back in this at a better price, but it should not have come out unless I made a keystroke CGC. error on the stop because the stop was to be here, not there. So I essentially just made a flat trade and then got back in lower. But uh, when that happens, if you get into something accidentally, you should just get out. I have the personal opinion that if you get out of something accidentally and you have an opportunity to get back in within reason in the same pocket range, you should you want to be in the trade, just make it. So even if it loses, it's like, okay, so what? Like. Just because I happen to get out there, does I wanted to trade in there for long. And the market is really dipping. Oh. So now I am in and out. We'll lose about five cents instead of 15, but that's by pure fluke because I actually keystroked. I should have lost 15 to 20 cents. Uh, Boeing is now $1.50 in the money, and I'm on this yes. bid down here, 185. I want to short pops again back into VWAP if we can get them. I really only like two shorts, so that's the only things that we put on. And the rest, the longs work early, but it's actually been more of a short off these tops. Oh, I wish we had hunted for more things to the south side, but I didn't like too many other things. That said, Google's at 152 and bouncing. Yeah, man, it's really nice when we're both putting some numbers on the board right here. Nice short right there with Boeing. And what about Meta? What about us, says Meta? What about me, says Zuckerberg? Down you gotta, one. You gotta up the body count. Oh, I, on the shorts, Neil, man, the body because count on my this side, man. You is, always gotta keep the body count as high as possible. Amen. You like that, Ramin? She, Ramin loves that. Uh, look at this, man. Yeah, she's loving that. And if you're loving trades, how could you not love what we're putting on for a show for you guys here today again? Meta, $1.80 in the money. Again, on the short, as that starts to print for us and spin that back and forth and around and around and around and around and around. Uh, so that was a good one there for Palantir. We're buying some dips in that. We'll see if that works out. But it's Meta uh, that's getting put on the floor. I mean, let's see what happens. We've just taken some out. Now we're just like, okay, let's see what happens now with Meta. Cannot lose on this. We are playing with house money as per usual, it seems like these days. Um, let's go see what's happening with Disney. Oh, man, that's too bad. We are bidding 118.25. That got down there to 35, so we should have had a little look at that one. If Palantir goes, then we're really laughing. Um, and then Apple right now still that 70 cents in the money. So honestly, man, that's, that's all that I have. I don't, I don't have uh, too many Google exciting things hit again. other than five for five. Google just hit 52s again. Oh, that's my level two. All right. Uh, so yeah, Google just bounced off to 52. Uh, came right back in. It's holding uh, 153 in VWAP. So I just took some out at the 90 level, essentially just playing off the one level. But the problem here is that it's lower highs, right? So fail break of the top, and now you're getting lower highs. That could easily work into a flat bottom break. So be careful. I don't, in a situation like this, I don't necessarily love the third reload because if you're getting lower highs into that, that's a flat bottom break setup, which is not exactly bullish. It's literally the opposite of that. Uh, what is Apple doing? Apple is back into the high that he's, we'll hold on. We'll hold on to Apple through the high of the day break because the market's at the lows and Apple's at the highs. That's a good sign. So VWAP on Apple for re-entry looks like it made sense. And now we hold. Apple clearly stronger than Alphabet. I thought they'd both be strong. But uh, you get, look, for whatever, for whatever reason, they don't seem to love that news on Google as much as I would have thought. You've got to trade the action yeah. in front of you. It ultimately, it doesn't matter. If they like the Roomba more than they like Google making money off AI, then that's what the market's telling you. 
I don't have any bids for Meta, but we're now $3 in the money on Meta. Um, so that is really, really screaming, guys. Uh, Meta is Meta is like, honestly, it is really leveled up um, the net here for sure uh, for your boy. Look at Palantir too. Nice move for Palantir. Apparently it doesn't Meta because we got Adara over at the desk. Lots of interesting upside here in the market so far today. Here is the, uh, the SPY on the 15-minute candle continuing to push to the upside here. Lots of Fed speak, though, to keep an eye on today. We actually had Fed's Arker supposed to speak at 10, but has already started speaking, hearing some comments here. Fed's Arker saying that inflation is still too high, so potentially some hawkishness to keep an eye on after. Again, we had five Fed speakers yesterday, six today, so certainly going to be moving the market a bit. But generally, a lot of this positive reaction here in the market after that um, initial jobless claims number. Pretty positive look here so far. A couple other names to mention. Levi's uh, up, now falling back a bit, but still up about 17% after posting an earnings beat with uh, strong guidance. We also have Block SQ to the downside after a d downgrade from Morgan Stanley in the lower price target. And last but not least, Paramount on watch here, trying to curl up a little bit, but still down about 9% trading to the downside after news of a potential merger and some negative reports with regards to potential um, equity raises required for said merger to take place. So lots of names on watch here as we head into the rest of Thursday's session, guys. All right. Um, Levi's starting to pull back. I don't know if there, there might be something there. Uh, but what, like I said, watch out for Alphabet here. Uh, it's right back into that 152. So it got to VWAP. It could not break VWAP. It could not break 153. If it, can go, if it can consolidate enough, the futures are pretty much holding some higher lows, at least the ES. Yeah, the NASDAQ's holding 18.5. It's not all bad there, but the real, like Apple's clearly the better long at this point. So I think VWAP is going to make more sense. Uh, Boeing's still in pocket. Intel might be a decent reload. I just missed the bottom, but it might be a decent reload up here at that 40.75. Still looking pretty solid uh, to that downside. I know, I know we're kind of ignoring a few names, but you're going to yeah. focus on the things that you're in. Tesla's still holding green, but ever so barely. 168, bit of a double bottom. If the market rolls over, remember Tesla's been a short. I don't wonder if that's not a flat bottom break on Tesla. Like it could just be the other way uh, for them. Um, so Meta went $4 in the money. Thank you, uh, thank you to Adam Deleuze here. Um, that for, if you lose 520 on Meta, which we did, we went down to 519, where we bounced off the 50 period, so you gotta watch out for that. I don't know what else I can say other than to compliment you. Well, that's a nice compliment, so I'll take it. Uh, thank you, Adam, for that one. And, um, and then also thank you up here, where we were mentioning, someone said thank you so much for, here it is right here, Viraj Raj, thanks for the Apple trade, I needed this one. Um, so, so you know what, man, I mean, that's, just keep checking out for the sticky note. They're just levels that I'm looking at. I mean, whether or not how you trade around them is how you trade around them. Uh, the missed opportunity for me, of course, we've talked about NVIDIA possibly there. We've always looked at NVIDIA 905, 906, but I was bullish on that today, um, and it just fell in. So we're getting close, man. We talked about an 890 dip buy there for Meta at some point as well. So that could be something coming through for that. So, all right, um, let's go, I guess, back over to the desk to Adara. More news coming out here. Uh, we do have Alaska Airlines ALK saying that they were paid $160 million in uh, Q1 by Boeing in compensation for the 737 MAX 9 grounding. So not a lot of volume on this, but keep an eye on ALK up 4.5%, guys. Oh, Micron ain't so strong today. The chips are, the chips actually had a pretty decent day, but wow, it's looking the other way here. So I'm only short Intel, and I'm looking at what's happening over here in AMD. Sometimes you have to adjust to what the market is telling you, and if we do lose the bid, then AMD probably loses the bid, and I'm thinking it should be, a sh like back into 181 at least. Previous close, 180.77. So short the pop if we're going to play trend in the chip names and something other than Intel. Because Intel was a much better short yesterday. It's winning, but it's not as good as it was yesterday. Yesterday was like the easiest thing in the world. Today, it's more of an AMD Micron uh, flush. Uh, NVIDIA couldn't hold that 905 high. We'll watch out for Google. I've already said I'm not taking Google a third time off of this level, so I'm going to be patient with that. I have two shorts. I am looking for a third one if the market loses 18.5. I'm thinking it should be AMD here. All right, guys. Um... I'm just, 
like we're a dollar with Apple. I, I don't really think it's at any reload levels or anything like that right now. The market's not doing anything. We're three dollars in the money on Meta. We're flat on Google, but we're just we've just taken. I mean, we didn't get filled down there, so we didn't even notice it was down there. To be honest with you, we're at one fifty two flat. I didn't realize it even got that close. So I think we want to buy Google if it gets back in again down to that level. I'm just kind of waiting if this market fades because we've already put damage on Meta, but it's just a matter of uh, to the tune that well, it's P and L one is Apple, but. Um, you know, to the, to the tune that if this does break down here, then we could get an even further break. But I just don't know what this market has in store for itself today. So we're going to go over and look and just go over and see what the economic indicators look like here for today as far as Fed speak. So um, right now we have Fed's Harker at 10. So we're waiting for that. This is at Trader TV, Sean, plus our watch us at Trader TV.live. And then at 1215, we have Fed's Barkin, 1245 Goolsby, um, and then so on and so forth. So yeah, not much happening, man, until noon as far as Fed speak is concerned. So I feel like we're good, man. $3 here on Meta. I, I really want to see that break. And then let's go back over and maybe look at a DraftKings. As by the way, guys, Palantir, we're putting that on the floor as well because, um, you know, add to our stock body count. As here we go, man, Palantir, just another one. Today, I told you we'd be laying on the people on the floor. Apple today, positive right? Google, hella positive. Meta, hella positive. Palantir, you know, so it's just, it is what it is. You got you to gotta trade, trade your plan and plan your trade. We had 46 written yesterday for DraftKings. So this is kind of interesting, up 3% today. Again, yesterday we were net negative on the market and today we're positive. So despite being short meta, we, which we said we would do at this level, DraftKings was an interesting short here at 46. So let's sort of keep this on our radar and see if it prints. So we're going to wait to see DraftKings, see what happens up here, let it fall back in. If we can test VWAP and then get back up, then we'll probably look at a break of this level. But right now I'm not convinced one way or the other on DraftKings, but it is a hell of a move um, up that 3% for DK and G. This is starting to get me a little nervous as we keep on bouncing off view up here. Yeah, draft, uh, meta, meta could be a problem if this market goes up, guys, but we're getting out. Uh, for, so right now, this is, this is how we trade. We're $3 in the money, uh, and my stop is 44 cents away from where we are right now. So hopefully we do get a dip by. Uh, Palantir, we're getting some more out. Yeah, I, I feel like right now, if you're in, stu you're in stuff in the money, there's not much to do. 18.5 holds. And your shorts, maybe you want to trail them, but you got to be looking for reloads maybe on some long positions. And I'm, I'm leaning into, I know Apple's a better stock. There's no question about that. But if 18.5 holds, Google, let's see it bounce first. Like the last time on the open, I took it on the way down. Um, the second time through, I let it bounce and then took the long. So I'm going to look for the same thing. And then I want to be able to play Apple back in as well. Like that's the one thing... I always say at 10 o'clock or after 10 o'clock, you should always assess like what's working, what's not. Like yesterday, why it was like from start to finish solid was because you get away from the things that are trending up. Like if you want to go long, don't try not to be long the things that are trending down if you can avoid it. So Apple is still trending up. So I like, I like VWAP in here and I'll reload that one uh, if we hold. So I'm going to get the bids out in front of VWAP uh, on Apple. We like those higher lows. I still, a nines like AMD opinion. I, this lo looks like a short to me. It's at the support level at 179. Like I marked off support at 179 yesterday. Didn't really trade off of it too much. So I'm thinking if it's bouncing here and you like the short, you know, wait till it gets up in here to 180.50. You know, be patient in terms of looking for your level. So if I get that, then I'm going to go ahead and try to take it uh, on AMD. I do, I do favor the short uh, over there on AMD. Looks pretty good right now. Netflix, I see some people. Like, I don't want to rush trades at this time of day. Uh, Netflix, yeah, not seeing anything on Netflix. Dollar, almost a full dollar spread. Not the best day trading stock. Half a million in volume. This is much better for, like, swings. But I don't mind. Like, the level looks good. Like, above 35, that looks really, really good for a triple top breakout. But I want to see buyers above that price. Probably even better if it clears 40. I think it's better if it clears 40 on Netflix, let's be real. Uh, so I'm going to stay away from that one. Some people are saying you should be Tesla long. Generally favoring shorts in Tesla. That said, if it's going to hold a higher low and break it out, I generally want to play with the trend. 
Uh, it's not in my plan to trade Tesla today. We're going to stick to the plan. That's Apple, still like Google. Intel, I'm on the offer for reload. Oh, hold on. Let's go right there. Get back on the offer for a reload. But look at this. It's still putting in higher lows. I'm going to give this one multiple shots for the short trade because it was so weak yesterday. But if it takes out this 80, then I wait for it to get up into the 41, 25, 40, 40 range. I'm going to have to be very, very patient with Intel. Boeing's right in the pocket. It's about a buck 25 in the money. I don't see any reason to make a decision yet on Boeing in terms of adding to it on the short side. I know it's trending nicely down. I want the 85 out. But uh, in terms of shorting VWAP or adding into it, I think it's a little bit too early to call that. Uh, we have the top for now, so we'll look for our target. If we get it, uh, then we get it. Apparently, Coin's making some moves, so I want to get over to BTC if we can. At this point, I'll look at anything you guys want me to look at. I mean, iBit, why is that still Boeing? iBit is absolutely churning to the upside. So if you're long, congratulations, congratulations. on Bitcoin. No question about it. And I do feel like Coin was tracking towards a good... Oh, it is at 260. Okay. Okay, okay, Coinbase. Well, you've got Bitcoin going. You, uh, this failed my level at the open, so that would have been a short. But that now looks like a liquidity grab under. If Coinbase can get back up through 260, this actually piques my interest here. Uh, so let's see a break and hold at 260. If it consolidates in that range, I think that should be a long uh, for Coinbase. As long as Bitcoin doesn't make a nasty turnaround here. But I do want to do diligence because yesterday I did the same thing and went to CGC instead of ACB. So I'm going to at least look at Mara. Like what is Mara doing in this moment? Do I like a setup better in Mara as opposed to Coinbase? Like you can express trades anywhere else. Yeah, I think Coinbase looks a little bit stronger. So you want to make sure you do your diligence. Yesterday, if I'd simply flipped to, a, to a ACB, I would have had a better long. So in this particular case, Coinbase, Coinbase does look better. I mean, all right, let's put this earpiece back in. You guys see what just happened to Google? Oh, man, look, it's always nice when you go and you get a nice little fruit salad and you come back and then you see this. Today's fruit salad brought to you again by melon. I mean, we've got some, uh, you know, there's some honeydew or honey melon or oh, some cantaloupes up in here. That's tasty. Look at this. Dip by. We're really like, we're really having a nice day again here today, but it's because again, I feel like it's about picking the right names. Like, we've traded five names, we have five wins, and it's, it's about leveling up the shares on ideas that you like. So for Google, the number one trade idea on here and explained was to buy these dips long and potentially take the break long at 155. Like, that's how much we like this. So I thank everybody for like mentioning that this came back in into 152. I didn't realize that, so instead of waiting at 152, we'll wait at the bottom again. And when it comes through, you put on shares. And like I said, you feel pretty lucky when you come back. Your stop's already in. So we already had a break of 152 as our out. So when it comes back in and it gives you that one-to-one, -one, you just start to get out a little bit there. So that's what we're doing. Um, we got a little bit more than that because we got some out at 90s there, like as if it ripped all the way up to there. And then you come back as well, and you see that this is really starting to work. And that is, of course, our trade here with Meta, which is now almost $4 in the money, trying to break again through 320 and looking to go lower right now. So all is pretty well over here. We had a dollar long in Apple right now, and we have the bottom of the day for Apple, which is pretty, pretty good right there. And again, we, all we wrote down, can't be much easier than this, 170.50. Lucky enough to get where we did, uh, even lower than that at 170.11. So we're just sort of kicking the can down the road here, man. Um, holding on to the positions that we have, watching Google just spin the hell up again through 153 right now. Are you kidding me what kind of a day these days are uh, recently, man? We have, I'm not even looking at weed names, man. We talked about that yesterday. Maybe I'll go over and do that now because now uh, it's 1014. We're at the same net we were yesterday at the end of the day and it was a trophy day. So we're pretty happy with this. Let's see what happens here again today. Um, hitting levels, putting damage, and um, just really having a lot of fun and hopefully creating reasons for you guys to hit. Fabian, creating reasons for them to hit 
the like and subscribe. And maybe there's something uh, we would be able to put up there. There it is. Uh, don't forget to like and to subscribe and join us every single day. Um, and uh, you want me to show the like count? Okay, I don't have the YouTube up, so I'll get that up in a minute. Uh, it's... Oh, wait a minute, that's not right. You have to refresh. This does it all the time. I actually have it up, but you have to refresh the stream because it stalls um, the like count. And I don't know why that happens on YouTube. It's actually sitting at 862. Mine was stalled at 150. Um, I, I just got out of, you'll see I'm now out of Google. I just got out at VWAP. There was a point made on the chat just now on the daily chart. It looks like a troubling setup for the long. On the daily, yes, you have a wick top through 155 and a reversal candle through an all-time high. I don't necessarily question that. The only reason I'm getting out of the trade is it's, it seems weaker than everything else. I wanted to do what Apple did. Like, if it, if it can put in hold higher lows and break out tops, then I'm going to like the long better in Alphabet. So I've done it twice, but I'm going to be out of it through VWAP here. I think Apple's a little bit stronger, but you've got to just tr sort of trade whichever style you like. And when I see something which is... Right now, it's still a little bit trend down. I don't necessarily love it. I want to see another sign that it's going to show strength. And speaking of showing strength, I mean, Coinbase has yet to hold above 260. So it, it was at 260 when we talked about it. It has not held 260. Not really seeing anything unless it holds up here and breaks out the top. So we'll have to step back uh, from Coinbase, at least in the short term. I think there's going to be some opportunities there. Boeing's still going to hold in the pocket. I have no issues with that. I feel like that should be a short for its own reasons. The other afternoon short, which we have not talked about, or actually you did, but I didn't, uh, was Disney. Disney's tracking back to that 120 where things fell apart uh, late in the afternoon. So Disney all of a sudden looks much, much better than it did yesterday. So you've got a bit of a double bottom on Disney. Let's zoom it out a little bit further. There you go. So you have this bottom at 118 on Disney, which is held, and then you're tracking to break through support, now into resistance through the 120 level. So Disney is flipping things on the script. It's doing the opposite of Boeing uh, right now. And again, I don't really care about the Pelts uh, board battle, the result of which I'm not going to be able to explain whether it's good or bad for the stock. Right now, it looks like a flat top break if it takes out 120. That's all I'm concerned with. Hey guys, I know Danny see what's up. I know we did talk about uh, Disney down there at 118, and unfortunately, I just, I, I just, I like, I missed the bid. I mean, it's on here, Disney 118. We talked about why we liked it, but I missed it. I missed the bid down there, and that kind of sucks. So, yeah. Okay, so this just keeps on holding, man. Honestly, the kind of day that, that it is, we, I, I'm feeling like just putting this out. I mean, Meta's been a good run for us, and I don't know. I just, I, I'd hate to, it won't really affect the net today by any stretch of the imagination, whatever happens to this trade. I mean, it would affect it if it comes to the downside. That'd be nice if we would give back, like I said, a little bit of this. We'll give back probably like 10% or so if it does run the top um, of our net on Meta. But that is completely fine. We just did a, I would be, uh, where is it? Here it is right here. If you're wondering what's up with what we're doing here, so we're sponsored by our number one sponsor is Real Trading. And so the platform we use is P-Pro, uh, P-Pro 8, and it is um, unique and only able to be traded through Real Trading. So this is a platform built by traders for traders. Not only do we trade over 400 million shares a day with over $3 billion worth of trades at 50 plus markets and 2,900, 998 other traders than Neil and I, um, plus, Great training mode system, great everything. Get your opportunity to join today. Go to realtrading.com. Unfortunately, only available to everybody outside of the United States. So what a great opportunity that is. And I mean, and on that note, we always do talk about um, what's going on right around here. And I got to say a big shout out right now to the number two spot on the office. A big shout out to the Yanny Rammy right there behind us. This guy's putting up numbers and putting bodies on the floor as well. So shout out to Yannick uh, in behind us, therefore, for putting it up. So there it is, man. Um, join us as often as you can every single day and go check out Real Trading. Join a floor uh, like we have behind us and get on yourself onto that leaderboard. So Real Trading, go find that out, realtrading.com. Um, and then you'll be able to trade all these names. But, you know, again, start small. That's what the training mode is for. That's what everybody behind us uh, has done. And even if you've been here for 
however many years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, you trade to whatever size you want, these markets are crazy and that's the best part about real trading. You have the opportunity to trade your style and do what you want to and at the end of the day, as the NBA and as you know, sports work, ball don't lie, man. The best traders will make the most money and uh, if you want that opportunity, go visit Real Traders uh, right now. I am bidding, but besides that, just we're bidding 520 flat. So if we can get a dip down in, we almost got it, it just broke 521. Um, I'm just gonna take that out. And again, you know, independent decisions, I'm gonna take that out, see if we can put three bucks on there um, and just sort of chill out for a little bit, go for our walk, relax, watch NVIDIA, Aurora Cannabis, these cannabis names, Neil, I, I know you have Google up, but they, Aurora is going to, once again, whoopsies, that's uh, ACBA? Uh, the rip. Yeah, they're going ripping again. Uh, back up to the upside. So there goes ACB, man. I'm going to have to puff, puff, pass on these ones because i got to go check my account uh, at the end of this because I put some fun money away. You guys know this. We, we talked about that. We, got, we put a couple hundred bucks in Fisker and then the same in some of these weed names because of how low they were. I think it was CGC Fisker? was the big one for me. We bought some of this at like two bucks. You guys remember us ta talking about that. So this is going to be like 500%. So I feel that this is worth going back into the account and then good thing, I would be down 98% and now I'm probably only down like 92%. So um, we'll go back over and adjust our CGC plan of action. But this is one hell of a day. Like I said, um, good day for around here. Congratulations to Sir Yannick behind us. Are we going to a Darren now? Mm, yep. Nice move up here for the IWM that looks like we're curling down a little bit here in the Russell 2000. Uh, up about 1% though, so not at all a bad look here for the small cap ETF. A couple names to keep an eye on here. Alurion here, A-L-U-R, up about 80 plus percent uh, after getting a Positive analyst coverage here from Chardine Capital with a buy rating. Also announced that it's expanding its virtual care suite into the United States. So U.S. expansion, positive catalyst for ALUR. We also have here on watch TCBP. This is TC Biofarm announcing uh, that they're release a non-binding letter of intent to acquire NK platform technologies. So nice look for those two as we head into the rest of the day, guys. Speak. Oh, there we go. Uh, speaking of acquisitions, as I said, that EDR, there was a question about it, like what's the upside in it. It's, it is actually being bought for over $27, but it's not going there today. You know, essentially, it's trading between 16 and 20. So it's just going back and forth inside a tight range. That's why it's not that interesting. Like it's not going to parabolic move. It is going to trade in a tight range where I am favoring some longs, just getting in and out uh, from time to time. And that's an advantage. In real trading, you're going to have the opportunity to trade multiple different styles, uh, some which might not be as conducive to retail trading. We have limited numbers of executions, but I can take 100 trades on Endeavor today and try to, try to make a couple cents on each one. ACB now through that 12 cents. I don't know why Sundial is not going. But uh, apparently Sundial is the only one. Yesterday I joked around that even Sundial was up. Sundial's still red today. So it's looking like that's a bit of a dog. I'm going to finally get the bid on Intel, it looks like, near the lows. But I'm going to push it up in front of the 40s because it bounced off 40 the first time. So I didn't get the reload on Intel, but it is back at the low of the day. This was one of two names that I wanted short. So as usual, Intel is going to be a flush because that's what it seems like it does every uh, single day, at least since that foundry story. That looks oh. pretty nasty. What do I think about Mara? I, don't ha I didn't have an opinion on Mara oh. either way. I'm not really going to be trading. I don't think I'm trading Mara today. If I traded one, I think it would be Coinbase. Unless Mara gets out of this range. Like if Mara can break out through 230s or 2030, that would be a little bit more exciting for me. But after the way it rejected this level, it's hard to want to go long a stock like this. Look at, the, look at this chart and would you want to be caught long up here if there's no buyers above 2030? I'd rather see it uh, try to go and it just looks pretty nasty futures are through 18.5 so I feel like it's right to be holding on and taking some profits on those shorts uh, Google still at VWAP where I got out maybe it retracts back into 52 and we can make a third decision uh, down there in Alphabet and Apple Apple's not even at VWAP on this market pullback so with the, we're through 18.5 which means I don't want to sit on the bid for long because the market's not as strong but I still think I'd be looking dip buy on Apple We've gone long a 70s. We went long off VWAP. I don't see a reason not to look for the long off VWAP a third time 
uh, there on Apple. It's looking pretty nasty. So no need to be sitting on the bid. That's why we're in some shorts. Yeah. Um, what's up, Trey Only? What's up, Adam Deleuze? Um, I mean, here's Meta. Unfortunately, we did get out of it. It's just five bucks, but we did get out of it. Nice move there. You had high hopes for, yeah, high hopes for MU, yeah. Uh, okay, so today, man, Apple, long. Google, long. We just took it, oh, we just took another piece out on Google, by the way. Money, money, 90 cents. Money, 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 um, money, money. Meta is, uh, the only thing we wish we'd have done is hold on to more of this. But that's, if that's your biggest problem is like, I wish I either had more shares or held on, that's good because that means you're not getting taken out of your positions at least um, and you are, getting hit on the bid, which is nice. I'm glad, that, I'm glad I got hit on the bid. Uh, let's call it like that is. So that's- uh, Take profit to win. Yeah, exactly. There's one, there's two, there's three, and then Palantir, man. Actually, there's, can, I, can I tell a quick story? There was, yeah, there was a guy in, our, in my training group. Uh, I won't say his name. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but he used to, he'd be in position in winning. He'd get into a good position in the morning. He was really smart, great technical trader. And it would just start running for him in the money. And he'd get up and he'd take walks and all that kind of good stuff. You'd see him always around the coffee machine. You know, now you probably yep. know what I'm talking about. But it's not like he had profit takers out. And he actually wouldn't have stops out either. Well, yeah. And it would, so it would go all this way in the money. And then you're like two hours, three hours later, market starts coming back in. It's like the stock would go red. Like, what are you doing? I'm not going to say his name. And then he'd take a hit on this stock, which basically ran in the money for him the entirety of the morning. Because he was used to swing trading. Like he mm. swung trade his own account and was good at that. So when he was day trading, all of a sudden the concept of taking profit, that's just not how he worked. And so these winning decisions wouldn't actually pay him out. Right, yeah, and yeah. ultimately, he never had any success as a day trader, which was a shame because he was the first guy in the group to, take, to have big positions in the money. Like n Nobody did it faster than him. He just didn't take any profit ever. He didn't learn the second half of it. So... And again, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, he's a really great, really, really smart guy. He probably had a lot but of 98 percent of the traders that walk in these doors walk right. out. And the it's thing about it is, it's not for a lack of being able to find winners with him. He was the first one in the group to be able to find winners, no questions asked. And he was really good at it. He just didn't really take profit, and he didn't limit losses either. He would let a trade go from, like, if he was long Apple at 170, he was at 171, he'd let it break 169 by the end of the day and have never taken any profit, then just lose. Uh, overall, so again, like, just, you have to make, maybe trade your own style. Um, no, I did not going to say somebody's name. It's it, it ultimately doesn't matter. But I actually I actually don't remember who it is. You don't have to tell me who that is. But that was over 20 years ago, man. I mean, remember, I only hire smart traders. You know, we brought Neil on board here, uh, and uh, I'll no, put it. In it, the chat. it doesn't even. I'm matter. surprised you don't remember. It doesn't even. It, I'll get it in a second. All right, um, but you know what? It's all about longevity. You've seen a lot of traders come through and then gone uh, from here. So that's what it's about. It is about developing a strategy that winds up working for you. And um, you know, we, we, we do talk about that and we sort of do sometimes you know, joke about various things, but that's the one thing that is the truth is that you, know, you have to stay true to the strategies that um, you want to employ and then work around them. They, they will lose. The trading strategies will lose. And I, like I said, man, despite me just being on the show here, I'm always talking uh, to these guys behind and just having like little quick little moments and just talking about like, hey man, you know, it's gonna take you three, four, five, six months. And then at that point, if you haven't been able to figure it out at that point, you know, you gotta start to think about either changing up the strategies, you know, altering what you're doing, thinking about what kind of market you're in. Um, and then ultimately thinking about if this is for you, you know, and I just, at that point, you got you to gotta start leveling up, right, if you're going to be a trader. So um, that's what's really important. But, okay, uh, we are at day's high right now all over this damn place. So uh, for P&L-wise, the market did pull back down in, which all, all that happened to that was it just gave us more, better opportunities to go long. So we took advantage of all of those dip buys, like I said. And I am actually, I'm, again, we'll just, we, uh, like I said, I'll shout out the leaderboard because we've discussed that. Um, but for me... We're, we're higher than we were yesterday, right now, and it's 10.30. So we're pretty, we're pretty happy, 
with what we've been doing here. Um, things have been working out. So for me, just to go through my trading journey here, it would start to be like, now let's start to, you know, you take, you take it to one level, you gotta go to the next, you gotta go to the next, you gotta go to the next. Like, you make the NHL, you wanna make an all-star team. Then you make the all-star team, then you wanna make Team Canada. Then you make Team Canada, you wanna be Team Captain. You know, so you gotta figure out kind of what levels you're at, whether or not you're at uh, Junior A, whatever level you're at, and maybe for hockey, hopefully this makes sense to some people out there, you can relate it to all sports. So it's just about, it's, it's always about trying to get to that next level, but it's also about sometimes figuring out what's for lunch, and we actually have that menu right now. Uh, okay, so this is pretty interesting. Last night we did get rotisserie chicken. I cut that up. Go find it at Trader TV Sean. You can go find that out. But today's menu is, again, for me it'd be okay because we don't have it, but it is another chicken dinner winner uh, for those of you around here. We did have a great sausage opportunity a couple days ago that included crazy amounts of toppings. And today could be good, could be bad, we'll find out. I would like this a little more spicy than normal. So get ready, Adara, because today's is green curry coconut chicken. So I think that that has a good possibility of being a little bit spicy. I would get that spicy with Chinese style fried rice. So we're gonna go from a little bit of a Thai green curry to Chinese style fried rice over to Crypto with Adara. A lot of these miners worth uh, miners and other cryptocurrency related stocks to keep an eye on. I did mention a lot of these miners reporting some of their numbers, but Coinbase up on a couple of positive catalysts here. Obtaining registration as a restricted dealer in Canada. Brendan brought us this one earlier. And then also getting a price target increase from 200 to 276. So almost um, 30% there uh, increase here on this price target. Basically uh, saying that they see continued upside after the spot. Bitcoin ETF approval. So nice look up here for COIN. In terms of other crypto related things to keep an eye on here. Bitcoin continuing to advance here up into mid 67s here. So 67.5 right now up one and a third percent. We have Ethereum also here still holding on to that 33 level up 0.5 percent. BNB up about 5 percent here. USDC pretty much flat on the day. Ripple up about two and a third percent. And Cardano basically flat on the day here. And we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to checkout. Last time, so. uh, you, I'm out of Boeing here. We just had that whole rant about taking nice. stuff and trades. But then again, so I got out and I, I put this trail off. Obviously, you put an order out with intentions, right? So I put the trail out when the market was holding 18.5. And, and ultimately, if you look at the setup, it's like quad down holds this level of support, holds a higher low. So if it gets above the up, I'm thinking, okay, it could be a bit of a push back to the upside, even though the short's good up there. And at this point, I could easily jump back in the trade with the same stop level. And I'm actually talking to myself as to whether I want to do so. I'm thinking, I like the short still, but I bank the profit like a buck, just a slightly above a dollar. But remember, at this time of day, it's exactly when I don't want to be rushing in at bad prices. If it were to break and hold above VWAP, then I have to remember to myself, I like the short up here. So I need to see confirmation of weakness underneath VWAP to jump back into this position. Doesn't mean I won't do it, but I need to see some things that are a little bit more specific. So I am out of Boeing, and it might end up looking bad. You know, quite frankly, that's going to happen to you from time to time. It obviously, it's not flushing the way that it did yesterday when it was giving up candy. Um, like, like the short yesterday was a 50 cent risk to make like two, three dollars if you had it. But that was when news was hitting. You know, that's going to be a little bit different today. And speaking of news, Disney is still... <laughs> so I said, hey, Disney looks pretty good. It could be a flat top break on Disney like 20 minutes ago. Hopefully rip it. It looks exactly the same as it did 20 minutes ago. So I'm still waiting for this to do something. But it looks good. Like you have double bottom in here. You have a really tight flat top at about 119.80. If you can take out that top, maybe you can run, but the market's been falling, so that's probably the reason you're not getting this push to break it out here in Disney. I'd say that's disappointing because that's a great-looking setup on Disney here. It's just a matter of taking out the high, and you, you have to be patient. Like, I'm not going to sit in the trade that's not happening. I'm going to wait for the opportunity where it lies. Uh, Apple is pulling back. I do still think VWAP's going to be a play for Apple, but we're going to be a little bit. It's in the VWAP. 
the market's not holding 18.5. So rather than just anticipate and sit on the bid, when I bought view up the last time, it bounced, held, and then got in. So I will look for the same type of setup there. This is a three minute chart. So it was actually down here at VWAP and holding for a good five, six, seven, eight minutes. And then you could get that long and it bounced to the upside. So that's what I'm looking for in Apple. Don't have to take the reload if it doesn't hold. Uh, all right, here, just uh, working on some of this. It's only 10.30. You know what? Here. Um, Google's a dollar again in the money. Yeah, I did. I saw that. There was a four on four, five on five fight last night in the NHL. Rangers. What? Yeah, it was really That's crazy. Wild. Yeah, Rangers, Devils. They always do that, actually. Uh, I don't really watch a lot yeah, of non Leafs hockey, to be honest. Yeah, with. I don't really like fighting too much in hockey, but I was at that Rempe Reeves fight in Toronto. It was amazing. And he was fighting last night again. Uh, okay, so oh, that guy there goes Google again. Like, what a gift that was on that dip buy, honestly. We really like Google down here. I might just sit on hands, and so you guys want to do anything right now, we have 25 minutes to ask me whatever you want right now, because like we said, man, sometimes it's worth just chilling out until you do see something. I'm going to, I mean, we could talk about what I'm waiting for. I would like to see more dip buy opportunities in Palantir down there to 23. Why? Because we wrote down 23. And what's the low of the day? Like 2310? What is this? 2308, 2309. So we absolutely nailed that one. Like to get more down there. Why not? Um, so we're waiting for that one. Meta, unfortunately, we dumped it, but that's going to be PL number two here today. The first PL name is going to be actually it's Google. Now it's Google. So it's Google, Meta, Apple. Uh, so those have been good trades. Um, and then so we're going to wait for that one. Um, you know what? Let's just double check on with Alibaba. We could check our, I mean, I have trade ideas scanned. Neo's up. moving. Oops, that's now. Baba. Neo? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. I mean, I don't, whatever. I, I, uh, we haven't looked at that in a minute. But there's Alibaba. So, uh, you know, this could be something at 72.50 if you guys want to do that. Um, yeah, I'll look at Microsoft for you, Miguel. Let's look at Microsoft quickly. I haven't looked at this for a while, but like I said, we're on a pretty good streak here. So um, I'm trying to stick with some of the names that I really do like. Haven't looked at this in a minute. We, we, I, we know about the 420 level. That's come into play a couple times. Uh, right now, but Microsoft, what's the market doing? Pulling back. So the market's under VWAP right now, so I want to start to look short, which is why, you know, I'm talking about levels that are a little bit lower, which is why we, you know, we take out some Google here. We're still underneath. Let's see if this one wants to ride up. I feel like Apple's been kind of fool's gold sometimes with some of these moves. If Apple breaks uh, right here, we can get out 170, 70. Let's just get out of that and let's put an offer up here at 171. So if Apple gets back up to the upside, we'll take it out whatever on that one um you all right over there ramin is that ramin go get her some water fabian come on man uh okay okay you let me know ramin i'll, I'll go I'll stop the show um all right so if, if that breaks we'll get out of that otherwise we'll get something up here at 171 uh right there for apple and then that's about it so um yeah so far, so good, man. It's 1037. Those are some dip-by opportunities. We're going to see if we can get out of Apple right there. Palantir still 10 cents, but not doing much. Yeah. Trying to sleep. I know you've been looking at Intel. I mean, I'm trying to find... Intel's, it's, look, Intel, names. it's in the range. Like, basically, it's 4075 at the high and 40, 4040 at the bottom. And right. it's going back and forth. So if you're not yeah. shorting in the 70s and getting out 50s to 40s, there's not much else to do. I was, I was yeah. literally about to drink water as you were saying it. I heard Ramin coughing. I'm like, oh, I should, drink some, hydration nation I should drink some water too. Um, but one more trade. Uh, Nicola's back at that dollar doing the up and down dance. So I paid for locates yesterday. I paid for locates today uh, on the chance that it would do something like this. So it's up 11%. But the last time it failed the dollar level, you can see what happened. And the lower high off of that was right here at the buck. It got to 102 in turn the other day. Today it's got to 103. So I'll look to short off of 103. If 103 breaks... Hey, you know what? You get out. Right? Like just to the local high. The last couple of times it's dropped into the high 80s and 90s. So you have some room for it to go. And if you can risk two or three cents, then, you know, it's all about risk to reward. So, like, imagine it was a $10 stock. It's no different from, say, going short at, you know, say 10, 10 bucks and giving it 20, 30 cents. Right? In this case, you give it uh, two or three cents, depending on your liking. So I paid for locates here at Real Trading. We pay like one eighth of one cent per share on locates for Nikola. So it is very cheap for us uh, to go short this name. I was wrong getting out of Boeing. So 
At, least at the moment, I was wrong, I should say. That's the better way to frame it. At the moment, it was wrong because it ended up going back down, but then it put in another higher low and is breaking out. So I am not going to reload. I wanted to see it hold here and maybe put in lower highs. That hasn't happened, so I will wait patiently for the tops. I'll wait for tops to reshort Intel. I'll wait for tops to reshort Boeing. And Apple did bounce nicely off you. If I did get this, it held twice, so I got into the long again. I'll get some out on the way to the highs. Apple taking the stairs to the upside as we're going over to Sector Watch with Adara. Yeah. Green across the board here. Tech strong pretty much unanimously here in uh, electronic technology with the exception of AMD, a lot of these chip names bringing this group to the upside. Google and CRM, the two weak spots here in technology services, but other than that, again, really nice look. Finance uh, sector, similarly bullish looking here. Producer manufacturing, also very strong. Consumer durables, process industries, commercial services. Very few weak spots here across the board. Consumer non-durables, a little bit more of a mixed picture, but Pepsi pretty strong here in some of these other consumer names. Looking nice. We do have also consumer services, notably on watch. Paramount to the downside with regards to potential merger and merger conversations with Skydance. And also, Disney, keep an eye on here. We had Bob Iger speaking to CNBC earlier. Now, CNBC screen showing that Nelson Peltz is apparently moments away. So keep an eye on Disney with regards to these potential comments coming out here from Nelson Peltz and CNBC, guys. Yeah. So when we say be patient, like, like holy crap, I look back over at Coinbase, the Bitcoin's back up at 67.7. Like, look at Coin, it still won't break 260. Like, I want, like, I don't, I, I, I want to, it would be nice if it would go and break this out so we can look at a long trade above here. But you know what? The, the market's coming down and it's not breaking out. You don't have to rush into it. I want it above 260. It was only there in the pre-market. It's actually been rejecting it. If I was looking shorts on Coinbase, I'd probably be sitting in a 59.50 short, but I'm not. It's up 3%. I see BTC's not looking too bad. Uh, I have a Bitcoin chart up here. Here we go. Like, you're breaking out on BTC and tracking towards 68. But unless you get above 60, I just don't see the trade. We'll sit on our hands until that happens. And that's what you got to do sometimes. You got to be willing to be patient. Well, you should be patient and willing to take the trade after it sets up. If you're long at the bottom, great. Maybe you'd be considering taking profit. I don't want in the long until it's breaking out above the 260 level. So we'll stick to the reload in Apple. Keep scanning for names. Uh, some people were mentioning Neo was running with the Chinese ADRs. I will point out $4.80 on NEO. Here is a, it's about the 40 level in here, was support, it's turned into resistance. What do you think happened the second it got close to 480? It started going back into the downside. So NEO up 5%, I would favor buying dips if you could uh, into 480 as opposed to trying to get the long at four, you know, right in front of that resistance level. It is always tricky. So let's let Apple matriculate back into the upside, try to hold through a break of the high of the day. All we've been doing like, Apple is higher lows the whole way. Eventually, it's just going to take out the top and go as long as the market doesn't fall all over itself. Yeah, I just actually had the same opinion there. I canceled my Apple. I was going to wait. I was getting some out right here. I told you at the 50 period, at 90s, basically, and that I was like, you know what? what? Not a whole heck of a lot happening. Let's just wait around for it. If it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and we've already, we've already put that up. So I was debating reshorting Meta up there at 524, but I don't think we're going to. Um, we always talk about... Uh, NVIDIA, because whenever there's nothing to trade, you can always find something to trade. And NVIDIA's been a really good name to trade, especially once it gives levels. Another so my work yesterday was done more in the afternoon once we found out that we really liked that 903, 904 level that we had identified yesterday as a short area. So today I'm actually fine with that level again. I mean, despite the market making moves uh, kind of flat right now, but, but, but heading down, the trend is lower. So I'm now kind of flipping over here to think about shorting in and around these areas. So that's a, a temporary idea of mine. What's up, Adara? Keep an eye on this small cap. Uh, Penny stock actually moving around here. B-U-R-U, new Buru. At around 1020, they had a news halt and then announced that they have a $3 million capital infusion infusion from some strategic investors and also some new customer orders. So some positive capital-related news for B-U-R-U, guys. That's right. a new buru. That's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, that one. I'm, remember, I'm on the offer of Nikola. There is another name that I'm short, but we talked about AMD being weak. Uh, yeah, AMD. 
Remember we said, oh wow, short into VWAP? Oh wow. Well, about VWAP, that's just that's not happening right now on AMD. It's looking like, oh my goodness, look at the daily chart. Okay, sometimes it went in doubt, zoom out. Look at the daily chart and look at the 50 period moving average on the daily at 182 on AMD. That looks, ugh, this cannot hang on to the 50 period. Every time it tries to close above, it wicks back underneath. It, I know it's a consolidation as well. You could somehow frame that as positive, but given the trend is down, uh, I want to note the fact that that is a rejection. This move down is a rejection of the 50 period moving average on the daily. It makes me like the short back up top even more. Uh, it's a matter of whether I work it off of 180, which is ideal, or 179 and a half. So I'll split the difference and do both. Right? So if I'm not sure whether we short the pop into 179 and a half or 180, then I will short it into 179 and a half. And if that breaks, I'll get out and then I'll short it again at 180. So we'll look for two separate trades to join the trend in AMD to the downside. It's just a matter of getting picked up. So Apple still looking good. Nikola has not filled. Let's just, why am I not into Nikola yet? Offered like twice. Okay, yeah, it just didn't get filled on. That's all. Nikola did this up down at a dollar, and I got on the offer when it broke down underneath a dollar. I just didn't get filled. I'll stick around at 99 and a half uh, and see if we get picked up there. I'm just running through. So here, like, um, so here's this, like a little scan that we got. Uh, hit up trade ideas, by the way. Just hit that QR code there, right on the right. Get your 20. Actually, it's 25%, I believe, right now. Or is that over? That might have been an Easter... We'll go find it, but anyways. I, I think, I, I don't, you know what you can always I, I thought it was do? a holiday. Here, here's a little tip for everybody. Just put in Trader TV 25. You know, if it gives you 25%, there's oh, no downside. You know. It can't hurt. Anyways, guaranteed, Shoot, 20, <laughs> guaranteed 20%. Yeah. Actually, it, All right. if you think about it, it's actually it's a no brainer. Like, why, why wouldn't not just you put, just put 40? And then if it doesn't work, you put 35. And if it doesn't work, anyways, you put 30. We, we, we do the best. We, because we, then if we accidentally leave it at the reason, too long at 25, then you get the better thing. Yeah, the reason why is that we've pretty much, we've told Trade Ideas that we want to have the best promotion on the board, period. So uh, if you do find a better one, let us know. Hold on a second. Darwin, no Darwin. Darwin's like Trader TV, I'll just put in tra Trader TV 100. Yeah, you could do that. It's I mean, you can, you it's just that you, I mean, it's not going to be 100 off. But we will, we'll, we'll get you guys, like I said, we'll keep getting updated, but definitely grab that, it's a great platform. And the idea behind this talk was that I have a VWAP scanner here, so let me see, this is built by uh, Michael Noss as per my request. Um, so here we go. So there it is, it's a down... It's a downside move into VWAP, so there it is. There's VWAP, here's a downside move into VWAP for Amazon. So if we were looking for trades to, you know, off, off of these levels, great. So I'm actually looking for maybe stocks that have been down, <coughs> excuse me, ooh, that are coming up to VWAP right now. So uh, this could be one, but it's right there. It's kind of in the middle, not super exciting. Just going over some things that I'm looking at, right? Uh, just, for, just for everybody there. Uh, that's what's happening right there. Another scan that's coming up, Amazon, Amazon. Shopify could be a name that I like to look at. So let's look at Shopify quickly here. There's some news popping in, in my ear about Disney. We'll have a look at that as well. Okay, see, so this is a good call. So Shopify right in and around here, 716, 776, 7, Disney's is now up almost a dollar right now, Has starting to go. 20, 20 though. Just hold on. Uh, Bob Iger still, I think he's talking nice a little bit now about pelts, so we'll see what winds up happening. This is just coming in my ear. So what I have is the Benzinga news feed. Um, so here it is right here. So as of 1047, so this is what's in my ear. Uh, Nelson Pelt says he hopes Disney's Iger can keep his promises. Um, if they do it, they won't hear from me again. And then apparently, um, I guess Bob Iger has acknowledged that some of the ideas uh, for the turnaround and just for uh, increased profitability uh, is something that Disney's been looking at. So okay. obviously, yeah, this is just, again, uh, you know, check your own news sources and all that, but it's a CNBC interview happening as we speak. Nelson Peltz is on as we speak. So there he is. You can see him over my uh, corner there. So be very careful with all this, but it seems like it's positive talk. We wrote down here on the sticky note, and again, this is why we say these are areas of interest. Right? We're not always going to be able to nail the exact levels, although we did give some charts here today. But we just said, why not look at Disney right here at 118? Support potential after the board vote. Let's see if it can hold down here. We wrote it right there, Disney. We like the long today. There's no doubt about that. Um, the only short we had on today was Meta. We went the whole week short. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, only shorts. Thursday, only longs, despite Meta, which 
I guess I shouldn't say only longs. We only have five positions, four of them long, one of them short. And this Disney was a long at 118. So I'll say that we nailed that, but we didn't nail the price. So it did come back down a little bit there for Disney. Uh, Should have maybe had 118.50. So again, it's kind of tricky now because as you know, Neil, it's 1050 and um, you know, the market will hold 18.5 currently. Yeah. So that's what you're going to look at. You're going to look at like market moves now because if this market just stays still for a minute, which it could do, then you're going to wait for like moves up to here for tops to maybe fade and then potentially moves back in almost into the open here for longs. So there's going to be some good opportunities, but I feel like Patience is going to be key here uh, as we head to the midday. Yeah, apparently 120 just can't break. The funny thing about that move on Disney, you just saw the wick on Sean's chart, is I have a stop order for 120 to break. And when you said there's news on Disney, I kind of anticipated, I'm like, oh, I'm about to get long. But it, it stalled at exactly a, a $120 even. So there was no break at the even dollar level on Disney. Apple's starting to head back to the upside. So it just tagged 170, I mean, not 171, but 170.95 and is gonna to continue to break back to the high of the day. I feel like Apple, if a stock is giving you higher lows like this in the trend, you kinda of wanna just stay with it. So it holds the first support level, then it's, now it's just riding VWAP. So I don't think there's much of a, like, it seems to me like just hold, buy into VWAP and then hold for it to make a new high and then sort of rinse and repeat that. And the longer it wants to do it, the better. I was uh, railing on, I didn't really rail on, I was like, ah, it looked like I got out of Boeing and it was a bad entry, bad exit because it was a wick top, but Boeing's trending higher. So I will wait back for the high of the day uh, on Boeing. We want to be short back in off of these levels in Boeing. So it ends up being the right call. At the moment, it didn't look like it was a good trail out, but now it looks a little bit better. Doesn't really matter. Have to wait for these tops to get back in. Let's have a look, see what's going on in the world of the US dollar uh, with money talks and Adara. EXY making its third red candle on the daily chart in a row. Here we are continuing to reject off that 105.10 level on the day here for the DXY. We've got a slew of economic data this morning, so let's go over that quickly. Exports and imports both coming in higher than expected. Exports, $263 billion versus uh, $257.2 billion prior, so higher than the previous. Imports also higher than the previous number. Just shy of 332 billion versus at 324.6 billion prior. Jobless claims, here's the big one. Initial jobless claims, 221,000 versus 213,000 estimated, so higher than the expected here. Continuing jobless claims lower, uh, the revised number lower than the previous revised. So we had 100, uh, I guess one. 0.791 million uh, versus the prior number of 1.8 million revised. So a bit of a, a move down here for the, the jobless claims. We have a slew of Fed speakers coming later today. Uh, Fed's Barkin, Goolsby, and Nestor all this afternoon. Uh, same with Kashkari. Then we have um, in the evening Muslim and Kugler speaking. So keep an eye on those num those uh, speeches tomorrow, though we have more economic data. Uh, we have the non-farm payrolls number going to be very important to keep an eye out for 8.30 tomorrow. Then at 3 p.m. we have consumer credit. So lots of stuff going on here that could be impacting the USD. I'm asking myself if I should short Micron into VWAP instead of AMD because, to be honest, AMD just made a fresh low. So we keep missing the short in AMD. And I said, like, oh, I'll split the difference and try to short it midway. If it's not going to get to VWAP, well, guess what? The next thing it does is just continue to tank lower. And when this is happening, basically all you can do is, the second it starts to bounce, just immediately look for the consolidation and get into the short. Like that's, that was your, I mean, this is your chance. 180 break and then hold underneath was your chance. Be aggressive at the 179. But I just looked on over at Micron. And shed, look, Micron's been an absolute monster. Get that out of the way. But it just rejected 130. So when I see this, here's your support at 126. If it can't get back to the 128 level, which is where it closed, you know, it closed at 128, essentially failed to break out 130. If it holds under 128, that sets up, sets up like a head and shoulders if you're into that sort of thing. And uh, that also happens to be VWAP. So you got the previous close, you got the morning range top, and you got VWAP all at 128. So that's the kind of trade I like for the middle of the day. Like you short 128, you give it to 128 half, risk 50 cents, lower the days at 126, uh, bingo, bango, bongo. That's a, it's a setup that we would have liked to have had on AMD, but we're going to have to take it on Micron. 
What's up, Vin? I like those, uh, I like those rocket chips. No, I was just saying, man, thank you to everybody, and we'll see you guys again at 2 o'clock. But we still have the midday show. Uh, so right after this, we got a dare. They're talking all about different times of day for trade. We got a dare and an OB coming through in just a couple minutes to take you through the next couple hours. You can ask questions in the chat there. The stream will roll over. So by the way, you can follow us. Are we on live TikTok, right? Are we live TikTok? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I always have to make sure that we're not booted off, you know? Uh, live on TikTok, live on Instagram, live on, um, oh, there they are, Twitch. That second guy over is Twitch, right? Is that what that is? Yeah. Right, okay, good. There, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, everything. Uh, but we don't have X on. Do we have X on there? No, I thought we're we not on. I thought we were streaming. No, on we X. did, then we stopped. Oh, we did, and then we stopped. Okay. Um, all right, and then, uh, so go find us. Whatever your platform is, go over there and find out what good on that. But remember, uh, you don't have to go anywhere, though. No, 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 stay here. But I mean, if you, we actually did, find, we actually have a mobile version as well, the portrait view. So you guys can go find that if you're traveling. Although, you know, some people like to put the, I don't know if you're, are you allowed to put on, I guess you are, right? People put on movies when they're driving and stuff. I, I mean, as long as it's you're. It's going to be hard to trade while you're driving, but. If you have the. Up uh, to you. Why, um, why, why am I struggling for the war? It's uh, the holder. You can, yeah, you put yes, your phone yes, holder. Yes, you yes, yes. Have, we don't want people like looking and then. Yeah, I don't want you holding your phone. Uh, you, you can guys have it up. up. That's why you should be buying, honestly, full self drive. And we'll go to Tesla in a minute. Uh, just look at this. We just had right there a bump up all the way back to view up for Palantir. So Palantir is going to be another top stock for us. Well, we, we're green on everything, but this is going to be actually. Okay, let me slow this down. This is my least green stock today, but still a good one um, as well. We'll end the day here five for five, but I, I do want to say that I do have a piece out now, or the rest out at VWAP if it goes in, because again, Palantir has been wrong. And we said that whenever they get some deals, it always seems to get faded because it's one. just not trusted. And I have to learn that because I, I know that. So Tesla right there today is flying apparently. This has been a hell of a short for me for a very, very long time uh, on this show, as many of you will know. And today it's not, didn't even make my, didn't even, you know, the, failed the sniff test, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just, I didn't like it today. Uh, but that was wrong. I mean, right into yesterday's close, into the open. I wish we were looking for logs on Tesla. There's always catalysts. It always makes our watch list. I, didn't, I, don't, I can't remember if it was on there today, to be honest with you. Let me just look here. Don't there's, think so. Yeah, so that's, so Alphabet, NVIDIA, Meta, Apple, Levi's, Block. No, so again, fell back in and then just got bought off that 168. And I can look at yesterday's uh, sticky note because I have it right here. You can't see it, but it says Tesla short 168. So we nailed that yesterday. This is yesterday's sticky note written, written yesterday morning, guys, uh, on Tesla, right? Here's 168 yesterday. So those were fine, but the problem is we left it alone and should have looked at that level today. So that's, that's a good little level there, but now you're all the way to 171. If the market really comes back in, based on what I'm seeing here, Tesla back to this 200 period of 170, wow. We'll take that. We can get Tesla along 170, I like it. That looks good, man. That's the 50 period, that's the 200 period, that's VWAP. Tesla back into here. As Neil was giving you some trade ideas for the afternoon, this is yet again just another one. I like this Tesla trade back to 170, and then I almost did this, but I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna call the wife, go for a little bit of a walk, see what's good. But Boeing just took out the high. Like I was debating going long, breaking this out. Like I wrong. Yesterday was oh he yesterday it was honestly a face slapper. The way that one moved. Boeing yesterday, like I did not expect. We were out of the money, out of the money, out of the money. Then thank you. But they've come back and believed this name pretty hard today. Um, all the way back basically to those levels. So you can either go short here, or I was debating looking at a break long, but it is now fading. So um, maybe that was a top level. So I was going to go the other way with it, but Boeing right now does hit those levels at 187.50. I was debating going long. Kind of glad we didn't there, but Boeing should be on everyone's radar as well. I would have been, if, if not for a certain rule, I probably would have had the same short as before, but the rule would be if it's making higher lows, like if it's doing this, hold on a second. We got like two minutes to go so I can kind of run through this. If it's making higher lows and it's just a dirty chart, then I want to be sure if the resistance is up here, then the next spike up, I'm letting it break this top and doing the same thing. Like it's not, it's not a science when it makes that move into the void, how you're going to be able to short it. So I'd like to, if you're going to short it, you're shorting it into this range, closer to 88s and 88 quarters than 87 and 87 halves. 
because it's trending to the upside. So if I think there's going to be a chance, that's what I want to do uh, over there on uh, Boeing. You can be patient. We only got a minute to go. Mike, oh, yeah, I got filled in Micron. Well, I said I was going to short Micron. Uh, back into 128. So I got 127 and a half on Micron. Let us know what you guys are doing. Uh, Mark Heffner's like, is Lulu along at these levels? Sometimes I love to be like, I don't know. Like if it was, sometimes like, I think on Costco one time I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, it's along in the long term because you're going to hold it forever. Uh, but you're probably asking about what is Lulu doing right now. And if you haven't looked at a stock, okay, so they get, you know, I haven't looked at Lulu. I don't particularly know why it's down 2% today. Um, but I, like, I do know it's been struggling. Again, if this is just a continuation of the trend or if there's actually something going on, that I'm not going to be able to speak to. I can pull it up on Benzing in a second. What I would tell you is if you zoom way out on Lulu, if you like a stock like Lululemon and you go all the way back and see something at like the 350 level like here, well, then if you don't like 150 or 350 as a support, then I don't think you like support levels. So why it's down a little bit further, it looks to me like it's going to about $15 down to a, a major support level on Lululemon. That's all I'll be able to tell you. I have no idea why it's down 2%, but it's trending, and that actually looks pretty interesting to me. I'm going to do some work on Lululemon. But for now, we got to send you guys, learn to trade the different segments of the day. you got Adobe. Uh, bringing it to you, that's Adara and Adobe. <laughs> Locked and loaded. We haven't even looked uh, at Adobe yet. I know, we didn't look at that either. Ciao. Yes, it is. It's yo, Adobe. Yo, it's Adara. And this is Obi. And we are yeah. back with you on how to trade. We're going to wait for some people to kind of roll into the chat here. We already have Darwin and Bears vs. Hey, Bulls. Yo. Thank you, Bears vs. Bulls. Um, hello, Darwin. Hi, everybody. We're going to wait for everyone to, to, to circulate and come into the chat. But it's been a heck of a day in the market so far. Definitely lots to talk about. Vin. Hi, Vin. Um, very excited to see, you know, all, of course, what everybody's talking about in the chat, what everyone's trading. Hi, Andrew Chow. Hi, Bob Dub. Um, Andrew Chow saying hi, Dara. Hi to you. Darwin back in here again as well. Ronaldo, everybody's kind of circulating, still populating. The chat, as Sharif would say. Hope he's having fun in his safari. Sebastian, Mateus, Trader Revolution, Ciro, um, Chiron, Piper, the, the Piper, Dawn, ALX, Ponzi, Fonzi, Sebastian, Chase Bands, Adam Khalifa, Marie L., HSCP, TX Trader, Dad Trader, Pitchbull, and they, as, as Bears versus Bulls is as Bears versus Bulls is saying there, here they come. You know, yes, they? Yeah, people rolling in. What's up, what's up, everybody? How's it going? Uh, I see the first comment, Darwin saying, uh, I mentioned that SPI trade yesterday. Uh, you were in it back in the day as well. Yeah, no, I was, uh, I was in the wrong side of that squeeze. Uh, we talked about that yesterday. A little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of experience, a little bit of uh, blowing up the account on the on that trade. But uh, you know, it is what it is. We are who we are due to those uh, past trades and uh, good learning lessons indeed. But uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, hope you're having a great uh, trading day today. Lots of uh, lots of exciting stuff happening here, um, and uh, yeah, lots to lots to watch. So let's let's get uh, started with this midday. How are you doing today? I am good. I have traded nothing yet because I just got back off La Big Day. Desk. But yeah, I mean, I have Disney on watch because, you know, the House yeah. of Mouse was yesterday certainly was all up in everyone's face yesterday. I couldn't think of a better way to put it. A lot going on. I do think there's some kind of potential for trading this off the 9 EMA. We're actually kind of getting into that level now, so I'm going to have a bid set. Let's do 65s. And let's take a couple more shares here. There we go. Uh, basically, just taking this to the top of the range. I'll probably save little pieces for the dreamers who go. If we make a lower low, I will have to... to Go and say how he was going to say that's all folks, but that's not appropriate for Disney because that is a it's uh, Warner Disney. Brothers. Yeah, yeah that's Warner a WBD. Brothers. If we were trading WBD, that would be that would be, would be very apt. Yes, yeah, yes. but but right now it's not. Um, we're we're gonna have to see. Hopefully, this one doesn't get too frozen, and I can get an opportunity um, to have this one let it go to the upside. That was a little bit on of a scratch. roll. Uh, I like <laughs> appreciate that. How are you doing over here? I'm doing all right. Uh, just to kind of uh, in in this choppy range here on uh, on Intel. Uh, again, I was pretty aggressive with it yesterday, and uh, coming in today, I was like, all right, well, uh, let me look for some of that continuation, and uh, I kind of uh, went a little opposite to the idea there, trying to push uh, a little long. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see. A lot of these uh, a lot of these chip names had a nice little flush off of the open. Now we're consolidating here on Nvidia as well as I get my uh, as I get my charts uh, ready. But yeah, Disney as well, kind of uh, on my on my list uh, to watch along with uh, Levi's Le Levi's earnings day one um, hasn't really done what I was looking for. 
right now. But Disney from yesterday, uh, as Adara just mentioned, quite uh, quite interesting. We're kind of coming into that uh, end of day consolidation, right? So uh, let me take that VWAP out of the way. Um, so yeah, look, take a look at that end of day consolidation. Kind of, we're trying, we're attempting to push into that uh, into that on Disney. So uh, let's see if those sellers that came in real hot off of that uh, annual investor meeting yesterday, if they've got a little bit uh, a little bit more selling to left to do today. But uh, it is pushing into that 120 and trying to break as of right now. So other than that, I don't have too much on watch. Uh, let me know what you guys have been trading uh, in the in the chat. We'll take a look at it. I know there's a lot of names going around. I know that. Uh, uh, the cannabis names are moving quite nicely. Uh, the flush on uh, on uh, chips was nice off the open. You can see the NQ and the ES both very strong off the open, doing a little bit of a reversion right now. Let's see how how much further it can get. But uh, we talk about those uh, those key kind of uh, potential levels to to consider. There, eighteen five is uh, is holding as of right now, or pretty much uh, we're testing it right now. Back-to-back -back red candles on the 15s, though I'm seeing on uh, on the NQ, and then 5300, um, a little uh, little chop 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 high there at that 5300 on the ES. But uh, people talking about Tesla, uh, keep her nimble. Uh, Obi saying Maurice, yeah, I gotta stay, I gotta stay nimble as uh, nimble as possible today. Tesla, yeah, sure, we can take a quick look at Tesla uh, here. Tesla, that 170, kind of interesting over the past few over the past few days there. I tried to make it yesterday, but uh, today it seems like today's the day where you kind of catch a bit off of some of that dip by off the lows in the uh, at the open, and we're getting a grind back up. So interesting moves on Tesla. Uh, if you guys uh, have been trading, I know you guys mentioned Tesla, but like, how have you guys been trading it? Are you guys long or short? Um, uh, yeah, the, I, I'm curious to know how uh, how it went as well. Yeah, we're, we're always very curious to hear what everyone has to say here. Um, we do have a lesson of the day as we do. Before, quickly, before we get into that, I actually just noticed this little action on NVIDIA. NVIDIA consolidating below VWAP has me say thumbs up. There, there's no words. I'm just having my thumbs up because this is the type of stuff I like. It, we have a, a bottom more or less of this 890, 896 area. Then if you want to give it to 895.50, I would say that that's pretty fair. And the high of this little range is going to be 898.50. I've taken ranges for less. That gives you about two and a half dollars if you time it right. Now, of course, I do struggle with timing, so I would be cognizant of that. The other thing I'm being cognizant of for this one is the fact that right now we're ducking down below that 90 MA. This range might be getting a little bit tighter, but I do think there are some possibilities here for me to get NVIDIA before the end of uh, this first hour here. But for now, it is time to learn and chat about trading. Uh, I think that that transition worked better in my head, but that's okay. It is time to chat about pre-market trading. So we had the morning, the midday, and the afternoon, and now we have the pre-markets. Going slightly out of order here in terms of times of day, but that's all good. Just taking a look at um, these notes here. So basically, pre-market trading, uh, just a quick introduction. This is extended hours trading. It happens from about 4 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. And basically what this does, it allows traders to respond to some news that might have come in in the morning uh, and before the market initially opens. So it gives you a little bit of a, a sneak preview for some things you might want to be keeping an eye on during the official trading hours of 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. And initially, uh, this was exclusive to high net worth and institutional investors, uh, but advancements in electronic communications networks have actually made it possible for individual investors to get on involved and get a slice of that pre-market pie uh, and this period is, is really important. It allows traders and investors and what have you to react to this overnight news and some pre-market earnings reports. And it also offers chances for some early action in the stock market, although there are a couple challenges with regards to reduced liquidity because there are less eyes on the market quite yet. It also has some yeah. wider spreads, so there's a little bit of heightened volatility. So that is the, the take there on the introduction to pre-market trading, but also, what are some catalysts that we might be having our eye on in the pre-market? Yeah, so uh, definitely catalysts are uh, are uh, important. Uh, things that happen in the pre-market, such as earnings apart uh, apartments, announcements, earnings announcements, small cap uh, releases, economic data, comments from Fed uh, Fed Reserve speakers, um, and then that can obviously significantly influence that pre-market activity, right? Uh, for example, a company announces uh, announces some earnings before the market opens, and then uh, they uh, sentiment really likes that. It's a, it's a positive sentiment. 
and that could have like a strong move in the morning uh, as well, or some, or it could be like a bad report or maybe a stock offering, something to watch out for in the pre-market. Um, you have uh, economic data releases such as, uh, you know, employment numbers, GDPs, uh, PMI. We've seen that. We've seen that in the in the in the morning session as well. And. Um, uh, yeah, just new, news. Uh, news can happen in the pre-market, giving you that, uh, giving you that ability to get involved and get that early look at uh, at some of those uh, fresh news reports in the in the in the morning on, for the day. Yeah, there we go. Um, and also, once you have your catalyst, you should be thinking about things that you want to look for in this pre-market, right? So, some things you want to look for are going to be these key levels that might be worth uh, keeping an eye on. So I'm just going through my notes here to see where everything is. You do want to be looking for some key levels in the previous day's trading session. So Sharif talks about this a lot as well. Shout out to him over there. Hopefully his safari is going great, but he'll often talk about the previous day's highs, lows, and closing prices. And those also comprise the pivot points. Like these are really key levels and you can start to see our interaction with the, how stocks are interacting with these levels in the pre. Um, these levels can be crucial, and traders will often seek a sense of direction in pre-market trading, sometimes based on these levels, like, oh, we're above yesterday's close, or above yesterday's high, we're below, do you know what I mean? It gives you a sense of how we're doing before the market has even reopened its doors, right? So you're, you're able to get in line a, an exclusive sneak peek, a teaser trailer, if you will, at what the market's doing. Also, uh, traders will often seek a sense of direction in pre-market trading, so you can get a sense based on what we're doing in the pre, if the stock is gonna experience more bullish, or bearish momentum, or if it's gonna be a little bit rangier. So if you have a stock that's seen a lot of pre-market volume and price movement, especially if it has a strong catalyst to back it up and give it a little bit of an oomph, or if it's like a low float name, say if it has any kind of impetus for it to move and it is already seeing this movement, you could have a nice trend in day ahead of you with that stock. So that's certainly something to keep an eye out for, but there's some other factors to consider as well. Yeah, so um, it's uh, it's also in, uh, essential to consider that uh, market on open imbalances that can come uh, come in at nine twenty five usually. So that's five minutes right before the open that can uh, uh, potentially provide some some clues about uh, supply and demand at the market open, and then uh, also using uh, using pre market levels, right? So that you can uh, use those as a guide to kind of plan plan your uh, plan your day out or plan your trade plan uh, out. Some uh, some pre market consolidations, pre market highs, pre market lows, and Anything interesting? Maybe some uh, maybe some interesting price action that you might have observed in the pre-market session, and that can supplement your trade plan, or maybe even be the core of your trade plan, depending on how strong you like that price action. So, yeah, opening market uh, imbalances, indicators of uh, uh, potential supply demand um, interest five minutes before the open. And then pre-market uh, pre market levels as like guides, obviously they're not uh, hard set rules, but uh, they give you that potential for, uh, for formulating some, some strategy and structure off of, uh, for your trade plan. Yeah, it's kind of like the skeleton of your trading day. It gives you like some, some bones or like a mannequin to kind of work off of that you can dress and, and add to your trading plan. That analogy works better in my head, but that's okay. Risks and opportunities are also really worth discussing in, in the pre-market. Joe Schmo, shout out to you mentioning some potential pre-market risks as well with regards to it being easier to get, uh, as, as he put it, smoked in the pre-market when you have some of these uh, issues with placing stops. It's not something I was aware of. But basically, the pre-market uh, session can totally be double-edged sword. It offers you lots of risks, but also lots of opportunities because you have limited liquidity and wider bid-ask spreads commonly, so that can impact the execution of your trades. News, uh, trading on news releases in the pre-market can provide some opportunities to capitalize on movement before most traders are active, but it does also come with the risk of super high price swings, a little bit less protection for yourself, and a little bit easier to get a little rinsed. So it can really give you a good sense of levels, but sometimes it can be a bit harder to, to practically trade or trade in a practical way, sorry, in in these markets. But yeah, so, so really interesting. Uh, lots of, of course, lots of interesting stuff to talk about with that in mind for risk and opportunities. Yeah, um, and uh, some practical examples uh, in in the in the pre market or uh, pre market trading can be, um, uh, for example, a tech company can uh, uh, announce some news. You know, lately the theme has been uh, uh, semiconductors and AI, and uh, if they release some news in the pre market, that can add some sentiment for that for the trading on the day, right? So. Um, any significant action in the pre-market, uh, traders can use this, uh, use that as like an indicator to see and assess how the stock could potentially perform uh, 
into the into the market open uh, open session, right? So, for just an example, um, a pharmaceutical company releases uh, releases some drug trial news, uh, and uh, maybe maybe their uh, their drug is like rejected, or they it's not working, it's not as expected in terms of uh, in terms of what their what the results wanted, and then they drop sharply um, uh, due to that. And I think a prime example of this, if you want to look at it, is uh, is uh, Intel, right? So Intel yesterday comes out with uh, with new in the after hours, but uh, you can see, again, kind of a similar similar action there. After hours, that news kind of comes out pre-market. You can see that continued selling. So you have you have uh, some defined levels, some maybe some support turned resistance in the pre-market, some support turned resistance off of the open as well. And then we kind of sell off on that negative sentiment and then potentially looking for that continuation happening today as well, as uh, this could be a much bigger, bigger picture play for Intel on on the day, so yeah, that pre-market action can you, can give you some information as to how we might be trading relative to what happened uh, based off of that news that can come out in the morning sessions or even the after-hour session. Yeah, yeah, and it's nice too, is because the pre-market you can also use to react to whatever happened after hours too, right? Because it's still some of the same catalyst. It's still like if you have earnings that came out late on. For example, Wednesday, if you have your Levi, this is still day one of Levi earnings properly because we had them in, in the aftermarket, right? So thank you very much, Obi, for going over that. That is uh, our first round of the lesson. We do repeat it a couple times in case people come in late. But also, while our lesson was happening, seeing some mentions in the chat of NVIDIA falling, uh, falling you know, on, it, on its face a little bit. And yeah, we did break below here into 894.50. But you know what? I, I don't know if this is a full breakdown yet. And I say that because... We didn't get as low as we waked earlier. We did wake earlier here on the, at this 10, 20 area. Well, and then we came back up while still being within the range. So we are a little bit lower here. I want to see us break above that 895.50 before I decide if this is still intact and we're still doing this lower highs, lower lows dance. But if we reject off this 895.50, I might see a short here. This was a nice support area early. This was beautiful. And so I think if we can reject it, I might, I might have to pop NVIDIA with a teeny tiny little share size and try to trade this one to, uh, to the upside. But I, I do think I'd, I'd rather probably wait, or sorry, to the downside, I want to take it short. But if we, if we see support here, then, then maybe we'll take it along. I, want, I really want to see what happens, but I do think there are some opportunities at this level for our pal NVDA. Disney did, did not let me into the Magic Kingdom. I guess I did not have a fast pass for that trade. I was, I was not allowed in. I do still like that, that level around 70s. I still have a dip buy here, but this 90 MA is getting higher. So I'm probably gonna have to change this dip buy. Again, not chasing, just reacting a little bit to what we're seeing here. It looks like the line might be moving up in the wait here for Disney. So I should probably move my point of entry ab about 10 cents from seven, from six, late 60 to late 70s. Cause that 90 MA, which is where I'm looking for that bounce that we've seen earlier has been there. However, this topping tail, uh, th this looks maybe more like a dark pool wick, but the point is some of these wicks here getting me a little concerned. Hopefully they're not too wicked, these wicks. And hopefully, you know, there's some other opportunities here. Cause I do think this 90 MA bounce is not a bad look at all. I want to watch and wait before I set an order here. How are you doing with Intel? Um, Intel, I guess I, I got I got a little uh, stopped out. I, I, again, I'm kind of uh, going against the original idea here, but it's doing a bit of a chop, which is uh, interesting to me. So uh, I am I like the long off of kind of this range that's been happening here, but uh, I, I guess I'm not really giving it uh, the, the the stop that uh, I that it deserves, right? It deserves kind of a little bit below low day potentially, and uh, we're coming right back into that low day. So I'll try it one more time there uh, just to see. I did get stopped out already twice. Twice uh, and uh, yeah, so um, that 120 I do still like for uh, for the for the Disney as Adara just mentioned that 120 interesting level there, um, kind of coming into that uh, previous day's consolidation, uh, like I mentioned before. That uh, let's see if we can how far we can kind of get back up through that. The wick here is saying 120, 20, um, but uh, I think that's just uh, that's just a little bit of a of a delayed print kind of wick there. Uh, people in the chat saying Nvidia about to break down. Yeah, potentially. I don't know, but uh, take a look at this um, strong leg down, and now we're consolidating just underneath that 900. So we've been observing a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, uh, sell pressure every time we attempt to push and hold that nine. We kind of make it back through over and over again. Uh, the nine doesn't really necessarily look as strong and today coming in today uh, going into uh, almost the end of the week right Thursday 
Thursday. So uh, we kind of slam into below that nine. Now that consolidation is happening uh, just underneath that nine right now. So let's see what let's see what Nvidia has in store for us today uh, with that 900 to nine, nine uh, sorry 895 ish consolidation that's happening as of right now. But uh, yeah, the market kind of uh, it did it did a decent uh, decent piece of a reversion there um, off of the 18 uh, 560 wick highs you can see that on the 15 minute and then just comes right back into that 18 half so uh, a bit of a, a little over 50 percent retracement there on the nq and then uh, just around a 50 percent on the es as well so um uh, Kevin Mendoza saying, all I have written in my trading journal are doodles. That's, that's interesting. Um, so uh, <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, uh, how do you trade off of doodles? That's a, that's a, that's a new one right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, let's take a quick look at some of the top, uh, top volume leaders on the day and see what they're, see what they're up to uh, as we wait for this Intel to potentially come in. If it does, if it will, who knows? But uh, I've, I've got the stop in, I've accepted the risk. Let's see if that kind of range works out there. So uh, what is this, TCBP, so uh, it's a pharmaceutical company here. So let's take a quick look at what they, what they do. Okay, biotech, right? So doing some decent RVOL there, 2,000 almost, over, over 4,000 in, uh, in the pre-market there, and a uh, nice little pop and drop. But uh, nothing I'm too interested in. I'm kind of, uh, what, what's the market, market cap on this thing? That's the first thing I kind of asked there. Uh, so the market cap is about 1.3 million, damn. Okay, so yeah, don't, I don't necessarily wanna, wanna get involved with, uh, with that one. Tilray, we know that uh, um, some of the cannabis names are definitely in play and moving around today, but Tilray, a little muted relative to some of these other ones there. Uh, I know that ACB has been running quite nicely. Uh, Palantir, um, flush off of the open. Interesting uh, bid up in the pre-market there. I might have missed some sort of news on, uh, on Palantir. Yeah, Oracle deal. Okay, wow. All right, so uh, large cap association trade and uh, beautiful kind of uh, a rip up off of the open there. I'm definitely missing out on that one. That was uh, uh, definitely in play, comes off, off the open and kind of rejects. So let's take a quick look left and see what that 24 may or may not have been on the Palantir. Sean is hitting that dollar club. What are you in? Uh, we just put NVIDIA on. Nine, NVIDIA uh, on. Okay. Oh my gosh, Eight. I need 9402. Nice, nice. Short. Yeah, short, yeah. So, I would okay. not be so, bo so bo was... both Adara and, uh, and Sean are short. The NVIDIA into that, uh, into that breakdown, or potential breakdown we're talk we just talked about a couple seconds ago, and NVIDIA is pushing that break as we speak. But uh, yeah, going back to Palantir here, looking left, a little bit of, a, of maybe a consolidation um, support turned resistance there. You can see a little bit of a, a support over the past couple of weeks, mid-March, kind of starts to sell and really accelerates off of that 24. So might be interesting on, a, on an, uh, a deal with Oracle, can't really get past that 124. And oh boy, look at ACB attempting to push some fresh highs as well on ACB. So let's throw up a VWAP here and see if it's, oh boy, look at that. Beautiful kind of respect of that VWAP pulls back into that. That VWAP confluence, we just talked about this, confluence with pre-market high. So that pullback into VWAP in and around that uh, 760s holds that pre-market consolidation high. And then we push right back up on to uh, uh, towards high a day there, a little bit of a continuation happening. So kind of talk about this over the past few days. Um, it, ACB bid was quite aggressive yesterday. Question I usually ask is if we pull back off of the open, can, I, can we get that little dip uh, dip by um, kind of a, a pullback, pullback long. If the bids are real, will, where will they kind of catch on again? And it seems like 650 was definitely the spot uh, for for those bids, and uh, they did indeed catch on. ACB pushing some fresh highs there. Allure, don't really know what's going on here with Allure, but uh, looks like a potential potentially catalyst-driven uh, news here. It is on the volume leaderboard, um, but again, market cap. Okay, never mind. Market cap is 150. Almost read 1 million. 150, so a little bit of a better market cap, 36 mil float, so not, not too bad there. Uh, let's see what the news quickly is on that. Uh, can't really, okay, so initiated a buy, initiated a buy. So maybe on some, uh, some upgrade news there. Uh, buy from uh, Chandran uh, Chardan Capital. Uh, 
Okay, so interesting. So it's just off of uh, it's just off of that. Um, so not really uh, concerning. I'm not really going to look at that. But uh, Tesla to the upside. Let's see what Neo is doing. Neo kind of uh, trending to the upside as well. But uh, got nothing else too much here on the volume board. That's kind of the top uh, top five or six names right there. AMD, of course, is up here. Wow, AMD is definitely the short. Take a look Ooh. at this one. Who's who's been watching? Who's been trading AMD here? Straight to the downside. Strong trend. Clear kind of uh, sellers in charge on AMD today. That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. I definitely missed out on that trade. How are you doing with your trades there, Adara? I Yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm just in the NVDA. We are kind of breaking up into 895s now. I have a, I'm looking to add to the position to 895 if we can kind of have that rejection there. I'm getting out of everything 895.50, so I'm giving this about $1.50, which I think for NVIDIA is, is reasonable-esque. You know what I mean? Because you do want to give this one a little bit more room to run. This trade was a little bit concerning for me because this is not the way I typically trade. This isn't really a range. This is more of a breakdown, which, you know, is the, more the type of trade that we see over, um, over yonder on that desk, the type of trade, you know, Sharif is able to take with the momentum. But I was like, Adara, you can still set your stop and profit level, or not your profit levels, you can still set your stop levels based on previous price action. So let me explain that. Look at just the intricacies of this little range here. This bottom of 895.50S, which is where I will be... Um, getting out if we break above it earlier it was so strong and then we rejected it so fiercely i do think there's some opportunities there i liked adding it to 895 too although we did not get filled because i like that earlier pop and drop so really i'm just using previous levels to to help um serve as the impetus for my stop levels you were a dollar in the money why didn't you average in with me i tried to average it i didn't get filled um, it was going to be 895.01, and we got to 895. Oh, you got to go the other way. Oh, I got to go 895.99, or 894.99. Thank you, Sean, for that one. I'm going to change. I'm going to change my little level for that. Break 95, you're not going to get a one. I don't know. I think it was because I was, you know, I was a little too scared. I think that was what I was thinking. Is I was like, oh, well, you know, just in case we, if we break up. I was like, I don't know what I was thinking. I have no excuse. But thank you, Sean, um, for that one. I appreciate that uh, advice. Definitely something I needed like to hear. 80s. Pardon? I took eight. Oh, that, that yeah, that's okay. good. So then it gives you like a little bit of room below that. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there we go. So congrats to Sean on that. I am a, like 25 pennies out of the money right now with where I got in, but hopefully we can average in when we get back up there. Also, Tisha Perkins is talking about CADL, so I'll look at this one for Tisha Perkins. Um, CA Candel Therapeutics. This one had, oh, brain cancer data. That's nice. Positive um, interim data from the randomized phase two clinical trial uh, for non metastatic prostate cancer. So that's, that's a nice look. The one thing that concerns me immediately looking at this intraday chart, lower high. So we got up to that 268 area, some of these concerning little wicks. Then we get a massive bearish engulfing candle on the three minute here. We get to 260, we have this little baby wick above and this giant uh, bearish candle. Now we're, we're dark and back below the 9 EMA. So I think that the candle might have lost its flame a little bit here in Candel Therapeutics, uh, just with this lower high and this wick here. But let's look at the daily chart for C to the A to the D to the L. I want a couple more stats on this. I'm going to check uh, for some float-related info for our, our, our friend Candle over here. C-A-D-L, this one has... Oh, this is... 46.65% insider owned. So this is a bit like a, an arm situation where there's a lot of yeah. uh, insider ownership there. Um, let me see. Float of 15 million shares. Short float um, less than 1%. So not significant short float. I think the main story here, in addition to that catalyst, is that pretty massive percentage of insider owned on that one. But honestly, the look on Candel is really nice. Higher highs, higher lows. Massive push up. This is honestly not a bad daily chart. So I think there could be some continued movement on this. My, my one, like I said, my big red flag here, or I guess my red candle flame, I don't know. The thing that, that makes me, that would light a little bit of concerns for me is that lower high. But then again, we're trying to pop right back up here again. So nice look there. Also, Sean roaring with NVIDIA. Nice. So um, going well with NVIDIA. Now we're at uh, into 894s. Very... A little, little upset that I didn't plan my reload very well, but thank you, Sean, for talking me um, through that one and explaining the logic of that one. So if we get back up there, the reload is at a better place. So let's see how this goes. I I'm comfortable saying it in video. We can't break above that 895. So we're going to hang out here and um, not get out video quite yet. How are you doing? 
Uh, I'm doing doing all right here. Just uh, watching some of these uh, some of these names. I was looking for looking for uh, another like what what's the what's the next trade here? Uh, I was just checking my list uh, of uh, of top ideas just to see what those tickers are kind of up to. And uh, yeah, some of them kind of uh, working out. I'm not I'm not really involved in there. Uh, Levi uh, was on my list as well. We know that they reported earnings today. And uh, yeah, let's take a quick look at Levi's here. So Levi's taking a, taking a nice little pullback um, uh, off of uh, off of said highs. Uh, I was looking left. This is not really pushing all time highs, which uh, which uh, I initially thought it was. But uh, Levi's has been much higher than this in the past. But take a look at that after hours kind of earnings reaction high in and around that 20 2075 pre market action. Kind of talk about that significance of a uh, uh, potential significance of that pre market action there as it kind of pops up, comes back in, and that resistance turns into support in the pre market. And then we just blast off, kind of grinding up into the open, and then a nice little uh, uh, look at that spike in volume. And then the price action just like rips off of the open. We're taking a nice little pullback uh, back through that opening price as of right now, opening price being uh, 21.47, so just about a few pennies just underneath that as we break uh, on Levi's into that uh, into the into some of those pre-market levels let's see if that high kind of holds we see this pre-market high there uh, right before the open 2140s ish so let's see where we're just pulling back right into some of those areas right now so let's see if some of that holds on Levi's another name I kind of uh, had on watch was uh, was Ulta uh, Ulta um, Ulta Beauty, kind of a, a makeup uh, and uh, health health and beauty product uh, seller, is uh, got got a little uh, got a little sell yesterday off of some I think it was a, it was some uh, um, some fundamental change type of news there uh, yesterday. Um, slow down, yeah. Beauty slowdown uh, reflects cracks in consumer spending. So maybe consumer spending was much lower than expected, and that crack in consumer spending came along with a crack of uh, through 500, and we push quite aggressively off of the open. And, and this name definitely is that pushing SSR. Yes, as of yesterday, yes, definitely uh, into the close. So um, uh, an SSR potentially SSR name there today as well, um, pushing right back up. And uh, only catching a bid as of today, so we are getting a little bit of that reversion happening there on Ulta uh, Beauty. Uh, and another name I kind of had in step with this was Elf. So Elf, another another kind of uh, name that w that happened to uh, be in step with Ulta yesterday, but coming in today a little different as it, do it doesn't catch that kind of a bid. So the question I'm asking is: Is this one? On SSR, maybe not as much as it's only down about 11% as of yesterday. So a little bit of a different kind of uh, kind, kind of mechanic maybe going on there. As one of the names is SSR and the other one isn't, and you can see that the one that is is having a harder time selling off uh, and kind of pushing pushing uh, pushing into the ask there and uh, trekking a little higher. So I had some of those names on watch, and of course people are talking about uh, okay. So King of Ring saying CGC just got slapped. Okay. Let's take a quick look at CGC. CGC did not get slapped. Uh, it's still within, it's still within that trend. Look at that. Uh, yeah, sure, maybe a little bit of a sell-off, uh, but well, well within, well within trend. You got to remember these things are sitting quite, uh, quite pretty in terms of uh, their short float. I think ACB I checked yesterday was about a 26, 27 percent short float. So, so definitely some big boys uh, uh, sweating a little bit with this, uh, with this pressure there. So even though the pullbacks can be volatile if and when the most of the buying pressure is coming from squeezes uh, the the pullbacks can be quite volatile I've found in the past so uh, let's take a quick look on the daily here and take check out some levels so ACB of course a repeat offender we can we know that it has these crazy pop and drops where it goes 100 200 percent for a couple of days maybe a couple of weeks and then slow little bleed off in the end so are we gonna get more of the same post split runner here happening on ACB so pushing through that what is that five dollar breakout yesterday that happened there and then now we're getting that continuation on the day today so let's go down to that 15 minute chart and uh, really take a look at where that VWAP may be standing are we holding VWAP bidders are obviously kind of uh, 
Buying is obviously uh, out, uh, out pressuring and outweighing the selling as of right now here. Let's see how far this ACB can get on the day. I know you guys are trading it in the chat. You guys keep mentioning CGC, ACBs, and uh, let's see what else uh, you guys are trading. Soundhound, okay, so that, that, that one uh, was, uh, I remember it was on the leaderboard in terms of volume quite a bit over the past uh, few weeks, and it hasn't necessarily been around um, uh, at, even in the top in the top uh, list. So yeah, you, I think it was a couple of weeks ago uh, while Arm was running around and doing its thing, Soundhound was also getting a significant amount of volume, now really kind of dropping off of those leaderboards there in terms of uh, volume leaders. So let's take a quick look here. Let's take that, uh, take that VWAP off. Okay, I gotta do this to take it off. All right, cool. So a uh, little bit of a strong selling, maybe a lot of bit of a strong seller, seller off of that 10 mark and then pushing just uh, gradually to the downside there. You can see that volume kind of dying off as well. Let's take a quick look on the daily uh, and we might see that in a little better form. So you can see strong volume, strong volume, and then a little bit of a die off and then the price action coming along with it. Let's see if it can break down this 473 level here and just looking left a little bit of a support before it did kind of pop up on the uh, on this past run that we kind of had so maybe a little bit of relief um, I guess another name I haven't checked in a while was arm uh, arm let's take a quick look at arm I know that one's been interesting for a while uh, yeah so I, I still have this alert kind of up from uh, from before from I think earnings day one and uh, still we, we've been holding this level kind of as a, like a shelf. You can see every time it kind of comes in, sure, it's a, the lows at, at uh, 115, but you can see a little bit of a step up here uh, in and around 121, 122s. Uh, just again, just an arbitrary kind of an alert. Whenever it comes down there, it's just there to, to remind me to take a look at the name for a potential, uh, potential play either to the upside, back to the upside, or maybe we do crack and then we can see if we kind of break down below this 115. But as of right now, over the past couple of months, since this name has IPO'd, uh, that earnings, since that earnings report, we are holding some of, the, some of these uh, prices as a shelf on ARM. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all I'm kind of looking at right now. Still in this, uh, still in this Intel, kind of letting it work. Uh, let's see if that kind of uh, comes in here. I gotta, I gotta go back to the short eventually here. But uh, I guess I don't really like these prices to sell. Uh, I think I heard Neil earlier on talking about kind of uh, Intel was ranging. Yeah, so yeah, uh, this, I think the prices to sell are up here in the 60s and the 70s, and the prices to buy uh, as of right now are in here in the 40s and and 30s. So why am I stopping out before those levels kind of even come in? I gotta do better with that. Give it the real risk. Uh, risk down to below, uh, down to low a day, or maybe even below low a day, and size accordingly for that range trade until it kind of picks a direction and a distinct direction to the upside or to the downside. But as of right now, we are just holding that opening range and kind of trading inside of that. You can see that opening range on Intel quite uh, quite aggressive both ways, really. So I'll pull it up here on the three minute, uh, and we can take a quick look at that before I pass it back to Dara right here. So um, 40.70 to 40.30s right there, boom. That defines the range, that opening range. We have not broken out of that opening range. We attempted to break out on one side through the 70s and then comes right back in, but it holds the base on, uh, uh, on that. So uh, I guess maybe some shorts uh, potentially trapped off of, a, off of an opening range high lick grab. Uh, longs definitely didn't, uh, definitely I think did not like that when that opening range high break kind of fails, comes right back in, you get that selling right back into the lower end and you start to define some of that lower end of the range there. So uh, let's see if we get that continuation or maybe a little bit of reversion. Is it on SSR? It is not. So uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a chop and churn sideways consolidation happening here on Intel. Let's see if what we do or what we do with that VWAP in and around 55s. So I'll, I'll stay patient. I'll be waiting. Um, I guess the name to short when it comes to chips today, there was one name that really kind of uh, is is uh, is winning on the short side when it comes to the chip names there, and that is AMD. Beautifully kind of uh, selling off to the downside here. A little bit of a sideways chop since uh, what is that? 
for about 20 minutes. So uh, interesting little base forming here on AMD. Let's see what AMD does in and around this 177. Yeah, let's see what an AM does there on that one, AMD. Um, yeah, you mentioned that chop, and that's the same thing I've been keeping an eye on. We, I mean, we, we know what I'm like. I see something like this, and I see these uh, giant wicks to the downside. I think we could get maybe an influx of buying here. I want to be patient. I am involved in another chip name that just um, ripped up a little bit here, so I'm trying to be cognizant of that. But I do have, um, I have a, an order here. If we get to 894, just shy of 50s, I'm trying to learn um, from, what, from what Sean was saying there, then we can add to this position. So I will be averaging down a little bit, but it's more just about having more size as we make that move to the downside. I was really happy I got uh, this bottom wick here with some of the, the profit takers. This I basically got out flat. This was a fat finger, but I do still have a third of the position left. Let's see what we do. I don't mind adding. I mean, we, we don't have, I, I was just kind of concerned when I saw that green candle, but there's not really a lot of oomph behind it. Plus I forgot my NVIDIA is on my, the one minute on my side chart because um, I like to sometimes scalp that off the one minute. Today though, NVIDIA has been a bit more of a slow grind mode. And so I've been trying to respect it. I'm trying to give it its space, you know, show it that I, show that I respect it as a stock. If it wants to move a little bit slower, I'm okay with that. Now I'm okay with our average. We're gonna start taking this uh, pieces off as we get down to the bottom of 194s. This is honestly, this is one of the scariest trades I've made. And not because again, it is moving a bit slower for NVIDIA's normal speed, but it's because it's really not a range. I'm playing, I mean, like, of course my, like I said, my stop loss levels are really based on the, on the previous range here, but this is, this is a bit different for me. I'm playing NVIDIA as more of a breakdown and we just broke up here. So like I said, I'm giving this to about 895 uh, 50s. So we are kind of getting into the danger zone there. NVIDIA, if you want to eject off previous levels, do your thing, 21. Of course, I can't force you. You're an independent stock. So let's see what happens there. Um, Tobe was mentioning Nikola. So yeah, I, I did bring this one up earlier on the big desk. Nikola did have some uh, production updates. They produced 43 hydrogen fuel cell trucks in Q1 and uh, wholesaled 40 of them. Or wholesold. I don't know how to do that in past tense. Wholesold? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Wholesold. It sounds about right. Wholesold? Sure. I appreciate that. It'll be sold. Sold wholly. Right. Yeah. I, I, wholesale? I said wholesale. What is the past like, tense of wholesaling? Sounds. Yeah. Sold whole. I don't know. But um, but yeah, double nice double bottom here in Nikola. Uh, so if you got that double bottom at 94 cents, you would be about um, three pennies in the money here. Wholesale. So nice look there. In that. Apparently in the past tense of uh, whole, wholesale is wholesale. It is wholesale. Nice. Okay, so I said that nice. and I was like, I don't know how I feel about yeah. that. But thank you, Sounds OB. Sounds about right. OB, I had to check um, it. I was just like, I'm, I'm curious. I've never really looked into that, but nice. I like that. Sorry. Yeah, I think that's a nice, thank you for, um, for bringing that one up there. But yeah, um, yeah, Tobes, I think that is a nice look there on Nikola. AMD, I'm still obsessed with this chop and churn. My one concern, though, is there's clearly selling power here. I mean, look at it. AMD to the down. Mm. It, it's AM downside. That's what it's been yep. all day. It's getting AM destroyed. But these wicks to the downside make me think we could have maybe a little bit of a selling opportunity. I should wait for another candle, though, before I get involved, especially because I'm shorting another chip name, so that would be a skosh counterintuitive to be short the one and long the other, especially because, you know, Intel sometimes will move a little bit in uh, independently. AMD and NVIDIA are usually frickin' frack. They're neck and neck. They're, yeah. they're dancing in the same direction, so I don't really want to step in front of a, a freight train there, especially because I'm already involved in, the, in the, the freight train that is NVDA, but NVDA looks like it might be turning on me, so I might have to get out of that and get involved in AM Dizzle. Intel, this is so rangy. I actually really like this look on Intel. Yeah, also, congrats to you. It's a really nice long right now. Thanks, but uh, the thing is, I got chopped up on the long multiple times, so I'm trying to trying to kind of uh, get that back here um, in the into into the flow with the ticker here. And yeah, you are, you are definitely right. It is ranging quite nicely there, about uh, about a thirty penny range. So um, if if uh, if I wasn't so greedy and I was just like, all right, well, I just want to buy here. I'm not looking for the breakout right away. Maybe we need uh, some of that morning consolidation to kind of pan out and uh, come in. If that idea even is going to come into fruition, right? So uh, yeah, I think uh, I got to do better with uh, staying nimble. Again, I keep saying this because I know I have to, I have to kind of improve on that uh, sense of being nimble there. So uh, if it's going to give me the range, I just take the range, you know, don't ask for too much. Don't ask for the moon, sell in the seventies, buy in the forties, keep on churning that out. Sure. You can have a short bias. You can have a long bias. Either way, if you're playing that range with that kind of mental where like, I'm going to, I'm going to short the top of the range. I'm going to buy the, sh buy the, um, 
bottom of the range, regardless of whether you, you're trying to go long or short, you're still winning on that trade, right? So, uh, or set of trades. I just was too greedy. I was looking for that breakout right off of the open. Um, I was like, let's, let's look for a bit of reversion. The short might be a little bit crowded here. Uh, and really, let's try to test that, uh, test that uh, selling pressure out from yesterday. But it seems like some of that selling pressure definitely moved over into, into AMD here as AM Dizzle uh, kind of uh, pushing, pushing for or attempting for fresh lows. 177, a little bit of an interesting level there as well. When you look left, yesterday, that crazy strength, the crazy amount of strength that we got on AMD was just off of that 76, 77 level here in the morning session. And then that was a higher low relative to the day before where it got crushed, right? So you got a pretty much a 100% retracement uh, in, in the span of two days. So uh, you, can, you could see that that 175 was quite nice. And I remember playing, getting long off of this 175 here. If you guys remember, we did that on the midday show on Tuesday. That 175 lick grab was absolutely beautiful. So beautiful that it actually can it holds a higher low and continues the next day into 182. So 175 to 182, oh boy, was that a nice move off of some significant action that happened at that 175 on the tape. And yeah, kind of, uh, I guess uh, what I'm learning is that sometimes action can be so significant that it's not just an intraday trade, it can move on to the next day as well. And we're getting a nice little pullback uh, of that whole kind of action. So those sellers coming right back in uh, just on underneath that 184, 185 on AMD, quite aggressive. But if you look left and you look uh, look a little sideways there on AMD, it's just been chopping in this range over the past uh, po over the past few days, right? Since, uh, what is this, March 19th? So look at this chop, this similar kind of idea. 187 are the, are the wick highs, maybe, maybe some more, um, more uh, more prices or more price action hits that 185 184, but that lower end of the range being that 175. And sure, you do violate it by a couple of points, but you get the gist. AMD is moving in this in this chop chop range, and you can see that over the past couple of days, it's been quite volatile, reaching and traveling to the ends of the, uh, uh, ends of said range. As most of that move comes right off of the opening uh, opening print or opening kind of uh, session there kind of a chop and consolidation reversion in near uh, the end of the day. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking for that reversion on AMD. Are these sellers gonna continue to sell and uh, not really give us any sort of relief? This is a 15 minute chart on AMD and that 177 half is holding as of right now. So let's see if we can get some uh, get some breaks, some, some uh, reversions happening here on the AMD and I would like to get potentially involved with uh, with those uh, with those uh, with that trade if it does come into fruition there but let's see what Nvidia and some of these uh, some of these ETFs are doing real quickly before I pass it back to Adera SMH we'll go to that uh, SMH kind of uh, okay so a little bit of a bounce off of yesterday's highs yesterday I was very aggressive in terms of the short idea on SMH or uh, sorry on on the on the whole uh, chip sector and I was using, I wasn't using an uh, SMH, I was using SOX L to kind of uh, uh, trade that idea. So you can see that SOX L, some interesting price action just underneath that 47. The tape was absolutely beautiful. Kind of it did not want past that. And uh, yeah, even though we were trading in the upper end of, uh, of the day's kind of action, that 47, when it doesn't want that, when it shows me that kind of stuff on the tape, I do want to get short. And that confluence with that 900 uh, uh, on Nvidia as well. So lots of confluence for that uh, for that sock sell short yesterday and today, kind of an outlier move, a little overbought, and it does come in quite nicely. I was looking for VWAP, but it comes in quite hard and heavy, right slamming through that VWAP into the end of day with that market move that we had. So quite a quite an interesting action there on Sox L. So that's what's happening there with the chips. Let's take a quick look at Nvidia as well. Nvidia still kind of uh, to the downside there. So yeah, it is looking quite weak as it is coming right back into some of yesterday's prices here, 890. So like we said, that 900 can't really hold yesterday either. So that was, uh, that was some strong confluence. And uh, yes, uh, Sean is still short Nvidia. 
and Nvidia is looking quite uh, quite weak there uh, below that 900. Can't really get back pa uh, past that 900. Sure, it tries. It gets a few points, five or six points above that 900. But on that back through, that fail, oh boy, do those sellers come in hot and heavy every single time over the past uh, past few days, it would seem, on NVIDIA. So let's see if that kind of comes back into fruition. Let's see what NVIDIA does. Does it break fresh lows? As we speak, it is breaking fresh lows there. So congrats on those shorts there, Darren. Thank you. I did get out a little bit too early, but I have to say, you know what? I'm still going to be proud of myself. As Sharif has said, and something I really take to heart is, you're always going to be angry as a trader. And here's the thing. I, I'm really proud with how I did manage this trade. This was, for, for one, not usually the type of trade I take in that it was not a range. I got involved near low of day at the time, which is also something I'm usually not want to do. Uh, but then I got, you know, I had these reloads planned. And thank you. I really want to shout out Sean. He's not here right now, but I'm going to give a Sean shout out because I was initially trying to get into this at 895 uh, 01s for the ad. And Sean was like, why, why would you add it like 01s? Because if you wanted to not break 805, 895 it kind of has to break 895 yeah. for you to get filled and i was like that's a really good point <laughs> so then i decided to go about uh 79s right just shy of 80s then i did fat finger out some of it for basically flat we didn't really lose much there but then i was really proud i got bottom wick at the time and or more more around bottom wick at the time right so i was and i used that level just based on where we wicked down to previously then i was like kind of a little bit nervous we started breaking back up here i did add at um at 894, I think 60s here, that we kept scalping out then, and I saw that we broke above into 895, 20s, but we couldn't bring 895, 50s. I said to Dara, add once more. I did add again at 895, I think just shy of 895, 894, 90s, again, using Sean's advice there to help with, with the additions. And then we dropped below, and I got out the rest of this at, at 894.20. So I could have stayed in a little bit longer, but I, I am really happy uh, with this trade, and I'm really proud that I took it because it's not the type of trade I'm usually comfortable with. And again, now that he's actually here, I'm going to give another Sean shout out. Thank you for helping me with those with those reload levels. Much appreciated. And shout out to Sean also because he's still killing it in the short. I am pretty sure. There we go. Hey yo. Oh, Google Long, eh? Oh, okay. Google Long. Let's take a quick I'm going to quickly pull up Google's Tesla up here, too, because I know some people wanting us to look at Tesla. Yeah, sorry, I can't even believe we haven't mentioned Tesla yet, guys. I apologize. There's been so much action here with these chips. But what a look here on TSLA. We are heading into 174 now. Wow. This 9 EMA yeah. bounce is great. I want to get, I need look to get involved that. in this. This this bounce off that 9 EMA is something else. I swear there's like at least 10 to 12 Three minute green candles to the upside in a row. Yeah, sorry guys, we didn't look at this earlier. It's hard in a day like this when there are so many catalysts, but I think this Tesla is a fantastic look. Cyber truck into the upside, uh, I would say that for sure. So, congrats to anyone involved in this long, fabulous look. I'm also really going to quickly take a look at this uh, super chat. Guilty Gunner, thank you so much for your 199 super chat. Thailand and Colombia working to make cannabis legal. Yeah, I know a lot of countries have been trying to work on that in the works. Let's take a look at MSOS. Shout out to Fabian mentioning this one to me earlier today over at La Big Desk. Yeah, MSOS up 4%. This is a nice look on MSOS. Holy cow. Not a lower low in sight. Sorry, Trenda, I just bumped you there. Not a lower low in sight. And I guess, yeah, Trenda would like this because this is a trending oh, yeah. ticker. That is for sure. On MSOS with all this positive, these positive cannabis headwinds. I mean, look at this bounce off that 9 EMA here. We make a slightly lower high and we go back to, v but we don't make a lower low. So MSOS is like, uh-uh, I'm going to keep going higher. Pun very intended there. And then we do have another bounce off view off. This one, uh, it wants all the smoke. Again, pun very intended here on MSOS. We did make a slightly lower high here though, but again, not a lower low in sight really with the exception of this move down into VWAP. So I wanna see what we do here in um, MSOS. Uh, yeah, let, let's see, I, I'm not obsessed yet with MSOS, but if it makes a higher high or if it keeps being rangy, I might be. So I like that look at MSOS. The, that potential AMD long is still a, a really interesting look, I think. But I know you were about to mention Google. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, there. no worries. Um, yeah, go, uh, Google, uh, Sean, Sean was talking about Google being a dollar in the money. So I did pull it up there on the uh, on the goggle. We saw that after hours kind of move uh, there. Quite, uh, quite interesting. Nice little pop and slam right back in. I was like, do we get that continuation sell off of the open? That 152 holds quite nicely. 154 testing right now. But take a quick look at this. I do want to get short on this name real quick. Uh, what? What just happened? 
Ooh, okay, never mind. Uh, that, that dropped much faster. I was like, okay, well, I kind of uh, hit the bid there. I thought I hit the bid, and uh, the bid dropped even, even harder there on, uh, on the Disney. So well, I'll stay a little bit patient there. Uh, but uh, okay, so anyways, Apple moving to the upside. Apple very strong as well uh, alongside some of these other names. There goes Intel. Oh boy, I'm not even looking. 174, there comes the high. Bye-bye, shorts. Let's go. Let's see if we can pre uh, break those highs. So this is the trade I was kind of waiting for in the morning and it comes in a little bit later. Let's see if these 75 sellers are, are going to be here. Market quite strong. Look at that. Look at that. It's reverting the reversion right now on the market. So uh, let's see. Tesla also screaming to the upside. That's absolutely crazy. And I saw somebody in the chat uh, list out a bunch of names that they're watching and one of them was GE. And oh boy, look at this con uh, continuation on GE. This was this was one of my, uh, one of my uh, top ideas yesterday and I kind of missed out out on the long but take a look at that continuation 136 yesterday comes in today breaks yesterday's high at 148 trading 151s GE quite strong we know that energy has been moving uh, quite nicely as well we know that oil has been moving around as well so uh, yeah this energy ticker GE a classic name an old school uh, uh, kind of a market leader uh, coming right back so uh, I was watching this on the daily let's go to the weekly though and you guys can see this is this may even come back to its form glory here uh, back in back in the 2000s we know that in the, during the dot com uh, during the dot com boomer just before it GE was the leader of the markets and take a look at that a, a little bit of a base in and around 30s and I was jokingly saying over the past couple of years there are GE traders there are, there are uh, traders from the past that still believe in GE coming back to those all those highs and kind of coming back to that that status of, uh, of uh, being one of the leaders in the market hey I was definitely, uh, I, might, I might definitely be wrong on that if GE continues this bid up. Look at this aggressive bid on the <laughs> weekly. This is about to break out of multi-year highs, uh, the high being at 2016, so 158 on GE. If that breaks out, next stop 200, stop after that 298. Do we break all-time highs? Oh boy, is that strength quite aggressive as of right now. So a little bit of a continuation happening there on GE from yesterday's aggressive action there. We saw that a couple days ago. It did do some nice, uh, nice arvol. So maybe some big boys get catching that dip by off of this 136 kind of wick, and then pushing right back in. Who knows? But that strength on GE over the past, uh, past year, past weeks has been quite aggressive and quite nice here. So Intel pushing into that 75s. Let's see if this area stays a place to sell. Or do we kind of break and crack through some of those levels from yesterday and catch a little bit of a squeeze as it did have an aggressive selling yesterday uh, all day through some of these levels here. So look at that aggressiveness. You know what? I'm going to take some off right there. Thank you. Come again. But I still have a little bit on. I do want a lot more. I had a lot more here. But again, I got to do better at not being as aggressive when the trade is there and staying nimble. Again, I'm going back to this because I'm realizing that I need to be a lot more nimble with my trading. When it's ranging, sure, you can have a long, long bias. You can have a short bias. Who cares? The stock is going to do what the stock is going to do. If it's going to range, I got to stay nimble enough to be like, all right, well, this is the range. Uh, sell here, buy here, sell here, buy here, regardless of long or short and then kind of continue that trade until that range kind of gives some direction. And sure, it happens to be that right now that bias came in quite aggressively into those 70s, uh, back into those 70s where, yes, sellers have been a little bit dominant on the day, but look at that. Yesterday's kind of end of day consolidation high uh, off, of the pre uh, off of the opening session, chops around, can't really get back through, and now we are attempting to push through that again. So the question becomes, do these sellers, we know that 48, 80 was interesting yesterday as well. Do those sellers that broke below that 4, 480, do those guys come right back in and does that pressure come right back in on Intel? Or do we get a little bit of reversion here? What is AMD doing? Is AMD reverting yet? I think that reversion, if and when it does come in, could be quite juicy, quite nice. But uh, you got to keep an eye on this one there. It could come in just as aggressively as, as the selling came in. We are making a quite an interesting and distinct consolidative base here in and around that 177 on AMD. And uh, Disney 
that was the ticker that I tried to punch into short uh, for a potential reversion. And as soon as it kind of, as soon as I punched it, the bid dropped by another uh, 10 pennies. And I was like, all right, well, if you're gonna do that on my on my remove liquidity punch, I kind of want to stay away from that for for a little bit and let that kind of. Uh, pan out. Let's see if that 120 really is some resistance or we're just chopping and churning uh, in and around these levels here. So let me know what you guys have on watch. I am kind of uh, looking for the next trade. NVIDIA, oh boy, Sean, you still in that short? That short is printing right now as NVIDIA pushing some fresh lows on the day here. Clearly, Intel is disconnected from these chips doing its own thing. Yeah, I don't think Intel catalog. has the intel of what its chip buddies are doing at all. <laughs> Intel's like that one chip in the bowl. Like, you know, where, like the manufacturer accidentally put like the wrong kind of chip in there and you like go to have, I don't know, your Lay's. <laughs> yeah, you find a like, hot Cheetos in your old dress. Exactly. You know? Thank you. Thank you, Oki, for helping me ju- like figure out how to, to finish that metaphor. There you go. That, that would be exactly the experience. Um, but yeah, AMD, though, this is interesting. I totally agree with you. When this pops, one pops up, it can be... Pretty massive, but but here is my thing, because I do have a caveat with this. Why I went short, I know I was talking about the long, but my I don't want to get involved in the long yet, and I say that because we had this massive pop up here on this green candle, and then we back again to the downside. So I think the AMD buying is going to be on the horizon, but I don't think it's here yet. So I don't want to get AM destroyed. I took a tiny position here, very, very small, just trying to scalp this down to the bottom of this little range, but I don't think we're going to get that. I'm only giving this about... What, like 12 pennies? If we get into 70s, I have to leave. I don't know what that face was, but it'll be. I will be uh, beheading the trade. I will be cutting it off at at the root. We'll be getting out. We're basically flat on this, so I have have no... I'm not going to leave yet, but I am getting increasingly nervous. I totally agree with what Obi said about how when this one... If this one pushes back up, I think it could do so with a viciousness. But that's why we're not adding. We're keeping our small baby position, and we're just practicing getting involved in this market. Also, yeah, I mean, Tesla again, I'm sure Elon is Elong right now. Someone was mentioning earlier uh, 176 Tesla, and I was thinking 176 Tesla, but now it's like, oh my gosh, 176 Tesla. We're at 175.25. This could be a really real possibility. Let's look at the Whoa. daily for some potential levels of resistance on this name, because I do think we could be feeling the resistance in this one. I mean, to me, What's look at that? We had this bottom earlier. Where is this? Oh, we're already above this. It's like 175. Okay, so the next level that I think is interesting these double tops here. This is 177, just shy of 178. To me, this double top, these big red candles before that larger blast to the downside, I want to see what we do at 178. Tesla right now is driving like they're, it's on like a freeway or something going 100 miles an hour. But I think if it does have a bit of a speed bump, I think that speed bump may lurk at this um, 178 area. So I want to watch what Tesla does there. Uh, if there, I'm trying to see if there's any other potential levels here even earlier, but I think we've mostly eclipsed some of these earlier levels here. And by that, I mean this little chop and churn consolidation range, which again, ends around that 178 area. So I do think 178 could be a little bit spicy for TSLA. So let, let's see what we do here. Also shout out to Elon in the chat, mentioning uh, LVS. So I'm going to pull that Mm, up here, Las Vegas Sands. Also, this is pretty funny. So I was sending Sean some notes on Levi's last week. And for some reason, accidentally put the ticker as LVS in the notes. But the notes were actually on Levi's. And then Sean's like, wait, is this LVS or Levi's? And I was like, I promise it is Levi's. But yeah, so apparently my brain said Levi Strauss equals LVS. So good times. Um, Lee, this is a nice little double bottom here in Las Vegas Sands on the daily chart. I think we need to kind of break above these higher highs here. I, this, what does concern me is today, this little um, wick here on, on the daily chart. We did have this kind of wick up into that previous high at 54.50. Now we're back down into 53. So to me, a skosh concerning a skosh, you know, putting your hand on your chin like author pose type moment here for me and LVS. But I think honestly, other than that, this is a nice look off this pseudo double bottom around 50. Congrats to you, Elon, if you're in this trade. This one is a very nice look indeed. Let's look at the intraday on this. because I, Yeah, I mean, this intraday look, sorry, I didn't know if you were thinking of the daily or the intraday. Let's look at the intraday because this is also nice. We have this chop and churn here around 1030 at that 53 level. Then we push to the upside. We make a higher low and we continue to, to grind higher as Elon said here. So it's a really nice look. Also, I do have to address this uh, very funny message from Brad Gober in the chat. Tesla jumped in the SpaceX rocket ship. 
I mean, yeah, that, that sums up all that price movement now. We are breaking down, though. Not breaking down, that's a strong word. We're kind of pushing down a little bit here. I think maybe this EV needs a bit of a charge here because we break, we go down into this 174 area, but we're covering pretty well as well. Uh, this five, these five minute candles though, it's not a bearish engulfing because of how strong that bullish candle was, but this could be an area to keep an eye out for on Tesla. Also AMD, if you would like to make a decision in either direction, I literally will take either direction. That way I know whether to hold them or where to fold them. But AMD right now, Seeing a little bit of top insurance, I think I may be getting pushed out of this. I think this might be going higher, but I have no reason to leave yet. I'm giving this to 70, so let's see what we AM do in AMD. How was your Disney short? Uh, Disney short is working working out there. I, I, I guess those 90s weren't too bad there. Uh, I, I, I'm looking at my keys here. Why didn't I get filled when I punched those 95s? Because I, I tried to remove liquidity, and uh, it, it seems like my uh, my my cross key on the nice is a little bit uh is a little bit uh funky here so i'm just changing that around um i didn't realize that uh the sell is actually it's it's kind of a it's it's selling above the bid so it's like that's clearly not what i not what i want i want to sell into i want to sell into the bid so i'm just going to change that as of right now uh so boom right there let's see if that kind of uh works a little bit better here because i do want to be able to remove liquidity effectively uh if that's the case okay boom okay i got that key set up nicely fixed that out I did not realize that. Uh, I guess uh, this, this, again, the setup here is a little bit different than the, than the one uh, back at my desk. So um, I guess uh, I didn't really realize that on the nice uh, keys, my uh, cross key is a little bit uh, what was was miss. Uh, misprogrammed I guess uh, so yeah Disney kind of pulling back off of that 120 maybe that's what we were looking for uh, a little earlier there uh, let's see if it comes into fruition VWAP down here at the 1950s so I did want that 20 and didn't really get I wasn't able to get that 20 so let's see how far uh, Disney can kind of come back in that 120 acting uh, a little bit of an inch as a little bit of an interesting level yesterday and uh, coming in today let's take a quick look at that as well so there goes the NQ and the ES to the upside here is uh, Intel following in step not yet I do want to get more Oops, did not want did not mean to do that okay so um, right here let's throw up a VWAP right here so you can see that's kind of weird but um, yeah so yesterday end of day end of day consolidation was in and around this 119 but just before that that selling comes in quite aggressively into that 120 now I kind of messed up yesterday I did not have the right idea and I had too much aggression for the long side. I was trying to, I was, I was being like, all right, well, this, this, I'm looking for the reversion. I'm looking for the bounce. Doesn't really happen. This, cra this shelf cracks right here. Get, stop out. I try to get long again here. This shelf cracks. Stop out. I'm like, well, well, boy, you got stopped out of a shelf crack two times in a row. That was definitely a sell. No reason to get long here on uh, on that uh, on that name. Especially look at this. Look at this selling that comes in. Look at these candles that are very very distinct. Just opening back back to back, uh, uh, just opening and just going lower, opening, going lower, opening, going lower. So some aggressive selling off of that 120 happened yesterday on Disney. Let's see if those sellers can kind of come back in as it struggles that 12020 and uh, maybe just some relief to VWAP, right? I'm only looking for VWAP. If it wants to bid all day, that's perfectly fine as well. I'm just looking for a nice, healthy little pullback into VWAP. If it'll have me, I will take it. Apple still pushing for fresh highs. Uh, Spy is attempting high a day right now. High a day is 23, 523.70. We are trading at 23.55. So just a few pennies away from that one there on the Spy. And clearly look at the ES. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's off of the ES, right? So ES pushing for its highs as well. Let's see if, uh, if NQ can violate this wick. That was an aggressive wick on the 15 minute off of this 18,560-ish uh, area. And look at that, we're coming right back into it with a vengeance, holding that 18, uh, 18 half there, 18.5, a little bit of a 20 point uh, push below it. But look at those wicks, pick up, pick up, pick up, and then pick up on the 15, hold, and then rip right back through. So that's what's been happening there on the NQ. Alphabet still going, uh, going to the upside there. 155 is almost coming in. Amazon, 185 almost. There's a little bit of a bid on Disney. So let's see if we can get some better prices here in and around that, uh, in and around that 119. Uh, uh, sorry, in and around that 120 there uh, on Disney. So I'll stay a little patient for that one. 
Um, let me know in the chat what you guys are trading out of AMD. That's you saying that. Yeah, that was me out of AMD. Um, yeah, we did get out. Now I'm trying to get back in the long. But right now, Ooh, all we want to get into is Neil's lesson of the day. Ah, uh, yes. Weird hand. Welcome to the lesson of the day. And it's going to be day two news plays. So everyone gets all excited when there's a big news event, and the stock goes up, stock goes down, it goes absolutely all over the place. You're like, hey, extra volume, extra volatility. Boom, we're going to be all over it. We're going to have some fun. And then the next trading day comes in, and you want the shiny new thing, because that's how we are as human beings, right? Give me the shiny new thing. Um, I always want to have what's the next big trade or, or whatever it might be. If, if you're looking at like one day it's AMD and the next day it's NVIDIA and the next thing it's SMCI. However, there are times when if you were looking at something that had enough of a catalyst to give you a big volume spike, to give you a big move, you don't want to get away from it the next day as a trader. Why? Because the opportunity might still be there. And it might be a big opportunity, or it just might be an easy opportunity. And when I say an easy opportunity, I don't mean to tell you trading is easy. It's just that the read of the movement can be easier because the news event has given you a lot of good information uh, to deal with. So the great thing and the reason why I'm doing this lesson is because previous day yesterday, we had Apple in the afternoon on some robot news. Uh, I chuckle because everyone keeps thinking it's going to be a vacuum, but that's not, clearly not going to be the case. So you had Apple in the news, that was fantastic. Boeing had a big news move uh, as well. Disney had its shareholder vote. So you had a wealth of names that set up some day two type of plays. And what you want to look for in a situation like this is, okay, first thing, did it matter? Right? Because if the news didn't matter the day before, then who cares? Right? Let's be real for a second. And so when the news dropped of Apple, and we'll start with that example, when the news dropped, did it do something significant? I mean, it ran the high of the day, had the biggest volume spike of the day at that moment. Let me actually just go up. The biggest volume spike of the day, so that's a big che check of the box. Did it have a big move? Well, okay, it ran the top and then flushed like, about $1.50, so the entirety of the afternoon range got taken out. Then it even rebounded all the way back to try at the close to get back to the break even where it was when the news came out and right back into a double bottom. So volatility, volatility increased in a heartbeat. Volume went through the roof. So that's going to check a major box. So what can you do with that? I say this on Fed days. I say this when you have an 830 number, like a big jobs report or a CPI. When you have a liquidity vacuum, and that's what happens, that's what causes stocks to move like this when there's news, is you get a liquidity vacuum, then all of a sudden it'll just increase volatility. Where do the algos and where do the market makers want to come back in? And then ask yourself if that's going to help you. So very clearly on Apple, you had a ton of activity as it broke down through 170 and then as it resisted 170. You then had a bunch of support at 169 to 169 half, like down in this range. So those are your areas of interest. This is where people are making markets. That's where decisions are going to get made. When the news is bad, sellers are all about the 170 and worried about this 169.50 holding. And the buyers are happy that there's support down here, both from the morning and then in the afternoon. So when you come to look at this in the next day of trade, it'd be easy when it's holding out here at 170.20 to just say, ah, well, if it breaks out yesterday's high, go long. You know, that's a very standard play. If you weren't thinking about the news, you might just allow it to break this top and go long. You'd be long in the pre-market if you did that. Or maybe you'd wait until, you know, 9.40 to make your trade. However, remember, the key price levels, it rejected 170 twice on that news. You're now gapping the next day and holding 170 in the pre-market. When you hold that level, that is one of your two key price areas to trade. So when it dips down in, look how quickly it bounces off that 170 level when it gets down there. And then to boot, remember I said about the high of the day break, well, what happens if it starts taking out resistance on the way? Does it hold the next resistance up? This is where it broke, and this is where resistance was when the news broke, 170, 30, and 40. It then holds that off VWAP. It then breaks yesterday's high and holds that again off VWAP. So essentially, all you had to do on the day two play 
Is observed, is it gapping up? Answer, yes. Is resistance turning into support? Already happened in the pre-market. It dips into that price. Resistance point one in the afternoon, bounce. Resistance point two, bounce again, and then it goes off to the races. So in this particular case, it was in play, but it went the other direction. It wasn't even, a, it wasn't even with the direction of the news, but the levels that you're trading off of are clear as day because you paid attention to those liquidity gaps. And I said there were multiple movers. Uh, Boeing also was in the news for all the wrong reasons yesterday. And you know, I'm not going to try to spin the story. It's actually going to be up today, but I'm not going to spin this as good. Production down, and it absolutely craters. It broke a flat bottom here at 187. Like that was the big event. There's your 187 breakdown. Now it was at 188. There's your next level when the news hit. So this is when the news hit. It was at 188. This is where the happy stock was. It then broke a 187 support level. It tested back up to 188 and absolutely cratered. So at the open, what can you expect here? In this particular case, it was gapping up too far away from any long bottom opportunities. Like the same thing in Apple would have been looking for bids in the 185 range if I was trading it the way Apple was. So without the ability for the long and knowing it's going to be in play, well, it's set up for a short back into that 187. You just had to wait for it. At the open, it wicked the top here, couldn't break 87, uh, 87 half, which is this support in there. You short it back through 87. It ends up not following through down to 85. Now, obviously, I left something on the table not getting out 85 halves, holding for 85. Trail out at the time, I actually thought it was a bad trail out when I took it. It ended up being a good one. But look at where this triple top is now. Is it a coincidence that we're getting right into that breakdown point and you're unable to punch through? So once again, it's that liquidity vacuum. You wait for the prices where everybody seemed comfortable to make a market before the news, when after the news and it was bouncing and ripping off the bottom, that's where the sellers jump right back in, the same place where they were comfortable making a market. And if it gets there the next day, you almost think of it like when a small cap gets into one of those bag holder zones. And you've all seen that before. Like, uh, I'm just going to say sundial because whatever, sundial. Like in one of those weed stocks, you see something that's been down for weeks upon weeks and months upon months, and then it has a three-day spike on news into a level that everybody's been waiting for the last year for it to get back to because that's where it had like a wall of resistance. And that's break even for a lot of people that got trapped into it. You're going to get a lot of sellers in those zones for obvious reasons. It's not dissimilar with a day two news play on a more uh, substantive stock like a Boeing or like an Apple. When it gets to that level, probably a lot of transactors that are day trading swinging at those prices. So that's where you want to try to wait for it. You know, Boeing, it was a bit of a different story from Apple in that Apple showed you the levels and then gave you the long off the bottom. Boeing rallied as well, if we can come back to the chart, and it would be easy to, in hindsight to say, well, it gapped up the second day. Why weren't you just long? Because it didn't really set up. Like if the long showed me that down here at the 185 would have been the important price, these are dark pool wicks. Really, you're trading up here at 185.8, 186 would be your entry price. It's a little bit far away, especially when your low yesterday was 184.20. It's a difficult structured trade. Ultimately, risk to reward, in hindsight, it looks good. But you can take the short with a little bit more confidence in your levels as it pops up into it. And it's just about setting up trades. Everything in trading is why am I looking at the stock where do I want to get in? What prices am I executing? And what direction do I want to go? And then from there, you just execute the trades. Well, the first part of that's already done for you when you have a day two news play. You already know there's action on the stock because there was significant news the day before. So listen to those levels. And you'll notice most times I'll pull up daily charts and a 15 minute chart uh, so you can see where the stock has been. In this particular case, I don't care. I'm only looking at the significant levels when the news came out the day before. That's how specific this play is. So the next time you get a massive volume spike on a stock that you know, you love, that you trade, pay attention to those key levels. You have the patience to wait for the setups off of those levels and then just sort of hammer in when you get that opportunity. Do not assume that just because it's yesterday's news, it can't be today's trade. That's your lesson of the day and that's the real deal. 
Thank you so much uh, to Neil for that wonderful lesson of the day there. Uh, definitely, I think day two plays are really interesting. Definitely something to keep in mind. We have some earnings in today, like Levi trying those tomorrow, that type of thing for sure. So thank you very much, Neil, for going over that. Also, um, to the person asking about Soundbound, Soundhound News, I could not find any. Uh, right now, I did just get involved in Tesla, so just try to trade this one to the top of this range. I have another dip I set. Again, really small positions, just working on building these positions and trying to take setups I don't always take. So that's what's happening here with Tesla. But yeah, Soundhound, let's take a look at Soundhound because I know um, we had a little bit of uh, barking about Soundhound earlier. Obi went over Soundhound. But yeah, I mean, this one is a, it's a really nice, this is a, the three-minute chart. Just bouncing off the 9 EMA here. This this little candle is fascinating. So we get really chop and churned here at this 558 level around 12. We have this one little wick to the downside, and then we spring up like a trampoline, continuing to bounce up here. So really nice look here on Sound Hound. Sound the alarm uh, for Sound Hound. So it's a really nice look on that one. What else are, are, are people looking at here? Blackberry ripping, says Nick Free. I know Blackberry really? had earnings. That, did you see that movie, Blackberry? There was that was so good. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it was Jay Baruchel and these other Canadian dudes. And um, it was also the guy who played Dennis in um, It's Always Sunny. Glenn, uh, Glenn Howerton. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Fabian. But yeah, so um, so it was, it was really good. It's about like the, the kind of history of Blackberry and stuff. And very Canadian because Blackberry is a Canadian company. Yes. But yeah, I mean, look at this move up here on Blackberry. Kind of moved out here. We have a pseudo double bottom at the 305. And then we bounce right back up. 305, I guess, shout out to Miami. But let's see what we do here. If we can make a newer high, let's zoom out a little bit. At, oh, we're in the wrong direction. At 310s, because this, this consolidative top is, is wild. So I think breaking above that would be quite paramount, I think, indeed, for BB. Uh, how are your trades doing before we get into the lesson of the day? Um, they're, they're going all right. Uh, I did kind of chase into that AMD, uh, AMD break. I was like, all right, well, I think I, I think I can give it, uh, give it to, uh, the risk down here, uh, comes right back in, slams right back in and kind of, uh, stops me out, comes right back as well. So we are forming a little bit of a base here. So maybe I can get involved again with a little bit of a wider kind of, uh, kind of risk, but I'll give it some more time. Just got stopped out. Let's see if, if this, uh, if this high kind of breaks, that's definitely I, I, that's something that I definitely like. But if it can come back down here, I guess that's the place to really, really kind of buy some more. Uh, and it did kind of come right back in and then rip right back up. So um, we'll see. I'm willing to, I'm willing to give this one uh, some room, some time as well. Uh, let's see if if that reversion kind of comes in. But that NQ and that ES actually, yes, actually broke those highs. NQ attempted, can't really get quite there. So uh, let's see, let's see what we got in store with some of those names here. I'm looking for the pullback on some of these as well. If we are going to slow down Apple, taking a little bit of a breather there as well. Spy kind of, uh, like we said, the ES clipped its highs. So let's see what we do in and around here. Intel still holding as of right now. Um, here, Intel still holding as of right now. And uh, yeah, there goes, uh, there goes AMD. So potentially, uh, it, potentially looking like it may or may not break out there. I also like the Google uh, push here as uh, it attempts to push that 154, uh, sorry, 154 halves. And now maybe are we gonna take a little bit of a breather here with Apple also potentially turning and Alphabet also potentially turning. What is Nvidia doing? Nvidia is still kind of uh, chopping, um, chopping underneath its VWAP here I'm seeing. So uh, yeah, it's right at, right at VWAP right now. I have VWAP at 897.35 here on, uh, on my chart. So. Uh, let's let's see what we got going on. I do I did really want this AMD long, um, but uh, I guess I'm willing to chase if it shows me the shows me the right thing again. I did chase on the initial kind of push here, but take a look at that. As soon as I chase, you get punished, slams right back down almost instantly. Let's go to the one minute chart and see how fast that was. Look at that. Pretty much, that would have been a beautiful uh, trade if I just had it the other way, short to, if I sold here 
and I bought here, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's just a joke. We gotta, you know, sometimes trading, people say trading's easy, you just gotta buy low, sell high, or uh, you know, buy high and then sell higher. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a chop happening here on AMD. There goes Intel, let's see if Intel can break some of its highs with this market uh, attempting for, uh, for a push here. So I'm watching that Google, I do wanna play a potential reversion if it'll happen, but if we're gonna continue to catch a bid, I do not wanna stand in the way of that. So uh, I do gotta, I gotta stay a little patient for that. Disney kinda coming in, Disney came into that VWAP we were looking for, so it did pull back off of that 20. It did kinda break this, tr this trend we got going on in the morning there. So uh, let's see what Disney does in and around some of this. But we're below opening range as well, below this pre-market uh, pre highs, below yesterday's kind of this consolidation off of yesterday. Couldn't really get past that 120 with any distinction coming back into VWAP. So let's see what Disney can have in store for us. There goes AMD, wow. So I uh, got a little, uh, got a little uh, left, as, uh, left to the side as uh, this move is kind of going uh, right now, 188 coming in. So right there, that break, it was pushing that. So as soon as it pushed, it pulled right back in. So maybe that's not the move here, uh, playing the breakouts, definitely getting a little bit, uh, getting a little bit unforgiving there. So I think I, could, I just gotta wait for good prices to come in if I like the long, if we're gonna sustain higher lows and higher highs, which we kind of are right now, let's look for a higher low to get involved in, not necessarily punching into a higher high uh, it, uh, aggressively at 12.30 in the middle of the day, right? So it's clearly uh, a mistake on my part there and it uh, didn't really work out, but let's wait for the next trade potentially uh, on, another, on another dip. Let's see if the dip dips a little bit higher than before. Uh, but uh, with the market kind of looking like it may want to breather here, I'm looking at Apple specifically. Um, so let's take a quick look at Apple. So look at that little bit of uh, a pullback here. First red candle on the 50, uh, on the five minute in a while. On the 15 minute, we got five more minutes for this candle to print. And we kind of broke, uh, broke this strong trend that we're having. Look at, the, look at this strength, right? These, these candles don't even have uh, wicks, not even significant ones if, if they do. So it's back to back buying that happened on Apple off that 171, we go right into 172 and we're catching a little bit of a breather as of right now. So let's see what we do with that 172 on the Apple. Uh, Disney catching a little bit of a bid there. So uh, I am potentially looking to get out of it if it's gonna catch a strong bid. But if we come back into 120s and hold, I do want more of that one. So uh, we'll stay a little patient to see if that one comes in. I'm looking at Google as well. Maybe I gotta get involved with this one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Google's an interesting one. I also was um, was stood up by AMD there. I was like, hey, AMD, want to go hang out? Want to take this long? AMD was like, oh, sure, Dara. I was initially in the short. I was really proud of how I handled this short. My level was about 70s because of these wicks earlier, and I knew if we picked up, we could really rip here. Um, so, I, you know, I got out of the, law, the short pretty happy with that. I was ready to get back in the long, and Opie and I were talking about this actually off camera. I was like, oh, I really like the long, and AMD swept me off my feet and then, you know, kicked me to the curb here. We, this is a really, really, really small position, so uh, I, not, not too pressed about that. But we're still seeing some resistance here at this 80 level. So let's see, like, to me, these, these big wicks to the upside of sellers overwhelming buyers are a bit suspect. I want to wait and see. My other area of resistance I'm going to be watching out for is look for this bear flag break down here at uh, that 178 level. We're knocking on the door of that level now. So let's see if that door will swing open or it gets slammed in our faces. I say R, but I'm not involved in this name right now, but I could be. Tesla, also, I want to talk about this. I didn't get back involved in this because I didn't want it to be FOMO. I was really proud of my initial plan for this trade. We get involved at 175s, then we add a little bit at that um, 174.90s, I was watching, I was like, oh, we kind of get this high, then we break back down to me, it looked like it could be a flat top break. I was pleased as punch. And then, speaking of punching, I punched out too early. We had a fat finger moment. And it's not, because I've been better about this lately, but today here on Tesla, yesterday on NVIDIA, or not yesterday, earlier today, it's still been a week. Earlier today in NVIDIA, going back to my old habits, 
I'm unfortunately not proofreading my trades before I enter them. So a little bit, little bit upset about that, but you know what? All you can do is learn and hopefully um, be less quick about punching into these trades. So I don't want to get involved with Tesla before the lesson of the day because that would be a hard Lesla to learn that didn't that work better in my head. But yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, Tesla, Tesla's a pretty strict teacher. So as we do this lesson of the day, I'm going to let her do her thing, 21. If this range is still there to greet me when I'm back, I'd be pleased. But I don't want to force it. And then the reason I didn't get back in here, because I was considering it, is I didn't want it to be a FOMO move. As I got out, we were having a harder and harder time holding on to 174.70s. And that's why I was a little bit sketched out. Of course, it did end up recovering. So that's very much my bad. But that was why I didn't add back in, because I was a little bit worried about it being a bit of um, a FOMO play. So there we go. But also, here we go. Also, yeah, um, pub... Pug noob in the chat. Um, I yeah, just went over Tesla here. Tesla's really strong. I think it's a bit of a flat top break situation. We're coasting off that 9 EMA really well. But again, as Sharif always says, participate, don't anticipate. We cannot assume the move is going to be here until um, until we actually see it. So let's see what Tesla does with 40s at this 175.40 area and see if we high of day right now. By the way, 175.68, definitely just on a wick basis. Looks like we might be trying to test that now. I will be keeping an eye on the side chart if we see anything big we will give it to you as we talk about trading in the pre-market so let's get into it quick introduction to this here um basically pre-market trading is going to be that trading of course that occurs between nine uh sorry not between nine between four and 9 30 a.m eastern time so that's when the market begins and basically this period allows traders to respond to and trade with the news before, as we get it, and before the market opens. So this initially, uh, this pre-market trading used to be exclusive to these higher net worth funds and institutional investors, but advancements in electronic communication communications networks or ECNs have basically allowed individual networks to get a piece of the action as well. This period is really important because it allows you to react to that some of that overnight or early morning news and some uh, late night or early morning earnings reports, which of course offer chances for early actions in the market. However, it can pose a challenge because you do have reduced liquidity and the hot larger spreads, which can lead to some heightened volatility and make things a little bit riskier. We will get into risk in a moment, but we're gonna have to see what happens here. Um, but yeah, we also, pre-market catalyst also definitely worth noting as well. So as we did mention, earnings reports are gonna be one of those. Um, also some small cap news releases, economic data and comments from Fed speakers are always things to keep an eye on uh, here. And if you have a company announcing, for example, better than expected earnings before the market opens, it could lead to an increase in the stock's price in pre-market trading because of some excitement and positive reactions from investors. Uh, but if you have, uh, for example, a, a negative uh, earnings release or economic data that the market didn't react positively to. Of course, as we saw today, the market was loving that number that we got uh, with that jobless claims. But if it wasn't, we could have had a move down here, right? So it's really important to see what we do in the pre-market because it can really influence the type of trading we get during the day. But also... A lot of things to keep an eye out for as well in these markets. Yeah, for sure. Some things to look for in pre-market trading is uh, pre-market levels, right? So pre-market levels um, uh, can be defined, especially if you have a catalyst, as Adira just mentioned. Um, if you have a catalyst in the pre-market, so let's let's use an example right now. So uh, we have one today. Uh, Levi's had earnings in the pre-market, so something something to look for. Maybe some pre-market highs and lows. So you can see that uh, after hours we had that we had that earnings announcement. You come in today. Let's go to a shorter time frame, five-minute chart. Um, you come in today in the pre-market. You get a little bit of a continuation off of yesterday's after-hour levels and holds above yesterday's high as well. A little bit of a continuation, and then you have this kind of uh, defined high as well at the 21. So. What do we do with said prices there, right? We kind of talk about this off the open. We just rip off of that pre-market high. So pre-market highs, uh, something interesting to keep in mind. Pre-market lows as well. And then on, an, on, a, on a catalyst day, like earnings day one, it could prove to be an interesting, uh, interesting place to potentially watch the tape as well. So you can see how it comes back in and holds in and around that same price on this, on this little, uh, little sell-off that we had. And then we are catching a little bit of a bid off of 
said level. So is this a case of support turn resistance, resistance turn support, potentially on a shorter time frame? So uh, directional indicators, again, if the stock is potentially gonna be bullish or bearish, you might get a piece of that information in that pre-market. So that's that could be something to look for is, is that sense of direction based off of how price action and the story of price has kind of built in the pre-market relative to what's what's kind of happening. You can see that it's been kind of trending up, trending up, trending up, and look what happens right off of the open. With the strong volume that comes in, you continue that strength to the upside on Levi's. Now, of course, it's not gonna happen uh, clearly and like uh, in trend like this all the time, but it kind of gives you a gist of, uh, uh, of where to maybe look to see what's going on, uh, on in, uh, in and around that level two and that tape. Uh, around those prices in the pre-market, highs, lows, closing prices. And yeah, it could be just a directional indicator. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a um, thank you very much for going over that. I love the story of prices. That's a good, because I know you've talked as well before about how the market tries to tell stories. And I think that's a, a really cool way of looking at it. something I want to learn more from. Really quickly, I just want to interrupt the lesson. Thank you to Elon for mentioning this in the chat. This massive pop-up and arm here uh, on the three-minute volume. Let's see, volume on this seems... We've had like decent volume on this kind of all day, so this isn't a sig super significant volume spike. But I did want to mention that we are kind of coming into those pre-market high areas of 127.5. So I wanted to put that out there that we did have this nice little push up here on ARM that moved about 60 cents in that one candle. So thank you, Elon, for bringing that one up. That put that one on my side charts. If we see any other movement there, or if we see any catalyst on that, I will let everyone know. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go back to this lesson. Quickly here too, some factors to consider, some factors you might want to keep an eye on here uh, because it, it's really easy to, con or it's essential, it's really important to consider market on open or MOC. Oh, MOO imbalances because they can provide you some clues about the supply and demand for the stock at the market open level. So you'll always see at 925, Neil and Sean will go, oh, the imbalances are out. And so then they can kind of tell you what stocks people are going to be really interested in chomping at the bit to get involved with even before we get um, the, the opening prices, right? So traders will use pre-market levels as well as a guide to plan their trading strategies, but they're advised not to rely on them because you don't wanna, you don't wanna use this, your level as a hard and fast rule, right? It should be more of a guide to kind of give you, give you a sense of how this stock might behave or some levels that might be interesting. But if they break, they break. So, so be very cognizant of that using things as guides or as you know, potential, potential ideas, but definitely not relying on them too heavily. But risks and opportunities are also ample in yeah, the market. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, it, it, risk can, uh, you definitely have to be considerate of, uh, of your risk. Again, regardless of when you're trading, but in the pre-market, maybe a little bit more because uh, trading in the pre-market, uh, as we said before, can be a little bit of a double-edged sword offering both a decent amount of risk and opportunity. So reward, uh, again, something you might want to watch out for is that limited liquidity and wider bid-ask spreads, uh, which are pretty common. And uh, depending on how much volume is happening in the pre-market, right? You don't have that strong volume off of the open just yet, but maybe sometimes you do have volume in the pre-market, which can give you a nice and liquid kind of environment to really trade with. So uh, I, I know there's, uh, there's a lot of people are like, okay, well, yeah, it's valid that you do need to watch out for, uh, wa watch your watch your risk and watch out for wide bid ask spreads and a lack of liquidity in the pre-market. But if it has a catalyst and it's doing a significant amount of RVOL or even volume in general, it's pretty much trading like as if, as if it's the open. I think one of the main distinct, distinguishing factors is that there are no halts in after hours or pre-market uh, as well. So if you have the liquidity there, uh, I think it's it's not as bad and you can definitely risk a little bit tighter, but you got to watch out for watch out for that liquidity in the in the pre-market for sure. And uh, yeah, for example, we talk about kind of uh, news releases that can happen that can give that can provide you with uh, with said opportunity and but sometimes that volume that you're expecting may not be there in the pre-market right the news can be amazing the news can be you know absolutely phenomenal and you're like yeah this has to go up this has to go down but if the pre-market's not doing any liquid uh, any any volume and there's no liquidity you might have some trouble uh, kind of structuring uh, structuring a potential trade and managing your risk in said situation but uh, it's again a lot of opportunity as well it can give you uh, uh, it can give you uh, an opportunity to get in before that surge of volume in the opening session and really position into something that you might be convicted of in the pre-market based off of said catalyst or whatever is in play, right? So again, risk and opportunity, both 
uh, both available in the pre-market. Just got to watch. Uh, just got to uh, watch your risk and kind of keep those factors in mind when you are trading in the pre-market. Yeah, thank you so much for um, for going over that. Yeah, I mean, one example, too, of a pre-market news. Let's talk about some practical examples here. Palantir, this one wasn't on the watch list because it came out a little bit late to get included. Palantir, unfortunately, was not invited to the party by me. But there was that Oracle news that came out right after the, the watch list here, just after 8 a.m., Palantir and Oracle teaming up here. I'm going to get the exact headline. Um, to deliver mission-critical AI solutions to governments and businesses. So teaming up for some... Uh, uh, you got some of the typical Palantir story of a government contract, but you also have uh, the collab with Oracle. So nice look there for PLTR. And you can see here, we're seeing that normal kind of, as Obi was mentioning, a bit more of that stagnant, spaced-out pre-market trading. We were saying there's not a lot of volume, volatility, and then we get the news and poof, Palantir soars here to the upside. And uh, that's one example of a nice pre-market move that you can see is, is on, on a catalyst there. So I, I think that's a nice look. And of course, you can always see as well sometimes when these earnings names drop. Let's look at one of these earnings names from the pre, Conagra Foods, C-A-G. Uh, this one, yeah, I mean, this one a little bit more kind of chop and churnish. But I think, oh, this is actually kind of rangy. But no, the point I'm trying to make is um, you can usually sometimes see here in the pre-market action when these stocks are... are are catching a bid or people are getting involved or selling because th there's this when some of the catalysts are coming and you have these opportunities to get involved earlier in the market. Michael, I've not gone live yet. I have said I just need to go take the, um, the compliance test, which I have not done because I have a lot of things I'm always doing, but I am looking to take that and go live. Probably a good thing I didn't go live this week, though, because with the exception of today, the trading this week has been... Dicey, I'm just going to make that face. <laughs> today, and even today, the only positive name was NVIDIA because we did fat finger on a Tesla. Tesla would have been fine had I proofread my trade. Also, Tesla did break out above that 276 level or 176. I showed it to, I think, maybe Angelica or Angelina in the chat earlier mentioning that 176. I know it was someone mentioning Tesla 176, and I mean, wow, nice look here. We did break above it beautifully. But yeah, I mean... So what I'm trying to say is I am trying, uh, the, the goal is to go live. I just need to sit down and do it. Also, Neil's back down. So I'm going to look at this chat from ScarJo Rabbit. Ask if Neil will eat that crap. I'm guessing you mean Vegemite if Tesla goes green 10% on the day. I want there okay. to be a chance. Tesla, oh, okay, sorry, uh, I almost said Tesla. Neil wants there to be a chance, is what he says. He says he wants something a little bit more realistic, um, but I have relayed your message to Neil, the real deal, in his glasses. What about, 180, what about 180? What about 180, Neil says. Okay. 180? Well, that's less than 10. Hold that up. I don't know, I don't know. Can I do this? This work? Let's go. Let's go with 180. I have a chart up right now. I don't know if you. Even, it doesn't really matter. You guys can all see it. Yeah, the 180 level. I think 10% is a bit much, but I want there to be something that everybody can root for, and that as a Tesla shareholder, I'll be happy if it gets there, even if I've probably shorted it at some point and lost. So let's go with 180 dollars. And to make it even more exciting, it doesn't have to close above 180. If it so much as prints. A single cent above 180, I'll do a, a spoonful of Vegemite, which, by the way, is high in vitamin B, so I'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah, nice. Neil, like, taking that and flipping it and reversing it. So shout out to Neil on that. Shout out to ScarJo Rabbit. I love, I love your name in the chat there, and I also think that's a fun little way to keep things spicy. So right now, um, Tesla is about $3.75 away from Neil's Vegemite um, area there. So uh, what is anyone else looking at here? Amazon, Eric Barker saying 185 on Amazon. Oh, no way. I am not as well-versed in Amazon as the man next to me is. Wow. Um, but, ooh, this is actually a nice, this kind of doing something similar to Tesla. I mean, do you want to talk about it? Because you definitely know Amazon. I mean, like, sure. You, you, I mean, I don't know about that. Like, like I said, I just... Uh, I'm still I'm still trying to learn. I just because I traded tra I traded it a decent amount doesn't mean I, I know the ticker or know uh, much about it. But yeah, no, it's pushing pushing near all time highs. I, I definitely know that uh, just by looking at the chart, right? So uh, that that piece of information is definitely there for everybody to see. And yeah, take a look. 188 188.65 is the all-time high uh, on on uh, Amazon there. And we are just pretty much just a couple of points away
away from that uh, away from that level there on Amazon. So we were talking about this over the past couple of days. It's been slowly making its way, kind of uh, uh, ranging that 175 rip up consolidation in and around 180s, and then now we're getting that trend to the upside off of that consolidation break. You can see that right there happens in the pre-market. We talk about how those pre-market action can be a little significant and sometimes, and I've said this before, sometimes I've observed that some of the best prices can be dealt with in the off-hour in the off hour sessions. That's either the after hours of the pre-market, but you can see looking left, look at that consolidation wick high in and around that 183, right? So I was like, okay, all right, well, we tried that yesterday. We tried to get through that 183 yesterday, 182.80s being the high. Take a look at that pre-market action giving us some information about that, uh, about a potential continuation off of that off of that break 183 holds in the pre-market quite spectacularly and then you get you get that lower high you get that lower uh, sorry higher low higher low higher low boom here we go 185 coming in on uh, AMZN let's see let's pull that up real quick and see if it has any sort of a size or anything in and around that 185 so uh, AMZN let's see Poised for that, uh, poised for that uh, all-time high break. So there is 2,500 lots sitting on top on the ask at 185 on Amazon right now. So let's throw that, uh, let's throw that kind of size filter on so you guys can see it. It'll highlight it for us. So 2,500 lots uh, on my screen right here at 185 happening. So that's a little significant high a day coming in. So we did kind of make this, uh, make this kind of a base here. Uh, opening range high in and around 184.80, so pretty much right there. So let's take a quick little, uh, li quick, quick little look at this 185 as it potentially comes in here, and uh, I can, uh, I can maybe look for, look for a potential trade here. I'm not necessarily going to go for the breakout right away, but that is some significant amount of size. Let's see what we do with that size before kind of getting involved uh, there. If it's going to, if it's going to methodically kind of continue up doing more of the same, I think it may or may not print that size and come in for a little bit of relief before we really get going. But Amazon. Uh, hasn't necessarily done one ATR yet. I don't think it's even doing any sort of R vol today, but that 185, oh boy, is that some size. 185 tens, you can see somebody with 500 lots sitting right there as well on the Amazon. So pretty close to that all time high, Com coming quite a long ways from the lows. And uh, let's see if that 185 can even print as of right now. Yeah, thank Sorry. you. Uh, thank you for going over that. Um, yeah, Obi's Obi's former, um, as we were saying, we, you know, we have to <laughs> divorce stocks sometimes. I know Obi and Amazon were ones very close, but I know you said sometimes you guys still go for coffee and stuff. So, so nice look there on AMZN. Thank you very much for Obi for that one. Also, Phony Baloney in the chat. Great name. Talking about Microsoft saying that it's getting spicy. I agree. I was trying to get involved in this breakout, one of these breakouts here, and then I was not able to get filled. Um, so all good there. Microsoft not inviting me to the party. I am not dancing with Steve Ballmer there. But I think this is a nice look. And I think the one thing too that I would keep an eye on is look at this um, topping tail candle here. We get up into high of day. So 54 is also, I need to leave AMD. So give me a second here. Um, Cause that is a bad look. That was a really small position, but yeah, AMD completely sold off. So I'm just gonna flip to AMD quickly. Um, so we were holding pretty nicely here, made a higher low and then AMD flipped to the downside. I was trying to get out around here and that just obviously did not happen. So we had a really small size. We're still positive on the day, uh, but I think I need to stay away from AMD because this, this name has just been so bamboozling. Obi was talking about earlier. I was talking about earlier. Some people in the chat talking about it earlier. AMD needs some help with, in terms of what direction it would like to go. And right now it has decided it will go swiftly to the downside, but back to Microsoft. I think, so I was a little bit like, oh, this topping tail candle could be a little bit bearish. Then we get a nice little bullish candle here though. We get this little tail to the downside and we close a little bit higher showing we do have buyers overwhelming sellers and then we continue to fly to the upside. Let's take a look at the five minute here on, on Microsoft, same kind of look. I wanna look at the daily to kind of see what levels we're up against here. Microsoft. Boom, hello. This is a nice daily chart. Is that a 420 hold? That is a, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's, yeah, it's a 420 hold. Nice. 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 Microsoft feeling the effects of the weed stocks. No, nice. I'm joking. But we're holding this 420 really well on MSFT with this flat top of 430. I think if we can break above that 430, I think it's really bullish. And look, we did something very similar here. Uh, 
all the way in November. Instead of having a November to remember, oh, yeah. I guess that was the, the end of November here, we spend a lot of December just kind of chopping and churning, bobbing in and out of this 365, 375 level. Then we break above. We see another chop and churn consolidation phase here around these 405, 410 throughout the Mar months of February and March. Then we break up. But as Obi says, 420 holds. So I think this is a really nice look on MSFT. Hey -o. So um, Microsoft, I really like like how we're doing on that one. And I think, yeah, this continued push to the upside, this 90 AMA bounce, to me, I think, thank you. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know. For me? I think so. Nice. Neil did it. Oh, yeah, Neil was just. We don't, it, it's a but, it's like the button whisper. It's a ghost whisper. We don't know who pressed it, but we're happy either way. Also, um, yeah, this Microsoft looks like the, the only way these Bill Gates are opening is to the upside. Also, everyone is flossing. How nice. are you doing over here? I'm, uh, I'm doing all right there. Uh, Sean just uh, pointed out to me that Bitcoin might be pushing for its highs. So I did pull up this IBIT. Uh, it's uh, pushing past some of these highs that we made earlier on the week. A little bit of a gap down happened. And then we made uh, this, uh, these highs around 38. We are pushing near uh, or for that gap fill uh, potentially right there into into that uh, day's lows and let's take a quick look at Bitcoin as well uh, right here on the Coinbase and yeah 68 potentially coming in right here over the past 15 uh, over the past 30 minutes we did clip that 16.8 so we're attempting to push uh, back through we can see that uh, over the past uh, week or so look at this kind of a strong volume flush off of that 70 happening let's take a look on the weekly and see how this uh, Bitcoin chart has built up over time. And uh, yeah, so we are holding some of these highs. Look at that. That strength comes in within the span of about a month, right? So one, two, three, four, four weeks in the middle of that. You got a little bit of a three bar pattern going on here in and around that 50 thou. Oh boy, does that line up nicely? 50 thou three bar acceleration to the upside, 75 potentially coming in, but the highest we tested was 73.85 and some change, uh, all-time highs on the Bitcoin there. So yeah, let's see what Bitcoin has in store for us today. Uh, 68, uh, 68 thou uh, potentially uh, having a little bit of a test uh, testing session right now on Bitcoin there. So let's take a quick look at Coinbase as well. Uh, see what Coin is up to and some of these other crypto names. So Coin, a little bit of a, a little bit of a flag or a little bit of a pennant type of forming, uh, whatever you want to call it. Price compression is how I like to call it. There, it is a price compression pattern where let's see how, where we go. Um, we've been trending up and now price is compressing in and around that 260 on Coinbase. So maybe it is waiting for that Bitcoin to break out. Now let's take a look at our friends Mara and Riot, these miners. Um, so a little distinctly different on Mara. Mara selling off today. Let's see what Riot's doing. Riot's probably looking like Mara. And uh, yeah, Riot selling off as well on, uh, on that. Um, and the last one I like to check is MSTR. Micro strategy, a little bit more similar to the uh, to the Bitcoin action, but look at that kind of a strong pullback after a morning kind of run. Um, is it doing any sort of volume? Nothing too crazy. What does it do on average? It does about average three million. What time is it? It's about 12:50. So we've done about a third of the average 30-day volume right now on MSTR. So a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, less than I would like to even participate in, but being a $1,700 ticker, might wanna look elsewhere to, put, to, to effectively uh, put on some risk. And Apple with a bit of a pullback here. Hey yo, Apple. So we kind of talk about a potential reversion uh, trade coming in. Apple is uh, pushing off of that 172, 171.90s is the high. So let's see if that can come in. Can it get all the way down to VWAP? We are quite extended off of VWAP. 171 is the VWAP uh, level there. Um, and uh, let's take a quick look at our friend SPY as well. You know, we got the ES right here. So SPY just holding, holding near some of those highs off of, the, off of that uh, push that we just had on the spider. So uh, let us know what, what you guys are talking about, what you guys are chat, and what you guys are chatting about, what, what you guys are trading uh, as I look in the chat. Um, 
ACB saying uh, Peter Silva. So yeah, let's take a quick look back at ACB here. ACB, wow, nice. Couldn't really get past that nine and pulls right back in. So nice little, so it gave you opportunities on both ways, right? Gave you a, a decent opportunity for the long and when that long doesn't really follow through, decent opportunity on the short side as well. So a little bit of a pullback happening. Continuation from yesterday though on a lot of these cannabis names. So let's see what we got in store here. But yeah, Apple with that pullback, let's see if some of these other names will follow in step. Softy looking quite strong. Yeah, well, Softy looking. Because like, I know Randy's not here today. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, Softy looking quite strong, pushing pushing towards its highs there. Let's see if Softy can catch a little bit of a break as well. As we are in the midday session, we talk about how that uh, how that volume kind of tends to die off. You can see prime example right here, volume kind of dying off uh, off of the morning session. Maybe this last volume bar a little bit uh, heavy off of the break of high a day, but uh, overall we have been kind of cooling off here. A little bit more clearer on Apple. Look at that highest volume bar off the open and then consecutively lower and lower. So what is the probability of reversion in that situation is the question that I usually ask. And uh, Google looking a little choppy sideways here, so we do have to watch this one pretty close. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens here? Also, yet yeah, Neil also apparently had the same reaction to the Randy sound, wondering where Randy is. It is, yeah, it's a Pavlovian response. I think you hear it and you're like, eh. and you're like, where's Randy at? But today he is not here. Um, so, so yeah, unfortunately, no Randy today. But also, oh, there he is. Oh, oh, hello. I so love it was like, right? in, like instant instant tra teleportation right there. He's teleporting. Between, I love that. The yeah, that, that could be a new kind of like teleportation EV. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I want to talk about Tesla because I wanted to get involved in this. And then I was noticing some candles that to me looked a little bit bearish. I think we might have been over it, though. So we saw this doji and we had that big wake to the upside. Then we kind of, I guess, in retrospect, it was probably just a doji and I should have gotten involved because if I'd gotten involved at 60s, which is where I was looking, we'd be about 30 pennies in the money. But I have to say, the point of this lesson is it's really hard to know where to get, in, or not this lesson, what I'm, whatever I'm saying right now, is it's really hard to know where to get involved when you have a move that's parabolic like this on Tesla, right? Maybe not even like, maybe not parabolic, but we're up like five on the day. You know what I mean? 5% of the day for Tesla. Tesla has been weak a little bit more as of late. And then I see these three-minute candles. I want to get involved. But we have these big wicks to the upside, and then the, we're just kind of hanging out here, right? So I'm a little bit worried things could turn. If we see a 9 EMA bounce, I might get involved. But to me, these candles here have me a little bit a little bit confused, and I don't want to bamboozle my way into a long when we're so close to high of day. High of day, for the record, is just shy of 177.01. We're at 177. Um, oh, sorry, just shy of 177.10s. We're at 177.09. Numbers, Adara. But let's see what we do here. Uh, I'm going to be using the three and the one to guide me from a point of entry, uh, and the five minute to guide me for the actual trade itself and for the trend. But I want to see what happens if we continue bouncing here off this 9 EMA. I think this could be a level. I would have to think about where to put stops, which is my only kind of concern here. Because with Tesla, you want to give it a little bit of room to run, but you don't want to give it too much room to run either because Tesla can do whatever it wants to do. So let's wait and see what happens. Alexander Bamba, I think I tagged you in the chat earlier as well. No, uh, no bond auction, though, at 1 p.m. It is not. Um, but let's see. Let's see how... Um, let's take another look at some of these. We'll just take a quick look here at... Um, MSOS one more time here for some people looking looking for that one. Yeah, I mean, this, this VWAP balance is really nice. A little bit of a rangy look here on MSOS, but we're still, we're, we're kind of dancing below that 90 MA, which does make me nervous for, for the, for any kind of long here off this range. Also, I want to talk about NVIDIA. Sean says in the chat, still short NVIDIA. So shout out to Sean and shout out again to Sean for helping guide me through uh, some of the reload ideas on this NVIDIA. I was really happy with this one. Also though, NVIDIA looks like it might be ready for round two of the short. And I say that more for, my, for myself and the way I trade, right? Because I have the one minute on my side chart for NVIDIA because I like trading NVIDIA off the one uh, sometimes. And the 896 base, 897-ish top, to me, I think there's some short opportunities there. For the, the style that I trade, I do think there could be some kind of you know room here for a trade. But for right now, this Tesla bouncing. So we're going to be getting involved in the Cybertruck in this move to the upside. This one minute chart is really not looking great here, but even if I need to piece it off kind of as we get into 176.80s and then just continue reloading, I'm fine with that as well. And Tesla's like, oh, you snooze, you lose, Adara. We're gonna break new highs with or without you. So shout out to Tesla. Although 
Honestly, that move up did give me a little bit more confidence in this range. I think we might be doing what we did with that 176 break. Now trying to do that with the 177. So come on, Tesla. Give us some opportunities here so we can, um, you know, we're Dressla to Impressla. And we want to have some success -la in Stressla. I'll nice. stop now. Thank nice. you. I like that. Um, I'm still watching watching this Apple, and I'm um, just like, damn, I gotta I gotta pick these uh, vehicles a little bit better here. Apple is the only one that's really kind of doing that reversion uh, back down towards VWAP, and nothing else really uh, really is moving moving in step with uh, with that. So uh, Apple a little uh, Apple a little bit uh, doing its own thing. AMD fresh lows as well, and uh, I saw people talking in the chat about ARM, a little bit of a smiley face uh, happening on on ARM. Take a look at that beautiful beautiful let's go down to a three market three three minute uh chart here look at that beautiful nice little curl uh rounded uh rounded bottom here coming in on uh on uh, arm on top of that 25 right yesterday's kind of uh chop uh chopping and churning in and around that 25 and take a look at this today boom nice little curl happening there so let's take a quick look left and see what we got so maybe some resistance here in the 128s uh we're just just, uh, just about in that area right now, 128s, 129s, uh, trading at 127.60s right now on ARM. So let's see if uh, ARM can kind of continue to the upside, but that 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 reversion on ARM was absolutely beautiful. Look at that, VWAP sellers, 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 and when those sellers kind of lift and that selling pressure is gone, oh boy, do we blast off and lift into that 128 on ARM. So uh, that's that's a bit of a missed, uh, missed uh, trade miss look for me apple reversion maybe pulling in the rest of these names here as we pull back in let's see if the if the futures can get back into that 185 that we uh, that we uh, so uh, indulgingly kind of orbited around for the for like a good uh, what is this one two three four that's an hour an hour and 15 minutes so about five uh, almost five to six different uh, uh, 15 minute candles back to back uh, quite an interesting level on that uh, on that 18 half curious to know if I throw up a volume profile there where is that point of control sitting on the NQ I will do that right now and take a quick look here uh, let's go let's go with the hourly so I, I, I got to do it here on my own charts and I'll let you guys know what it is if I can uh, if I can find the right one okay boom there we go volume range profile uh, let me know. Do you guys uh, do you guys like to use uh, volume profile as well every now and then? How do you use it uh, to find uh, to find levels, to find trades, to find uh, or you ha it's an indicator, right? How do you use that indicator as information to take and structure your trades? Uh, it's a good question, I think. So right here, um, 18.5. Yeah, exactly. 18.5 is that point of control. Uh, sound, uh, looks about right uh, off of uh, off the chart there. Let's see if Disney can come back in. Disney coming back into that VWAP uh, as well. So uh, let's see if Disney hold, continues to hold that VWAP or that 120 uh, is a little bit of a trouble point as it was yesterday on the uh, on the mouse there. So uh, Intel, let's see what Intel's up to. Intel is bouncing off of uh, off of its VWAP. Uh, as of right now, so uh, maybe potential. So I got out most of it there. Uh, I'm looking for more reasons to kind of get back into the long there. I was looking at the rest of the, some of these names. I'm like, all right, well, we've traded pretty strongly for mo majority of the session, um, uh, the morning session and a lot of the midday session as well. So when when are we going to take a little bit of a breather if we do? Uh, and Intel, again, still well within its opening range, just an inside kind of trading day happening there on, uh, on Intel. So... Uh, maybe we're just consolidating before that continuation to the downside, right? We see, we saw that 42 consolidation that happened a couple days ago on Intel. We broke out of it. Now we're trading below that and consolidating below that after a strong leg down uh, yesterday. So maybe do we get that consolidation continuation leg uh, uh, leg consolidation and then continuation leg. That's the question I'm asking right now for the Intel as we're doing quite a distinct inside uh, inside kind of price action today on uh, on that name, distinctly different from the other semiconductors there. So if you do look at uh, ARM, NVIDIA, Intel, all three of them, actually I guess NVIDIA is looking a little bit closer to ARM there sideways after the morning action, but it did have a sell-off in the morning, but AMD distinctly different today with a continuous selling, pushing fresh lows as of right now uh, on, on uh, AMD. What did Amazon do with that 185? Oh boy, 185.10 is the high and we take a little bit
bit of a pullback, 184.80s testing right now. So let's see if uh, these strong sellers that showed up on the queues and on the ES in the morning, do those guys show up again? Is that resistance continued? Uh, to, does that resistance continue to hold on the day today? That's the question I'm asking. Let's take a look at some of these. Apple's taking a little bit of a breather. So is Google. Let's see if Amazon takes a breather off of that size. That actually probably did get filled. I was not watching the tape. 2,500 lots on that 85. Only goes 10 pennies. Probably got filled and then we're coming back down. So that 85 did a, a decent amount of volume there and uh, a decent amount of volume high. So let's see if that kind of confluences on the chart with the volume. Um, as I pull up Amazon, oh boy, take a look at that pullback. As we speak, it is falling to the downside right there. Look at that strong volume candle as that 185 breaks for the first time. So I am more than willing to assume that a lot of this volume candle was that 85, that 2,500 lots on that 85 that was there. And now we're pulling back about a quarter off of that 85. So I'm seeing a lot of red on the tape across the board here and the NQs are potentially pushing for some for some uh, for some intermediate lows relative to the past hour or so 45 minutes you can see that bit of a shelf uh, action happening at that 18550 we talk about can we get back down to 18 half there on the queues so softy uh, pulling back a little bit as well what are you uh, what are you talking about Sean 897 short on Nvidia and that is coming in quite nicely so I mean, it's it's making lower highs. It's making lower highs. I actually think it looks like a long. I'm just trying to drill it. Okay, yeah. You're just trying to speak it into existence, manifest. Yeah, even the Nasdaq's going. You just said, you know, everything's coming in, but Nvidia's holding. Yeah. AMD. Yep. I guess AMD's, AMD was a chip to short, I think. I was just like... Also, check out More Trader TV Live. Yes. Please do. It's a great channel. Um, oh, also Tesla's falling. Um, but yeah, you can definitely check out Trader More Trader TV Live. I'm going to put um, show that up for everybody here so that you can check it out. And here it is. Come give us a... Check it out here is the dashboard. Oh, that's an ad. But in a second... It will not be this man on uh, Dragon's Den. It will be our channel. So you can see here exactly where Sean Short, exactly where Neil's long, the trades that were made, the news, the biggest movers of the day. Check out more Trader TV Live. I feel like an ad there. But yeah, please definitely check it out here. Uh, it's a really fun channel where you can get um, some more of our trades. Also, uh, Sean is... Very bearish, and NVIDIA is falling, so I mean, Ooh. nice look on that for Sean. Look at this here. I was talking about that range I liked here at the 90 MA. Swooped to the downside. Really should have taken that trade. Let's see what we do here at this 895.50 level. That was a bit of support earlier than a pretty massive area of resistance. Honestly, I already drew all these lines. I should be getting back involved in NVIDIA. Because NVIDIA, depending on what we do here, it's going to be my same uh, impetus for getting in the short earlier. Depending on what we do, we make it long or short. I'm guessing that is your Lambo trade today, Sean, that NVDA. Oh, there's a couple of them. Sean being coy with the Lambo trades over there. Congrats. He's got the Aventador. He's got the... Yeah. Uh, that's the only one I can remember right now. I got that E-Hang thing. That the, little, uh, oh, the E-Hang the e plane? Even tall, even tall yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, Mercy Lago, that's another one. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah, you know, remember all the Lambo names. I, I, can't, uh, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Huracan, yeah, Huracan oh, is one. Thank you, Ramin. Rickshaw, the Lamborghini Rickshaw coming out in 2025. Don't forget that one. Um, yeah. Sean mentioning that one. Um, all right, so Disney coming down to coming to the downside a little bit, crack of that VWAP, so that 120 holds a little bit of as resistance. I did cover why. I was like, I was like, ah, oh, it's gonna, is it gonna hold? I didn't cover that last time, so I did kind of cover this piece right now, um, just a little bit, not everything there. But uh, oh boy, do I need to have a lot more when this 120 does this lower high and that kind of shelf, interesting shelf kind of breaks there. Let's see how far we pull back in this bid. Where did this come? Uh, where did this kind of come from? Right here, maybe a base around 19 and some change, but that low is 1840s on the Disney. Uh, so let's see if those sellers can continue uh, and uh, show their hand again today on Disney. Quite aggressive selling yesterday off of, uh, off of uh, what might have been those, uh, those uh, 
that annual investor meeting and what, what took place in, in and around uh, at that meeting there. So uh, Pharaoh Tower is saying DJT short. Okay, all right, let's take a quick look. Wow, nice. So DJT off the open was quite a beautiful short, um, straight through that 50. So in the pre-market, uh, you you kind of uh, you can't even get past that 50 in the pre-market. You flush, you break yesterday's lows in and around 48. Take a look at that. How far is a, is the violation of the 48? 48 goes about to 48.36 and then slams right back in for a low of 40 45.97. So 46 is is a little bit of a base there on the DJT. So let's see. We know that uh, what was that uh, 45? No, that was on Reddit. Never mind. Reddit 45 was a little interesting there. So let's see what we did today. Oh boy, look at that, low a day, 45.11. So that 45 still holding strong uh, on, on Reddit there. It, apparently it's the gift that keeps on giving if you're watching for the back through on that 45 as that scalp or the level to level, whatever you want to call it, reversion to VWAP, that 45 keeps on showing up over and over again on the Reddit. So uh, yeah, so a nice little slam off of that 48 right into that 45 in the morning session there on the Reddit. So let's take a look at some of these other IPOs that have been uh, uh, as of recent arm. We talked about that smiley face or that rounded bottom kind of happening there. Uh, it pushes up into 128 and pulls right back in. So that's definitely interesting there. Uh, what was that other one? There was a uh, A-Lab, right? A-Lab was that other one. This one looks illiquid. Um, yeah, this one looks like nobody's in the lab right now. It's empty, so uh, we'll move we'll move away from that one there. What was the uh, what was it? There was an, there was another there was another IPO uh, as of as of recent. There was an interesting one. The CTRB was it CTRB? S no, uh, that was A Lab. Astera Labs was A Labs. Um, Cart Instacart. Thank you, Ramin, for the Cart, Instacart. Cart, Cart was one uh, as of recent. Maple Bear. Right, uh, so uh, Maple Bear there. So uh, nice, interesting action today as well. Um, there was another one that I did have on my on my list. I don't think it was an I, maybe not an IPO, but maybe a D SPAC or, or uh, um, a, a SPAC that actually went through. Uh, it was an no, and it's, it wasn't it wasn't Reddit. Uh, it's a it's a semiconductor SPAC, SPAC. In the past four days, it was trading at 50s. Today, it's trading at six bucks. So it literally gapped up and faded off of that, and pure kind of a kind of a maybe sell the news type of thing trading at the 50s just a few days ago let me know in the chat if you guys know what that what that ticker is i think it starts with a c um i will i will uh, i think i did did i write it down no i think it's back there on my at my desk there uh crbp maybe crbp like I'll, 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 I'll find it. I'll find it and I'll let you guys know. But that's the one I wanted to look at to see what that one's up to. Uh, some interesting action on that one. Again, a semiconductor name. So maybe it got all of that. Is it CADL? Um, that's Can a small cap. Candle Therapeutics? No, 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 not that one. That, is, that one. that one is moving today. That one is definitely moving with strong Arval CADL. Uh, GCTS. That's what. Uh, GCTS. That is the one. GCTS. Now take a look at this chart, guys. Holy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Damn. So this is this has ensued just in the past few days. So look at this. This was a spec. Look at that nice little ten dollar flat, right? March uh, March 28th, we come in trading at the four, 30s, 40s, and we come up push into that 47 there, and look at that steady grind to the downside, doing the most volume down here as it breaks back through that $10 level. That's very interesting. The back through 10 on these SPACs is definitely a play in my books, and that is a missed trade for me. And I was looking at this on my scans last night, and when that, when that ticker comes right back through that 10, guess who's offside? A lot of people kind of in anticipation of that, of that, uh, of that SPAC coming through. Maybe they're selling on the first day. Look at that strong Arval happening. But when that 10 goes back through, do we kind of fall apart with aggression all day selling and coming in today? A little bit of a flat line happening. Not really too much to, too much to talk about. But yesterday was quite significant there. So again, mistrade on my part. Beautiful action nonetheless. Yeah, um, thank you to for that. Yeah, I forgot what that one was. So thank you very much to Wes West, y'all, uh, for that one in the chat. Also, thank you to Ramin for yelling out and knowing all the names of all of those um, those IPOs, tickers there for yeah. those IPOs. Because that, that, she called it Clavio as well. Which let's actually see what KVYO is up to. See, no, I, I knew it was right. I always get this one. It's either, I know it's KYVO. Yes. 
Apparently not. Um, or is it on the end? Why this, the ticker for this one? I feel like Clavio always bamboozles me with its ticker for some reason. I could always look it up, so that's what I'm going to do. Clavio. Silvio. I know there's a V and a Y. I just never know what, what order they are in. So it must be K-V-Y. So it is K-V-Y-O. Okay, so let's try this again. K-V-Y-O, um, New York. NASDAQ? Okay, sorry. I'm just having a moment here. There we go. We're on, we're on the New York NY here for Clay. Yeah, this is really Ill illiquid. We have about 350,000 shares here. Uh, not much of a bounce. Also, it is 1 p.m. I will be keeping an eye for any notes we get from um, these Fed speakers Barkin saying that no case uh, is to be made that 2% inflation is not achievable. So a very roundabout way of saying that 2% inflation is achievable. <laughs> uh, so that, that looks like a nice sign for the market. Says adhering to that target has brought benefits and there's no interest in backing off the 2% target. So in a very roundabout way, we do have um, Fed's Barkin saying that Fed's 2% inflation that inflation target is pretty on point. Also, we are going to get back into that lesson, but if we see any moves, we will let you guys know. Draco saying, Adara, hold Tesla. Thank you for saying that. And honestly, I, I was planning on holding it anyway, so I do appreciate, though, that extra vote. I wanted to give this about a dollar because it's Tesla. I was going to give this until, also because this isn't a range trade, right? Like If it was more of a range, I would give it a little bit more wiggle room. All right, we give it less wiggle room, but this wasn't really a planned range. I am, I don't love where I got it. I think there was a little bit of FOMO, but I did have that planned ad where we had that doji earlier of 176.20, so I added in there. We're having a nice bounce here off that 80s level. I should add, but I don't really have um, enough buying power left here on the sim. And then I will be getting out if we break below this um, 50s area here, which was the very decidedly the top of that range earlier that I was trying to play before I fat fingered out of it too early. So good times. Here we are in the cyber truck. Let's see if we can keep trucking to the upside. Someone earlier was saying Tesla's trying to make Neil eat Vegemite. And I mean, I think it was. Now we're pulling back a little bit. Um, pardon? Yeah, I mean, Neil's down. He said it's, it's good vitamins. So we're all good there. But also, we are all good with the lesson. One more time. Oh, yes. Again, if I have the, the you know, uh, our Benzinga. Shout out to our sponsors at Benzinga Pro. Check them out. I have Benzinga. Up here, if we see anything major from the Fed or anything coming in from anything, I will let you guys know. So there we go. Pre-market trading, quick introduction here for everyone is pre-market trading does happen during the pre-market hour, so about 4 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And it allows traders to get a little bit of a, an early opportunity to get involved in the market, respond to any of these pre-market news stories or any earnings plays? We'll talk a little bit about potential catalysts in the next slide, but basically, uh, this was initially an exclusive time to trade for um, you know high net worth or institutional investors. But we had some ECN or, or ex electronic communication network advancements, which have made it possible for individual investors, retail traders, etc., to get involved in this pre-market action. And this period really allows, if you're involved in these markets, to give you a chance to react to overwrite news, earnings reports, or anything else that might have happened while we were sleeping. It gives you a chance to get involved before the whole market get invo gets involved. However, there are some risks we will get to, into later in the lesson, including reduced liquidity and wider spreads, which are never a fun thing. So that is um, the, the kind of quick lowdown on pre-market trading. Yeah, so uh, pre-market catalysts. So what can happen in the pre-market? Sometimes you get those catalysts like what? Uh, earnings announcements, news releases, economic data, Fed Reserve speakers, right? They can all significantly influence pre-market trading activity. Um, for example, if a, trade, if a company announces uh, better than expected results, or maybe they announce results and uh, the, the sentiment uh, displayed through the price action is positive or it can be negative. So you can kind of uh, look, at some, look at some of those to kind of lead, uh, lead, your, uh, lead your structure of, of your trade ideas and your trade plan as well. So uh, economic data releases, we talk about those. So comments from Fed officials definitely can be moving the market. Uh, employment numbers, GDP reports can, uh, can affect the uh, market sentiment, right? That, that can actually move the, the, the futures, the, the whole market itself. So if you're trading one of the 
the, the, the stocks, then maybe you want to keep that in, into consideration as well. So companies releasing earnings. We talk about Levi's that had earnings today and you got that nice little continuation off of, uh, off of uh, yesterday. So they reported last night actually and uh, the report comes out last night and look at that continuation you see in the pre-market. So that's an information, that's information for me uh, when I come in in the morning or when I'm, when I'm uh, looking at, when I'm doing my morning prep uh, on, on the way here, I'm just like, all right, well, what did Levi's do? They reported last night. I need more information coming in. So around 8, 8.30, I'm like, all right, how has price action built up in the pre-market here? Is it any significant? So we saw that it was building up and kind of uh, pushing towards those highs. And it was quite aggressive off the open. I did have this on my screen and it came in real hot, real fast. And I was like, all right, well, uh, that continuation definitely was there. And uh, I don't want to, this is too, the, I was like, this is a little bit of a wide, of, a little bit of too wide of a risk for me to take. And I kind of left it alone. But if you were a little adamant and uh, sitting at some of these prices, which is something I do, need, I do need to get better at, is to start like automating a lot of ideas that I think are uh, a little higher probability than others. Uh, definitely putting on the risk like that. And uh, you can see how that pre-market high kind of comes in. So uh, this is just one of, these, one of the examples of how pre-market uh, trading, how the ticker has traded in the pre-market with that Arval, with that earnings catalyst on day one so definitely in play uh, today Levi's being a great example of how that pre-market uh, pre-market catalyst can take place and how you could potentially uh, structure some trading ideas off of said action thank you for giving us that um, in the wild example as I sometimes call it here when we give these live examples in the midday but also what are other things you might want to look for once you have your catalyst what are some other things that you want to keep your eye on well, pre-market trading, you, it really is cool to see how we have these key levels from the previous day's trading session. So highs, lows, and closing prices, how they're interacting now because they can be really crucial. Traders will often seek a sense of direction, look for some, some meaning of life in the trade, if you will, through uh, in pre-market trading to kind of get a sense of where stocks are going to go, what direction is happening, whether a stock is more likely to be bullish or bearish, or whether it'll range. These are all things you can get a sense of in the pre-market. So how, seeing if, it, if there's a certain level it sticks to a pre-market, was that a previous level of interest? Things like that are all really key. You can get a really big sense of that in the pre. Uh, so for example, a stock that has seen significant pre-market volume and price momentum in response to an earnings report as um, as Obi was just mentioning there on Levi's, that can be really key. It can give you a sense of a bullish or bearish trend for the day ahead. But what are some other factors to consider? Find out. Yeah, so some factors to consider there in the pre-market is uh, market on open imbalances, which can come in around that 925 mark. Now, if you guys tune in to, to, to the morning show there, you'll often see Neil and Sean both talk about right at nine, uh, 925, that opening imbalances and that volatility that could potentially come in into the market. So that's definitely something to uh, clue, in, clue in on and be aware of if you are in a position going into the open, right? So you don't wanna, you don't wanna get, uh, uh, I guess, uh, chopped around with that volatility. Maybe you wanna sidestep it. However, however you wish to kind of structure your system based off of that, but something to consider if you are kind of involved in the pre-market is that market on open imbalance that does happen at 925. So uh, traders uh, tend to use these pre-market levels. Again, we talk about how you can use pre-market levels. Again, factors to consider. High, low, and close. Uh, close from the previous day, of course. Uh, high, low, and close. Um, of, uh, of, the, of the ticker uh, as a guide to plan your trading strategy. So uh, again, you don't really want to rely on them as a hard, hard set kind of thing, but some, maybe it's a place to watch the tape, look at the levels. If the level has confluence and it's, it stands out to you, maybe perhaps something to, uh, something to kind of consider with your trading plan in the pre-market. Yeah, um, I think those, those factors are all really important, but also it's kind of important too to get a sense of risks and opportunities. Of course, they're always present in the market. But what kind of risks and opportunities do you get in the pre? Well, let's talk about it. The pre-market section uh, can give you a little bit of good and a little bit of bad, a little bit of a double-edged sword because it can offer lots of risk and rewards. So some of the risks include limited liquidity and wider bid-ask spreads because those can impact the execution and the profitability of your trade. So it is something, a factor you absolutely want to be aware of. So one example is if you're trading on news releases in the pre-market, it can provide opportunities to capitalize before most traders are available or awake or active. 
but but it does come with the risk of significant price swings and the possibility of not being able to exit your positions more quickly due to lower liquidity. So I've talked a lot about, as someone who used to trade uh, the very spready name that is Eli Lilly pretty regularly, it's a harder name to get out of because of that spread. So the pre-market, you do have a lot more spreadiness and therefore it can be a little bit of a, a stressor, more stressful or a scarier situation to be trading in. And you get a lot of that in the pre-market. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, we can talk about... Uh, um, Practical, uh, practical uh, examples there uh, for for that. So uh, again, um, uh, we talk about how Levi's announced uh, announced uh, their report last night. Uh, that was that was one good example. Now uh, let's take a quick look at uh, again. We talk about Intel as well. Fun like now that's a fundamental uh, catalyst in a, in a way there. So Intel announces its. It's uh, kind of news in the after hours. Take a look at that pre-market session. Nice little fader, and now we're getting a consolidation. So very distinct kind of sentiment. It's being shown in both the pre, both the after hours and the pre-market, making that idea a little bit stronger for the sell on Intel. And take a look at what it does coming into the day. Now, sure, you don't you don't know what it's going to do during the day, but this can give you a sense of probability, high or low, of what it may. Uh, what, what the sentiment going into the open uh, might be. Clearly it's selling off aggressively off of what it's been doing over the past few days. And we did come up off of this 41.42. We saw this 42 consolidation for a couple of days, a day and a half. And when it did break, you got that aggressive buying for three days in a row, right off the open, bang, slam to the upside. Another one, slam to the upside three days in a row. And then on that third day, you get that nice little full on 100% reversion and the sell off starts off. And then you get that news coming in as well. So aggressive selling right back down into some of those ranges from before earlier on uh, in, the, in the month there. So yeah, definitely a lot of action there. Can, can, you can pick up on that sentiment. That's a practical example of how you can potentially use some of that price action, that story of price in the pre-market or even after hours looking for that continuation to confluence and uh, kind of stack your probabilities for, uh, for a directional bias there on, uh, on something like this. So clearly, again, there could be many reasons as to why you might be interested. It's a, fundamental, it's a potential fundamental change in the, in, the, in the outlook or the forward look of Intel and uh, maybe large investors might want to uh, kind of reposition in on that and clearly showing their sentiment in the after hours and pre-market and throughout the day as well. We traded this yesterday and it was quite aggressive where sellers were definitely in charge and they showed you that right off of the open when that pre-market low breaks down and even on the retest, you don't even get to that pre-market low. And this might uh, something to consider as well, PMI came out yesterday at 10 o'clock. I remember getting stopped out on a couple of positions, but I still held that uh, Intel short because of this bigger picture idea. I was like, all right, well, if I have my stop in for Intel, if it's gonna go clip it, that's fine. I'll be wrong on that. But I believe and I am convicted on the idea that sellers are in charge and I got a little lucky as they were in charge and got more short along the way there. But yeah, definitely that pre-market action can set you up for, uh, uh, for looking and maybe assessing those potential probabilities on said price action going into the day and maybe some of that sentiment as well. Um, Dell analysis, please. Well, I don't know about any analysis, but sure, we can talk about Dell. Um, we can look at the chart. We can look at the we can look at the colors on the chart and nice little volume candles and see what uh, see what they're doing. I don't know if you want to call that analysis, but uh, we don't do that around here. But uh, uh, this uh, strength from yesterday, right? So a uh, lot of strength from yesterday on Dell. Pretty much a chop inside bar, inside trading on uh, uh, on Dell today. That strong bar off of the open, that's definitely interesting there. So we did get continuation right off of the open, but after that continuation kind of slows down, we're just chopping and churning in and around VWAP. Look at that beautiful VWAP orbit. Distinctly different from yesterday where VWAP held only for a little bit and then accelerated, closing pretty much near end of uh, uh, high a day there on Dell. Nice little, nice little co uh, continuation happening today on the Dell. Now, you know what this reminds me of, guys? 
GE, we talked about this one earlier. GE was doing some significant moves yesterday. Again, opening very aggressively, closing near the high of day. Coming in today, oh boy, is that definitely in play in my book. When you close high of day like that, or near high of day with that strength, that continuation, look at how it's coming in today. 150's coming in. So absolutely beautiful action there on GE. So we covered most of that Disney uh, Disney short that I that I uh, that I wanted there and uh, just holding on to some holding on to a little piece maybe potentially waiting for a lower high to get some more in on here as the market looks like it is taking a little bit of a breather. Let's see how far this pullback can actually go. But Disney did do a decent pullback off of that 120. We couldn't quite get to 119s. I was looking for a full point off of that 120. Couldn't really get there. It got to 1920s caught a little bit of a bid and started to turn the flow on the uh, flow on the on the tape uh, a little different distinctly different from this strong selling that we had off of the 20 so I'm like all right that's good enough for most of it and I, I cover just most of that and uh, waiting to get potentially more in here uh, if if we do make some uh, some lower uh, lower highs there if Disney will have that um, uh, kind of selling pressure come back in again the idea being that yesterday's annual investor meeting sellers were quite aggressive all the way down and held down that 120 and as of right now selling has started to well maybe I don't know has started but we got that selling off the open we got a bid 120 can't really get through and that 120 takes a nice little pullback back through VWAP so I'm watching this 120 area let's see what we do in and around here only about 20 pennies away from my break even but like I said I got not, almost nothing left there looking to add potentially more here we go session where are we going nvidia we're at 894.60 894.60 okay all right then nvidia let's take a quick look at nvidia here see what that's up to uh yeah nvidia kind of rejecting uh holding below that vwap holding below that 900 making lower highs on these consolidation look at how long these consolidations are you got to have a lot of patience to hold through this uh this is a three minute chart so the this this consolidation about an hour and a half Where, what about this consolidation right here um that we're doing right now about an hour six minutes oh boy is that a long time just to kind of uh hold on but that bigger picture kind of making lower lows and lower highs underneath that 900 where we've seen some selling pressure over and over again when it can't really get through and hold above that 900 on nvidia so let's see what we got going on there uh disney coming back up so is this goggle so i do gotta watch this goggle a little bit closer like here um gotta put on the goggles and uh Closely watch this goggle trade here. If it kind of pushes towards those highs, I don't want to necessarily be, there, be in there anymore. But if we do take a little bit of a breather as the market is right now, look at this 15 minute candle printing. We got about a minute and 30 seconds for this 15 minute candle to finish printing. Let's see if goggle follows in step with this bit of a market pullback that we're having. Oh boy, Amazon 184.50. So that 185 couldn't really get through as of right now. I love that you called it goggle. I've never heard that before. <laughs> And, but yeah, it does. It Got to change it up look, from yeah. Google, you know. Yeah, I yeah, like that. A little bit of a, a little bit of a change up. We're bringing bringing some variety <laughs> here in terms of the ticker pronunciation. There. Shout out to Sean Shorting Nvidia. I do want to get short here as well. Uh, that 895.30 area, 895.50, I talked about this area earlier. I should have been getting more involved, so let's see what we do here because I do think this area was a massive area of support earlier than flip to resistance, then flip to support once more. So if, if the time is not too late, I would like to have a date with NVIDIA, and I'm going to stop selling Dr. Seuss now. But also, this test, this is not Tesla, this is TSL. This TSL A has been frustrating and mostly more than anything I am deeply frustrated with myself for um, for this because I had the right idea here I was really proud this was like a really nice look oh you're buying it at the dip like mm, all that nice stuff then I thought figured it out and instead of getting back in I spooked myself out I psyched myself out I didn't get involved then I tried to get involved at highs because it, you know in, in my defense we were bouncing at this point really nicely off that 176 70 area i get involved and it falls i do reload and i still stand by this area of reload here at this doji candle area but then look this area that i reloaded now is apparently becoming resistant so we flip from support to resistance if we don't bounce here again i have to get out because this is just getting so dicey and my attempts to justify staying in this trade are not working initially i was going to give this a dollar and give it until the, the top of this previous range but i just 
it's kind of not it's kind of not working and you know as neil said as long as you have a plan you, you can sometimes like flip from your plan and switch things up right so as long as you're sticking to the main ethos of the plan the main ethos of the plan was i like these levels and i still like this 17620 but now i think i might like it better as a short so we'll have to see what happens here. If we get back to 196.20, I'll probably, 176.20, what am I saying? Tesla 196 would be a very different story right now, but we're gonna have to wait and see what happens here. Mahmood, thank you so much. Check IWM for the short flat bottom break. So Ooh, let's, okay. let's take a look here. I do like hanging out with, with the Russell. I like hustling with the Russell at times, so. Let's see how the Russell is doing. Mm, that looks Ooh. great. That this looks is a nice look. It's a really tasty look here. A bit rangy? It is super rangy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, everyone knows I like my ranges. So, um, yeah, Rashad in the chat. I am still learning how to trade. I am very new. I am still in the sim. Um, and, you know, honestly, profitability and consistency is a huge struggle for me. So that's really what I'm trying to work on. Trying to get better every day. So I um, just wanted to talk about that. Yeah, I think this break might be happening without me. My only th Yeah, where would I stop loss this? I mean, you could do this like 70. Give us, where is this? 60, let's do 70. Okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna get short. If we can get it to, you know, we're gonna get short here. And then we're gonna be taking it um, out if we get above 70s. And I like this. I think we could have some profit taking around these previous areas where we stutter. So this give you about like 10 cents here. Um, maybe another like 30, 40 cents. So I do like this. I am not a super patient person. And that's my, my biggest issue with trading so far that I found that I'm dealing with. That was one of the first things Sharif asked me is what is your personality? Um, with trading, and I, I, you know, I said I'm pretty impatient on the short term, so that has been a massive thing for me, and I am, um, yeah, trying to learn each day. Also, Eclectic Passion saying heart emoji Neil, which is, yeah, just shout out to Neil. I, yeah, I like that. Just wanted to read that out because that's pretty cool. For LTAZ saying AMD was the trade. Yeah, AMD, I was struggling with earlier. Let's see how AMD is AM doing on this one. Let's take a look. Um, Okay, yeah, this is, this short, I should have gotten short when it got out of the long, because that was a really nice look. We were initially holding this level, oh, I got, I got involved in NVIDIA, nice. Um, we initially were holding this level really well here, this 177.40, and then we, we kind of broke below it, so I did end up getting out. Uh, oubla di, oubla da, say la vie, but yeah, this short around this 90 MA level is really nice. It's something I should be trying to take a look at. Right now, though, I do have some, I think, trade managing to get to, specifically dealing with uh, NVDA. If we make a higher high, I'll probably have to get out of that. And IWM as well, continuing to chop and churn. So we're always very happy to be here with everybody um, in the chat and, and with Obi and everyone here on the floor because it's such a great place to learn. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a it's a it's a great environment, and yeah, we're just uh, we're all learning here together. Again, I am nowhere uh, nowhere near where I would like to be, and uh, yeah, trading is definitely definitely a journey there. So we try to get a little bit better every day. Uh, that one percent every day is uh, always always on the mind. Like, what can I be doing? What can I be improving on? What needs uh, what needs tweaking in the in the system in the strategy? And uh, yeah, it's just uh, putting putting in that uh, work as a collective definitely makes it makes a decent uh, uh, decent difference in the experience here on the trading floor there. So uh, Rivian double bottom saying Pranaya. Okay, let's take a quick look at Rivian here. Um, Rivian, all right, so uh, yeah, looking like a bit of a double bottom here. So let's see how distinct it is. So, uh, okay, so um, 1043s roughly, the low being 1041s, trading at 1048. So yeah, we tested this level, or we're attempting to test it for a second time now. We did test it for about, uh, how long is this? This is a three minute, so about about an hour there, uh, kind of uh, consolidating uh, at, at these prices. We come up above VWAP, and then you come right back in, and now we've started to do a little bit more of the same there on the Rivian, so that's that's definitely interesting. I'm still in this uh, this Disney, did get a little bit more there, uh, still in the goggle uh, as well. Goggle kind of uh, just holding in and around some of these levels. Let's see if it continues to make lower highs and maybe take a little bit of a pullback there, or do we just kind of uh, chop around and do nothing? So I'm still, I have no idea. I got my, uh, I got my stop in, I got my risk kind of accepted. And uh, let's see if this kind of comes into fruition here. Market taking a bit of a pullback here, but not as much as it did before uh, as of right now. So 
Only got about uh, got about an hour, what uh, only about two and a half hours, roughly two hours twenty five minutes till the closing bell. So quite some time. Still, we still got that power hour session. Still, well, uh, we're still in the uh, smack dab in the middle of that uh, midday kind of uh, session where we talk about kind of a dead, vo- more of a lower volume, volume kind of dying off. You can see a clear example of that uh, of that uh, phenomena right here on the NQ and the ES. Look at those highest volume bars coming off of the open and then getting a little bit, uh, a little bit um, less and less as we reach that, uh, that midday session. So let's see if we kind of pick back up going into the power hour and going to the end of the day or do we kind of uh, just continue to just uh, fall off here? So Softy taking a bit of a pullback here. So is Amazon. Uh, uh, Google kind of holding holding sideways here. So I am kind of watching it short from uh, 54. 80, uh, sorry, 38s there, trading at uh, 50, so about 10 pennies out of the money right there. Let's see where this one goes. Uh, if the market's going to c- continue to push up higher, I don't necessarily want to stay in this one for too, too long, but uh, I'm still kind of waiting and watching, and ha- I got those goggles on watching the Google here. Uh, Softy might be nice for that reversion, maybe potentially setting up as of right now. The Spider as well, oh boy. Okay, so we, we did kind of clip that high. So same thing kind of happening here on the ES, as you can see. We clipped the highs, now we're taking a, quite a bit of a pullback. So the so uh, uh, Spider might be pulling in a little bit here. Where is VWAP on the SPY, you may ask. I'm definitely asking that right now. One, uh, 523.06. So 523.06, we're trading at 523.07 um, right now. So just on top of that VWAP on the spider. So looking for that, looking for those lower highs. Let's see what the spider does with its VWAP here right now. Are we going to bounce? Or are we going to crack? I have no idea, but I'm going to be patiently waiting to react to whatever happens. Yeah, I mean, this is, I have to, I'm getting out of Tesla here because this is, we're not having the bounce I want or the bounce I need. So I'm in, oh, come on, Tesla. You're not going to let me get out? That's cool. Um, there we go. Oh, we should be getting out of Tesla here. Uh, hopefully, let's see how that shakes out. Might have to adjust this. Yeah, this has been not my day, as I said. And the thing is, too, is I'm trying to trade less with PNL because I was really happy with Nvidia. We were in the money, but I didn't want to like give up just because we had, you know what I mean? Like the good trade. I want. I wanted to keep going because there were things I liked and I wanted to get involved. The Tesla, I will admit, the timing here was just not great. If we get back into that 176.20, I will be shorting this because now we're becoming a little bit rangier, and that's something I might want to get involved with. Also, Nvidia. I'm watching out here for this um, 896 80 area. If we break above that, I will be getting out, but I do have an order to reload here if we get to the 896. So, or just shy of 896. I was learning from what Sean said. So just shy of 896, there is a reload. The spread is making it a little bit harder to eclipse that, but if we do, we're getting involved. Also the IWM short, shout out to get into Mahmood for pointing this one out to me. Please just punch without this is going so far. I did add to this position because I wanted to build it a little bit. If we break above the 75 level, bye bye, IWM. Uh, but let's see, let's see how we do. I'm pretty pretty happy with how this one's going so far. Just trying to practice building a position and having levels and, and getting involved because I think the thing is too, as Sean says, a scared trader is a deficient trader. Now I'm trying to again work on the patience because to me that is the biggest thing that I have to work on in trading, and I know that. And I, you know, I, I trade about three hours a day, right? I trade here on the midday, so that's it, it's definitely. Um, a learning opportunity. It's a bit of a different time as well to trade in the day. And that's why I think as well, I was happy we were able to bring you guys the the time of day lessons this week because as someone where time of day is kind of a key part of, of my, how I end up trading, I think it is, it's certainly an interesting lesson. I think when you end up trading can impact your trading as well. Let's look at Meta. I believe Kip earlier in the chat was asking, hey, what's the, you know, what's the story with Meta? And I was like, oh, um, an analyst gave a really bullish note on that one. Um, and then I like, I want to talk about this because this was a bit of um, an L on this. So let's see. So I got um, involved here. This is a bit more of a bull flag. I love this range. I was like, oh, Adara, let's get out in the range. So we get in and it falls below. I, I gave it about a dollar and I got out. It's all good. You know what I mean? It's just part. Sometimes that happens. You know, that bamboozlement, as Sharifa said, that bamboozlement is real. And I think that is really a quote of the day. Right now, we're continuing to dance below this IWM here. I also am going to be having my goggles. I just typed IWM. I'm going to be having my goggles in Google as well because I want to see what's... I, I love that you called it goggles. I think this is like a new term for, it might for the stick, Google. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is this is interesting. This is a an interesting chart, but I see what you mean. Like, there's massive resistance here at this 154.20, or not maybe not massive, but there's some resistance here at this 154.52 uh, for sure. So we'll have to we'll have to see. I guess I know you'll have your your goggles on Google, so I know yeah, you'll definitely. Let I'm, us know how that all shakes out. Yeah, Mahmoud, I do get that. IWM has been has been super choppy. I do agree, but we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, I, I do have my eyes on, uh, on the Google here, but uh, alongside that, I am watching some of these other kind of top constituents as well. Uh, alongside these futures, uh, we talk about Apple potentially turning. Softy is turning a little bit more distinctly now, so let's see what Softy does. Where's VWAP on Softy? VWAP's quite low there, uh, for uh, 426.51 on Softy. We are trading at 427.40s as of right now. And it kind of, uh, it is cracking that, on a 15 minute, it is cracking a little bit of that uh, EMA as well. So maybe some potential players offside off of, uh, off of that little bit of action there, uh, maybe taking out some stops. But again, it could still come back in and hold. I have no idea, but let's see how far this market kind of pulls back. Uh, 15, uh, sorry, 5-3 happening here on the ES. So let's see how that one kind of pans out there. I do want to get a little bit more of uh, of the goggle here, if it'll have me. So uh, let's see how this uh, how this pull com kind of comes in. If if it comes in, uh, Apple pulling back into its VWAP as well, only about 20 pennies away from there uh, as of right now. So yeah, going into going into that uh, end of day, kind of going into two o'clock ish. Uh, let's see if some of that uh, some of that pressure or that volume starts to pick up again. Maybe get that volatility again in the later half of the day as we exit that midday session. So there goes the SPY through the VWAP and we're getting a little bit of a sell off there. And uh, okay, so yeah, things are, things are looking like they're turning right now. Let's see if it actually does come into fruition there. So got a little short on the goggle and the Disney. Let's see if these, uh, these guys can come back in towards some of their previous day levels there. Disney actually is uh, already below its VWAP, so I'm looking for it to make some fresh lows below this 19. Maybe this time around, we do get to that 19. I was looking for that relatively lower high below that 120, same area where the sellers were pretty dominant going into the end of day yesterday. You come into it, you make lower highs, now you're trading below VWAP and maybe struggling a little bit with VWAP as well and you have you have your confluence with the market tailwind coming to the downside both on the ES and the NQ and yeah that spider is definitely climbing a little bit down that spout quite aggressively I was right hoping now. you were gonna go there and I'm so happy you went there I like using that one the spider the spider and the and the and the spot uh, spout yeah so, uh, what's the what's the incy spider. Yes. spider da, da, that's da, da, what it's da. called yeah yeah no it classic, is certainly classic banger <laughs> that's, that's what but next time Kobe goes to the club. That's the song you request. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I don't know what clubs that, that would play that, but uh, that would be hilarious. You remix. You know there's a DJ somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, this oh, yeah. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely people are on that. Uh, yeah, it may, I'm sure. I'm sure I can look up like a, like an EDM Incy Vincy Spider remix, and you, they're they're probably bangers out there. I have no doubts uh, with the, with the kind of uh, stuff that's being put out these days. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that. You thank you for bringing that one there. Also, on this IWM, thank you again to Mahmoud for pointing this one out. Please just punch with this. We're dropping even lower. Bang, I have. Bang. I'm gonna do about. Four more beak wetters here. I did give myself a little bit. I was really happy I was able to build that position. So we have a little bit more room here to dispense the shares. Accordingly, we have three more beak wetters on the horizon ready to go. We also got um, a little bit of the NVIDIA out. So really happy with this as well. I, yeah, honestly, like I said, just trying to very grateful to just be able to, to learn and try to adapt the trading strategy every day. Not every trade is going to be a winner. A lot of my trades are not, but it's just about trying to be coming back there every single day and learning and trying to adapt with these three hours I have with all of you guys. So always happy to be there. Vin saying old school banger with regards to that itsy bitsy spider. Yes. So nice look there. Um, yeah, I'm looking. Rob, Mike Wayne, scared money, don't make money. I, yeah, agreed. And that's something I... Definitely trying to work on that one for sure. Also, Lola, welcome back here. What's good, Trader TV Familia? I hope everyone is cooking. Cheers, Coin and BITO. Let's take a look at Coin and let's see what kind of Coin um, is out there in Coin right now because Coinbase did have that news in Canada. Let's pull up the exact 
name for that catalyst or the, oh, this is really rangy. If it wasn't like a Bitcoin related stock, this would be fun. To the moon there, I like that emoji. This one, um, yeah, getting, uh, obtaining registration as a restricted dealer in Canada, so nice. Oh, Canada catalyst here for Coinbase. Also, I'm um, getting a really nice analyst out here from Oppenheimer raising the price circuit to 276. They're seeing some positive, uh, some headwinds there with regards to the Bitcoin, spot Bitcoin ETFs being approved. So nice move there for C-O-I-N. Nice range play here. Shout out to you, Lolo. Right now, Coinbase not getting too low, low, though. It's kind of within a range. IWM, um, we're going to take some more out here, I think, at IWM as we end up being a little bit Stuck here around 40, so we're going to take out uh, another piece here, and then we have two more beak wetters. Let's see what we do here. If we break below 30s, I would be pretty happy with that. NVIDIA, pretty um, choppy as well. I do want to get filled again. I'm going to change because I think I might have had this reload area a little bit too high. Let's try for 61s and see if we can add to this position as we chop and turn and just take it out as we break below into this range. How are you doing? I can't believe we only have yeah. 14 more minutes, Obi. We only got 14 minutes, so uh, about a about a tr about a decent chunk of a 15-minute candle left <laughs> here to print on uh, on some of these charts here. So uh, it, it, I guess um, Disney coming in, uh, and uh, so is Goggle, so is uh, the market. Are you guys uh, are you guys short? Are you guys long? That 185. Oh boy, we are taking about a full point of a pullback from those highs on the Amazon as well. So that's quite a decent look. Whew, spider potentially making fresh lows on the day as of right now. Uh, almost there. So not really in the pre not counting the pre-market session. We're talking about intraday open session right here. 522. What is the low? 522.36 right there. We're about 20 pennies away from that. It is raging to the downside. And look at that volume coming in off of that break as well. So pretty much a lot of the intraday longs that didn't really interact here. Probably going to be underwater if we get past this 522. Let's see what we get at that 522. Do these bidders kind of step back up? Bang! Right through. Ooh. So slamming right through. There goes my first cover on the goggle right there at that 154.20s. Let's see how much further we can go. Disney, are you coming with with us? Are you coming along? Are we going to Disney World? I have no idea, but that's coming in. Let's see if that 18.5, we're looking for that 18.5 potentially to come in. You can see that there may be some lick there uh, with that orbit that we had for over an hour. That's what we kind of talk about. Getting a little lucky with that dump here. Let's see. Apple full on reversion back into VWAP. Amazon, where is your VWAP, buddy? It is right there. 184.35 and we're trading 37. So that was a nice little slam into back into VWAP. Alphabet and only the only one that really hasn't really gone all the way back to its VWAP, its VWAP being 153.30s. You can see that red line right there. So we've got quite a ways to go if this is going to follow in step. But that relative strength does have me watching it closely. Let's see what we do in and around some of these levels. If this shelf breaks, maybe we are poised to kind of come in. Where's the next stop? This consolidation potentially underneath that 154. Let's see if we can even get there. But that Disney still holding up uh, onto this 119.30. So I even after that market kind of uh, uh, did that bit of a quad dunk. So I do want to get out a little piece there, uh, the one that we did kind of add into here. Uh, and I will, uh, I will stay a little bit nimble on that one because uh, that, that flush came in real hot and uh, Disney kind of didn't really do much. It kind of just held this previous low. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm acting too early there on that. Maybe it needs some more time, but I'm gonna stay as nimble as possible. Softy, oh boy, is that coming in real nice there. Softy breaking down, it's VWAP. Amazon pushing its VWAP. Spy, oof. When that came in, this little flush, that definitely took out some stops. That aggressiveness that happened, just a little wick to the downside. And now getting picked right back up. So let's see if this 522 uh, half area holds on the spider. Let's take a quick look left as well to see if, is, if there's anything interesting going on here at this level. Huh, interesting. A little bit of consolidation earlier on in the week. When is this? This is a Monday. So Monday's consolidation, a lower day consolidation is what we are falling onto as of right now and we kind of did that in the morning so let's see if those bids kind of show up there but one when and if this 521 breaks 
I'm going to ask, are we going to, are we going to hold that level or are these sellers going to come right back in? Uh, I have no idea, but I'm going to stay observant to, to some, to what that price action may bring at those levels there. So, okay. So got that initial cover there on the goggle, but goggles not really going too where too far, uh, as I can see, maybe the, those goggles are a little fogged up. I can't really see too far with that one, but uh, let's see if it can come in to that uh, to that uh, view up there potentially. Uh, Disney might need some more time, or we could be totally wrong. I'm just trying to churn it out, create some create some flow there. I'm trying to get better at that as well. I'm trying to. Uh, it, I, th I think something I struggle with sometimes is like getting some size in and churning out so churning out some. Uh some cash flow while I'm waiting for the move to actually happen. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do and get better at here on the Disney. We managed to get uh, uh, what I think is the right side of the move here, the back side when it does happen and we get that confluence with the market as well. Um, let's see if some of these tickers kind of bounce off of their VWAP. I see that Amazon's already attempting to bounce right now, but it is the initial test. So maybe it needs some more time to really, uh, to really uh, come to fruition there i see in the chat mr wick saying uh hopefully is it are you john wick all right uh Ooh. saying that meta with the dump so let's take a quick look at oh meta gosh, yeah. as as well yeah neil saying don't let that man have a pencil for <laughs> sure you got to watch out for baba yaga with the pencil there uh on uh, on that mr wick so um meta yeah coming into the downside but vwap not quite there just yet so let's see what that'll bring if if it'll even have vwap there but a nice little hold uh of that uh what is this 525 Ooh, interesting so 525 hold off of a 530 that little shelf in, at the highs that's interesting as well so uh decent uh decent mover there on meta but oh boy was that spy short that was uh that seems like that was the that was one of the better places to kind of take that uh, take that market kind of reversion there as we pull into that 18.5 and we're catching a little bit of a bid off that 18.5 now yeah this is i mean this market was i will admit that little drop was nice oh that was beautiful I mean, you're you in two shorts, and then Intel, which does what it wants to do. So yeah, yeah. I, I realize Intel's disconnected, so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that kind of work, do its own thing. I wanted, I wanted more in that trade, but right now it's just going sideways. It's not doing too much, so I'm just holding whatever breadcrumbs I have left on Intel. Yeah, it's like you can like kind of the whole market goes down, you can relax because Intel is still popping higher. Yeah. So that's a really I should have caught that's a really nice looking Intel. Congrats to you on that Intel. No, you've been in that name the last couple of days. So yeah, I mean it's a it's a, I guess it's a little choppy today. I guess I am still uh, still a little. Uh, uh, a little red on it based off of uh, how aggressive I was in the morning. Actually, pretty much break even on it now, I think. Um, but anyways, yeah, I was a little too aggressive uh, on Intel. No, no, uh, nowhere near break even. But uh, yeah, it's still a little red on it, but uh, managed to finally catch the long when it did come in not with the same kind of size and aggression that I had in the morning session. So that's something I do need to cool off and kind of go, going back to patience, having that patience, right? And I, you were talking about uh, having that consistency. That's, that's definitely one of my main focuses as well. Like consistency, consistency, consistency is the, is one of the top focuses. Like, how do you maintain that consistency? I think patience and planning is definitely a huge part of it and sticking with your playbook as well. So, uh, yeah, I, li I, I, like, uh, I like a lot of different things um, uh, when, when, it comes to, when it comes to trading, but uh, I got to do a little bit better uh, with the discipline of sticking with my playbook uh, uh, that, that I'm currently still, again, it's a work in progress. We're building on it a little bit every day kind of adding uh, adding uh, plays to it when if and when they do uh, show up but uh, yeah kind of sticking to that definitely plays a part I think significantly in maintaining that consistency over time I appreciate that thank you yeah no I think it's a work in progress I'm, I'm working on it as well it's it's one of the top uh, focuses that I have it was what I like to and I go you know into this community in person and also in the chat is everyone's always willing to admit like you know mistakes everyone's trying to grow together and I think that's what's what's really important and why you know I'm very happy to be here especially as part of how to trade also this IWM trade again another shout out to the community because Mahmood put me onto this one I'm um, saying that hey it looks like we might have a bit of a breakdown here on the IWM I was building here as we got a little bit higher I said if we break above that 
Uh, 207.75, I get out. We didn't, so I was pretty happy with that. And then I took, as you can see here, lots of different pieces here out. I was pretty happy just kind of unloading this one as we get more to the downside. I'm staying out of it. I I'm going to probably tie my hands behind my back here for the last six minutes of the midday. So that's what you say. Sit on your hands and wait yeah. and not do anything because there's no reason for me to leave That's a, that's a really hard thing to do. It's a, I mean, it's we'll a skill see if I'm within itself. At it, but, yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying just as, as like traders in general, like I have trouble doing that sometimes. Clearly on Intel, I had trouble doing that in the morning. I did not sit on my hands, and that's why I'm red on it right now. Even though I had a couple good, better trades uh, later on in the day uh, on that little pop, but you can see that Intel is just kind of chopping sideways, still well within that opening range, uh, uh, opening range. But we are building on top of VWAP right now, so it is doing its own thing. Not really. We talked about the beta yesterday, and that. Beta is definitely disconnected uh, uh, coming in uh, on the day today and yesterday it was quite disconnected as well and something else that may be disconnected uh, from the market is that AM Dizzle uh, <laughs> fresh lows one, 167s sorry 176s so yeah I tried that cheeky long uh, unnecessary there with that chase and I'm like all right well do I want to continue kind of forcing that idea this is selling off quite strongly on the day and I don't know if there was necessarily a catalyst specific to this one but yeah that AMD sell off off that 183 all the way down to 176 almost a full on 10 point flush it's about you know it's it's that's absolutely wild there so uh in uh, AMD to the downside is distinctly different. I'm still waiting for a potential reversion to happen on that one, but no real sign of that happening. You had a little bit of a of a of a shimmy dance right here, uh, wick wick wick, kind of a consolidation, seven seven halves pop can't really get through slams right back down sellers showing you who is in charge with that price action there and we've only made lower lows uh, and lower highs after that kind of action there so amd beautiful beautiful short for those who had it on the day hopefully you're not fighting the long as clearly the sellers are showing you over and over again who is in charge on that day on the day yeah no i think it's, it's certainly interesting how certain names are moving differently um, let's talk as well about Tesla still. Stonks Tesla, will stonk. Pardon? Stonks will stonk. Stonks will stonk. Yeah, yeah, indeed they will. They don't care about your feelings. No, absolutely not. at all. Not. They're like, what are feelings? We are stocks. We're numbers and data and algos. So they do what they want to do. But also, Tesla doing a heck of a reversal here, which um, I know because I got a little bit lost in the sauce here. It was a bit of a mess, though. We were a little bit stressed, though. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy. We, we stuck to the, the prep plan, which was just if we... I initially was going to wait for this bounce off that 175.50, but the more intense this got, the more I was like, Adara, if we do, if we can't stay within this range we have established after, just get out. So I got out. A little bit of an L here, but honestly, the issue was I, sh I was chasing waterfalls. I wanted that move up to 177. I was perhaps a skosh bitter that I fat fingered out a little bit too early in this attempt to make the range break, and they made a poor decision, so I just want to acknowledge that, but I'm happy I was able to manage it a little bit and not just panic punch out. We did wait for the punch out, and we didn't lose as much as we could have, so there we go. Also, NVIDIA. I want to talk about this. Ooh, this went, went even farther down. But yeah, so this NVIDIA, we had that big drop down in the market, and I didn't have an order ready, which I'm a little bit disappointed about, but the reason I didn't have an order ready was because... I, um, I was waiting to add to this position a little bit, right? So I took, I was trying to add just shy, initially just shy oh, of 896, when I realized we wouldn't right get that. Now. I said, Everything, let's yep. do just shy of 895.50s. We didn't get that either. NVIDIA was ready to go down. So I was like, you know what, NVIDIA, you want to give me some profits? Thank you. Thank you, man. Let's shake on it. We took a dollar on this one. So please just punch. Beautiful. Really happy with this name. This is a really nice Absolutely short. Beautiful. Making new lows of days. Shout out to, to Sean and anybody in this NVIDIA trade. I, I, you know, I was just doing my playing around in here, but Sean had a light bulb idea there. So nice look on that. Um, right now, this I, IWM is is dropping, so we're gonna take out another piece. Beautiful. Pleased as punch. There's no reason to buy. Um, these markets have given so many opportunities today, and this has been such a fun time. I can't believe we have only one minute left. I mean, one one minute left. Do you have your goggles and anything else? Uh, um, to the last minute so I got a little aggressive with the goggle and then instantly kind of covered a decent chunk there uh, into that 154. So we did get that dump through that 18.5. So beautifully coming in, I, sh I sh got more short on this shelf break. And then the shelf break kind of just holds that 154. I'm like, all right, well, I'll piece some off of here. I'll keep these kind of chase shares that I have. We have a we have a first in first in uh, first out kind of system here. So I can't really. I 
I wish I had a little bit more control as to which inventory I'm buying and selling, but uh, first and first out, gotta play with the rules, we've gotta play with the hand that you're, that you're uh, given there. But I'm willing to keep some of these and I'm willing to take out some of those on the goggle as we push a little bit further to the lows there. Maybe gotta get more on this Disney as we pieced off of a decent chunk there uh, at this 19-3 uh, uh, test. I'm looking for those 19s to come in. But that ES, oh boy, what is this pattern called? Double top, M shape, cat ears, whatever you wanna call it. That's a little bearish. Back to the downside, 154 coming in on the goggle. Fresh lows, oh boy, are those sellers really showing their hands and showing us who is in charge on the day. Oh boy, indeed. Love this market. We, I love it too. I can't believe it's two o'clock. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Right now though, Brendan's at the big desk. See ya. Hey guys, yeah, welcome in. Two o'clock on uh, what's turning into a bit of a down move here, kind of a day for the overall market. Just be aware there is some um, Israel-related headlines floating around right now. Uh, some comments coming out of the White House regarding uh, Israel. It seems to be what's behind this move to the downside currently for the overall market. I'll keep an eye out, though, if anything else uh, pops up. Uh, we are still dealing with overall. I'll show you the board in a second here, but a lot of strength across the entire market. Um, yields kind of holding on to uh, break even at the moment today. That's a dollar right now, three days in a row, back downside after this nice move uh, back higher. We are going to get to uh, Frank Aberna later on this afternoon. He'll be back uh, 3.30 market time this afternoon once again, same as uh, last time when he was on. AMD standing out to the downside today, 2.6%. It did actually gap higher and then just got faded hard all day long, back to uh, 176 right now, basically day lows. Um, oil is spiking right now, the market basically back to uh, session lows at this point. Oil's 0.45 at day highs, meanwhile on, again, just be aware, there's uh, some Israel-related uh, comments coming out from the uh, White House currently. Tesla with a great day, 4%. Uh, bounce back day coming off, remember, if you zoom out on Tesla's chart going back a couple of days, we got those delivery numbers. Not oh, good. So a uh, lot of room potentially to go for uh, Tesla back to the upside. There it is, 4%. There we go. 4% uh, back in uh, positive territory today. GE with a nice day as well, 3.3%. Meta leads the way as far as uh, monster cap tech names are concerned. Um, Google's actually red, negative 0.4 only, but uh, still negative on the day. 2.5% uh, for AMD. The rest of the chips down here. All positive, including A or NVIDIA, I should say, 0.6%. Uh, really the only weakness right now is in some of the retail names up here. Uh, TJX standing out uh, as notably weak target there. Uh, Merck negative, AbV negative as well. Everything else either kind of here or there, break even, a little bit positive, a little bit negative, or mostly uh, positive on the day. Um, this kind of kicked it off. Goolsby comes out. And is very hawkish, really, talking about, you know, if, if employment, if uh, the economy, the underlying signs in the overall economy stay strong. He actually said, it'll be hard to get to 2% um, when it comes to inflation. So uh, not in favor, to say the least, of um, cuts in any hurry at this point. So uh, we'll talk about uh, that coming up with Frank this afternoon as well. Um, yeah, a little bit of a boost we were discussing if you're with us in the pre-market this morning from tech once again. It was late in the day yesterday that we saw a nice bounce back for some of the bigger names uh, into the close anyways. And that did kind of kick off the day today, uh, leading things higher once again. There's a number of things we were talking about. We can uh, kick things off as we typically do. Let me get rid of some screens here with uh, Alphabet uh, was top of the list. Uh, there's this uh, note that came out uh, middle of the afternoon yesterday regarding uh, the fact that they could look into actually charging for AI search, which would be a complete abandonment of um, ad-based revenue tied to search, obviously. So the initial move to the upside gets all the way to almost 159 at the top there after the close yesterday. We fade that all back in. When if you read that report a little bit further, it actually says no decision has been made on this yet. It was just uh, rumblings kind of in the background. Uh, ends up being a bit of a uh, choppy back and forth day here, guys, for Alphabet. Believe it or not. Oh, man, I was talking to Obi here. Uh, what a wild, wild day here. I'll take this out of my ear. I was listening to what uh, Brendan was saying. I don't know if you guys have been following. I know NVIDIA is next. I don't know if you guys have been following me on uh, Twitter or on our more Trader TV Live. You can follow our positions. 
Look how many shorts we had in, in, in NVIDIA. Boom, boom, boom. This is exactly, and then Obi was like another one. And it's just like, we, this is what we've been doing the last couple of days. So this is five bucks plus now in the money to the downside. It's NVIDIA. I mean, we're all short here. Um, well, I'm, I, I'm long Palantir. We actually did some pretty good trades here in Palantir, to be honest with you. But NVIDIA continues to go. And then look at this Google trade. I mean, this is the number one trade idea here today on the sticky note. You know what's written down here? Long 152.50. is written here this morning at 8 o'clock. The low of the day is 152.20s. You know, we, we, we had that. We got our last piece out right there. I really like this news for Google today. Obviously, it's not, you know, it's down still. The market can't like it that much, but better than where it was. So nice recovery there for Google. The market continues to fall down. I'm here for that. I mean, we, we nailed the long early. Now you can, you can quite clearly see that we're short. So, um, so far, so good here. As there goes NVIDIA again. It's now $7 in the money on this NVIDIA trade that just keeps paying the bills. Yeah, it's this market. Ah, we're gonna need a new Vegemite. At some point, we'll make the Vegemite bet something short because the afternoon, we never get to these targets to the upside. So it is what it is. Uh, but the long was good in a few names this morning. Uh, I was asked yesterday what my favorite setup or trading setup was. And I believe, like I said something about a pop and fade and then I, and I came back after and said, uh, previous support turning into resistance. As, as an area of interest, or, or, or vice versa. And that's pretty much what Google 152 was. When I sat down this morning, it was like the first thing I tweeted out was Alphabet News 152 was resistance to support, so that's a level to watch. The only mistake I made is like, well, it's not a mistake. You trade within your style. And if you've seen the last few days and weeks, it's trade the counter trend trade to the range if it rejects. So. I traded 152 into 53 half, and then again into 153, and not doing it ever since. But right now, I'm only short. I uh, got four shorts on. The market is falling. Hang on to your shorts, man. It is what it is. Like uh, I don't have a long position on. I'm not really seeing a reason to. Like basically, the market was doing nothing, and then Goolsby opened. I think it was Goolsby and not whatever the. Uh, I didn't actually see what the news was with Israel, but I'm pretty sure it had more to do with the Fed speaker because. Oh man. That's the kind of action we'll see. It was the last speaker, and then Mester, I think we're going to get Mester uh, as well. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Alphabet, I guess if it gets to 152 again, which doesn't seem impossible the way market's trading, that could be something. Let's just be aware, yeah. Uh, latest comment, I don't think disinflation pace this year will match last year. Uh, and also economy and monetary policy is in a good place. So kind of contradictory here as far as these Fed speakers this afternoon. But yeah, a little bit um, more hawkish than expected there from uh, Goolsby today. Uh, just had an alert on this. Disney went uh, green to red and then back again. So uh, trying to bounce here for uh, Disney. Just be aware CNBC is still... Uh, talking about Disney. They've been uh, doing that pretty much all day long. Um, yeah, NVIDIA, what a move uh, today. It's been a bit of a wild ride off um, that 9.0, what was it, 9.07 at the top. Uh, basically, since the market's opened, it's just been uh, straight down since then. There was a note on Indonesia today. Uh, wasn't much else. few analysts uh, talking a little bit more positively once again about AI in general with uh, more and more companies uh, jumping on that bandwagon. I didn't even look at, I mean, I didn't even look at AMD. I mean, AMD is really tanking. It's, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll once again, man, put numbers up on the board, you know. Forget about the body count nonsense because this one is down for the count right now again. This is, I mean, we, I could show you these trades yesterday. Um, we got out yesterday at 888 into yesterday's close, but we just shorted, 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 like, okay, you know. Got some out here. As we start to break lower, we wrote down on the sticky note that we wanted long NVIDIA today in and around 890. Well, that's where we are right now. So we just covered a little bit of that. But NVIDIA read into an up market. I don't, I'm not going to flip over to longs. So I'm, I'm not, we're $8 in the money now. So that would be good. And if we can just continue this move down, we don't have too many shares left. Let's just see what we can do. So again, you know, no ticks, no mistakes here. We're seven for seven or something today. It's, it's, we're really, we're really, we've really done well. We just gave something back on PLTR there, but still in the green for Palantir. Absolutely no red names, continuously um, trading the trend. 
and just watching what's happening with the NASDAQ and going over and trading our favorite names. So NVIDIA today, an absolute banger. I don't know, just really happy with the performance over the last couple of days, weeks, months. This market's been fantastic. So we open with AMD for a second. I don't know what's going on with AMD. NVIDIA just got red, I think, by a tick. AMD hasn't had a bid on it for the entirety of the day. Like, there hasn't been much of a consolidation at any point. It's just been falling like a rock. It's down 3% today. And I, I had one trade on this thing. It was at 78. I think it just went sideways and showed you that and then shorted. I got out. I tried to get back in at 76 and a half. Couldn't get filled. And now it's going to take 75. So 75... 75 is the next support level on AMD. If this can't hold 175, I think it's going to get absolutely nasty. I am in a couple of chip names. One, you can probably guess. Intel's resistance was up there at 70s and 80s. So that's where I have it. And it's down there in the 50. Just hit 57. I'm going to get a bid there. And Micron. Micron was super strong yesterday. Ran into yesterday's close, 128. It ran up into yesterday's close at the 128 level. Uh, double tapped it here. Sorry, 129, I should say. Not 120. 120 129 was this level. So double tapped it. I shorted into this. And now it's just absolutely flushing. And I'm out. I just took a bid at 127 there on, on Micron. So we're short three names. The chips are falling. The market is absolutely dying at this point. The NASDAQ was a half a percent to the upside five seconds ago. And uh, yeah, whatever Mester's saying can't be any good. A uh, little penny stock just popping up in front of me here on a volume scanner. Um, there was an acquisition that was announced this morning for this Hub C, making a run for $1 right now on pretty heavy volume. So just a heads up, Hub C moving around right now. Let's uh, talk about this one, Meta, off the top in a pretty big way here. Still holding on to a nice day, though. 3.5% right now on a pullback. Jeffries this morning with a nice note on uh, Meta. And I mean really, really positive, going to 585 uh, maintaining their buy, guys, for META. Yeah, we really liked, uh, really liked Meta today. I was looking for a certain emoji here in the chat. I'll find it. Um, all right, so Meta still is going to be P&L number four or five. Well, whatever, we're, we're up. But we shorted this off that 52-week high that we talked about. Made money, made money. We, we, and and this, this was a good one because we weren't overly greedy with this. We took, I mean, three, four dollars is, is a little greedy, I guess, but we had the top and then we had the bottom of that range, and then we didn't have to worry about it ripping to, to the upside because we found a base there early, but Meta continues to work. I did sell some in my swing account today at lunch, pretty happy with these moves, up to 52-week highs. I took more money off the table there with Meta. Probably wrong, but I, I did sell some, so... Couldn't be happier with some of, the, um, some of the returns that we've been getting lately in some of these names. And then, although we do have a $9 winner here, Neil, with uh, NVIDIA, I still like to maybe buy some dips on this name in the long-term account. But, um, oh, yeah, Meta, price, price target hike. Um, again, another monster trade here. And, um, you know, join me every morning. We'll look to do the same. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get a chance to get to this one at all. But you said uh, in the old personal account... Um, there, was a, there was a question. Someone actually randomly asked me about uh, Lululemon. Oh, right, right. And I was like, I didn't trade Meta, so I'm going to do this segue. Because we'll get to Apple, and I'm actually, I'm not in Apple, but we're in Apple this morning. And someone asked me about, like, Lululemon and uh, what's going on here in, in long-term levels. And essentially, I've been looking for a, a retail play to sort of balance out in my long-term account. And... I pulled up the weekly chart on Lulu and was like looking at some of the metrics. I'm like, yeah, this looks pretty reasonable. I, I really don't mind holding on to that for a long term. It's a good company, good brand. I like them. I've never really owned much in the way of retail. I pull up this weekly, see them at the 200 period moving average. I'm like, well, I bought, would, I, would I dollar cost average into this stock for the rest of the year? And I, it was a quick yes after like 20 minutes of looking into it. So yeah, I picked up a little bit in the personal account there to start a little DCA. Probably wait a couple months to buy more. Uh, something along those lines, unless it goes to some key price level. If it goes to another support level, I'll buy it. Otherwise, I'll just buy again in a couple of months. But uh, yeah, sometimes you see something like this, and you know, I wouldn't have probably looked at it otherwise. I've been waiting around for Costco to drop, but why not yeah. this? 
Um, yeah, let's get back. I, like I said, I'm not probably, I'm not going to get on the bit of meta or anything in this market move to the downside. Like I would argue that if you were going to pick something to buy at VWAP, this would be at a reasonable level at 523. But I don't like the long right now, so no. Uh, a couple other things to uh, get through here as we, I was just reading a note from, yeah, Mester is still speaking, just be aware. Uh, this is what Apple's doing right now, just absolutely off a cliff. I can't see anything new on this right now, or uh, current anyways, but the market absolutely tanking as well, partially because of this move down in Apple uh, today, guys. Um, yeah, robots to come, apparently. That was according to Bloomberg, uh, middle of the afternoon, late in the afternoon yesterday. Uh, we get that report suggesting that uh, Apple basically diverting a portion, anyways, of the staff that was working on the car towards this uh, robot effort. I robots. Yeah, we, uh, Apple. Yeah, we're ten dollars in the money on this <laughs> Nvidia. So and by the way, Apple. Wow, uh, we felt bad getting out when we did. We wrote down one seventy as a long, and it's P and L number two. Like, and we got out right there, and it's still P and L number two. The short at one seventy two. Hard to have read that really. I still think Apple has a long way to go to the north side. But it can also easily fall once we break through this 167 area. I don't know if that happens today or not, but the, the, the broader market just turned red. So the ES just went red. So that's bad. This NVIDIA it's is now good. $11 in the money, by the way. Um, but yeah, just continuously making new, new moves back in. I like that story for Apple today. I, you know, I don't have a problem with them getting into new products. I think that's what we want them to do as, as shareholders to diversify, obviously. It's worked, it's worked huge for those $1,000 AirPod headset things. Um, the AirPods, now everybody uses them. The watch, you know, I mean, there's just another product that people are gonna buy. Those Apple HomePods. Um, Randy considers himself an audiophile and he's loaded his house with Apple products. So yeah, I'm for it. Let's go. Let's go NVIDIA downside. Let's go Apple. Try to hold some bids at some point. But my hands are clean of bids today, boy. Uh, we'll wait. We're done our buying, man. We did the buying. We put the damage on the board. And then right now we're just short. Yeah, I mean, it's like there's multiple things absolutely dying in the market. Apple, Apple's move was insane. And again, like when we're talking about trading setups and trading ideas, if the trend is your friend is probably one of the most overstated things in the market. However, when a stock is trending up, there are multiple opportunities to trade it. In the lesson of the day, we talked about why the 170 level was key in the news, but then VWAP held once, VWAP held twice. You couldn't catch VWAP and thank goodness. I mean, if you bought VWAP here, it looked good for a second, maybe three minutes, and then look at the flush back in on Apple. Now, ultimately, I have 172 as an out, because I'm simply, I was simply looking at this resistance up here, and the second it tagged 172, I'm like, okay, I'm gone. That's my style of trade. And sometimes that looks genius. Other times, like I got out of Google early, and it didn't look like genius move then, but then I took Apple to Target, and it happens to look good because it turns, right? So that's more coincidence than anything. Like sometimes that's, sometimes it'll get out at the top, sometimes it'll go another $2. That's just part of the game. But the more important thing is when you have a trend like this, and I think I said it in one of my notes, or at least some point, like you can find other entry points. If you're not in at the bottom, there's going to be more places to get in in a trend move, and you want to make sure you do that uh, if you get the opportunity. Right now, I wouldn't be looking for any bids. Oh, wow. uh, shorts are essentially printing all over the place. Like, yeah, I'm going to get some low of the day on Intel. Oh, yeah, Boeing, by the way. Boeing is flushed back into 186 because that came right back to our 188 area, gave you a lower high. So that is a chance to fill us at that 185 eventually. Is market be tanking? I haven't, like, I haven't seen any. I mean, Brian, if there's something coming across, I mean, let us know people in the chat as well. But yeah, I mean, it's a big move down. We're now live trading this $13 winner for everybody. So again, thank you, BPI back there. This is, a big, this is a big move, man. This is a, this is a really, really nice one. So we'll, we'll wait to see if there is some news. I'm not, I'm not buying anything until we eventually do find a bottom. But 
on that note, we do have Frank coming a little later this afternoon, so we'll uh, talk more about the dollar. I do have the dollar uh, up here as well. We can have a quick little look on that. Let me just pull this in a little bit. Yeah, so dollar's starting to make moves higher right now as we speak. So this is the DXY. Some of you has a have asked me to look at this, uh, especially in the after show and whatnot, where now NVIDIA is now $14 in the money uh, right now. Like this is a good one. I don't know what else to say. Uh, 883 right now. We are starting to really move here uh, to the downside. So yeah, man, I mean, welcome to the jungle. You know, we've been a part of this one for a minute. Uh, it's making a nice downside move. And, and the NASDAQ could stop in and around here. This was that 18.4 area that we had sort of talked about uh, as an area of support that could come into play. We nailed this 18.6 today, obviously. We already talked about that 40 handles away from a 200 handle move. Uh, but yeah, ne next area, if there's a problem, if these feds can't keep their mouths shut or if something else happens, uh, eight, 18 3, man, eight, like, you know, there's still movement to the downside here uh, incoming. So there she goes again. It's a big one, one more time. And uh, just, just keep, keep playing, stay your grind, man. That's what we've we sort of tweeted that out and it's been, been catching on. So just do that. And um, yeah, nice move to the downside. All right, Kashkari and Mester now speaking. So we get a double dose here. Just be, be aware. Uh, Kashkari just saying, it's a question of why cut rates if the economy remains strong at this point. So all of these comments coming across, pretty hawkish. Um, wage inflation gap has narrowed but still persists. Uh, Long-term neutral estimate. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to Goolsby even, uh, Goolsby went as far as saying in March, remember in March we got the economic projections and the dot, uh, dot plot. Goolsby coming out saying that in March actually jotted down two rate cuts this year, not three, as everyone is expecting. Um, so, yeah, lots of, just be aware of, of Mester and Kashkari right now um, making comments. Uh, square 4% today, down, sorry, or block, whatever you want to call it today. Um, bounced off 76 and a quarter there, which was that low from the morning, but there was a downgrade today for uh, SQ. I had one trade in Square, 78 short to 78.30. And really, if I, look, I'm not going to complain about it because there were a million really good shorts and the opportun opportunities out there were able to catch some. But sticking with that one back through 78 would have worked just fine. Uh, right here at about 12.3. Now that said, anything you shorted right now looks good. But 78 was the key price. I tried it on a lower high there, but then the lower high was good. And that was more of the support turning into resistance again. So there's your support at 78, looking for that to end up resistance. Obviously, it's going to end up flushing. You'll now see that I'm out of Boeing. I just took, there we go, just took Boeing out when it bounced off of morning support here, 186 and a quarter. So it bounced off 86, back into 186 and a quarter. I took that one out, going to ring the register, let things settle down. Like if a lot of this has to do with, you know, Fed speak or whatever it might be, uh, I do suspect you're going to find some stocks are going to find some bottoms in here and you want to be sure that you're taking some profit out. The other short that I'm in, uh, everyone knows Nikola and the dollar trade. I did miss this lower high off the buck, but when it tagged, the dollar went to 101, came back underneath. I shorted 99 and a half with a stop up here. So you risk about a penny and a half. One to one is 98 cents and 97, 96, 95, bidding 94s as well. So structure that trade pretty simple. Um, basically the same thing as yesterday uh, over there on Nikola. So we'll see what happens. I seriously doubt Frank rallies the market. I feel as if, yeah, actually, I shouldn't say that. Because I actually think if the market can hold 18.33, like a mini, like a, what's the word for it? Like rubber band move, if that's anything, like it just, you snap so far down that you might be able to snap back into like four half, just almost like on accident. And if that's the case, AMD might be worth a reload short because that stock can't seem to find a bid. And it's the weakest thing in, that I've seen consistently all day. So anywhere, like the 175 is gone on AMD now. So I'm thinking 175 back in, that was major support that this morning I would have been bidding, but not today, not, not this afternoon. So our out, our out is uh, right here, 886. Like if this breaks 886, we're gonna watch it carefully, 886.50, something like that for Nvidia and finish it. We're almost double what we were at yesterday. So like this has been a good day. Let's not, I, I don't want this like to retrace all the way back. You know, some days are rough ones, are they? And then some days are great days. 
which, which this month has been a great one, and it's only a couple of days in. So let's, let's just keep the good feels. Uh, we talk about that. So I don't, I'm not, I don't want to see this go all the way back up. We're going to stop out if this breaks 886.50 right there for NVIDIA, and then we'd be stopped out for a $10 winner. So uh, we'll be happy for that and uh, just go, go on from there. So that's something that I'm going to be looking at. I did not look at Square today. The name that we did look at was going to be PayPal, and I'll adjust maybe that stop order as we go. I just, enough is enough, honestly. Um, we talked about PayPal today. Look at PayPal, still positive. Right, obviously it had that dump down, but it was holding out pretty nice, and it did have a pretty good start to the day there, right off the open. The market's obviously coming back in. I still think PayPal could be a buy down here, you know, between sixty, sixty-two dollars. My my portfolio is littered with tech names, as many of ours are. I feel like a name. Oh, so I sold some Meta at lunch uh, on the walk, and then I also sold some Spotify because I looked down and I was like, okay, this is nice. And we were actually, I've been in this name since it's uh, direct list, bought a little bit more at the bottom there, and I am trying to raise some capital. I don't really understand this last recent move in Spotify. Oh my goodness. So for well, me, wait, no, it was a, yeah, it was about 300%. I'm out. That is, like, I'm out. So I'm out of Spotify. I, I sold it before on the way up. I was just looking down and scrolling through because I, I wanted to get out a little bit. Like I made some, you know, I stole GE. I, st I, I did, you know, I've done some moves here lately. So Spotify, definitely uh, one that we're flipping out of right now on that one. And then Thanks for the mistake. But I just uh, Meta might be a mistake getting out of. Why didn't you tell me so Spotify was at three hundred? Actually, because we were talking about like stocks that have made crazy moves, like like selling, yeah. buying, all that kind of stuff. I actually am like. Well, we don't really buy and sell on our personal accounts. Right. But I, like, really, I'm probably just going to sell Spotify in the aftermarket when the show is done. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. I, I, like, I know it was at 280 yesterday, I think we were talking about it, right? I didn't even, like, I wasn't even, I remember we had some stories about it. And yeah, I and it was at it, I was like, it's 300 bucks. I was looking down, I was like, I. Because I'm when good. you think I'm about, good. when you think about that story. I was going to sell my weed stocks, but then I realized I was still down like 400%. <laughs> Let it moon, baby. No, but like Google, like if you think Let about that space, like you're exposed to it with Alphabet, which we all own a million percent of or whatever that is. So you probably have so much exposure to something adjacent to it. And that was my thought with, we were talking about Reddit. Like, would you ever want to own Reddit? Like, what's the reason why I would want to own it if you already own Meta? Oh, Reddit for, with Meta? If you, if you own Meta shares and you have a decent part of your portfolio in Meta, then what would, or let's say you have Meta and Pinterest, or like, what, like what's the reason why I'd want to have Reddit? What makes it special? Like, I can make a case for why I want ARM when I own other semis. I can make, that's an argument I think I could make to myself, but uh, anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, market's still going down. Oh, yeah. Probably shouldn't have, oh, let's see what, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Spotify, 304. I'm, I'm still on Spotify. Uh, AMD continues to tank. Everything continues to tank. NVIDIA is trying to hold 884. I'm not even thinking about looking at key levels right now for bids. I think you just want to see things calm down. And then when they start to calm down, like it'd be easy for me to say, well, Tesla has VWAP at 173, and I have a line drawn as 173 being a key level. But I'm questioning how much that matters in a move like this. Right, so in a normal day, what? this would be a dip buy on Tesla at 173. Uh, this is not really a normal move at this point. We done? Okay. Um, yeah, we done the rundown. Like almost fifteen dollars. I mean, this is this is why we go back to these plays. I can. I mean, if you just go over to my Twitter, you're going to see that yesterday we were all over this basically this exact same play yesterday, almost to the. Almost exactly. And this is why we say about staying into your grind and right, doing this whatever you guys do every single day, whatever works for you. So this is me tweeting this out, by the way, about an hour and a bit ago, uh, right there on NVIDIA, what we were doing. Uh, this goes back, we have earlier tweets as well, um, including right here. This was two hours ago, starting, look, look at this, two hours ago here, Big Patty Ice. Starting NVIDIA short. Right here, 895-ish. Okay, so, um, all right. And then yesterday also, it looks the exact same. Here's our NVIDIA trading from yesterday where we let it get upside, you know, had this, hit it back, and then we started hitting it, watching it collapse back in. We should have reshorted there, but the idea was is to play the short back in. So these are the nine 
you know, fluke, right? So back to back to back. This is 902 right there, all the way down to 888. So it, we already know it has the pedigree. This is a $15 winner right now. This was a $14 winner there. So right now, this is when the market starts to get a little bit slow and you're looking for ideas, I'm going to be looking, you know, at names like this and Vidi and whatnot to really get the party started uh, on that. Palantir has been going to the downside. This is going to well, be I mean, one. I mean, we want to talk about. Uh, it's like, it doesn't matter what your catalyst was today. Good, bad, indifferent, in between. You're down right now. Like, yeah, it's, this is like, I, like, show me. Well, okay, but you know what? Bitcoin. Okay, so I'll. I'll I always say stuff like everything's if, going down. Uh, Bitcoin is actually holding uh, right now pretty decently. But outside of that, it looks like everything's arrows down. Like, since we've been sitting here, like, we started the show at 2 o'clock. Intel was at 4070. It's at one and a half percent down and went from green to red in the last 30 minutes. One and a half percent down. That's a stock that was not moving percentage wise today. Like it wasn't doing anything. Um, Micron was probably, yeah, maybe you can say it was out too early. I would probably agree with you. You're going to be at the lows of the day. So, you know, you're sitting in something short. Like, try to hold on to something. I'm going to hold on to the last of Intel. If it goes, if we cannot hold on to 40 even, I'll give it to that. If I see it bounce off 40 even, I'll respect the 40 even level. But as I said, oh, right now, Bitcoin is about the only thing holding higher. Uh, IBIT Where's the holding like 39.25. But like this is getting absolutely nasty uh, in the market. I don't know if anything else is being said. I'm not seeing or hearing I'm, anything I'm not on the wire. Or seeing anything so I'm assuming it. if there was something new, Brennan would be telling us. So let's just hold on to your shorts, man. And the, only, the only thing I'm mad about is I had four shorts when the shut started and I only have two now. That's the only thing to be upset about. Oh, man. Yeah, nothing to be upset. I mean, this is, um, like I said, we, we can't, you know, like, ugh, just always, always, always. Wow. You have, at least now, like, we've always talked about being able to, you know, get, get into your style of trading and everything like that. And really glad that we've kind of kind of adjusted here um, to allow us for this. The, the, this has been really good. And, and I think that that's, Part, part of it is actually talking to these guys behind me too, like just, just talking to them and listening to some of their stories and giving them little piece of advice because sometimes you just kind of sit here and you're like, da, 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 da. but you know, talking to others, definitely uh, helping your boy out here. 877, I mean, this could be a spot where we just cover this, man. Put, put 18 bucks in, 18, put 20 almost. Uh, that could be a good level there. I mean, the really bad level is 860 if we really, really get washed. Um, we just put a stop order at 886 and almost got stopped out. Remember that? So we do something like that again, then I'm going to be like, oh, man. Uh, 882 then maybe for a stop, and then we'll forget about it. There could be some bounces, you know, that, that always do happen in this market. And, and like I said, if they do, we've already hit. We, we were really happy with yesterday, and today we've leveled that. And we talked about, remember we talked about that? trying to get better every single day and looking to see what works and only you know, you know, what, what levels you're looking for and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I just hope that a lot of you are seeing sort of the growth and everything in this style of trading. What's up, Flame Boy? Uh, what's up, everybody else in the chat? Thank you for the support. Again, and if you can, uh, hit the like and the support buttons. The only thing I have on here, and unfortunately I'll say her name because I only have the cat one and I don't want to get anybody all sad because unfortunately cat is... Uh, uh, well, we can do like yeah, subscribe. Sure yes, show that takes I'm gonna get that. The market every day. We should do like a group one. How about that? I mean, I know we have so much on the board, but if we did I like something that like idea. that, then we could like wrap it all up. I like, like that idea. It's like you, you we could all be there, but Adara's the one that says it, and we're kind of like, yeah, and behind her, like, or just how about Adara right. has one in general? I can do one. I oh, yeah, yeah. If we're gonna do individual like ones, subscribe button. I need a new one that is a different movie. Uh, or show, I guess, because, yeah, I mean, show if you're old like me, movie if you're young, because uh, Mr. T is amazing. Um, a couple of things. I am now, because you just bounced off 4009, and I said if it gets to 40, that's enough is enough, I've, and my trail is in on Intel. It's like this, I feel as if this is a bit much. Uh, yeah. I feel like it's bouncing pretty decently here. And given a move like that, like the rubber band effect is pretty decent. So if I, I'm going to lock it in. If it gets back above the quarters or it gets back down into 40, I'm just going to get out of that trade. Uh, Nikola is a penny stock. Who cares? It's not going to... 
I'm going to cancel my bid on Nikola because if it breaks 94, like, why can't it get to 90? Like, it doesn't really care. The market could bounce and Nikola could still actually not bounce anywhere. And I'd be perfectly comfortable with that. I don't know what your thoughts are. Like, you trailing. Actually, I have, you know what? How about this? Let's Vegemite this for uh, NVIDIA 875. Oh, well, you almost got to 875 there. And I, and I even said it this way. It doesn't even have to close at 875. I'll just do the spoonful if it touches 875. Right, right. That's very, very So if it yeah. prints 875. Very, very nice it's, of you. No, it's more, it, well, because it's, it's, it's pat- risky. It could actually happen. I think that one could. So what was it? I've been dodging so many what Vegemite is the bullets. Yeah, shoot, no, we had a uh, croissant. I saw a croissant this morning. We should have stole it. Yeah, I have nothing to spread it on. I'm just going to I'm just going to do a spoon. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. So technically you're supposed to put this on bread. That's how uh, like on toast. That's how people put eat that, it. Put that ish on everything. Frank's Frank sauce, you know what I mean? $20 off for this Frank's? Nvidia, man. This, so this is what it is. 875? I don't care. I, I might got put nothing. Bit, there's nothing else to do. Yeah, there's nothing. Well, 170 there's AMD. Do, Are you kidding me, AMD? Ooh, this is nice. I'm going to so all this money that we've been raising, man, I may just put it. We're not in the we're not in the early stages. I'm putting stink bids somewhere. Yeah, we're not in the early stages of like an AI. Like AI is really, I, I'm not even sure we're in the early early stages. Like we, like I still think Nvidia is a story here. Obviously, moving forward, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that um, as as I sit here. But you know, this 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 is not an, an horrible place to put your money. Um, you know, on dips. I'm going to put that stop at 882. So I've just looked at it a couple times. I'm talking my way into it. So I just put it in right now. 882 break. We're out. Um, and that'll be a good one for me, honestly. So that's, that's obviously, that's good. So the bottom there was 78. We actually called 77 looking at the daily chart with just not even like zooming in or anything, just, just eyeballing that. We don't have anything. I mean, I guess I could have looked here. We were just down here. Yeah, see, like, so there's not, whoopsies. Whoa, bad wick. So, oh, man, there's not really anything. I think now. AMD's starting to bounce. I just punched out of Intel. I actually didn't even trail. Yeah, I, I punched out there. of it because. All right, let's find some bids. Very quick. I quickly looked over at AMD and I was like, this is re- like when this starts to happen, it's like, okay, when you're day trading, you know the next thing is a, a decent, probably somewhere there's going to be a bit of a bid and you want to lock in some profit. As I said, nickel's a penny stock. It probably doesn't matter if the, even if the market bounces. But 170 50 on AMD, and if you go to a, is a 15 minute even going to show these levels? So 172 is the bottom. You got to go all the way. Like you, you haven't been here. You've been under this back in like February, but you had one wick down to 172. So if it can start to hold bids over 172, I think this has a chance to get back uh, to said upside. But uh, wow, nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh, this market, but hey. You know, the shorts have been good. I just, maybe Apple or Meta, one of those two, something a little bit stronger for some kind of a bid if it's going to be, if I'm going to try and buy a dip in here. I'm thinking maybe Apple is the one because Apple's long for really good. Yeah, I just, um, I just got to see it. Dara sent me a message there. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about that NVIDIA trade. Good. Um, okay, so I found something that we like. You guys know we've liked this name for a minute. It's going to be Alibaba. Um, we're getting a chance to buy it on a dip. I mean, this is a name that we've wanted to buy on dips. We've been looking for it. So I just immediately like muscle memory type stuff went right over there to Alibaba and was just like, I like the long because I, you might've heard me say, let's, let's go in there and find some longs or let's find some bids. So I wanted to go in there, just have a look at some of the stock that I'd liked in the past. Now I, we don't want to put a lot of time or effort into trying to pick absolute bottoms. So we'll just put in a couple shares here, and if it manages to go back up and we can start to pile on, like I said, today, this is just for me. Like today we're already, that's not piling on. Uh, today we're already uh, making those goals, right? We, we, we got those gains yesterday, um, and today we're trying to put them on the board again, and, and we did that. So now I'm just trying to find some sort of a bounce. And look at this. There it goes. It is a nice little bounce there in Alibaba. We're long at 48s. Let's see where we can go. I, I was only waiting for 55s. Sorry, 56s and then 60s. So still a ways to go on it. But this could be a good bounce level. We just fell back into where we were yesterday's close. Not bad. I'm going to give this down here like 72.35 or so. Let's try it, man. Let's ride with some Alibaba. So that's one thing that we're going to do. Um, and then NVIDIA is very, very close to getting stopped out. Probably just one little sneeze and we're out. And that might be what happens very, very soon. So we're close to getting out, and I'm pretty fine with that. You know, 
okay, if we fall down, we fall down. Uh, but there it is. So that those are my those are my trades right now. You mentioned looking. You're still in Nicola, but I think that we're. But trying I, to... I don't think that stock's gonna matter. No, I have is. What I'm, it's not that it doesn't matter. It's just that when you get a move like this, if the market snaps back up, it's things like Apple and things that are following the, the, the indexes no. that are going to go. Small caps don't matter. So I cover it all the shorts and things that I think will, would go. Um, I'm looking at Tesla. Tesla that 173. So it holds 172 and a half, which means by default that if you go to make a fresh low, your risk to this bottom would be essentially 50 cents. I mean, call it 70, 75-ish on Tesla. Uh, so if we can hold VWAP, and again, if the market bounces, it's like a big if. But you have something which is strong on the day, which was at a key price level. Why is 173 matter? Okay, let's do all the work uh, here. Go to the 15-minute chart. You had this flush at the open through 73. It was a good confluence level uh, before. So playing 173 on Tesla, give it into this local bottom, all these charts are going to look so skewed because the ranges are now so gigantic, so uh, the scaling is going to be fun to watch. But if it cannot hold on to it, then we'll just dump out. So I'm going to put a stop underneath that local bottom. If it gets to 74, we'll take some out there, and then 75, I think, would be the, uh, the all-out. I, I don't think you're looking for any kind of a monster bounce here. I mean, if this thing even goes a buck, I think it'd be pretty good uh, at this point, so we'll get something at the one-to-one -one, uh, area from there. And I think there's going to be th some things to short pops on, but I'd go back to the names that I was short that are underneath VWAP. Like Micron, I want to short back into 127, I think, and then VWAP. Oh, I'm still offering uh, 128 and a half. Micron? Well, the oh, funny thing is... Clean up your bids, right? I, 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 no, you had to clean up... I had to make sure I didn't have any more Actually, yes, I have to clean up my stop orders. Yeah, so I had to do that too. Most of the stop orders, well, we have got stopped out on nothing, but most of the stop orders will just cancel if you're flat on the stock, but you got to... It depends sure. on the one you use. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. got to make sure. Uh, okay, uh, we already know that plan there. Uh, Alibaba did, uh, uh, sorry, uh, NVIDIA did fail exactly off 882. Like, come on, man. Instead of me being so like, this is my out level, it could have been a, a reload level. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so that, that could have been there right, right now. So just as a plan of action in case this market does not go back up to the upside, we have one more bid. And actually, I'm going to cancel this on Alibaba and put it a little bit lower. I'm just going to put it right at 41. Uh, for the same amount of shares, get an average price here. So we have a 48 plus a 41. That'll give us like a 44. Um, and then we're going to get out if it breaks 35, just oh, to double check. Thinking. Because I just didn't want this name. And this is a very conservative play. I, the, the one thing that I've changed, honestly, the one thing that I've changed is to try to do that, like as Neil was mentioning, as I've been mentioning as well, is the trend game. And I want to be with it, not against it. Um, so even if I like Alibaba long, it doesn't mean that we have to you know, go to war together. Uh, if it drops back out, we can get out of that one. So I just looked at these little dip levels here, uh, and that's 35. So if we break 35, then I'm going to be like, oh, what about 25? And then I'm just like compounding. And then if the move really does continue, then I will get stopped out at 25. So we'll, we'll average it in. We're bidding 41s. That's actually where it's at right now. So hopefully we get another bid into that one, and then all will be groovy uh, with, uh, there it is. So hopefully we'll get that fill. Then we'll double up the old position here as we wait. These are all D prints coming through. So when you, that's another thing that you'll learn here with real trading. Oh, no. Um, should I just punch 42s? If I don't get 41, that'd be sad. Uh, but anyways, you'll learn the different gateways that are filling. And I was probably on a paid one, which I was, which is why I didn't get filled. So... Um, one where they There's a lot of edge X printing on Alibaba. For, yeah, for, I sat on NASDAQ there. I got to switch that. Which is, um, I mean, if you trade with real trading, it's not the worst idea to have, if, if a certain gateway prints more oh, than well, the others and it pays it. the rebate, then throw that one out and then you'll just, over time, if you're getting fills on it, it's like if you pay to get out two cents per, you know, like two dollars per thousand shares, let's just say, uh, versus, sorry, pay $1 per thousand oh, shares wow. versus getting paid $2 per thousand shares, over time, that's going to add up. Yeah. That's all. So if you see EdgeX, it's worth doing it. Uh, so I did jump into the Micron short, but I mean, if that works, then Tesla's probably not going to. So uh, that'll end up being a wash if Micron makes a fresh low. It popped. It got as far as the previous low of the day and then wicked it, which is a setup for an entry. So I jumped into the short, which is, I said I wanted this one. Intel's going to end up being, hey, when we get trailed out, we could have just got right back in off the previous low of the day. This market doesn't seem to want to stop at this particular point. So we've got to look for some other entries. 
might have missed this chance at the 30s. Maybe we get a shot to get in. Like I said, God only oh, in my. Micron. This market is only going to the downside. Arm should have... Oh, that's right. That's too late. Arm, uh, yeah. Arm was holding up really well when everything else was going down, but uh, it just seemingly joined the party to the downside. And it's also already... If this were anywhere near VWAP, I would have shorted it. And every day we hustle in. And every day, NVIDIA is making some moves. And today it was early, and it was a long. And then right now, it is apparently the short uh, right there as we look right now to take this out. So again, see what I mean about coming in you know, through on an Alibaba, trying to go long into a market that looks like this? Uh, we're, we're pennies away from getting out. My net is actually increasing as, this is ha as I'm losing on Alibaba because this name just went, everybody. Through, Neil. What, what price? $8.75. We're right now at a $21 winner. Shout out to Chef Joe. Shout out to everybody here. Um, this is really starting to get spicy, man. We're barbecuing up uh, something pretty special here uh, live for you on Trader TV Live. So this is probably a clip that moment, but here it is. It's NVIDIA. It's $21 in the money live for you guys. I think the biggest trade, we've talked about this before. I think we had $24, $25, uh, but here it comes right now. It's a big one. Obviously, we don't have... On a have, Mag 7. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, huge, huge trade here as we continue to go. 878, starting to get to the downside. Um, I might just switch this to 880 uh, and get that out right now. Um, 880 out. Yeah, let's just take it out on 880, and then we'll be done with that, man. I mean, I'm pretty, pretty happy with uh, the performance on this one in 880.01, uh, and there it is. We'll get out of this trade and uh, do that. But uh, yeah, let's see. Because maybe Alibaba goes back up. Like maybe, maybe we can so, hit lightning in a bottle here. So obviously I got out of Tesla. And it'll end up being a wash. Like I said, if Micron goes down, Tesla's going to go up. Micron 126, it just bounced off 25 uh, quarter though. So I took some out there in front of 125. Um, there was a question in the chat. Raptor 1, why are NOC and LMT flying while the market's going down? So there was, I mean, Brennan, Brennan brought us a story about uh about israel and again i didn't i didn't catch all of it but suffice to say any negativity there defense name looking good a defense name when the when tech stocks are going down makes some sense as well so i'm going to assume that that is the reason why defense names are going to be strong because there were some headlines uh regarding yeah, uh, the, the, the israeli conflict right so it makes a lot of sense to me not everything is going to follow the market. Even Bitcoin was actually not that bad. And if you think about flight to, like if money's coming out of the market, where are you going to stash it? You're going to put it into gold? You're going to put it into a defensive name? You're going to put it into, maybe you're putting it into Bitcoin. So not everything is dying. Bitcoin's almost at the high of the day and could be taking out tops as we speak. And it's a Bitcoin move, by the way, because I can tell you, look at Coinbase. Coinbase is at the lows. Without even looking, I bet you Mara's at the lows. Uh, Mars at the lows of the day. So this is, yeah, it, it feels like there's some safety going into that. I bet you gold's probably doing uh, not too bad uh, as well. Hmm. Uh, PRGO uh, is starting to have some moves here as CVS apparently going to cover one of their drugs. A nice move upside for Perigo. So there it goes. Uh, nice move there. We'll see if CVS is doing anything uh, on the downside, maybe. But no, I mean, CVS has actually been a quite a nice trade over the last little bit. Um, they missed. I, I, what was that? Oh, yeah, that was the, um, right, the different changes in, uh, in what was covered and what wasn't there by, was it Medicaid or something? Uh, but there's a nice yeah, move down into these levels. It was UNH that was really getting sort of clubbed. We it was a lawsuit about, for you. Yeah, they, these are, this is the worst Second worst performing in the Dow. We talked about was Intel, UNH, Boeing. Uh, but Boeing bounced at least from yesterday, at least. But uh, UNH had never moved down. Look at this name. So again, trying to maybe pick up some value in a, in a UNH down here as well. 450 um, has been yeah, look at all that. kinds of stuff. All the way back to 2023, the last summer. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah, again, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, all the way I down played, there. The first time, I played it once. I took some out, maybe like a third. And then basically just got back in at 450. Actually, I, I said the other day that I had a, I thought I had a stink bid at 450, but um, it had expired because I'd only let. I think I had like good for a month. Yeah, those stinky bids expire, man. Well, you know, because it, it doesn't go there in a month, and you don't get the fill. So I actually ended up 
just putting an order in and getting like 56 or whatever the heck price I got. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's been a long-term support level. That said, support, support until it breaks, right? Like he, just because something is bounced, like the Oxy bottom or the Warren Buffett bottom on Oxy, that's not necessarily going to be there forever. As long as it is, uh, you want to trade off of it. But you, like I said, there's some kernels of strength out there. People are pointing out that USO is looking good today. And that... Again, doesn't surprise me. My charts have been a little bit frustratingly slow. Yeah, it's, I just I actually spoke to our guy about the charts. Okay. Um, yo, what's up, Chef Joe? I, I I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Chef Joe. Awesome trade. Um, I appreciate that. But stakes are still on you. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Chef Joe, for that one. Um, I'll get the mushrooms. You can get the stakes. Uh, but uh, yeah, that 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 was a good one there on Nvidia. I, no matter what happens, yes, sir. It'll be three times my next stock. From PL wise, even even if we get out right here at 880, which we're going to in a couple of seconds, so uh, pretty happy, obviously, with that one. Uh, all right, thank you for that. And then, um, all right, the Alibaba trade's not doing anything, so let's maybe find some more. I'm just not convinced on which way we we really want this market uh, to go. Oh, I wanted to address, so this could come out. There there are not anything worthwhile tonight, unfortunately, for an earnings. So I'm not just going to like tell you that there is lots of stuff happening because there's not. Uh, pretty light uh, as far as this goes, man. We already had Conagra this morning. There's really nothing after market close. So you're just going to have to hang out because it's me and Danielle Shea, and we should have a good time there uh, tonight. So get ready for that one on the after show, uh, the market recap show, where we'll recap this whole move, man. We'll talk about NVIDIA. I'll talk about why I liked it, why I thought it was there, um, and then you know how you can trade around that and uh, various other things. But uh, good, good show there planned. And then tomorrow, of course, we have what we like to call the podcast, and it's episode number 21. We have a podcast. You can scan that. You can go watch it on Spotify, on YouTube. You can listen to it and um, do any sort of system you'd like to. Apple, Spotify, YouTube, soon to be everywhere else. Is there another place to go? Uh, um, there probably is different pod areas. No, I'm there. sure there's other. iHeartRadio. I don't know. I feel like most people, I'm going to make, I'll make up a percentage. So let's just say 95% are on one of those three. And you can listen to yeah. it, watch it. It doesn't matter. Like I'm one of those, I'm like a, I'm like a listen to podcast kind of guy. Yeah, same. But that, that said, I mean, if you are, if you are listening, if you've never listened to it, then first of all, do it. But second, secondly, you can watch it so you can look at the charts as guys, as you're describing things. And sometimes that's a big advantage because I know there was a couple of times where I was listening to it and then uh, you made a comment technically and I was like, oh crap, I need to go look this up. And at the time, like I was doing something, I might have been doing dishes while I was listening to it and I didn't have the ability to go and look at the chart in that moment. And then I came in the next day and was like, oh man, we were talking about that thing. Let's look at, let's look at that chart. It was like an RSI on... Yeah, oh yeah, the RSI. I got that going on. On uh, Abercrombie. It was a... Yeah, it was one of those. It was A and F. 100% it was A and F because that was the most overbought uh, retail stock out there. Yeah, these... Chef Joe, I mean, I could bring, like, if Chef Joe's going to bring, I mean, obviously, if Neil's around, I mean, everyone's coming. Uh, but yeah, we, if you're going to bring the steak and the cigars, man, I mean, at least we'll bring some wine. We'll figure that all out because, like, uh, little, yeah, we're very, very excited. Get a nice Barolo. We're going to get a nice something, that's for sure. Maybe a couple, couple bottles. I mean, Barolo is my favorite. Well, favorite, that's why I said uh, it. I know that's, I know that's yes, your... Yes, that's thank you for that. Well, it's, um, it's oddly enough, we used to do... We, not that we're bougie or anything, but back when our old... Far from that, man. I, you know, I, I drink those... Uh, Old E, man. Old English? Straight to okay. the head. Bang! Malt. Obviously. Yo, what's up with malt? But, I'm gonna, I'm, call, but I'm going to say, I'm gonna say we did a, a, bougie, we day, did a bougie thing back in our office. When we owned our floor, we actually were part of like this wine club thing. We'd get wines every single month. Uh, delivered. Our buddy got us into that it. That was good. That was fun. And it was a lot of fun. We should redo that. I had no idea do half that. the stuff. It, was, it is a lot of fun because what happens is you get delivered you get like three stuff. or four bottles of like stuff you'd never even think about and then you each get one, you try it, maybe you like it and then it just comes each month. You don't have to think about, oh, what am I picking up at the store? Hey, just like drink what you have at home. Yeah. So, so if anybody knows of something like that. Oh, we could find it out, man. We don't need to do too much work. I forget the name of it. No, it's because. Oh, that one I think is gone. Yeah, I, I think that was not... Well, that was 15 years ago. You can get, like, Toronto Life. Like, there's different people that are organized, hooked exactly. up with different things. Yeah, all right, we'll, market's we'll look, still uh, falling. I do want to look at that. Um, all right, so, yeah. Um, you know, we, we talked about putting a stop at... Like, think about all these times. This, so this is so I figured out, you know, hey, it's me. Um, we figured out problems that we have. 
So, and they're not problems. They are a little bit of problems. Was that my stop spot was 886. You guys remember that? That's where I was going to get stopped out. But instead of worrying about getting stopped out, that could have been a reload spot short. My next reload, my next stop out spot was 882. That came within 10 cents or 20 cents of 882 and then tanked six more dollars. My next stop was 880. That came within 15 cents of 880 and then hit down another three dollars. So like these could all easily just be reload spots and then we would be 3x, our net probably. So, you know, just, just, just for myself, you know, these little stairs ha have been opportunities to go short and instead I was more looking for getting out uh, of them when that was happening instead of the other way around. So potentially something to look at for next time because for this time, I mean, we've already sort of planned that out. Last thing I want to do is average into here and then I start believing in, in what I just said and the next thing you know, you give it all back. But I'm gonna still use that 880 as a stop and see if we can break that bottom. That 875, I mean, that's such a good psychological level as well. It's still pretty early I on. I think it was a thing a while back. That's yeah. why I said it. Yeah. I don't, man, I didn't, look, I didn't look at a 15 minute chart. I just sort of said 875 because it's the nearest round number. But I, I'm fairly certain it was a decent level back in the day. The other thing you can look for if you're, Baba, if you're getting in and out of these positions or you're looking for a way to jump into the trend, just find, like find a stock that gives you some kind of level with confluence. Like, okay, so if, a, if your stock had a low of the day, like this is, like 126 was the low of the day in the morning on Micron. And it bounced and came to 126 There's and then started, an yeah. started curling at 126. So you can kind of, you can sit on your hands or you can find something wow. else like this. Like we just, I was in it 2% ago and now you can get back in at 126 and now it's breaking 125. And it might give another 2% down to 124. Like stocks are handing out one two percent moves like they're candy at this particular we moment. We just cracked, but you that. just gotta jump back in. So I'll do. Uh, I have to get a spoon, which is good because wow. we'll go to twenty two dollars the desk for some business. Uh, Thirty minutes ago, here we'll get uh, our friend Frank coming on the show. But in the meantime, this uh, portion of the show is brought to you by IG.com. Get as much as fifty to one leverage when trading forex at ig currencies like euro and usd can re require as little as two percent margin rates and offer zero dollar commission trading using a forex account at ig for a limited time traders can open fund and trade with ig for up to ten thousand in funding bonuses terms and conditions apply what are we even doing over here? $22 right now as we debate what's, what the meaning of life is. Um, no, eight seventy eight. dollars So let's just keep on changing it. All we're doing is trailing by $2. Man, what a time to trade. I mean, there's no doubt uh, about that. So I hope that we're just showing that things like this is possible. And, um, you know, that's really all that we're trying to do with the show, honestly, is just to show you that this kind of trading is possible. You can join this up. You can trade at the exact same platform as us, man. Uh, it's real trading. And here it is right here. Uh, I couldn't be, I've been with these guys for 20, how old am I? 22, 23, 24 years, something like that. 2002 was when I started. So join us, man. You could do all of this, all of, all of this. Uh, with us here at Realtrading, realtrading.com. Go find it out. Um, you know, charting, the platform, everything. Uh, it's all wrapped up into one. And then we have, like we said, we used to have a rune here. Um, you, futures trading is all available. We'll, you know, you'll see that. Forex is there too. Forex is there. You'll see European markets. Um, with Vegemite coming on everybody's mind, we have the Australian stock We've market Bitcoin, as but... well coming through. Um, but there it is, man. That's $22. Uh, not only do we get to sit here in a $22 winner, but we get to see what happens when Neil eats this thing. Um, is that happening before the market closes or I mean, ASAP? It doesn't, or? it doesn't matter. Like, I actually, I got up because I knew uh, we were going to the, you know, we were going to the uh, IG read. So I kind of got up and got a spoon. It, yeah, doesn't yeah, matter, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter when we do it. So here it is. This is what it is. It's got vitamin B in it. It's got a bunch of other stuff. It's like yeast extract, salt, a mineral, whatever. Some barley. There's really nothing much in here. And usually you're supposed to, like, you're supposed to dip this on stuff and, or have it with something else. Yeah. That said, and I caveat is, we did this and I've already had it. We've like had a, that before. Like a couple of years ago. So it's not as if I don't know what's coming with this. Like I, the thing is, we did have it on a cracker. I mean, no, I had it on, I had it on like, um, I, I had it on a croissant. Yeah, okay, well. 
So like I added on a croissant, but there's Vegemite. This is me eating Vegemite. I said I'd do it. Uh, Micron continues to go down. And by the way, as we were saying this, you could have reloaded any of these names and got another percent or two. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it was nasty. The sweet, sweet taste of Vegemite. It's a sweet, sweet tasting. It's you know? pretty nasty. It is pretty nasty, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you, Neil, for doing that. <laughs> I mean, maybe take, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm yeah, drinking instead the water, of going, bro. Instead of, exactly. Instead of going to go get a, a spoon, you should have refilled that water. But there it is, man. Yeah. Like, why the heck did I refill? This is disgusting, oh first of all. If, Dis what do you where's think? The yeah, tried, where's the pineapple pizza? I tried telling no, you. No, but hold on a second. Can someone send the man a pineapple no, pizza? No, but we ate this. We had this like two who, years who's ago. A, who's from Toronto? And, on and it show. was not this bad. I swear it was not this bad. Dude, it doesn't get better with age. This is Vegadam Mite. Uh, well, you know what? Meanwhile, I appreciate that because I don't know if the market was getting excited about that or not, but now we are $24 now in the money. So uh, with that, as my friend over here, Neil Roberts, eats the Vegemite, um, we get to have a pretty good moment uh, all over the place. That was good, Neil. Thank you for doing that. You definitely honored what no. you had well, no, you have been looking to do that for a minute, and it hit the level. Yeah, but you know what I'm not happy about? You, 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 you stepped it up. No, the whole point was to do it on an up move, because that way... But it makes if people I, feel better. If I had to do it, yeah. at least I would be happy that everything I'm in my portfolio that. was making money. Instead, like, I'm, what am I... Look, look, man, I own shares of, of uh, NVIDIA, AMD, and you Intel. I own everything that's falling. Holy I own shares of, and I don't holy. own a single, I actually don't own any defense stocks, by the way. What I mean, Bitcoin's do, looking fantastic. What but, one? Um, yeah, the only thing strong, like I said, the only thing strong is I'm canceling bids. Like, what's up? Uh, you got bids out? No, I was going to, I go station to station. I was just going to get out Micron at 124. Yeah, it just yeah, broke yeah. 25. I'm going to go with uh, let the market decide when this is going to stop. And because yeah, yeah. this is the Nasdaq, Nasdaq is now down one percent. Oh yeah, man, that was nasty. Um, and you know, like you know, Sean, you know, I eat anything, and I'm not generally a person. Yeah, this is dude. Disgusting. I was already telling you, like, if you, I mean, you don't have it a croissant, you're just gonna eat it like a spoon, like as no, like, like maple it was syrup bad. or something. I, I'm actually like tar. No, that was, that was really really bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Nasdaq just broke through this week's low, like eighteen two. So unless we're tracking tracking back above that like what's the reason to get out thankfully there were some opportunities to re-up i'm mad at myself for not like when i got out of intel here there was a chance to just jump right back in i threw an offer and intel usually when it hangs out you know within a cent or two you get that fill and it's just now flushing we're about to break the 40 dollar level uh here so it's just uh hang on to your shorts don't throw any bids out there unless you or covering a short. I don't know this is a moment to be looking for anything long. The only, and I'm just throwing this out there, as I scan through stocks and I happen to have Apple up, Apple hasn't made a fresh low and is still green on the day. So if and when, if the market does turn, there's at least something here uh, with Apple. If something's not making, if something that was flushing has not been hitting lows, then you've got some semblance of strength. And it kind of adds up because Apple is a, uh, I guess a safer name and less frothy than some of the chip names that are all going into the downside. It's uh, nasty in chip land. But if you got like an LMT, you know, you're absolutely laughing. If you're in Bitcoin right now. Yeah, wow. That's coming if you're back. You're in Bitcoin. Actually. Okay, never mind. Uh, a second ago, Bitcoin was back at the high. But uh, yeah, Lockheed Martin, uh, Northrop, probably GE doesn't look all that bad. I'm going to guess like things like that might be holding up pretty well. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, uh, man, I'm... Um, it's not, I mean, at this point... No, at this point, this is a $28 coins winner. Coins at the low of the day. I mean, we were talking about this trade a long time ago, and we just should have been adding on to it. This is getting infinitely better um, as, as, we, as we look at this thing. We just put a stop at 875. Um, we are really, really starting uh, to heat up right now. Like, this is real. These, this is real, real trading. We already promoted that. Uh, nice move. Let's check out what's going on with... Alibaba, you see, you see that trade, Fabian. You see that NVIDIA trade. Uh, they're looking at Alibaba all the way down now to 72. So as Neil was like, oh, what are we going to do with our bids? And I was like, I'm not cancel them. But this, you know, I could maybe see this. This is, this is the level for Alibaba. All right, house money, let's give it away. Um, all right, 71, like, you know, 94 break, something like that. 
We just punched in right there. Um, let's just see what happens here. We'll take some more at 72. You know, this is what happens. You know, the casino's open. We've already kicked the door down. We may get kicked out of the casino, to be honest with you. But right now, we're going to go back long. If we have to give some money back, we'll do that. But I don't want to think that the long is what I'm, like, hoping happens here. Uh, we are now, you know, we already have our stop here. 875. We'll give it a little bit of room. Maybe 872 we get out. But we'll, we'll retry it. This is a level that we've marked out numerous times for Alibaba. I actually like the strength in Alibaba. Even today, even though this move is, move is happening, this is the level that we've wanted to look at. So... I'm going to just try it again. This is about a week and a half worth of data here for Alibaba. So we'll try it. We'll see if it works. Give it a couple pennies underneath there. I, this is $28 now. So eight, eight wow, okay. Uh, change stop right now. Holy jeez. All right, Alibaba, Alibaba can, honestly. We're going to have one red stock today. We're going to go seven for eight. Um, all right, so we're going to just switch this right now. Uh, eight. 872.02 for this. Get out there and let's see what happens, right? We'll see. I mean, I feel like, Neil, you do this all the time. We always talk about this. You got you to gotta be able to have outs. And if you don't have well, outs, uh, like I would have got killed on this Alibaba trade. This is why, like right here, we dumped it. We were wrong. We, we took like, it was 11 cents or something. And we may lose 11 cents again. I'd be out if I didn't. I stopped Tesla for 60 oh, we cents. Have stayed in the pocket. And if I had held on to it, it would have gone at $2 against me. All right. So, like, that's, and again, you can always be like, oh, why do you have such a tight stop? Well, because the market's going down. That's, the, well, I mean, every trade should have an out, and the market's going down. But, like, the, the only thing that's frustrating, there was a lot of good opportunities to sort of jump into, like, where can you jump back in kind of moments. And, you know, I, I, there was two stocks I was in. I only took one of them on a reload. That was Micron. I should have had Intel. Like, I'm looking, like, look at Boeing. Like, the crazy thing about it, and obviously I was, my logic is entirely wrong on this in Boeing, was that this was, oh, a, this was a tech thing. I'm like, oh, this is the tech. It's like NVIDIA. It's the chips. It's like Micron and all of these things that are moving a couple of percentage points to the downside. And I didn't really think like, Boeing would necessarily fall this way, but... Here it is anyways. I got out of Boeing for $1.50, and Boeing is right back to yesterday's lows at $184. Like, that's... When you think about what's happening here, like, 188 to 184 this stock just went over 2% down. And this is... You could argue Boeing is in that realm that shouldn't be falling like this with all the rest of tech names, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, so we're going to hang on to the one short that we still have. Oh, I should, I should mention, I now have a trail on Nikola because if you're, if you're shorted at a dollar and the low here was at 94, it breaks the low. If it gets back above 94, we're going to get out of it. So in that trade, you're risking 1.5%. It's now at the 3% mark. Uh, sorry, check that. Uh, it's at the 3 to 1 mark, I should say, uh, 7 cents to the downside. If it gets to 90, that's a nice round number, and then you take that one out. And again, it's just the structure of the trade. So it's up to you. Um, this stock... It looked like a bullish setup, and someone even said, um, nickel is a bullish stock, there's a double top, and it's doing flagging to the upside. All I see is the dollar level, and if it fails the dollar, short 99.7 or 99.6 or 99.8, and then have a tight stop, and if it flushes, it flushes, because that's it flushing a dollar. So again, if you like trade setups, that's, you know, trades are about setups and getting in, getting out, all that good stuff. Uh, pretty crazy here. The NASDAQ not really catching a bid at all all yet there's still an hour to go you never really know probably just waiting for frank to come oh yeah that's right frank 20 minutes frank of course uh, brendan, uh, brendan mentioned this uh frank usually on at 245 he's coming by at 330 let's go baba all right again this is another note man I, we, we've talked about this we've written down 72 dollars. we've written these levels down we've talked about it alibaba just came back in we will take some out there at 13 we took some out at 11 we took some out there at 13s or something like that as we continue to go higher here i'm now waiting at 20 let's see if this can go we are going going to have a 30 dollars winner here 
um, on NVIDIA. So that looks like that wants to go uh, right now. 872, let's see. Uh, yeah, Pat, don't, I mean, those tables are expensive over there, you know? Uh, all right, so 72, we'll see there. Yeah, Derek got a little jumpy there. Um, but yeah, thank you, Pat, for that. But here we go. Let's see if we get more upside. Let's take some more out of Alibaba. So remember I said that we were red on one stock? Well, if Alibaba just goes a couple more pennies, we erase that thought, and then we continue to go long with Alibaba. So let's hold that thought of a potential you know, long bounce happening right now. Our stop on NVIDIA, regardless of what happens, is 872. Okay, so, um, and, and again, we were talking about this trade literally two hours ago. Go follow, at Trader TV, Sean. You won't be the only ones uh, following there. 45,000, 46,000. So, you know, hop on. You know, a lot of comments, everything. We do the sticky note every single morning. And then I was, here's the, here's the tweet right here. Starting NVIDIA short, 896. So that was three hours ago. Um, and this is what it looked like at the time when we were starting that. Obviously, we had no idea that this chart would turn out to look like this chart. So that's why you play the game, man. That's why you come to play every single day. So uh, go over there, find it. Bears vs. Bulls can put that in. I even tweeted some charts today, over 6,000 views. Thank you so much for the sticky note today. And it was a pretty good one. Uh, but tonight's recap show, which I'm doing also. And then my kid has chess, so I'm really excited about that. Chess starting back up after spring break. So we're really, really excited about that. So I'm gonna go home, uh, probably have a quick sandwich or something, take him to chess, um, give my daughter a hug, and then uh, get right back to the grind and get ready for tomorrow when we have the podcast right after the show. So um, we had a good one last week and we'll have a even better one this week. So, yeah, lots of exciting stuff. Is tonight Holy a crap. eventful night in the Roberts household or no? Well, today, oh, thankfully, it's... So, yes, Wednesday is always like the... Uh, that's the gauntlet for me. Uh, my wife at her work, anytime they have like networking events or there's a course she's doing, it's always, it's always on Wednesday and my daughter has gymnastics. So I get in the door. On a Wednesday, I get in the door at 5.30. I have to be out the door at 6.15, yeah. having fed her, having got her dressed, and I have to change myself and get some stuff ready. I'm back home at like 8.30. And then it's like half an hour till her lights out, and then I fall asleep, and I'm back up at 4.30 in the morning. So on a Wednesday, I literally don't have, you know, like I'm, if I can even do the dishes, I'm happy uh, on a Wednesday. When, Thursday? Today's Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Thursday oh, yeah. tonight, we're laughing. Like, we'll actually probably have a good dinner tonight, uh, be able to play whatever she wants to do when we get in the door. Maybe we'll play some, uh, Something. some chess. Like, whatever she wants to do, we'll usually do. But um, I just took a peek back at some of these uh, levels, the things that I hadn't looked at in a hot minute, like AMD's move from noon is now 5% to the, is, is that 5%? 5.5% down since noon. 5.5%, AMD is down 5.5% since midday. Now that, like, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. Like AMD doesn't move $10 at a time. Uh, like that in one afternoon session. And you start thinking about, we're jo we were joking about stink bids before. Look at the daily chart of AMD. $160, which you're now $8 away from, was huge support for 2024. That was the January bottom. That is the February bottom. And it is soon to be the, I was going to say March, it's soon to be the April bottom, it looks like, the way this market is going. Uh, so yeah, like we said, buckle up. It is pretty nasty. I'm, I'll be upset with myself because like AMD, right in here, you could have had AMD at 172, and it dropped another 3% since then. Yikes. And the only thing I reshorted was Micron. That was a mistake. Should have gone into a few other things in that moment. But AMD was the weakest. It should have been an AMD at 172. Is what it is. All you can do is, uh, yeah, everything is on sale, surfer boy, 2,000, 3,000. But this market had been flying. So these pullbacks in the grand scheme of things, some of them aren't even that ridiculous yet. 200 period moving average, AMD 130. 200 period, move at, 200 period moving average on NVIDIA, 550. This 50 period moving average on NVIDIA is 797. So you're still 8.5% away from the 50 period moving average on NVIDIA, and it just dropped a couple points today. AMD dropped 7 points today. Like, it's just... This isn't that insane when you look at your daily charts no. and, your, you know, and your weekly charts. As a, on a day trading level, these are monster moves because that's what happens. But the NASDAQ's down 1%, right? Not two, one. The chips are just taking it on the chin right now. 
So, I mean, NVIDIA is now down 10% from its high. You know, so like all time high or the, the all time high, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know that's a good pullback. Like generally, you'd be like, hey man, we're gonna we're gonna you know look for stocks that pull back. I mean, it's all time high is nine seventy. It's at eight seventy. So you tell me the math. That's that's a hundred bucks off of nine seventy. So there you go. So the pullback is on. You know, this is probably a good buying spot. How low can we go? Lower. But again, I think we're in very, very early stages of AI, and um, you can't do anything without NVIDIA. But we'll, we'll, we'll get it cleaned out a little bit. NVIDIA could easily drop 30% from its highs. There's 10%. So there you go. And people don't even, this doesn't even feel that bad, right? Well, AMD from its high is now down 25%. Right. So there you go. But those had those crazy right? wick highs. But I mean, no, okay. even, even, AM, even, even from NVIDIA, here. those are like real highs, like yeah. eight, nine, seven. No, this is, this is 18, 19%. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. So, I mean, yeah, some of these pullbacks are on. You know, we've talked about pullbacks in what, how high, how high did Intel get? 55? So Intel's... 53, I thought. Okay, so Intel's down 13 bucks on 50, so that's 26%. So that's probably one of the worst ones. You know ARM is... Well, okay. Micron Arm's is different. obviously one of the ones that you're supposed to be shorting right now, in my opinion, uh, because it is still up here. So you know what? Micron is, is the next victim for me. We'll be looking to probably short Micron. I still think of... ARM is, should fall apart. Oh, uh, ARM will... ARM flat bottom 120. Look at the daily chart on ARM. Yeah. Like that, like if it even attempts to fill in some of this gap and 120 doesn't hold, but I mean, ARM's a different beast than all those others because you can say, yeah, well, ARM is down a ton because 160 was the high, but it also was a different parabolic move than some of the other names that we're talking right. about. Like Micron was a much more... It gets parabolic, but you know it doesn't have the same float issues and all that good stuff uh, that ARM does. I think I just got out of Nikola. It's 3:15. We'll have Frank come on here. We have the early look coming and all that. All that uh, Nikola just came back above 94, so we're out of that one. We'll hunt the dollar again next time. That dollar level keeps on failing, then I'll probably keep on trading it. What else are we looking for? Again, I think this is a good time. Like, why we keep bringing up? levels and key, you know, key pullback levels for stocks and you know, where might the 50 period or the 200 period be is, well, if you were waiting to dollar cost average into things, which has been frustrating because you haven't really had that opportunity in a lot of tech names, then if you've been waiting on the sidelines, here's your chance. It's basically that simple. Like you said, NVIDIA 800, 50 period moving average, AMD 160 is a pretty key level out there. And if you're waiting to buy Bids. Oh, Chandler just said a firm going to zero. Uh, there's a name I haven't looked at in a while. It's probably down like almost double digits today. Uh, no, three and a half percent. It's not that bad. But flat bottom break on a firm at 32 bucks as well. There's going to be a lot of flat bottom breaks as you're coming into support. They get bounced off 32. You look over back at the daily chart. Where is support? It's trying to bounce right off the only support that it has. But you know what's nasty? Even if it bounces, look at the trend down. This is a 50 period. It's hugging the 50 period moving average. This is another example of a name that I would just say short till it's not. But this was doing. This was already a short before this. Like a, a firm. A firm's been in a downward trend for weeks now. So it's kind of kicking somebody when they're down. I was uh, just uh, found this. Adara sent this to me. Uh, it's right here. So these are the largest companies. I think this is a pretty interesting one. The largest number of employees here. So Walmart in the United States. So United States companies with the largest amount of employees. So I've always been saying the one thing. First of all, NVIDIA is at 868. Like that 875 seems like so long ago. <laughs> wow. It was so um, long ago. Wow. And we're still going. Hey, ago. That's crazy. Uh, it's a good thing we're able to get some out of that Alibaba because, wow, it, we're really dropping down. Anyways, go find this out. I just want to say, the minute you start hearing maybe some of these companies starting to cut some jobs, then we'll watch out for that. It's funny. I didn't know Starbucks was actually that high, but it makes sense. I'm surprised we don't see a McDonald's on here, but regardless, there's Starbucks right there as well. So watch out for that um, and just look, look for job cuts in those places. I don't know like, what else is going to turn this economy around, but, uh, or sorry, I guess throw, throw some water on this hot fire uh, job market right now, but 
I was just thinking about job cuts maybe could come in there at some point and then force the rate cuts to start happening. Um, I guess the market today is thinking no rate cut as the NASDAQ really coming in, man. Uh, we were wondering this morning when we got that, what was it? Was today jobless claims or was that yesterday? No, I today was... Um, yeah, okay, claim so, tomorrow's what's it? Uh, okay, so to, ADP, ADP, right? Non-farm non payrolls. Farms. Non okay, farm, so no. that was right. So it was that today. So um, yeah, I guess the market right now just finally deciding to give it up. There's like, no bid right now. No, like I just said, this this is a big one here, guys. Um, this is now thirty dollars. So like I said, there, there it is, right there. It's thirty. We'll um, again debating getting out at certain levels here, but. We still continue to make this move lower. So maybe 870. I'm still at 872. Let's see how low this thing can go. This, this is quite a nice day. We are in Alibaba right here again. We just got 72. We did get some out there in the teens. You guys saw me doing that. I don't know if we're going to get that opportunity again. It looks like it wants to lose $72. The market is really sick right now, down one in a bit. ES also down 1%. Uh, wow, what a fun day. And I couldn't be happy to be here with you guys putting on a display, really. So hopefully this market will be able to hold up at some point. But this has been fun, man. This has been a fun day to trade for sure. We were hella long early. We were six for six on the longs, and then we found this. And then we were like, thank you. We only have two shorts today. Short meta today. Can you believe that? And that's still PL number two for me. And then my, the PL number one is this short on NVIDIA. So we only have two shorts today. Everything else has been long. We took two bucks on Google. We took um, that's 170, that's 171, a buck or so on Apple. And um, that's about it, man. Well, Palantir a little bit. It's like it's such a tale of two. Because I look, oh, I look wow. back at it, and this morning, Apple and Google were, my, were the two best, and they were longs. Yeah. And then like now, but only because of now, um, Micron and Boeing. Because Boeing actually, Boeing was, was actually a better short, well, obviously, obviously Boeing was a better short this afternoon than it was this morning. It was the same level, and I didn't even hold on to that one. I just got out of Micron. So let me just uh, jump back over to Micron. So we reloaded Micron. Thankfully, we found something worthy of a reload that's set up pretty well. So there's your reason, 126, support for the last two days, 126 turn into resistance. We get 124 half uh, out on the second, second piece of that. So the thing about it is when you're trending to the downside, find those entry spots. Previous support turning into resistance levels. If you're into, I don't know, what do you use, Fibonacci's? If you use moving averages, you, you like the 50 period. Just whatever it is that you like when the market moves like this and try to find a way into that trend uh, if you can. If you like VWAP, like best link bounce into VWAP, go ahead and take your shot at it. So with 320, I'm probably not getting into anything new unless it's, Unless you get like a real spike to be able to fade back in, I just feel if the market were to bounce from here, you might get a decent sized relief rally. And the only long that I was considering was Apple. So if, if I go long something off of this potential market bounce, which it's not really doing, it would be Apple. That is barely even red, and it still hasn't made a fresh low. Like at 2.30, Apple was at 169.20. It's at 169.50. And you've seen most chip names drop another 2 3% in that time. And Apple still hasn't even made a fresh low. So I would say there's some buyers at least down here in front of the 69 level. Starts bouncing. Might take that one for a jaunt, especially if at 3.30 maybe there's a relief. You could see some buy imbalances as people maybe uh, look to cover in the auction possibly. You could see that happen every now and then. Yeah, we're going to be out of NVIDIA very, very soon here as, uh, yeah, it goes as low as there, 68, 67 or so, and it looks like it will most likely, I don't know, we'll see, where we get stopped out, but 872 was the stop out zone. We could have put out at 870. I'd be really happy. I mean, I wouldn't be happy, obviously. You want the very bottom there, but we bottomed out for a while as we just sat there and watched this go through, through, through. We're getting pretty late right now, though, so... You know, I, I'd be really happy with this. It's already 322. I mean, when you're having fun, you're having fun, and we're having fun. So what is that level right now, just to be exact? Let me just zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, 67s, I mean, I don't know. Do we want to put an order down there? I mean, we can. Uh, eight, let's just do that, man. I mean, if we get that level, then we'd be happy for, with that for sure. So we'll see about if we could get the bottom of the day. So we'll see if that comes back in. So that'll be what we're doing. We did get some more uh, outs here as we went into 10. Again, as you can see right there with Alibaba. So again, these dip buys off of 72, the levels that we've wanted to get. You know, those levels have held. So, so far, so good there on all of these reloads. Franka Berna coming at 330. 
So join me tonight again with Danielle Shea. I know she's everyone's favorite, so join me with her tonight, and we'll talk all about options and maybe how low can NVIDIA go and stuff like that. Uh, we'll have her on and go over all of that. I mean, I could double check, make sure that she is coming. I haven't uh, checked with my booking agent yet, but uh, I'll find out. It's funny because like some weeks it's like, oh, I won't be on next week. And I was like, oh, Chris, like, how's your back? He's like, oh, I got knee replacement surgery. Like, you know, all these guys. Uh, so we'll find out there from Miss Danielle Shea, hopefully coming through uh, there today. So join me tonight uh, till 4.30. And then tomorrow we'll be back here at 8.30 where we'll be able to do it all over again, which is, in my opinion, the best part about it. Well, that's the cool thing about it. It's the, I've, I've said it's uh, trading is the closest thing to like being a professional athlete in terms of the mentality that you'll get because like when you let's say you play basketball every single day like you're LeBron James the game doesn't change 10 feet to the hoop the hoop size doesn't change the basketball is basketball five on five and all those rules it's the same every day your opponents you'll play the same teams but it's never quite the same thing you don't know the defense they're going to play or how much energy a certain guy is going to have or maybe a certain person is injured like so many things are are different and that's exactly what the market is like you don't know what stock is going to move the most you know that you're going to be buying and selling you know that you're going to be using different gateways you understand your trading strategy but you have no idea how the how the, the market itself is going to react that day so you get to prepare for it like it is game day that's what's sort of uh, cool and fun about it. Um, oh, the weed names. Someone just asked about ACB. I didn't look at these. They probably fell with everything else. I'm going to make the assumption. Uh, they were all super strong this morning. But I'm going to guess, yeah, just, all, you know what, not really. This had already, it looks like it had already come down ACB. And if anything, slight bounce. Trend down, but everything is trend down. I would suggest that that, was, that, was, that topped out at 11.30. If you were watching when the market tank that was like Goolsby closer to 12 something so this was already topping out there and pulling back in and it's easy to see like you look at okay so when did everything happen this was actually it was close to one o'clock when Goolsby was on maybe but like yeah double tops in stocks like if you look at the sideways action Nvidia was going right in here it's 12 into one it was going sideways AMD is a different story because 167 that's cute AMD, this is right at about 12, yeah, 12.30. Like, everything was going sideways and barely even moving, and then everything fell off an absolute cliff. But things just accelerated at 176. If you were in a short, like, I'll kick myself because, yeah, 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 do the AMD short, but I got out of it because I'm going station to station. And I even put that in the chat. I said in the midday chat, yeah, AMD's been going sideways. We'll just short the consolidation top and go station to station and then reload when it bounces up there again. The market then tanked and it never bounced again. It still hasn't bounced. 167. It's down seven and a half percent today. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we're at 867.20. I just took some more out of uh, Alibaba. I mean, I, I, I would like it to go up. I just don't know if it is going to or not. Um, yeah. I'm just going to bid down here 67s. That's where we're bidding. If we get the fill, we get the fill. It'll be an NFT or something, and then we'll just work on it from there. And then that will be the $30 winner, and we'll just figure it out after that. So, so far, so good um, down here. Maybe we can see if it bounces off 865, 866, 66, something like that. We'll put a bid down, um, and maybe, maybe we get picked up, maybe we don't. Just one little flush, and that will work right into there. And then we'll be out of that one. We talked about our Alibaba trade. Apple, I think, is a good long if the market does bounce. I don't really want to play any bounces. Like, Google's getting really shellacked here as well. We like the long, and the long was a great play. We took two bucks on the long, man, you know, for Google. Like, that was good. But now you're really coming back in again here. For my largest holding, not great. Down two and a bit percent here today. But this is the market. A nice little fall back in here. We'll see if we can buy some 150s. All right. Um, it's three, almost 3.30, but Frank's early, so that's good. And we're going to go to him right now and just watch out and see what happens with NVIDIA. We are bidding Frank for that $30 winner. Uh, maybe uh, Frank's biggest challenge to date as far as the market is concerned here. I was actually just going to highlight this uh, simple fact uh, before we jump into things, uh, Frank, this move down in the market accelerating at this point on 
Yeah, heavy, heavy volume behind this selling this afternoon. So uh, we are now down one and a quarter percent on the NASDAQ, um, about the same or thereabouts for the S&P. So a lot to um, digest, a lot to discuss here, and we'll get to the NFP print to come tomorrow. But it seemed like way more hawkish uh, talk this afternoon from Fed speakers right across the board, Frank. Give me your thoughts here on um, the catalyst behind this selling. Um, I, I think some of the selling might be coming from, yeah, the, the Fed speak, although it, it seemed like until, yeah, a, a, a couple of hours ago, um, we were in a bit of a, a quiet period almost going into the non-farm number because I think a, a lot of people um, thinking that that uh, non-farm number Sorry. tomorrow morning is going to be uh, uh, super important. And so you had, you know, U.S. rates and U.S. dollars pretty much unchanged going into the last, like I say, hours worth of action. From what I can glean, a lot of this looking like um, escalating tensions in uh, the Middle East, from, from what I can get, uh, just looking at uh, the gold rally that we had that they've kind of done away with now. Um, but stocks moving lower as U.S. rates are moving lower as well. That tells me it's not necessarily stocks moving lower on hawkish tones from the Fed or or uh, someone necessarily thinking that tomorrow's number is going to come in hotter than expected, because then you would expect uh, that 10 years in bonds would have been uh, getting killed right now and rates would be moving higher in the U.S. But we have the the inverse of that, um, as well as the a little bit of a gold rally that, like I said, was was done away with, and uh, crude oil prices just cruising through uh, highs once again, especially in that last hour or so of trading. And so this looks to me, Brendan, like um, the the geopolitical angle um, once again hitting cr with crude oil. Uh, of course, it's um, the Russian refineries that have been getting hit uh, in the Russian Ukrainian war, but. Also, um, the potential here uh, for escalations in uh, Israel and, and how that might tie to other OPEC countries in the Middle East as, uh, yeah, I, I believe two or three of the top five crude oil producers, uh, of course, excluding the U.S. Um, in the world, are either oh, well, Middle East or Russia, and, and so a lot having to do um, uh, with uh, wars in those two territories. And that's, yeah, why I, I think one of the only green things I'm seeing on the board, aside from bonds, is uh, crude oil right now. I, I mentioned that when we came on at two o'clock. And the, the thing, and you mentioned it there as well, the thing that kind of tipped me off towards that angle was exactly as you said, yields and stocks moving downside at the same time, whereas the dollar did stabilize a little bit around midday on some of that Fed speak. But yields definitely did not and still haven't. So it's rare to see those two in such a, uh, such a comparison, such a negative move uh, for stocks overall. So um, yeah, interesting to see what happens coming up here tomorrow. I, I just showed the chart there of uh, 85 Oil waves at 85 on the way by and just keeps on going yeah. like it wasn't even there this afternoon. So, I mean, multi-month highs, two days in a row here for uh, crude oil, all-time highs for gold, as you said. So, I mean, definitely a rotation continuing. Yeah, these commodity markets just continue and, and the, there's stories behind it. We talked a little bit about it on Tuesday. And of course, I, I just listed, you know, three or four different stories behind the crude oil move, not to mention um, that now... Uh, we don't have it on on for today, but uh, some of the the Chinese data and Chinese stocks, um, and and I don't know what's been going on in the last hour. Obviously, they probably turned around a little bit, uh, given the fear uh, tone that just came into the market. Um, but the U.S. and even uh, China here might be drawing on demand for crude oil, and that's now pairing with uh, the these uh, more fearful uh, supply side stories to drive that price up. Like you say, WTI cleaned through $85 a barrel. Looked like this morning, like they were going to maybe take a breather. Um, and then, yeah, the last uh, two hours, they've taken that market uh, from 85 all the way on to, I'm looking at right now, 86.60. And uh, Brent crude oil, I'm sure, is through $90 a barrel at this point. Uh, gold nonstop uh, through the highs here. That was another one that looked like it was going to take a breather here this morning was off about 10 or so bucks in gold and then um, printed another new high, I think, in the last hour or so got up to, 
I think it was 2325 or 2330 um, in the futures. Uh, and, and so, yeah, uh, a, a lot of activity in these uh, different markets that seems to be news-based. It, 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 re- it really makes me wonder what tomorrow's number could bring because sometimes we'll have uh, these, uh, you know, for good reason, these news stories take over uh, even a, a high priority number like non-farm. I don't know, Brendan, if you think that tomorrow's uh, number now is a little bit less relevant to what happens in the European session, um, given uh, the the news coming out of Israel today. I mean, we'll have to keep an eye on it. But uh, yes, exactly. Let's let's tee it up in the sense of if we see selling continue even throughout you know the the Asian session overnight and then into Europe tomorrow morning, it might be in fact that case that it it just won't matter as much. But yeah. I want to take a different spin here in the sense that we just had I think it was three or four different Fed speakers today all point to sure. Maybe two cuts now for the remainder of the year, or it's looking more and more likely. Goolsby comes out and says uh, in March, he put down two cuts before the end of the year as the ultimate solution. You know, there's lots of indication toward the fact that if they don't see a slowdown in the employment um, market and in the overall economy altogether, why do they even need to cut? Yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> it's it's funny. I, I feel like you and I uh, at the start of the year, as this trend was developing, um, we kind of we listed the worst case scenario for um, the stock market and 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 a couple of other markets um, relative to interest rates and what the Fed would do um, a, as we went from seven cuts to five or six. To now, in the last you know month or so, three, and now, like you say, I, I mean, uh, even more hawkish talk around maybe it's just two. Um, and uh, I, I think you know Powell's statement uh, from I believe it was last weekend or maybe it was Friday going into last weekend um, has definitely set the tone. Um, as we look at we we still have the sixty forty relationship in June. Still, you know, more likely than not that we have the cut in june and if this one flips especially watch you know this after non-farm if this flips in the other direction um that it's more likely than not that they hold rates unchanged through june um that that could be a real turning point uh for the the stock market to see even further downside because yeah you, you and i listed that kind of worst case scenario is they get midway through the year they haven't cut it all and all the the fed members are like you know, we're still watching the data. We're not in a rush to cut. And and like I say, Powell set the tone at the end of last week and over the weekend that he, he said, literally, we're not in a rush to cut uh, interest rates here in the U.S. Um, because inflation isn't at 2% and the rest of our economic data points are so strong. And so it really feels like here in April, we're going to need, you know, a downprint in employment or GDP, um, or some of these other numbers, uh, Brendan, for for the Fed to to really take a look at. Uh, okay, you know, June is when we're going to cut. They've all been saying at some point this year, but we're not in a rush. And very quickly, you know, we'll approach that June meeting, and uh, it's going to be in one camp or the other, like we've seen. You know, for the May meeting, it's all it's already pretty much a hundred percent no cut uh, for May. And we'll get there very quickly for the June as well, even though that's still 60-40. Tomorrow's data point here with non-farm could push us uh, either further in that direction of, yes, we'll get that cut in June, or, um, hey, we're going to push that out even further. And, uh, and of course, they set the market, Brendan, right there at 200 k which is uh, a, a really perfect number uh, in terms of the expectation. And possibly even more important now, coming off of you know these headlines coming out of the Middle East, as you mentioned, and also uh, the Fed speak today. So yeah, 8.30 tomorrow um, will be the main event, I think, um, going forward. And I, I had a look out into next week and noticed, hey, it's CPI time already yeah. again, coming up very quickly next week ahead of the next Fed. Yeah, and uh, that's one, uh, of course. At this point, it, it's it's funny how these things, the sentiment on these uh, data points turns so quickly, uh, Brendan, where the, the first couple months of the year, 
it felt like because uh, you know going into the end of uh, 2023, the market, the stock market rebounded so hard, had such a hard rally into the end of the year, and the interest rate market sank going into the end of the year as expectations were like like I said, you know, six or seven cuts in 2024, and at that time, the idea around inflation was like. Yeah, just you know, print in line, or maybe it would be great if it's a little bit lower, but print in line. Where we all see the interest rate cuts coming in 2024, and now we're in April. You have the the Fed turning a little bit more hawkish as we get further into the year, and the chances of you know those three cuts or two cuts can quickly become one or no cuts uh, as we enter the middle part of the year. Um, and now we're looking at these inflation numbers and and the uh, the people that want the cuts and and you know want that stock market to move on to another new all time high uh, are, are saying while well, we really need that inflation to print under we we really need that to get down to two percent um, whereas just a couple of months ago it felt like you know two two and a half two point eight that's fine um, now now the the market uh, really needing an underprint on inflation and uh, employment, it seems to sway Powell and the other Fed members into a cut in June. Because like I say, if if they price that one out, man, I, I think we only have three or four meetings throughout the rest of the year. Um, and, and it's going to get really iffy on whether or not you get those two or three cuts. I know a lot of people talk about the Fed not wanting to do much around elections. I don't put too much stock in that. But um, if something you know else happens, or you get uh, inflation printing back higher, um, and you get into the the summer, you get closer to that uh, election time frame. It might just be a punt on into uh, next year. We're not there yet, but we've gone from you know seven to three to now two, um, and uh, it's only April. A uh, pretty clear trend. Uh, I want to go through this correlation chart um, real quick just to wrap things up. Uh, explain what we're looking at, first off, for anyone who's who's confused by this. But uh, the further the one that you have in the bold box uh, makes a lot of sense when you do. Yeah, here's a, a correlation matrix uh, across our major asset classes here. And I, I thought it was really interesting, a, a couple of pieces. Now, each of these values will uh, show you the um, the relationship between any two markets. And so you can see, you know, those those uh, very green ones, there are the, the correlation between S&Ps and S&Ps or, you know, 10-year uh, yield and 10-year yield. And so, of course, they move up and down together pretty much 100%, 100% of the time. They're the same market, right? Um, but what's really interesting is you look at the rest of the board and you see a lot of zeros or near zeros, um, which tells you that, there's not really a, a lean you can get from one market or the other in terms of, oh, you know, interest rates are moving higher or lower. And so stocks or gold or what have you have to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and, and those are, of course, historical uh, relationships that we used to or, or usually count on um, to, to say, like I say, you know, interest rates are moving higher. And so stocks are doing this, gold is doing that, and U.S. dollar is doing uh, another thing. You're not seeing any real strong correlations. Um, they've broken down across a lot of asset classes, especially you look at that crude oil line, um, whether you're looking at the, the CL, the, the fourth um, row there, or the, the fourth column across, and uh, you're, you're not seeing any numbers outside of 0.1 on either side of zero. And that tells you that crude oil is doing its own thing, which makes sense, right? It's tied to a lot of the uh, Russian-Ukrainian war and uh, uh, Middle Eastern war as well. Um, the only thing that you are seeing strong correlations to is that US dollar piece. Um, and that's a strong inverse relationship to the stock market and to the gold market and a strong positive correlation to yields. And it's just an interesting piece for those who are trading multiple assets. It tells you one, maybe not the best time to be pairs trading, like I say, an interest rate versus a gold or or uh, even a gold versus a crude oil uh, within the commodities asset class. But two, it does tell you if you are trading multiple assets, 
you're pretty diversified right now, whether you're day trading or swing trading or investing, because all these markets are on their own planet doing their own thing for a variety of reasons. But we'll see uh, if the Fed continues to be hawkish, Brendan, and they continue to price out these interest rate cuts. You might see that correlation between stocks and rates really firm up in the direction of rates higher, stocks lower, and vice versa. I mean, uh, we're starting to see it play out uh, a little bit as the stock market gets a little bit more fearful of higher rates. Um, but for the time being, correlations uh, have been broken down for uh, a number of reasons. Uh, it was the first time that I can think of anyways, off the top of my head, I, I heard a Fed speaker today use the word grind, that it was going to be a bit of a grind to get this thing, you know, moving back in the right direction. So um, tomorrow, possibly, you know, the, the most important NFP print we've had in quite some time uh, coming up tomorrow at 8.30, guys. Uh, once again, we'll have it for you. Frank Caberna, Director of Strategy over at IG.com. Use that QR code, bottom right corner, scan that. We'll see you soon, Frank. Thanks, Brandon. Frank tried today. If anything could happen today. Because I was over there talking to Brandon. I was, I was, he's having my uh, <laughs> sugar cane there. Well, I got up and I was looking for like a candy or something that I could like chew on or suck on that would get that taste out of my mouth. And uh, um, Sean had this here. You, that you're actually meant to stir this in like a coffee or a tea uh, to sweeten it, but I'm just using it like a lollipop. Um, a couple of things. One, there's honey packets, and I'm not gonna. I didn't want to. I didn't want to like just drink coffee. No, there was a, someone put in the chat like I stepped away. What did the market do? Um, yeah, De, uh, Delov. Not much. The market. Uh, it didn't do anything. Frank rallied the market as usual, so everything is absolutely fine, and you are not seeing utter ridiculous capitulation in the market right now. AMD is uh, trying to bounce off 166 here. It feels like I should have just said 850, and then that would have been much better. I mean, hindsight's going to be 2020 with NVIDIA, but uh, it feels like Nick, now 875 seems like a really dumb target to have set because, like, when it chews through it like a hot knife through butter, like, what was the point? Uh, but it's 345. Remember, we don't get the er so a couple of people asked about the imbalances. We don't get the early look on the overall number and individual names. There's nothing. So early look. I mean, RY is a sell for about a, for about a million shares, but nothing is on this imbalance locator uh, for early numbers. Maybe we'll see something at 350 and we'll be able to get that to you guys. But uh, it's getting a little bit nasty to said downside. And if this is the market's first day of capitulation, like we said, look for some stink bids. Um, we are $1.50 in the money the other way around right now for Meta. Oh, all right. We just got out. Um, we just got out of Meta right there for a dollar seventy long, dollar seventy long side there on Meta out. Wow, this day is something else, uh, everybody. Wow. Um, all right, and then you guys just saw, like we mentioned, a thirty dollar winner there, um, which was pretty good, coming through there on Nvidia. You know, we, we've, I mean, we're, you know, kind of beat that one a little bit there. Um, so we'll watch out. We got out at 866. We're short up there at 897. It fell in right there. 866 out of that. You can go find that uh, wherever. But yeah, the newest, the newest sort of, like we said, trade is going to be a long here in Meta. We'll finish our day pretty much at the highest spot we've been at here on Meta, trying to buy some dips just into 512. I don't, I mean, if we break through five, my stop is breaking through 511. So we're long at 512. So we have to take that dollar 70 right now or else the math doesn't work. So we take it out. Let's go to dollar 70. We probably reload this back down at 512 again, but there's a dollar on the long. We did lose on the Alibaba finally. It finally broke. We tried it, we tried it, it broke. This one was really the only loss. We made it back right there and then gave it back again. So kind of just one trade there. It's now just a dollar in the money on Meta. That, that's really what we're waiting for right now. I've told you, uh, hey, what's up, Virus? Uh, he wants to know what, what the position is here in my long-term account. We do not have Daniel Shea on tonight, as I thought when she had messaged that she wasn't going to be on. She mentioned that last week, and I was like, oh, well, let us know what trees you plant and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what would you swing, uh, whether up or down? at these levels. Well, I mean, if you're talking about the NASDAQ, 
I would go long. I mean, the market's been really resilient uh, coming back and forth. Thank you, Trader Life. Congratulations uh, on that. That does mean a lot. And then someone said, what's your approach in the long-term uh, portfolio here? Yeah, I mean, just buy names. We talked about it. I, I really think that a name like an NVIDIA, despite how far it's gone, you know, names that you want to buy into your portfolio for longer term, if that's the question, would be companies that you believe will be around for the longer term. And I think uh, NVIDIA is one of those names. And I, liked, I, I like what they're sort of throwing down, obviously, with Jensen Wang, Wong, uh, Wang there. And um, yeah, I like it. I like AMD even at these levels, too. I just think you stay with the right topics. You know what's interesting? And then you could diversify or get ETFs at well, these levels. Yeah, or just dollar cost average into the into the like the queues of the spy or something. Like if you if you just don't you, if you know you want to buy into a dip and you have no idea where you want to do it or what you should do and, and you have a long term horizon on it, then just don't try to be too cute about it. Just buy the markets, man. I mean, I buy the market like every single month with a certain part of my, you know, a certain part of my investing is literally just buying either the Qs or the SPY, lately the Qs, um, every single month and dollar cost average um, into it. And individual names may be different. Like today, I might look for, hey, what has been relatively stable? You, you look at something like a TSM, like if you, if you, if you like a Taiwan semiconductor, it's down only one and a half percent. It's barely, barely scratch the surface but if you look at the trend it's been pretty good off the 50 period moving average so you know if it's a free fall friday maybe you see a 130 on something like this and that's the 50 period and you want a dollar cost i'm saying if you want a dollar cost average if you like that stock if you like pan w i haven't even looked at pan w today 265 like if you happen to like it it's actually right back at that uh, earnings bottom at 260 on pan w you know, so that was the 200 period moving average on that stock. So if you liked it, why not have a look there? I, I tend to say, what is, this, what is something I wanted to be buying anyways with cash? And is it at a reasonable spot? I like 200 period moving averages. I like 50 period moving averages, depending on, depending on how strong the trend uh, has been. And I bought some Lulu today. But so yeah, I don't know what the imbalances are, but they just came well, they just out. Came out. Uh, there it is. Uh, no, not yet. But here they are right now. Let's go into the broker side. We'll see what's happening right now as we got to get ready to get out. We do have now $1.50 in the money on Meta uh, as that goes up to 514. Obviously, we just talked about getting some out right there. Lucid with a buy uh, right now and starting to go. So again, I don't know what that number is, but Apple, buy. Apple was a nice buy. Would be nice if Meta got going as well, but it's still $1.20 in the money. Like we said, we will end at our, high, billion. At, at our highest. Uh, three billion? Three billion buy Three side. billion buy. Side. Well, okay, okay. So, um, yeah, some interesting names. You know, we, we talked about that's a Canadian bank, our Y, I guess, uh, down today. No, still positive. Good. Okay. Well, um, banks probably XOM, wouldn't be that bad Arvel, today. Uh, what's XOM? 120 for XOM. Wow. Uh, this name really rocky, man. Oil, really. That XLE has been, wow, that's been an investment. I should actually be thinking about getting out of some of this. Uh, like we mentioned. So XLE, uh, this one mooning. That's, yeah, that's typical for me. Okay, so we'll have to get out of some of that tomorrow. But um, yeah, today, nice little moves here back and forth. We might as well just get out. I actually didn't even realize how late exactly we were here today. So uh, running out right now, out of time. So let's go handle some business with Adara. This part of the show brought to you by Trade Ideas. Real-time scanning and alerting used in our desk by many of our traders every day. See what's moving in the moment with Trade Ideas. Check out the link in the description for 20% off. All right, yeah, definitely go grab that with Trade Ideas. We talk about that all the time, using the Trade Ideas platform to do various things. I'll be using that on the after show as well, so go check that out as traders stay late and... Traders come early, 8.30, we're here, we're putting them out. We had our sticky note today, and we'll review this. We had NVIDIA, Google, Apple, Palantir, and Disney, which we actually hadn't looked back into Disney. Oh, I'm just going to put this as a stop if it breaks down uh, below 5.12. Well, Disney's down. Because that's it. Oh, yeah, Disney, well, Disney will be down, but I just want, I didn't, uh, that would have been a name to look at there. Okay, so it did break. So that 118 is actually fine for me to watch out for that because I'm actually okay uh, that it bounced around a little bit. Obviously, not many names are going to be with, able to withstand uh, the violent sell that we all just witnessed here. Um, but nice move down 1.38% in the NASDAQ. Uh, don't be scared of this kind of a move. This is not really even anything. It just looks more dramatic because it's a waterfall action. And we really were able to take advantage of that today for sure, uh, live here in front of everybody, like we mentioned.
mention. That DWAC trade that we had like $80 on or $90 on, that was halts and like a very uncontrolled environment. This was very, very controlled. I mean, we kept putting our stops, putting our stops, putting our stops. And then eventually one of them got ran. Or no, it didn't actually. We went down at the bottom of the day at that time, 866. So we had that, we talked about that. So there's our out. Turns out that it's going to be if we held it to the very end, you know, it might have been okay. But it did get down in there into 861, 862. So as the market falls, and remember we were saying it was a little boring here into the afternoon. That's why we flipped it over into NVIDIA and knew that if the market was moving, we did have some levels that we liked and the risk to reward on this one. It's not even, it's astronomical, but we all, everyone has trades like that, right? So um, there's Meta, Meta just falls in. We get our last piece out there, so whatever. I didn't realize it was that close, like I said. I would have averaged we'll into this, chat. I wanted to... uh, but we didn't. Yeah, go ahead, because I'm, I'll just sign off. I mean, there's only four minutes now, or uh, five minutes left. So yeah, handle the super Dan chat. Dan sent a super chat uh, to us, uh, Daniel Westermeyer. Um, super chatted, the email means like check your email. Super chat got my attention. Uh, checking out Trader TV Live, live while at the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, maybe it's the home opener, I wouldn't know, but uh, enjoy the game. I'm hoping you're enjoying the market today. If you were short, you're probably enjoying it. If you were long defense names, you're enjoying it. If you're long Bitcoin, you're probably enjoying it. Everything else is an absolute uh, gong show, but appreciate you. Long time viewer, um, he's the one who gave us the magic eight ball and a good friend yes. of the show yes. uh, as well. I'm down with it. Anytime you, you, know, you can enjoy, you know, have a brew, have a dog, whatever you're into at that particular moment, but you got to be able to enjoy it. At 355, I, there was a 5 million imbalance on TLT to the upside. Just uh, now it's two. That's already pairing off. Lucid has managed to stay. Apple is now 1.6 to the sell side. Which is odd because Apple, that means imbalances on Apple just grew, which you don't usually see. If it grows again, that wouldn't be good. At 355, usually you see things pair off. So if that gets bigger, I would be a little bit shocked. Yeah, you pair off a little bit, 1.2. If it had gotten bigger, Lucid paired off, that's what you want, it's what you expect to see. But Apple, it's gonna end up only down 0.3%. I think you wanna file things like that away. Uh, what was not abject disaster today? Apple barely made fresh lows relative to the original move down. Like, these are all extreme moves to the downside, right? Like, Apple's going to go, that's 1.5%, but chip names were going 2, 3, 4, 5%. 7% down was AMD. Um, I think 4.5% on, in, what, what does that work out to? What's that quick math? Uh, 30 bucks. 3.5% on NVIDIA. I'm shocked that SMCI doesn't have a heck of a lot more to fall. Uh, SMCI went down there, that's what, 5%? Like, I would expect SMCI on a day like today is going to woodshed double digits percentage to the downside. Um, you just expect that. Now, the thing that we're, we were saying when Frank was on, Sean and I were talking about AMD in particular, is one thing you heard a lot of. AMD is more expensive than even NVIDIA on an what, earnings what basis. Happened? Which is probably why you had such a big percentage move, uh, to be sure. And it's also, like, Thomas Briganti as well. Yes, there was negative news coming out of Israel. So you had some Fed speak, which was not necessarily good. Typically speaking, we haven't had as much market movement when you've had geopolitical news like this. So... I mean, it's easy to say, hey, you had bad geopolitical news, the market goes down. But for the last couple of years, the market's been shrugging off bad geopolitical news and not caring about it. So I think it's a little bit more difficult to say that that was it. I think you just get a lot of it coming together and you throw in the Fed speak and everything just rolled over in the same moment. So hopefully you, you were short. There were some opportunities to get back into some shorts. And we talked about how you can try to find that because there was an entire second leg down that was capturable. And it doesn't matter what stock you were looking at. Like if you were looking at AMD, which I'll look, you know, I can look at Micron, which I did get. You can look at AMD, which I didn't. It bounces off 71 and comes into 72. There's a consolidation, possible re-entry. There's another one at 171. And then AMD falls another 3%. Like from here at 245, there's a little bit of a, if you just short the pop in AMD, you're talking about another 3% down on AMD. Like, that's insane. Uh, thank you, Thomas. I actually did pronounce your name right. That's great. Sometimes I actually don't get it right. Uh, we do our best around here. We appreciate you. Two and a half minutes to go. And really, I don't see any reason to put any new trades on, obviously. With that big sell imbalance uh, in the market, the market is still trending 
to the downside, and there's not much in the way of bouncing. The NASDAQ, it's close to, it's close to 18,000, close enough that we'll draw a line in that 18,000. Absolute hindsight on the resistance up there is always going to look good. But uh, you had the 15th, so mid-month, you had the 18,000 level. It feels like if we get a free fall Friday, it's going to be pretty easy uh, to target that key level uh, in there. As we continue, like I said, we continue to head lower. 60s just broke. I already showed you AMD taking out some bottoms. And yikes, it is one of these kinds of days. And all I can say is I hope, I hope when you see price action like this, that your first thought is, and we said cancel bids, but really, I mean, I tried a long. I mean, there were longs, there were longs that got tried that didn't work, now, obviously, unless you got them really, really late for some smaller wins, but ultimately, when you have this kind of move into the downside, you've got to be able to respect the trend. The minimum you can do in a situation when the market's down like this is not go long, not, you know, not try to force any action, but if you can join the trend, take that opportunity to do so. Because when you see acceleration like this, you can find something where you risk 50 cents and you make three, four, five dollars along the lines of what you saw with some of these chip names. But with less than a, with less than a minute to go, um, do I expect a market on close rally after? I expect is the wrong word. Have I seen it happen where you get a bit of a spike in the queues because it's a relief rally in the aftermarket with low liquidity? Sure, but there's no catalyst for it. There's not a lot of major earnings. That said, there's a lot to review today, which I think goes without saying. Like you could probably, I mean, Sean could probably spend 30 minutes just reviewing some of the key levels on names that got Huadun today. And that would be, like, that could be an entire show on just what are some key levels that came in that you should be watching. So there's a lot to get to, even if there aren't a lot of earnings. Got to drop the countdown on. It's 4 o'clock right now, or 10 seconds to 4 o'clock. Let's get it on Adara in 5, 4, 3, 2, and ring it. And the final tally is 1.58 to the downside on the NASDAQ, 1.3 to the downside on the ES. I mean, the litany, it's a bloodbath, by the way. I mean, I haven't looked at my quote board because I was going to save it for the end of the day. Okay, fine, who cares? AMD 8%, Square 5.5%, Mar 5, Affirm 4, NVIDIA 3.5, Ford was kicking butt, down 3%, Micron 3%, Google 2.5. I mean, it's just, and the names that are up, I don't have defense names on here, but that was good. IBIT, BTC, Tesla, closes up 1.8%, so put some respect on Tesla's name. Uh, shout out to Fabian and Ramin on the ones and twos. It's been a wild day, been a lot to get into, and a lot to talk about, and a lot to cover uh, as well. Great job, midday show. Uh, we're, you're learning to trade, but today was all about learning the pre-market, which I think is fantastic. Like, what do you do when the market's not even open? That is its own time of day, so shout out to both Obi and Adara uh, for giving you those lessons every single day. Obi doing a fantastic job filling in for Sharif, who I believe is back uh, next week. We had Frank on, he did his best, great guest as always, trying to, of course, pump those markets. You can't do it when the market's falling like that, it's just not going to happen. And a uh, big shout-out to Brennan as well. Well, you know who I am. You know where you're headed. You're probably going to have to talk a little bit about NVIDIA and the other chips. I'm going to make the assumption. And hopefully about how Bitcoin held up when everyone got scared. I think that's worth mentioning. Everyone got scared and Bitcoin held up pretty decently. But it's time for the aftermarket show. It's a market recap. And it's How About Nowish. Right, over 4,300 of you watching, thank you so much because you guys know that traders stay late and that's why we're here, baby. So what a move down right now um, to the downside that we saw this market just in the last couple hours there. Nice move here. We'll take a look at the queues, man. We have all these boards up here. I just put a sector watch volatility is back because right now the NASDAQ today takes it on the chin, down that 1.46%. Again, U.S., so White House, U.S. will examine policy approaches based on the way Israel modifies its behavior and policy. That's not great. Uh, Biden felt it was time to talk to Netanyahu about his concerns. 
that's not great, right? I mean, if the US ever decides to maybe alter their current strategy, the market doesn't like uncertainty. So there it comes back into the downside again. Um, just seeing, hof hopefully, that's basically what it is, man. I'm just reading it. I got in the notes here from Brendan. Um, no changes to Israel's policy. There's going to have to be changes to US policy. This is coming out from the White House, and the market did not like that. So we had a waterfall. This is one where you should have gone chasing waterfalls, actually, um, because there was a lot of opportunities to get in. It wasn't just straight down. We had lots of opportunities to get in. We took advantage and beat down for, like we've mentioned on the show a couple times already, the largest trade here for a single equity, bigger name equity. We talked about DWAC. NVIDIA to the downside today. Have names like this. There's the trade on NVIDIA. Short, boom, all we noticed, guys, was something pretty simple. We weren't breaking. Whoa, what's that? Get rid of that. We were not breaking this top on NVIDIA. So down we went. And then we got that cover down there for 30 bucks at the low of the day. And it was time dependent, right? We're at, it's 3.30, 3.50 into the close. So there it goes to the downside. Great trade there for NVIDIA. Still moving lower, guys. Wow. NVIDIA, guys, right now getting absolutely clocked in the after hours. Continuously put it, can we put the screen on, Ramin? Thanks. Look at this. Continuously going down right now. We do have the Benzinga squawk up here. If I see anything, I'm going to take a drink now myself. Salud is right. Straight water. Wow, um, big time movement to the downside right now. I'm not seeing anything on here. If something comes through, I will bring it to you. But guess what? It's not an early roll call, but I'm going to have this up because you guys know what's up. Traders stay late. So if you're here, get into the damn chat. Throw up your ones, man. If you like this NVIDIA trade, if you like the market recap show, you like the energy here. You know what I'm saying? You like the show. Throw up some ones. Let's go. Let's get this chat going. There it is. What's up, Chill Vibes, A9, Ryan, everybody that's on here. Thank you so much. We're showing you live NVIDIA trades. These aren't people coming up, random people saying, oh, the market was down today. I think I'm going to uh, buy these dips and just, uh, you know, this is what happens. The market does pull back. No, these are live. These are real trades. These are trades that you yourself can have. Not everyone can do this job. You guys can see that. You see it live every single day. Back and forth trading that goes through. Look at that. Thank you so much for the love uh, there in the chat. That's a big W uh, for us here at Trader TV Live. Chat going absolutely nuts. And I appreciate that from every single one of you. But there it goes, man. It's a nice move down here in the market today. Bye-bye. Look at uranium today. Down 4% and still trying to go lower here in the after hours. Hey, what's up with that? Where did that go? Uh, we'll see if we can get that uh, refreshed. How do I reload? All right, we'll figure that out. Get out of here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, there we go. We'll go to XLK. Uh, show tree map. There it is. Oh, no. Okay, that's fine. Uh, this will show us what was up or what was down uh, today. So we'll get this all figured out. We will go into take tree map off. Oh, it's not reloading. Okay, that's okay. We'll minimize that. Right now, uranium to the downside. We also had XLF. Thank you so much for the ones. You guys can definitely uh, stop. Nah, keep going if you want. Put some more ones in there. Thank you so much. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And most importantly, tell every single person that you're staying late and watching this recap show because it does mean a lot to us every single day here. XLF takes it on the chin a little bit today. Down that 0.98 as this name comes back in a little bit. This is the daily chart for sure, man. We should have shorted the TQQs. This is normally my poison is the TQQs, but honestly, the amount of damage that we've been putting on on NVIDIA, we'll stay there. I like this because I can put on more shares. I feel more comfortable trading a $62 name, but trust me, we put it on today with NVIDIA, and today was a good day. Nice little downside move coming through there as well. The only market, the only segment that I saw that was up was going to be the TLT. So that was actually up today, up 0.58 as the 20-year treasury bounces around a little bit. Now coming back in into the end of the day, but as we see, maybe we're finding a little bit of a base down here into the TLT. Let's go check out what oil did today, USO up. Okay. You know what? Bitcoin. Um, let's check out Bitcoin. So BTC today had itself a day for sure. Let's just, that's a one hour chart. Hold on a second. Let me go into a one minute chart and blow this thing up for everybody. So here's Bitcoin. All right. It was having a day and then this happened. Get out of here. 
This is my pen. This is a one minute chart. Bitcoin right now is having itself a problem. So um, yeah, NASA, we have a problem. Bitcoin is reverting from the moon and coming back down into 68,000. It actually had a really nice top up here, Fabian. We just had crypto, uh, nice double tops up here uh, in and around. Now we get into the downside for Bitcoin. Where could we stop? Get out of here, uh, this little thing. We could stop in and around at 67.4. We were there midday. Uh, let's go a little bit more into Bitcoin. Let's go into a, uh, let's go to a one hour chart here. Yeah, I mean, doesn't that look like a good little area of, of support? Bring it down into 63, 64,000. I like that. I could see that holding for Bitcoin, but watch out, man. NASDAQ and crypto have kind of been doing these dances. So if the NASDAQ continues to pull down, especially here in the after hours, um, we'll watch out for that. So there's USO coming down. I apologize. I mean, I don't know how to uh, refresh this, to be honest with you. Uh, there you go. Hit enter. Hit enter. Hit enter. Uh, not working, but that's okay. Um, that's what that is today. It's United States oil upside. We talked about XLE coming down. Now, look at what's coming up next. So during the middle of the day, we have Q&A with someone named Sean. That's me. Was that you, Ramin? Yeah. Q&A with me. Bears versus bulls. You want to come on, Ramin? We can do a Q&A with Ramin, but then he's going to switch. Uh, all right, we'll do that. Get it to bears and bulls. We'll figure that out. You guys can get some questions in there. I will answer your questions in just a matter of minutes. Stay with me for a couple more. We often talk about something that's exclusive to the market recap show, and let's go over this right now. It's gonna be breaking news. Yeah, not really. Let's go through some calculations here and let's look at, from real trading, where were the profits made yesterday and what were some of those numbers looking like from a P&L standpoint from yesterday. So here we go, man. The top 10 traders yesterday um, at real trading. Number one comes in at $6,000, trading both the NASDAQ and the New York, Amex, NASDAQ, wow. So they're all in around five or six Gs, all the major markets. Amex on there, a lot of traders like to trade the SPY. So Spiders is in there for that reason. Other ETFs as well. ETF trading, good for hedging, good for getting a lot of volume. It's Amex. I don't have the exact symbols or else I would give them to you, but I don't have those. Um, and then down in here, just we talk about Thailand, the CSE. We've had some listings in the CSE come through. CSE down there, Thailand and whatnot. That's compare your profits. So not a, not a crazy day. Buying stretch of imaginations. We had ourselves a day today, which was really nice. Um, and uh, we had it based on NASDAQ volatility. And what we talked about earlier on was some different changes in the market. One name that was pretty volatile today was AbV. AbV missed on a future guide. What the market is really reacting to are guides right now. AbV pulling back in here um, off of a little bit of a dump, man. It was on track for its largest decrease since October. So they provided financial update here. Um, EPS guidance lowered here at AbV from 11, 11.25 down to 10.97. So we can look at other names like Eli Lilly. For me, if there was a space that was gonna pull back, I like healthcare, I like IBB, I like biotech. A lot of you ask questions. I'm gonna get bears versus bulls. Send them to me on our chat. Uh, through Google, and then I will get those and we will dance uh, with that. So, um, so Biden had a call with Netanyahu and demanded an immediate ceasefire. So that's from Brendan. So thank you for that. Mm. Ah. Uh, but that's sending some of these. So here we go. This is a daily chart. So the reason why this is part of my mind is we're pulling back in, getting close on the IBB. I'll do a little bit more work. We'll find out um, what names are in here. We got names like Moderna, um, names, uh, okay, IBB names, ETF. We'll figure out what are the biggest holdings in that. And just a quick little Google search. Should have asked Perplexity or Gemini, I guess. Amgen, Gilead there, Regeneron, Vertex Pharmaceuticals. As we go on, these are the names, which is why I'm talking about ABV and future drug developments. These are technology names wrapped into bio, biotech. 
pretty creative. Moderna's on there, Biogen's in here. I'm, I'm sure AbV is in here, but as you go, these are all names, Sarepta, names that we all like, but again, a little bit of a pullback gets us to where we need to be if you're trying to buy and diversify some of your portfolio. Another name for that would be XLV. So this is another name, look at this pullback, man, the healthcare. Now we've had some pricing changes lately, some new insurance rules coming through for some of these healthcare names. This gets pulled back as well, which actually reminds me that we could call up something that we haven't used too much, but that I really like. Adara uses this all the time, Brendo uses this. This is the stock heat map that we always talk about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ramin again, bang. Uh, Meta, Greensville today. Let's look for some strength. I think the market could possibly bounce here. We can look at a longer time frame on the queues. I'll do that for you in a second. But Meta today, strength in Meta, up almost 1%. We like that. Strength in GE off of that recent split. We like that as well. That could be an industrial name. So we've got a tech name to watch for strength tomorrow in Meta. We also have a strong name in the industrials to look at. And then look at the consumer durables. We have Tesla today. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. What a good name today to the long side. Isn't that strange? Some names, it's down 5 6% some days, and you're like, wow, Tesla. Man, that name is weak. And then today, you're like, wow, the market puked all over itself, but Tesla actually holds up today. Now, I got to take another drink, man. That was a busy day. What's up, Sebastian? Uh, guys, tag bears versus bulls. You can also tag me if you want. We are going to do a big Q&A very, very soon. Here's Tesla holding down off of that 162. And by the way, right now, we're live everywhere, man. Go find us on Twitch, on Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, X. No, we're not on X anymore. Go find us everywhere. Tesla, I like this little downside push here. Now, bouncing off of 162, look what happened today on Tesla. We had a huge move up and then a fade into the end of the day. But look how much we were up at one point. It still does not close anywhere near some of these support levels that we had talked about before. Sure, 171 is here, but it could have kept going. I like this 170 tomorrow for Tesla. I can't even remember, did I even trade Tesla today? Hold on a second. Let me have a quick look at this to see if we did that. Okay, a couple questions coming in. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bears vs. Bulls. No, no trades for me on Tesla today. Definitely that 168. That's a level that we've liked a couple times over, 168. Look, we are human, right? We're going to have some L's on the board. And we put one on the board today with Alibaba. What do you guys think about the Chinese names? I mean, Chinese names very much under pressure right now as well. But I like, hey, first of all, all 3,000 of you staying late with me, hey, they like the Q&A here, Brendo. They like the Q&A. So let's see what happens uh, on that one. Breaking down through 72, we'll figure this all out about Alibaba. I like the bids on this. We want to say a big shout out to our good friend Chris Brecher, who is off on some like crazy vacation. I like Alibaba potentially holding these levels, but if you flip it over to a daily chart, there's lower, there's lower levels coming here. But look at the RSI down here at the bottom. It's actually holding out relatively well in the middle here as we come back to approach these bottoms. We talked about this the other day, and I wanna thank Michael Noss. Look at what happened here as we get going. Look at the RSI topping out, right? Well, we're topping out here as well on the upside of the market. Now that generally will happen, but look at what a dramatic pull we get back down in here. So as some of the strength comes out in the name, you're seeing some relief back into the RSI. So one more day like this, maybe we get back into a buy level in and around 30s. Look at the last time the RSI was at 30 for Nvidia was back into here, back into some November lows. Then we dipped again in the RSI, back into 40. That goes back there to late December lows. So now we're getting another dip. That was held, that's right there. Then we exploded back up to the upside. Does Nvidia have some legs? I think there's a potential here for us to bounce a little bit, but don't, we don't have to buy today. We don't have to buy these levels. We could break lower. Okay, so as we continue, look, we're hosting the show, trading the show, and now breaking down these charts. Thanks for joining. Oh, man. I have a great time being here with you guys every day. Trust, trust on that. Oh, we filled back up right now. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's get rid of that. All right, you guys want to do Q&A? Then let's do a little bit of Q&A. It's Trader Talk. 
All right, uh, let's go over and call up. Uh, first of all, let's get rid of this. Thank you so much, uh, Bears v. Bulls, and everybody that's about to participate uh, in this because there's a couple questions, and we will find out uh, here. This is actually a pretty good one here. Do from Eddie R. You know, we can go, look, honestly, I don't know if my wife, uh, what are we doing tonight? There's chess. I don't think the daughter has hockey. Marissa may be in here, which could be hilarious if she is. Um, all right, so here we go. Let's go right here. Um, Eddie R. Right now, uh, let me get this question. We'll we'll post it in uh, right now. There it is. He says, Sean, do you spend a lot while driving? Do you spend a lot while driving? Or oh, do you speed? I mean, okay, that's one letter missed. Spend and speed. I thought it was, do I spend a lot of time driving? And the question would have been in relationship to how long we spend going back and forth. Neil is a commuter for that. For me, I'm able to drive in, and my drive-in is about um, 25 minutes with not too much traffic, about 30 and change in the morning, and about 40 or so at night. Do I speed? I've never gotten a speeding ticket. Okay, thank you. Um, will the a solar... Oh, what's up, my guy? It is Mr. Kevin Mendoza. You guys can put whatever... Keep taking questions. Keep going, uh, Bears. Uh, all right, Kevin Mendoza. Will the solar eclipse affect the stock market on Monday? Well, you know what? My kids are off. A lot of kids are off. A lot of people are off that day. I could see volumes drying up. And the thing about it is, yeah, I mean, we're not sure what this solar eclipse is eventually going to do. Will it just, my wife was like, oh man, all these birds are going to be flying. They're going to think it's nighttime and then all, like what's going to happen with the wildlife. So there's that as a potential. I'm bringing my glasses in. We've got special glasses. I'm going to go outside and look at it. So I just think that if Wall Street takes a break during the solar eclipse, we could see less volumes. But trust, if the market dips down because there's a solar eclipse, we got to start buying all the planets are aligned today? Okay. All right, 2491. I'm not sure we'll be around for that, but uh, Ramin definitely will be. Uh, all right, so here we go. Uh, what are some good levels for long now on the NQ? Uh, that is from Bob123. So, okay, Bob123, let's go. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to sort of extrapolate this because the levels that we have right now, oh, actually, you know what? These are the Qs. Um, hold on a second. Uh, I can look at them on here. NQ forward slash, it's M right now, right? The June. Okay, so here we go. So we're at 18,000 right now. Wow, we're at 18,000 again? Gulp? Uh, we are still continuously moving down here. This NASDAQ really, wow, man, we called those tops at 18.6, boy. Did we nail that? We've been selling, baby. We talked about that. That's a nice one. Nice move down right there. Okay. Um, all right. So let's look at this real quick. All right. We've talked about this a couple times over and over again. Hopefully the 200 period will load up on here. Doesn't look like it's going to womp womp. All right. So for me right now, if we're going to look at something, let's put this over here and start to draw around. So for me, you can go back down in here to 17.8. So, you know, you're going to have to look. I think that's a decent level to start to buy where we could have had some support. I'd like to call up an RSI. I'm going to go back to my other chart to do that. But now we've broken below the 50 period. The last time that we kind of tempted fate was kind of back in here into 17,000. We did have that wick bottom possibly and then a little bit of a bouncy spot back down into 16.6. But the thing is, is that how low do we actually think we're going to go here in the NASDAQ? I feel like you're going to have to look at individual names to potentially find. Find, um, an area of support but if I was going to look at the cues and again and do some of that same work the RSI is a very very popular um, indicator to look at that's going to be relative strength so for me if you're going to look at some levels you want to go back and find when was the last time we were down to 30s that those are pretty easy levels for RSI so if you're going to look at that that's all the way back down into here so for the cues um, you're, you're talking about some pretty good lows uh, down here so that's about 344 345 so on that that's Nasdaq 430 you lose a hundred I mean that's real that's back like 15 20 percent from now until you finally find a spot where you might want to actually put like a significant piece in I actually like a 200 period we've seen stocks like Pan W Adobe and good names pull back into the 200 and find some support. So for me, really 393. So that's about another 10% down. 
So I feel like the NASDAQ has a little bit to go. Remember, today we'll end up down 1.56%, but we were also up 1%. So that's a 2.5% move. We did see some major equities reverse 2.5% today as well. I think we can go downside, especially if Bitcoin doesn't hold. I feel like that's not a great sign for the overall market and strength in what people feel like when they look at their accounts. They like to see that little nest egg there with Bitcoin, maybe can help survive with NASDAQ. But if NASDAQ loses and Bitcoin loses, I could see that being a problem, let alone gold. Was gold was red today, wasn't it? Yeah, gold down 0.35. All right, um, let's go. Um, all right, how, okay, so kind of, kind of from Sebastian here, We'll put this in. It's kind of the same thing uh, now that I read this. I'm re reading some of these uh, as we go, so we'll do that uh, now. All right, how long do we think this correction could last? Could it be a more severe crash? Could it be a correction? Could there be a currency? So we talked about the DXY. Look, I don't know about the US dollar. Um, me, maybe me and Brendan will talk more about this on the podcast, but I don't... My big worry was with jobs. We talked about that. I mean, it looks like the Fed will cut... I mean, we can look at the CME Fed rate tool. We did have Frank on earlier today. Looking like two this year. It looks like they'll probably take three off the table. Um, and, you know, today wasn't a good sign. There was talk about getting work back down into that 2% again as inflation's kind of creeping back up a little bit. And they're going to have to deal with that as they try to get inflation under control. They're not going to cut with inflation starting to get back up to the upside. That's what sort of created them to raise in the first place, as a lot of us know. So I still think we got to wait for some more data. We have jobless uh, NFP tomorrow coming through. So we'll have to wait to see what that jobs number looks like tomorrow. So unfortunately, Sebastian, I don't know how long this, name could, this thing could go down, but if you're gonna look at a bellwether like Apple, I mean, it's about to lose this level. So that's a little worrisome for me too. And then a name that we all sort of thought had a moat around it, Microsoft, which I still do believe. They're still up here. What about if this loses 400 as well? So the, the market's going to lose confidence in some of these bigger names, which is why I, I, you know, we've been getting out of some names like Disney and then today looking at getting out of some XLE. We sold some Spotify uh, this afternoon as well. Some of these high asset class names or some of these names that have been on high runs that have high beta you know, you might want to see a pullback in those. And unfortunately, a name like Palantir uh, does hurt. Uh, okay, what's up to Matt right now? Matt Carnes, he wants to ask me about options. Now, unfortunately, there it is right there from Matt Carnes, at Bulls vs. Bears. When will they start options? Look, I, I probably shouldn't have said anything. I was told Q1, I mean, uh, by, you know, people that, you know, I, I, it's not like I just threw that out there. Unfortunately, I guess there's been some hiccups in that. Um, we're launching real trading. That's going to be a part of all of that. So let me, thank you, Matt. Let me go back on that and see if there is something. It's funny because we've, we worked a lot on getting crypto out and then I bit and all those ETFs came and now we don't really look at crypto. So um, that is not great there. Um, okay. So, I mean, what else, man? What's up to Pablo G right here? We're just going to do a couple more, and then we'll go over some sticky note stuff. And I just want to thank everybody uh, for coming through. I think this is a problem too, Michael. My daughter can't buy a house. Honestly, this is part of the problem. Um, we do have another book here. What do you keep in mind? Institutional liquidity concepts, fair value gaps, and order blocks when trading. So I'll talk about order blocks and things like that. But I think that's true, Michael. I, I don't know what you guys are talking about, um, but... They should drop rates. I mean, maybe they shouldn't as far as the economy is concerned. I feel bad because I have a kid as well that, you know, and I mean, a lot of young, young people around us here on the trading floor, and it's like, unless you find a great place to rent, it is hard to step into a new place. It's hard to step into a new place in a big metropolis, which is why there are some looks outside but our transportation is not that great in the GTA. So getting into the city is always a problem. So I feel like for cities like that, maybe the core is okay. Retail, I feel like real estate is, is a problem. We've seen empty malls, empty office space. However, there have been um, a little bit of a resurgence in some of these property names. Uh, the name that I like, shout out to Daryl and everybody out there. I've been a buyer of Simon Property Group. I mean, this is one of the largest retail mall uh, retailers out there. 
I like Simon Property Group and that's pulling back a little bit as well. So um, it's XLRE for real estate. So again, there are some concerns for me anyways in the real estate um, sector. Okay, one last question because it does. And thank you, Bears vs. Bulls. But um, oh, it's actually... It's actually Matt Carnes again, and I think that this is an important one. And I want to thank everybody for sticking with, man. That was good. 2,600 that stayed late with me. Wow, that means a lot. This is a sticky note thing, so we'll, we'll, we'll put that up. What's the criteria for being put on the morning watch list? Okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, what do you mean the criteria? Uh, Watchlist.tradertv.live is the website. Uh, do, you have, do you have that thing? Can you run that? Uh, Watchlist.TraderTV. We do have like a little promer. I just don't have it on here. Watchlist.TraderTV.Live. All right, so you got to go over there. I know this is not what you're asking, Matt, but I'm going to do it anyways because this is, it's, there it is. So do all this. Thank you, Ramin. I think there's sounds on this. Go over there. You get all this. It's all there. Okay, so now... There's no sound at all? Okay, so I'll just talk through it. Anyways, there's the website. Here it is right here. Catch us. It just, it's so easy you sign up. So what's the criteria? I understand uh, the question for sure. So what I look for here, and I want to thank everybody for watching out. So I'll, I, I can talk about it with a sticky note, but I'm actually going to get today's watch list for everybody here and show them what we're talking about. I'm going to view this in the browser. So here it is, three handsome, well, two handsome gentlemen and me in the middle. Um, and then, so here's what's going on today. Good day, everybody. Um, and then what we look at is economic events. I think that's really important. So the criteria for that is simply look up a website, find out what economic events are, put them on, right? Find important ones. That's why you want to come here. There's a lot of releases. We'll put the most important ones on here. But this is the, this is the main reason here. And it's a very simple word. It's called catalysts. So what happens is we scan through, and it's not me that does this. It's Adara, it's Brendo. They scan through and they look for different news pieces that have hit overnight. So for example, we had that Crazy move up and down yesterday in Alphabet. That makes it right on the AI talk. So that's in there. Then what I do is I look at Alphabet and I say, hmm, Alphabet, what does that say to me? What are some key levels that we like? And man, oh man, did we hammer that out today. We put Alphabet on the sticky note as our trade idea number one uh, right there because we like the long. We thought that was a fugaze. We thought that, that it deserved to be upside right there. We put on the sticky note as the trade idea number one. And then this is how your boy traded Google today as well. The Nasdaq's still making lower, uh, lower moves there. Google was a top stock for us today, buying these 152 levels. It goes up to 154 and we get out. And then, of course, the collapse amongst all collapses in the market happens in the afternoon. But we really like that. So to answer your question, sort of, uh, Matt, that's, that's what goes on um, the sticky note, or the, sorry, the, the futures list here. And it's just about finding catalysts, what's going to be on it. And video was up, and then we destroyed that to the short side. It just gives me reasons, Levi Strauss on earnings. It just gives us block was a downgrade. It just gives reasons to look at different names. And we'll always put on there some low flow runners. Look, today, it's going to sound... Because we're doing a show, it's hard for us to always sort of go back and forth and talk about each other's trades and whatnot, right? But we had tweeted this one out hours and hours before this went down. So you can follow. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to put these trades out here. So here's me updating NVIDIA as it's going down, what we're doing, what we're doing, what we're doing. But right into here, and here it is right here. This was five hours ago. I don't even know. 11.30. Starting an NVIDIA short here. I do this every day. So those of you that are watching, go follow, man. Almost 48,000, 40 something thousand followers. And then we started to build on this. And then we started to show you guys, all traders out there, where we started to get out. We started filling the outs up here. Started getting out, getting out, getting out. Then we said, let's wait. Yup, part one. We even started labeling them parts. That's yup part one. Then we had yup part two as it started to fall down even more and more. Then it started to come in. In there's yup part two. Where are we going with this, man? We're still we're coming in. Where are we getting out? And then to end all ends right there, we wind up getting that final. No, that's not even the final out. Where is that thirty dollar winner, man? Where did we put it? There it is, right there. Yup part three at the end. Look at that. All the way down into eight sixty six off of a small little tweet that we send out at 11.29, but make sure you join me every single day because we put that 
sticky note out at 8.30 every single morning, and it has some trade ideas on it, and it had some doozies there today. I gotta thank everybody for coming through. I gotta thank my uh, guest, Bears vs. Bulls. Without Bears vs. Bulls, we wouldn't have been able to get those Q and A's out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm back tomorrow at 8.30, but the sad thing is it's Friday, so this Market Recap Show will not exist tomorrow because we're gonna film the podcast, but I have good news for that. I'm gonna be put to work even more because the podcast is gonna be filmed in a podcast room, which means I'm gonna be here every Friday now. I'll see everybody tomorrow at Trader TV Sean. Go follow me immediately. Thanks, Ramin, for, stay, for staying late. And thanks, everybody else. Ciao.